Chapter 131 This little Taoist priest doesn't look like a bad guy. A small boat rides the moonlight upstream of the Flower River. The night is as cool as water, and the figure on the bow is tall and tall. On this day and at this time, originally there would be no boatman soliciting customers anymore. But Wang Longji, who was his identity, rushed to the riverside house and paid several times the boat fare and found the boatman easily. He stood on the bow of the boat, looking at the moonlight with longing. Do you think that if we really rescue Miss Shaolu, will she be happy and agree to marry her? He looked at Li Chu and felt that this was very possible for him. For myself, maybe it will be retribution in the next life. And I am most afraid of comparison in everything. Thinking of this, he frowned and murmured. It would be better if you covered your face. Then he said, No, it's not safe just to show your eyes. How about you wear a hood? Li Chu rolled his eyes imperceptibly. Do you think we are going to rob the prison? They did not go directly to the city. But after landing ashore, they rushed to Mei Shijai. Miss Shaolu was imprisoned in Kaodiang prison, which was not a place like the government office where one could visit casually. It is absolutely difficult to enter without the guidance of an insider of Chao Tian Kei. At this time, Li Sini must be accompanying his master at Mei Shijai. When I arrived at Mei Shijai, I saw the master and the apprentice. After hearing Li Chu's explanation of his purpose, Master Mei Shi pondered for a moment and then said, X I and E, I'll write a handwritten letter. You can take them with you. It turns out that with Li Sini's status, it was okay to visit a criminal, but it was still a bit difficult to bring outsiders into a heavily guarded prison. But it would be easy to bring Master Mei Shi's handwriting. Master Mei Shi's move was of course not to give Li Chu face, but to give his master face. But, the master's wife was also a little unhappy. That old guy, he's a lot older, and he's still so interested in a popular girl. After writing the letter and stamping it with the seal, Master Meishi muttered. Li Chu explained. Master is just an old man. Yes, yes. Wang Long nodded repeatedly. Taoist Master Yu has a deep research on the ancient road Rekhang. The other three looked at him strangely. I had a vague feeling that what he said didn't seem serious, especially for Yu Qian. The process went smoothly. Within a moment, Li Sini led the two of them out of Mei Shi and rushed to Kaodiang prison. Li Sini also broke up with Li Chu not long ago and rushed back from Renjiaji during the day. I had heard about this, but I knew it was ominous. I have never seen this Miss Shaolu, but I often hear people talking about her in recent days. Li Sini said as he walked. She has been very popular in Hangzhou recently. I heard that she was an official who was sold at a young age. The daughter of our family has been living here for a long time. Many powerful people in the city wanted to buy her before she could comb her hair. They offered a shockingly high price, but Teogula rejected them all. Of course we can't sell it, Wang Longchi continued. No matter how high the price is, it is only a temporary gain and loss. Keeping her alone can at least sustain the reputation of Teogula for ten years. It is said that even King Jiang had an interest, but was rejected, Li Sini added. That's quite impressive. You dare to offend the King of Jiang Nan. I heard that after the old prince died two years ago, the young prince who succeeded him had a very explosive temper. No one in the Hangzhou mansion dared to disobey him. Wang Longchi said while touching his chin, There are only a few ruthless people in Hangzhou who no one dares to mess with. But if you rank them carefully, King Jiang Nan will definitely be the first. Li Sini said, The backstage of Taogu Tower should not be simple either. That's for sure. To be able to open such a big brothel in Fuching and survive for many years, its background must be unfathomable. Wang Longchi nodded. After chatting in a few words, the three of them soon arrived at the center of the city, where Chao Yan Tower was stationed. Behind the garrison was the prison of Chao Yan Tower, and Li Sini led them directly in through the back door. She arrived with a basket of moon cakes, and she started distributing them to the guard as soon as she entered the door. Everyone is from the same school, and if you say something nice, you will naturally be harmonious and harmonious. After entering the first gate and then the second gate, Li Chu and the others were blocked. Li Sini took out Master Meishi's handwriting before letting him go. Master Meishi is a famous figure in Chao Yan K, and her popularity and status here are still very high. As Li Chu walked, he scanned the layout of the entire Chao Yan Tower with his mind's eye. I just feel that the energy here is very tight, hiding murderous intent. Layers upon layers of murderous aura hovered throughout the station, and there were countless eyes hidden in the darkness. From the prison outwards, regular Qi meridians are nested inside each other, with dozens of layers. Formation. Countless formations. 
Not long after, he finally entered the prison, and it was already the moon. The mid-autumn festival is over. The prison in Kaodiank was divided into four floors. Although Lu Qinglian was half human and half demon at this time, he was not a big threat. So he was locked in the prison on the first floor. It was easy to meet her. Through the iron fence, the three of them saw the little Lu girl. At this time, she was lying softly on the thatch in the cell. Her hands were shackled by iron chains, and a long and narrow steel needle with a talisman pierced her shoulder blade and dantian. She looked extremely painful. Her black hair was messy and scattered, covering half of her beautiful and flawless face. The lack of blood on her face made her look even more delicate and pitiful. Without seeing the whole picture, you can see the beauty of the city. As the most proficient dancer in Hangzhou Prefecture, her figure and waist are also first-class perfect. Even though the lower body has changed into a snake body and has no legs, the green scales are still strangely enchanting. Compared to the stunning scene in the center of thousands of people on the stage, Miss Shaolu is undoubtedly more pitiable at this time. With tears in his eyes, Wang Longchi banged his head against the railing. Who did it? Who did it? Who did it to Miss Lu? Just lock her up? Why poke her with needles? Three more. Lisa Ni said helplessly. The talisman suppresses the peep of bones and dantian, which can block the movement of monster energy. Every monster in this prison does this. This is already the lightest suppression, Li Chu said. Don't worry. The master asked me to ask her a few questions, and I won't worry about it until I finish asking. I'll wake her up first. Through the iron fence, Li Xinyi approached Miss Lu and called softly. Lu Qinglian! Lu Qinglian! Wake up! Her call brought spiritual consciousness into the brain, which could directly wake people up. Sure enough, after two sounds, Miss Lu woke up leisurely and rolled her eyes. Although his eyes are still a little dull, his hazy and misty eyes are even more attractive. Miss Shaolu, Li Chu just opened his mouth. But before he could ask the first sentence, a sudden change occurred. Just after hearing an explosion, the floor of the cell exploded. Amidst the crash, a person appeared out of thin air. As soon as this man appeared, he brought up a puff of thick white smoke. Before the thick smoke filled the air, Li Chu vaguely saw a young man wearing night clothes. He broke out of the ground surprising everyone around him. Then stepped forward and directly pulled out the steel needle from Miss Lu's body with his heavy hands. The talismans on the needles immediately glowed red. He ignored them. After pulling out three talismans, his hands were already burnt black and bloody. Miss Shaolu, I'm here to save you, he said softly, took out the key from his waist, and opened the shackles on Lu Qinglian's wrist. At this time, Li Chu and the others were blocked by smoke. Although he could roughly understand the situation inside with his mind's eye skills, he didn't know whether he should stop him. Li Sini next to him suddenly shouted in a low voice, Chen Huaji, are you willing to die? The man in black shook his hands in the smoke and shouted hurriedly, Don't talk nonsense! It's not me! Three people. At this time, several guards had arrived. The situation was critical. So he memorized the hand seal, chanted a mantra, stamped his foot, and disappeared out of thin air. Li Chu tracked him with his mind and found that he turned into a chaotic energy and sneaked directly into the earth at an extremely fast speed. He said to Wan Longchi, Wait for me here. Then he swayed, easily appeared over the wall, and chased after him. As mentioned before, there are many formations in Chao Yan Kei, but most of them are on the ground. Although there were quite a few underground, the stalkers seemed to be familiar with the distribution of all the formations. He easily went around them, and escaped all the way without triggering any of them. The secret sentries placed here by Chao Tian K appeared one after another and tried to stop them, but they were unable to catch up. It was a bit chaotic for a while. Seeing Li Sini's behavior before, it seemed that he recognized this person's identity. Could it be that he is Chao Tian K's mole? Li Chu flashed all the way as a blue butterfly flying through the clouds. After a short time of tracking, he arrived at the river bank in the city. Unexpectedly, the stalkers, Chi, suddenly changed and turned into a ball of dense air, which seemed to have the same source as the surrounding water. He escaped several miles away in an instant and was out of the city. Is this the legendary magical power of escape? With a person. He can escape from the ground and enter the water at will. Which is really awesome. Not long after, the aura landed and instantly changed again, turning into a misty aura. As if it were real wind. It's just that although it is ever-changing, its pure speed is still worse than the previous thousand miles of flying sand. 
and there is no pressure on Li Chizu from behind. After a while, the breath finally stopped at a ruined temple outside the city. Li Chu did not step forward rashly, but stopped outside the temple gate. In the ruined temple, a man in black pulled off his mask, revealing an ordinary young man's face. Lu Qinglian's body had been gently laid down on a quilt. Carefully, the young man asked, Miss Xiaolu, are you okay? Lu Qinglian felt a little unbelievable. Just now, he was still in Kaodiang prison, despairing of all thoughts. How could he be here a moment later? She looked at the young man in front of her, and after a long while, she asked in a trembling voice, Are you? Although the other party saved him, who knew he was a good guy or a bad guy? In the prison of Kaodiang, at least he is safe. My name is Chin Huaji. We have met before. The young man's tone was a little disappointed. Chin Huaji? Oh, it's Mr. Chin. Lu Qinglian recalled it for a moment and then remembered. But aren't you a disciple of Chao Tian K? Yes. You still remember this. When the other party remembered his identity, Chen Huaji became happy again, grinning, showing a warm and innocent smile. Then take me out this time, Lu Qinglian muttered. It doesn't matter. For Miss Xiaolu, I am willing to die, Chen Huaji said with great affection. Lu Qinglian looked at him and blinked, seemingly confused. After a while, he finally said, Thank you, Miss Xiaolu. I had no idea you were a goblin before. But don't worry. This won't affect my feelings for you. Chen Huaji said seriously, word by word. Even if you are the enemy of the whole world, I will stand by your side. Lu Qinglian was even more confused. She was a little confused, a little aggrieved, and a little confused. Finally, she put it together and said one sentence. Why should I make an enemy of the whole world? I'm obviously not a goblin. Huh? Chen Huaji was stunned. Miss Xiaolu looked around worriedly. The people from Chao Tian K won't be chasing them. Right. Chen Huaji came back to his senses and boasted. Don't worry. My five elements escape technique will definitely have no rival in the entire Hangzhou prefecture. Hey, if anyone can catch up, I'll give you my head. At this time, I heard a slight cough. Ahem. I'm sorry. Li Chu slowly stepped into the temple door and said. I don't mean to disturb you. But I do have a few questions to ask Miss Xiao Lu. When Lu Qinglian saw Li Chu, her eyes lit up and she said, You were the one in prison just now. Li Chu nodded. Yes, I followed you all the way from the prison. Who are you? Chen Huaji was greatly surprised. He stood up and put his left hand behind his back. He had already grasped a talisman. He picked up the finger seals with his right hand. His true energy was faint and ready to go. Stand where you are and don't take another step closer to Miss Lu. Mr. Chen. Before Li Chu could speak, a small white hand pulled Chen Huaji's sleeve from behind. Lu Qinglian looked at Li Chu and said softly, You don't have to be so alert. This little Taoist priest doesn't look like a bad guy. Chapter 132 Chen Huaji's Dog Licking Diary The first time Chen Huaji met Lu Qinglian was on her first stage. At that time, Teogula started to build momentum a month in advance, and even promoted Miss Shalu as a beautiful girl who comes only once in 4,000 years weighing the appetite of the city's literati. Building momentum in this way is actually a very dangerous behavior, because once the good girl does not meet people's expectations, the greater the expectations, the greater the disappointment. However, Miss Shalu caught the expectations of the whole city, and it goes beyond that. For her first song of the day, she wore the same costume as the dancing girls around her, but everyone in the crowd could tell she was different at a glance. After a dance, all the southern flowers fell. After returning home, Chin Huaji wrote in his diary, June 13th, I remember the first time I met you. You were so beautiful alone in the crowd. Just today, I met the true love of my life, Miss Xiaolu. This time it's real love. It's different from what I did to Yin Xiaoyao. Chun Bai, Dai Luning, Sui Yan Lu, Chu Qin Yan, and Xiao Ming Yu before. I swear. By the way, all the previous vows are invalid. Seven days later, when the curiosity of the literati in the city had peaked, Teogulu allowed Miss Xiaolu to perform again. And after the performance, choose Jake Qin Tan on the Peach Blossom list to accumulate popularity. The rewards of Peach Valley Tower are replaced by peach blossoms made of silk. Ten tails of silver can be exchanged for a peach blossom. When literati meet a girl they like, they can give peach blossoms as a gift. Those in the front row who donate more can be listed on the peach blossom list. 
the person Miss Shaolu chooses to talk to may not necessarily be the one with the most rewards. But it must be on the peach blossom list. On this day, Chin Huaji was not on the list. He donated a valuable pearl hairpin in exchange for 20 peach blossoms. If it were with other girls, it would definitely be enough to be on the list. But Miss Yulio's popularity is really extraordinary. Although Coyote Yang's salary is very high, compared with those rich people who spend a lot of money, his actions are still a bit unsatisfactory. So he wrote, June 21st. If I am young and accomplished and don't feel inferior, I will definitely have a lot of wives and concubines. Today I experienced the pain caused by poverty. I donated a 200 tail bead flower, but it was not even enough to be on the list. There are so many people who like Miss Shaolu, but this also shows that I have a good sense of vision. I hope she can wear that beaded flower. This is when she meets other literati. I can also have a sense of involvement. Another seven days later, this time, Chin Huaji arrived at Teogulu early and donated a whole month's salary before Miss Shaolu showed up. Finally, he made the list and even occupied the top spot for a while. It lasts for three breaths. Unfortunately, he was not selected in the final step. After all, there are hundreds of literati on the list. So he wrote, On June 28th, it took all my luck to meet you in my lifetime. I finally fell in love with Miss Shaolu today. The list, when she said my name and said words of thanks. I feel like my life has been different from now on. Looking back now, it seems, the cold porridge in the pot has become fragrant. The pickles in the rice bowl have turned sweet. Last night's buns became soft. Although the house leaks from the rain, it is also extremely warm. I made a decision. Starting tomorrow, I have to work two jobs. Another seven days later, Chin Huaji dragged his tired body to Taodu Tower. Recently, he was on duty at Chaofian Tower during the day and also looked after the home of a wealthy family at night. Relying on the powerful soul of the cultivator, in the early stage of Shinha realm. He only sleeps for one hour every day. In fact, if you are a serious cultivator of Shinha realm, you will be quite respected. Just by hanging an offering sign in a wealthy family's house and making an offer once or twice, you can earn a considerable amount of income every month. But, Chin Huaji only knows the five elements escape technique. The offerings that wealthy families need are to intimidate others or to sit in the family home. You must have at least one bluffing magical power. And Chen Huaji is professional and proficient in various departments. The output depends entirely on the talisman. Um, he had no choice but to lower himself and work as a night nurse. The family who hired him did so because their house was very large and they were worried about burglars at night. However, the ladies in the family were also afraid of dogs. A night use Chen Huaji perfectly fills this gap. When he walked into Tabu Tower, he had all his savings in his arms. These savings barely allowed him to catch up with Miss Shaolu at the bottom of the list. When the MC read out his name at the last moment, he was in disbelief. Am I chosen? Am I chosen? Am I chosen? I actually had this opportunity in my life to chat with Miss Shaolu face to face, across a screen, for an hour. Oh my god! Even death is worth it. He was still dizzy when the little maid led him upstairs and walked around to Miss Shilio's living room. Miss Shaolu said softly, Sit down! He sat down as if he had just woken up from a dream, and then gave a big smile. This smile is warm and innocent. Through the light screen of flowers and birds, he could see Miss Yulio's slim figure and elegant face, as if he was right in front of him. He hardly knew what he said, but every sentence is deeply remembered in my mind. After returning home, he wrote excitedly, On July 5th, I want to take you to the romantic Luwa River, and then go to Shiluo and Chowda together. Today I was selected to have a chat with Miss Shaolu. She and I spoke a total of 68 sentences, 782 words, 80% of which were said by me and 20% by her. In addition to oh, he he, and then, there are more than 40 words in her words, full of useful information. I asked her a lot of thoughtful and polite questions. For example, have you eaten? What to eat? What are you doing? How much do you earn in a month? How old are you? How many people are in the family? After this long conversation, I have a very in-depth understanding of Miss Shaolu. I believe my funny yet connotative conversation must have left a deep impression on her. This is just our first conversation. There is ample time. The only regret is, she's too tired. We only chatted for half an hour. She just said she wanted to go to bed early today. Go take a shower first. More than a month later, Chin Huaji missed Miss Shaolu increasingly. 
He believed that Miss Xiaolu would have missed him a little bit after we said goodbye last time. Over the past month or so, Miss Yulio's fame has become even greater. The speed at which he was working two jobs could no longer keep up with the increase in the number of intellectuals who liked her. He has never touched Miss Yulio's peach blossom list again, but he never failed in one of Miss Yulio's performances. When he heard that she had edged out Xiao Mingyu to become the Warren under the moon this year, he was overjoyed. Although Xiao Mingyu was still his last true love. But, the most important thing for a man is concentration. There is only one tongue, and there can only be one true love. Mid-Autumn Festival. He waited and waited and waited. When the full moon rises into the sky, it shines brightly through the clouds. When the lanterns first came on, thousands of colors overflowed. When she was covered in bright moonlight and rosy clouds, she slowly descended from the sky along the transparent ribbon. At that moment, she turned all living beings upside down. That dance captivated the country and the city. He, like millions of viewers, was intoxicated. But she never expected that after that dance, she fell to the ground and manifested her demon body. The crowd was in commotion. And Chao Yan Kei, who was present, arrested her on the spot and took her to prison. He was also a disciple of Chao Tian Palace. But he stayed in place. So she is a fairy? He returned to his residence like a zombie, pondered for a long time, and made up his mind. He believed that Miss Shaolu was a kind-hearted woman. Whether she was a human or a demon, she had never done anything harmful to nature. But according to the laws of Halua, monsters that sneak into the city and cause disturbances will be banished at the least and sold at the worst. He couldn't watch Miss Lu become a slave. We must save her. The prison in Kaodiank is heavily guarded. Fortunately, Miss Shaolu was only locked up on the first floor. With his escape skills, it shouldn't be difficult to bring her in and out. As for the keys to the shackles, it is not difficult for the mole to obtain them. After making a careful plan in mind, he wrote again, On August 15th, you know that even if the heavy rain turns the city upside down, I will hold you in my arms. I decided to save Miss Shaolu, although she was born in a brothel and turned into a monster. But I believe she is a good girl, although it is dangerous. As long as she can see my sincerity through this jailbreak, it will be worth it. I decide. From now on, if you give birth to a boy, you will be called Chin Ching. And if you give birth to a girl, you will be called Chin Lian. This night, he bravely broke into Kaodiank prison, charged into the battle, and rescued Miss Shaolu with great skill. But he didn't expect that Miss Shaolu didn't recognize him at first sight. Um, she had just experienced ups and downs, and it was normal for her to feel a little dazed. Fortunately, she remembered her identity when she mentioned her name. It shows that he is still very unique to her. Right? But even if I remember my identity, she doesn't seem to trust herself very much. Um, she is a weak woman and a succubus. And it is normal for her to feel insecure in the human world. As long as he slowly shows his kindness and sincerity, she will surely be melted by his love soon. Right? At this time, a little Taoist priest appeared. She suddenly trusted the little Taoist priest. He also stopped himself, who was on guard, and said that the little Taoist priest was not a bad person. That little Taoist priest looked like nothing but handsome. Um, as a brothel girl, it is normal for her to feel close to people who practice Taoism, right? The little Taoist priest came over, his face clearly expressionless, and his smile is warm and innocent. But Miss Xiao Lu subconsciously approached him, getting closer and closer. She was still leaning on. Stop it. Please. Depend on. Um, since she said she was not a goblin, it might be that she was not used to this snake body and it was normal to lean on some nearby objects. Right? Seeing Miss Lu leaning delicately on the little Taoist priest, she seemed to be getting happier the more she talked. Chen Huaji's warm and innocent smile disappeared. The corners of his mouth gradually curved downward. His nostrils gradually expanded, and tears appeared in his eyes. He silently remembered it in his heart. On August 16th, I shouldn't be in the temple. I should be at the bottom of the temple. I went through all the trouble to rescue Miss Xiaolu. But she is closer to a little Taoist priest than to me. But it doesn't matter. As long as you tell me later that you are innocent. I must believe you. Chapter 133 Being a teacher has already passed the age of being a dragon and a tiger. The full moon is gradually setting. And the temple is deserted outside the city. Li Chu faced Miss Xiaolu and pondered for a long time. After scanning Lu Qinglian's Qi with his mind, he saw something strange. The strong demonic energy accumulated in her Dantian and lower body 
and was thin in her upper body, as if it was not flowing. Maybe it's because she didn't deliberately adjust it. Or maybe it's because of the sudden change. But she can't control this tail now. The human and the tail look like two completely different creatures. This evil spirit overall looks like. It felt like someone was forcing it into her body. The method is very crude. Li Chu spent time with the fox girl and the little koi. The situation in front of him was not only different from ordinary mortals, but also different from ordinary monsters that had transformed or not completely transformed. From this point of view, her claim that she is not a goblin is somewhat credible. I hope Miss Shaolu will answer the next question truthfully, he reminded. Well, okay. Miss Shaolu nodded obediently. Although her snake body looked magical and powerful, she did not know how to control it and did not try to control it. As a result, she now looks like a critically ill patient who can only move her upper body. His expression was also extremely weak. Are there any monsters within three generations of close relatives in your clan? No. Miss Shaolu was very sure. But she said a little sadly, My family's ancestors have been officials for generations. And it was not until 12 years ago that the family fell into decline. Naturally, there will be no monsters among them. Li Chu asked again, Have you ever come into contact with a medicinal material called returning immortal grass before? Its color is golden. Its shape is long and narrow. And its taste is sweet. Miss Shaolu shook her head again. Probably not. Then have you ever taken demon pills? Li Chu continued. Miss Shaolu shook her head again. I'm not a practitioner. So of course I'm not. Next to him, Chin Huaji asked curiously. What do you mean by these questions? Li Chu said. My master said that if a mortal suddenly transforms into a demon, these are the only possibilities. Either there are demons in the blood of three generations of close relatives, and the demon blood may suddenly burst out. Or it may be that the immortal grass is exposed, which triggers the bloodline from ancient times. Or the demon pill is taken and the guidance is not good, causing a large amount of demon energy to stagnate. Besides these, he asked, have you offended any advanced practitioners recently? Huh? Miss Shaolu laughed at herself. I became famous overnight in Hangzhou, and I don't know how many people have been blocked from making money, and how many people have been jealous. To say that I have offended the cultivators, of course I have not. But behind those people, it's hard to say. Those people are so despicable, Chen Huaji said with indignation. It can't be determined yet. Li Chu comforted him, and then said to Lu Qingnian, Now you reveal your monster body in front of the whole city. If you can't recover, and you are not a monster, I'm afraid no one will believe. I believe it, Chen Huaji said again. Li Chu nodded towards him. I silently said, Nyobi, in my heart. Then he asked again, I wonder what your two plans are now. He was just someone who was instigated by his master and friends to understand the situation and help out. The current situation is unclear, and he doesn't know how to solve it for the moment. Where to go? Naturally, it still depends on Miss Shilio's own calculations. Unexpectedly, Lu Qinglian raised her eyes and looked at him with a smile. A weak woman from the slave family has been at a loss for a long time. What should I do? Little Taoist Priestly thinks? Li Chu thought for a moment and said, Actually, if Chao Yan Kei knows about this, it can protect you and launch investigations at the same time. It is a good place to go. I'm just sending you back to Chao Yan Palace now. You'll be fine. It's good that Miss Xiao is fine. Chen Huaji said happily. Li Chu and Lu Qinglian both cast their eyes on his face. Look at what I'm doing. There's something wrong with me. Chen Huaji was stunned and suddenly screamed. Now go back. Miss Xiao is fine. But she is in trouble. Miss Shalu didn't know the situation. She just woke up from a coma and was kidnapped by herself before she could be interrogated. If she was innocent, she would not be embarrassed. But as a disciple of Chao Tian Kei, he committed a serious crime by breaking into prisons and robbing prisoners. Chin Huaji suddenly turned bitter. After working on it for a long time, I not only had nothing, it turned out to be even more bad luck. Seeing his miserable look, Li Chu advised, Don't be too panicked. If you can investigate the truth behind Miss Shulio's transformation into a demon, and then go back to Chao Yan Palace to explain the situation, you may be able to reduce your guilt a bit. Chen Huaji scratched his head and asked, How do we check this? Li Chu felt that this person seemed not very smart. I had no choice but to mention something from the side. With no clue, we can only start from the motive. If Miss Shaolu is harmed like this, who will benefit the most? Lu Qingyan replied without hesitation. In Win Winli, 
I have stolen a lot of their limelight recently. And also snatched away Xiaoming Yu's title of Wirin under the moon. If you destroy me, they will naturally benefit, Li Chu said. Then start with gentleness. At dawn, Li Chu went to Mei Shi Zhai and brought Wang Longqi and Li Xinyi with him. They had also been interrogated repeatedly before, and were released only after they were sure there were no suspects. Chen Huaji's identity was indeed exposed, and a wanted order was posted overnight. Although he did not show his face during the prison robbery, if he was proficient in the five elements escape technique, familiar with the layout of the prison, and could obtain the internal key, Chao Tian Kei's average intelligence level would be a bit low. Miss Xiaolu was like a frightened bird, and she was also a little afraid of the two of them. Thanks to Li Chu saying that they were his friends, Lu Qinglian lowered her guard. Taoist priest Xiao's friends should not be bad people. When Li Xinyi saw Chen Huaji, he immediately rolled his eyes. They both grew up in the Hangzhou prefecture and knew each other very well. Naturally, they had a bit of hatred for each other. You've caused trouble. Big trouble, she said exaggeratedly. Chen Huaji cried sadly. I didn't expect that Miss Xiaolu was not a fairy. I thought she was going to be betrayed. I did this out of desperation, Li Xinyi said. No matter what, you can't do this. Robbing people from Coyote Yank's own prison. Before you do it, don't you think about the consequences? Chen Huaji said solemnly. As long as I can save Miss Xiaolu from suffering, I am willing to bear the consequences no matter how serious they are. Miss Xiaolu was stunned again. And after a while, she just said, Thank you. You are such a good person. Chen Huaji suddenly showed a warm and innocent smile again. Wang Longqi quietly pulled Li Chu, turned his back, and said, You are really good at licking a dog. Mention the need to investigate the matter on your own and start gently. Wang Longqi took the initiative to ask for help. I am familiar with gentleness. I can go and investigate. It will be no problem for three days and three nights. Li Xin he said, Don't make trouble. What we want is an in-depth investigation. Wang Longqi's face suddenly turned red and he said, How do you know I'm not deep enough? Li Chu reached out, and held him down. The cross-server chat between the two was stopped. Miss Xiaolu looked at these unreliable people and then turned to look at Chen Huaji, who was sticking out her tongue. I suddenly felt that my life was in trouble. Subsequently, Wang Longqi waved his hand and said seriously, No kidding. If you investigate Wen Roli, I do have a clever plan. Oh! Everyone looked at him. Wang Longqi said, When it comes to the characters in Jillness, and Yen is naturally the first to be mentioned. Yin Xiaoyao? Chen Huaji was a little excited when he mentioned this name. As if he was remembering the green years of his youth. Bear the brunt? Yes. It will inevitably bear the brunt. His sudden excitement caused several people to glance at him. Including Miss Lu. Chen Huaji quickly straightened his face and said coldly. Just average. Ad Yen is extraordinary. She handles all matters big and small in Wenwen. If she does something bad, she must know about it. Wang Longqi continued. For such a person, it is not an exaggeration to say that she is a human spirit. It is not easy for us to get something out of her mouth. Everyone may think so, or think deeply about it. Only Chen Huaji was standing by. He didn't agree with it, but he didn't dare to say it loudly. He muttered quietly to himself in the corner. It should be easy to get something out of her. Isn't this the basic skill of a good girl? Wang Longqi continued. But I know a person who is an old acquaintance of Yin Xiaoyao, and based on what I know about him, it is impossible to say that the two people had a close relationship in the past. After thinking about it, he simply said, Let me put it bluntly. They are definitely a pair of adulterers asterisk asterisk dot. Li Sini immediately guessed who he was talking about and immediately spat. You scum. It's useless for my master to talk about him all day long. After a pause, she added, Old scumbag. Li Chu touched his forehead with his hand, feeling a little embarrassed. We can't rely on my master's past friendship for everything. Isn't this not good? Isn't this not good? Under the old locust tree in the Yun Temple, Yu Qian touched his forehead with his hand, feeling very embarrassed. Opposite, the homeless girl Xiao Lu, Chen Huaji, and Wang Longqi, who were joining in the fun, were all standing behind Li Chu. Only Li Xinyi didn't want to see his old face and went back to Chao Tian Palace for duty. Hearing what he said, Li Chu didn't say much. He just frowned and said, if the master is really in trouble? Alas, Yu Qian sighed. It's not that it's too difficult. It's just, last time, I contacted Qing Yu to help you deal with the evil spirit issue. Now I'm sorry for her. If I contact Yin Xiaoyao again this time, 
Qin Shu is an amateur after all. But Xiao Yao is a professional. You don't know? There are some things I'm not comfortable revealing. I know everything. Disciple. You have to sympathize with the difficulty of being a teacher. My teacher has passed the age of being a vigorous and powerful person. Everyone looked at his bitter face and deep dark circles and felt it. That must be quite difficult. Old Taoist priest. Miss Lu Yingying bowed down and said. If old Taoist priest is willing to lend a helping hand, help the slave family to explore the truth and restore the original body. The slave family will work as a cow and a horse in the next life. And they will also repay your kindness. No. 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 Get up. Seeing Lu Qinglian like this, Yu Qian quickly helped her up and sighed again. Oh, my heart will break when Miss Lu cries. Qin Huaji nodded with deep sympathy. Okay. Okay. Xiao Xiao. Yu Qian called out and ordered. Go and get the box from the second compartment of my bedside table. Okay. Wanli Fasha responded. And then the sound came. And the person was already back. Faster than a gust of wind. In his hand, he was already holding a large box made of lacquered wood and carved with patterns. Yu Qian took it and opened it. When everyone took a look, they found a pile of jewelry inside. The old Taoist priest picked up a hairpin, thought about it, and then put it down picked up an earring, thought for a moment, and then put it down. After a long while, he took out a string of beaded flowers. Now! This is it! He handed the thing to Li Chu. Show her this, and she will understand. Thank you, master! Li Chu took it solemnly. The old Taoist priest also held his hand heavily. Disciple, I agree to be my master. If you find out the grandson who did the harm behind his back, you must not let him go leniently. Otherwise, I'm sorry for making such a huge sacrifice for my teacher. When I picked up the pearl flowers, I felt they were heavy. Infected by this emotion, Li Chu also nodded heavily. Disciple understands. Chapter 134 If I had to do it all over again. There is a reason why Wen Ruli has become famous in Hangzhou in just a few years, surpassing Taogulu and Sunxiangzai. Upon entering, what you see is not a spacious lobby like other brothels, but a small living room. As soon as guests enter, they will be introduced into different rooms, walking through the warm-colored corridor with ambiguous lighting, and coming under the beautiful red candlelight. It makes people feel safe, as if they are in the clouds, just like the name here. May I be gentle and gentle all my life, and the white clouds will not envy the fairyland. Then Grandma and the Madam will come in and talk to you in detail about what kind of good girl you like, and whether there are any familiar brands. When Wang Longchi arrived here, he felt like a dragon swimming in the sea, and a tiger returning to the mountains and forests. He was indescribably high-spirited. After being led into the small room, he said to the old buster, Please call Aunt Yin over. I have something to talk to her about. Oh! The old madam smiled. Wang Chi Xiao, you want to have Miss Yan's idea. But you were born twenty years too late. Wang Long Chi didn't waste any time and put a large silver ingot on the table. The madam quickly put the money into his sleeves and gave a thumbs up. The peaks coincide exactly. Wang Longchi smiled slightly. Qingji knew that she just made some witty remarks casually. Aunt Yan's current status, even if she was still accepting guests, was not something that a young master of his level could meet. After a while, I heard jingle bells and a silver bell-like chuckle. And someone walked in. Seriously? She has a slender figure and a coquettish physique. Her pink face contains the power of spring, but does not reveal it. And her red lips smell before she smiles. It was Yin Xiaoyao who was famous in Hangzhou Prefecture. She wears her hair in a flying fairy bun, and her head is covered with gold and jade. With a pretty face, you can tell your age, but there are no traces of it. He is not tall, but he is round and beautiful. The waist is soft, and there seems to be a different rhythm when walking. An indescribable charm. But it was just a random gesture. It can only be said that some people are born to be beautiful. Wang Qixiao. I called Egg Yin by name as soon as I came here. But what's the matter? As soon as she opened her mouth, she immediately made people feel very friendly. In fact, she had only met Wan Longchi a few times, let alone being familiar with him. Over the years, she has been traveling among the upper echelons of Hangzhou Mansion, with her long sleeves fluttering, and has met countless powerful people. But for a young master who came from such a small town, she could take such good care of her and be always there for her. No wonder everyone praised her. And Yan, I'm here to give you a big gift. Wang Longchi smiled. Yin Xiao glanced at Li Chu next to him, and his eyes changed. 
Wang Longqi was very familiar with this scene. He quickly waved his hands in response. It's not a young Taoist priest. It's an old Taoist priest. It looked like he was talking nonsense. But Yin Xiaoyao understood it. She sat down calmly and wondered. Old Taoist priest? Is he more handsome than this little Taoist priest? Well, it's not a question of whether he is handsome or not. Wang Longqi explained. He is that kind. A rare kind. As he spoke, he pointed at Li Chu. He is my friend's master. He has something to send to Aunt Yen. You should take a look at it first before talking about it. Li Chu heard this and took out something from his sleeve. It was the pearl flower that Yu Qian gave him. It can be seen that this pearl flower has been aged for a long time. It is not very expensive in the first place, and its luster is dim. Compared with the ones on Yin Shao waist. None of them can even compare. But the moment she saw it, her whole body suddenly froze as if she had been hit by Li Chu's acupuncture hand. After a long while, she tremblingly took the beaded flower from Li Chu's hand. You, she seemed to want to ask something, but couldn't say it. After a long time, she murmured again, I, the owner of this beaded flower also told me to ask you two questions for him. Wang Longqi said softly. Yin Xiao raised his head and slapped his eyes with his hands for a while before looking at him again. Ask, the first question is, Wang Longqi asked slowly, is Lu Qinglian's demon transformation in Peach Valley Tower a result of your manipulation? Huh? A glint flashed in Yin Shiryu's eyes. She shook the beads in her hand and glanced at Li Chu again. Is this really what he asked you to ask? Are you really his disciple? Li Chu nodded and said, Yes. Then what do you think his name is? Yin Xiaoyao asked cautiously. Li Chunfeng. Li Chu replied. Fortunately, he remembered to ask before going out. Otherwise the master had so many vests. I really wouldn't know which one he was wearing back then. There is a mole on his neck. Is it on the left or the right? Right. Does he like sweet tofu or salty tofu? As long as it's tofu. I like to eat it. Does he like it from the front or from the back? Um. Li Chu was startled. This actually stopped him. I didn't expect to be tested on such a complete knowledge blind spot. I know. Wang Lungchi raised his hand and smiled. I can answer this question. I happened to discuss this issue with the old viewer. His face was filled with the joy of a poor student answering a question for the first time. This is especially a problem for a student who has just passed the exam. Yin Xiaoyang moved his gaze towards him. The old temple master said that this issue needs to be adapted to local conditions. Wang Lungchi said word by word. So, what Aunt Yin said? Yin Xiaoyang's face turned cold. That's it. Then, Wang Lungchi looked at her carefully. Yin Xiaoyang was silent for a while and then said, I haven't been involved in many of those scandalous things. But I know there are probably some. Do you know who the boss behind Winrilly is? The two shook their heads. Although Winrilly has risen quickly, the boss behind the scenes is extremely mysterious. The person who appears on the surface is Yan Xiaoyao. But as a former courtesan, she naturally does not have such great energy. It's King Jiang Nan. Ji Bashu? Wang Lungchi exclaimed. Behind Winrilly is actually the king of Jiang Nan. No wonder it has been so popular in recent years. But no one can stop it. Only. One of the kings of the nine provinces has been worshipped by the royal family for generations. His status is so noble. Why would he come to a brothel to steal business? He was a little surprised. Yin Xiaoyao shook his head. I don't know the specific details. I only know that the Jiangnan Palace has secretly participated in many businesses in recent years. And it is extremely covert. Jifan in Hangzhou has risen very quickly and there is no trace of the owner behind it. Most of the big shops have their presence. If I hadn't been working for you, Winley, I probably wouldn't have had the chance to know this. Li Chu asked. Is Miss Xilio's matter also related to King Jiang Nan? There are rumors in Hangzhou that King Jiang Nan once approached Taogulu to discuss buying Lu Qingyan. It is actually true, Yin Xiaoyao said. But it's not because he is a womanizer, but because Lu Qingyan was born out of the blue. It has a big impact on our business. He originally wanted to solve the problem quietly as a prince. But he didn't want to hit a wall. I heard he was angry. There is a cultivator in our building. Everyone calls him Master Su. He is a close confidant of King Jiangnan. Two days ago, he revealed to me that the young prince will use other methods. He didn't tell me the specific tricks he used. I didn't expect that the mid-autumn festival would be so unexpected. If there were any tricks in the process, Master Su should have done it. Yin Xiao paused and said, if you still want to know more, I can go and find out more. No need. Li Chu shook his head slowly. 
We can just do the risky things ourselves. Yin Xiaoya seemed to have guessed what he was thinking and said, Master Su's cultivation is extremely high, which is definitely not comparable to that of ordinary brothels. You don't want it. Don't worry. And Yin. Wang Longchi smiled nonchalantly. He is almost blind confidence in Li Chu. Li Chu also nodded. I have always acted steadily. Judging from his serious expression, he does look like a steady young man. Yin Xiaoyao was slightly relieved. So she asked, What's his second question? Well, that's what he asked. Wang Longchi thought for a while, then imitated Yu Qian's tone and said solemnly, If you had it to do over again, would you love me? Yin Xiaoyao's shoulders suddenly trembled. There seemed to be an unspeakable melody resounding in the room. Su Zifu is a place of worship and gentleness. Generally, a brothel will hire a worshipper to sit in charge. After all, this business is very unusual. It is both a treasury sales house and a shura field. It is inevitable that there will often be strange things that are either man-made or caused by heaven. There are usually some genuine cultivators who care about their reputation and usually do not come to work in brothels. But Su Zifu is unusual. He had practiced hard in Qingyong Palace for 20 years, and his cultivation had already reached the peak of the Divine Harmony Realm, and he could be called a half-step dragon. If you make more progress, you can become a famous person in the world. But later he broke the rules and was expelled from the court, thus losing his place. But since he has a high level of cultivation, he naturally has no shortage of places to go. Soon, he was hired by the Jiangnan Prince's Palace with a large sum of money. In recent years, he was sent to Win Winley to take charge. Originally, he was so proud of being from a fairy sect that he didn't want to work in a place like this. But they gave too much. In his heart, he has never been a small brothel worshipper. Rather, he is an aspiring Taoist who wants to fly his ideals here. The environment in Win Ruli is also good. Amid the flourishing fireworks, a spacious clean room was specially built for him to practice. It's quiet and well isolated. So you don't have to worry about being disturbed unless something strange happens. No one dares to disturb him for three to two months. He had just done a big event for the young prince the day before yesterday, so he thought he could have some peace and quiet again. At this time, he was sitting cross-legged and meditating in the clean room. Suddenly, hurried footsteps sounded outside. Not like a normal guy. His consciousness swept away, and he saw two young people coming outside the clean room door. The first one was arrogant, wearing brocade and silk. The one at the back had a calm expression and was wearing a blue robe. Su Zifu frowned. He didn't know where he came from and he didn't know the rules. He stood up, wanting to give them some punishment. As a result, before he could open the door, the clean room door was kicked open by the young man in robes. Bang! Su Zifu was furious. How rude! He raised his eyebrows. Murderous intent looming. Scold. In an instant, the entire clean room with its huge warmth, and even the people in half the block outside, suddenly fell into a severe cold. This chill does not come from the outside, but from the inside. This is already close to the pressure of the dragon transformation realm. A single thought can intimidate thousands of people. In the next second, a fear sword light will come out of its sheath and pierce through the two young men carefully. This is what happens to uninvited guests. But, he was still a little slower after all. As soon as the door opened, the little Taoist priest raised two fingers. Certainly, Su Zifu was horrified to find that as soon as he finished speaking, he could not move on the spot. Zhou Tian, who was moving along with him, was instantly stagnant. The chill around me disappeared, but he began to feel chilly in his heart. Immortal magic. What is this young man's background? Although he was born in a fairy sect, his knowledge was extraordinary. But it was precisely because of this that he knew what level of monsters these young cultivators who could pass on immortal magic were. Why would such a person come to cause trouble for me? I'm just a small brothel worshipper. Okay. He used his eyes to convey his weakness and helplessness. But no one would pity him. Wang Longchi took out a large sack and wrapped it around his upper body. Li Chu lifted him over his shoulders. Turned around and left. Crisp and neat. On this day, everyone inside and outside saw this strange scene. An extremely handsome little Taoist priest walked out of a brothel in a swaggering manner carrying a Taoist priest whose head was covered with a sack. People on the street started whispering. What's going on? Someone speculated. I don't know. Maybe he didn't practice hard and secretly went to a brothel, but was caught by his fellow disciples? Hey, that's not a serious Taoist priest. Yin Xiaoyao was upstairs, holding onto the railing, 
watching Li Chu and Wan Longqi carry Su Zifu away. In broad daylight, the world is clear. She was stunned. What the little Tao has said a moment ago still rings in my ears. I have always acted steadily. Um. Chapter 135 Bringing a Knife, but not an Umbrella on a Rainy Night. Li Chu and Wan Longqi carried Su Zifu all the way back to Diyangwen. Then some of the acupuncture points were unlocked, allowing him to speak out. But he remained taciturn. Everyone gathered around and saw Lu Qinglian with a body and a snake's tail. His expression became obviously unnatural, and he looked away. Chen Huaji suppressed his anger and asked, Is it you, the evil thief, who harmed Miss Xiaolu like this? He responded with silence. Li Chu asked, What method did you use? Who instigated you? How to remove it? He responded with silence. Wang Longqi asked, Don't your conscience hurt? He looked back at him like he was looking at a fool. Next to him, Yu Qianan said, It's a bit difficult to handle him without saying a word, and we can't use lynching. Su Zifu stiffened his neck and seemed a little proud. Then I heard the old Taoist priest say again, It's better to just kill him. Shen Huaji said first, I'll do it. Li Chu said, I'll do it. He had long wanted to see if killing people would increase his experience points. Su Zifu's pupils shrank. Do these people look very serious? He hurriedly shouted, I am the right hand man of King Jiangnan. You are waiting to take me away from tenderness in full view of the public. If you hurt me even a hair, King Jiannan will not let you go. In the midst of the commotion, Li Sini rushed over. After they captured Su Zifu, they also sent her a message. And she rushed over immediately after receiving it. Li Chu said, He won't answer anything. So I'll leave it to you. Okay. Li Sini responded. Su Zifu glanced at her and said suspiciously, This is the first round of coercion. Is it the second round of seduction? He glanced at the fox girl on the other side, swallowed his saliva, and said, If you replace that fox demon, I might consider it. The fox girl spat, and Li Sini rolled her eyes. Are you thinking about shit? She said angrily. I am the Shwani guard of Chao Yan Quebec. If you don't cooperate again, then I will have no choice but to take you back to the prison of Chao Yan K and serve you with severe punishment. Chao Yan K? Su Zifu was a little surprised. He originally thought that Li Chu and the others were a group of people with unknown backgrounds. And since he had the support of King Jiangnan, he was confident. If Chao Tian K is involved again, things will be different. Chao Tian K wants to deal with King Jiangnan. Could it be that the matter has been exposed? Oops. He thought of many things at once. Yes. Give him punishment. Chen Huaji shouted. Throw him to the horror room and let the lunatics inside torture him. Not only his disciples knew about Chao Tian K's Hundred Horrors Room, but practitioners in the world had also heard of its name for a long time. Su Zifu frowned, then lost his temper and said, No need. If you want to know anything, just ask. No, don't ask questions yet. Chen Huaji stopped everyone. It's better to send him in for torture first and then ask questions. The procedures that need to be followed still need to be followed. Su Zifu's eyebrows twitched. How could he do this? He shouted hurriedly. King John and asked me to do Lu Qinglian's matter. Seeing that he finally spoke, everyone breathed a sigh of relief. In fact, if he doesn't do anything, it's not easy to send him directly to Chao Yan Tower. Because everything he did was revealed privately by Yin Xiaoyao. And there was a lack of strong evidence. It is unlikely that Kao Yank would directly offend King Jiang Nin because of an unfounded incident. If there was his confession first, it would be different. How do you turn mortals into monsters? Li Chu asked. It's the good luck pill. As soon as he let out his breath, he began to tell everything. Good fortune pill? It's an elixir refined by another offering from the Jiangnan Palace. It can turn mortals into half-demon bodies. Su Zifu said dejectedly. Lu Qinglian suddenly came into the world, which had a great influence on Wen Wenli. The young prince offered a lot of money to buy it, but was rejected. So he gave a fortune pill and asked me to find a way to give it to her. She was in Peach Valley Tower, and there were other cultivators sitting in charge. So it was not easy to do anything. Before the Mid-Autumn Festival Ceremony, there were many people at the venue. So I took advantage of the opportunity to put the elixir into her tea. I have no enmity or enmity with her. All of this is just the mission of King Jiangnan. After that, he lowered his only moving head and stopped making any sound. Li Chu asked, Is there an antidote to the fortune pill? No, Su Zifu said. This pill is irreversible, and there is no antidote in the world. When Lu Qinglian heard this, his body trembled, 
and he almost fainted. Wang Lunqi said angrily. It turns out that King Jian Man is such an idiot. He spends all day tinkering with these harmful things. Li Chu thought silently. Harmful? Can give a mortal the power of a half-demon in an instant. The original intention of developing this thing is not necessarily to harm people. The old Taoist priest asked from the side. Do you know the recipe for this elixir? I don't know. I never interfere in alchemy matters. Su Zifu shook his head. Who is refining this elixir for him? Yu Qian asked again. This kind of appalling elixir that goes against the laws of nature and human ethics is definitely not easy to refine. And it must only be done by the top alchemist in the world. I don't know. Su Zifu shook his head again. Wan Longchi said disdainfully. You still claim to be King Jiannan's right-hand man. But in the end you don't know anything. Su Zifu's face turned red. And he immediately retorted. Are you closely related to your left hand? Wan Longchi said confidently. Like glue and paint. It gets later. There was a patter of rain falling. In the back garden of Jiannan Prince's mansion. Several young people gathered together. A handsome young man wearing a wide robe squatted under the eaves without caring about his appearance. Looking at the rain outside. There is a small problem at the brothel. It is not convenient for the young prince to come forward. He wants us to solve it. Next to him stood a giant like a mountain. Mighty and majestic. There is also a young man with faintly stubbled hair and a wisp of bangs in front of his forehead. He is dressed in commoner clothes and has a hemp rope tied around his waist. He looks like a prodigal. The most eye-catching thing is that there are seven long knives of all kinds hanging on his back. In the shadow behind the door, there is also a person standing. His appearance cannot be clearly seen. But judging from his body shape, it is indistinguishable whether he is male or female. The young man carrying the knife opened his eyes when he heard this. I'll go. A feminine voice sounded from the shadows. You didn't even ask me anything. So you just jumped in first? The young man carrying the knife said coldly. As long as you can kill people, I will do it. Of course. The young man in Taoist robes said casually. But you have to be careful. Someone arrogantly robbed Win Winley's offering. The one named Suzifu. Suzifu's cultivation level is not low. Is he the one who was kicked out of the Qingyang Palace? Said the feminine voice in the door. Ha ha. You have a good memory. The young man in Taoist robes laughed dumbly. I always remember clearly the bad things done by others. The young man with the knife interrupted their chat and asked directly. Where am I going and who am I going to kill? The Taoist robed young man chuckled. He was kidnapped and taken directly to a place called Diyun Temple which is a small Taoist temple in the countryside of Yuhang Town. Hey! The young man carrying the knife seemed a little disdainful. Don't look down on people. The rivers and lakes are huge, and there are hidden dragons and tigers. There might be an expert hidden somewhere. The young man in Taoist robe reminded. That's best. I'm afraid that the enemy is too weak for me to sharpen my sword. The young man carrying the sword said in a serious tone. Hey! There aren't many of us coming out of the mountain this time. And the flying sand has broken. You two must not get into trouble. The young man in Taoist robe said nonchalantly. Before he could finish speaking. The young man with the knife on his back had already set off and walked into the rain. It's raining. So take an umbrella with you when you go out. The giant next to him suddenly reminded him. His tone was straightforward. Like a child remembering his mother's words. No need. The young man with the knife did not look back. I only need to bring a knife. Not an umbrella. This statement is true. He saw the raindrops falling continuously from the sky. When they landed a few inches above his head, they seemed to be cut by something sharp and invisible, and automatically fell to both sides. Not a drop of rain could fall on me. Seven knives. The swords are powerful. This is a killing knife refined with living souls, and it must be continuously polished with blood. Do you temple? I hope there will be someone in there who can make me pull out the seven knives. Chapter 136 Rushing into the enemy's spring, with seven murderous knives on his back. Cold rainy night. The man carrying seven knives came to Shalippo. A lantern monster with ghostly fire appeared. But he didn't even look at it. As soon as the lantern monster got close. It was crushed by an invisible sword energy. His person is cold. His knife is cold. His heart is cold. And his blood is cold. Chizong. The criminal. Shivered coldly. Then something felt strange. As a warrior. His body has long been immune to cold and heat. Even if you go to the top of the coldest iceberg in the north for three to nine days. Take off your clothes and pants and shave your body hair to be truly naked. And then drink ice-cold sour plum soup and fan yourself. There will not be a trace of cold air invading your body. The chill that a warrior of this level can feel is unless it is due to supernatural powers 
or coming from the inside out. Now, my heart is feeling cold. It was a situation he had never encountered before. With his eyes focused, he ignored this unknown omen and walked straight forward. In front, there is the outline of a small Taoist temple. De Youngwen. He walked forward slowly, and with every step he took, his energy level would increase. By the time he reached the main entrance of the Taoist temple, his murderous intent was already in the sky, as the fastest knife among the younger generation of the Yin Yu sect. Every knife behind him is a murderous knife. The master who committed crimes against the seven sects was a giant in the demon sect. A terrifying and powerful person, and the protector of the Yin Yu sect, Gui Lianxia, is his senior brother. It's just that Karengsi is not talented enough and has only practiced part of the inheritance, namely the Jukun Zampakuo. Even so, he also relied on this magical power to achieve a great reputation. And the seven sects who committed crimes received all the inheritance from their master. Killer Knife The most amazing thing about this knife is, each time you kill, you can gain one point. The evil spirit on the knife becomes sharper as it is refined with more blood. In addition, his seven knives themselves are magic weapons that can capture the soul. Each of the seven killing knives behind him stores a hundred living souls. They are all the souls of cultivators. Of course, this is not all he killed. Only opponents who are strong enough and approved by him will be included in his killing knife. Those who are not strong enough will be replaced one after another, blessed by the souls of these cultivators. Each of his swords possesses supreme power to frighten souls. Pulling out one handful can cause the liver and gallbladder of a mortal to burst. Pulling out seven of them can cause gods and ghosts to see things through. Most enemies are often defeated before he takes action. Bang bang bang. He stepped forward and knocked the door knocker. In fact, it is not impossible to directly kill the general and go in. But why the other party robbed Su Zi's house needs to be found out. Although he is bloodthirsty, he also knows how to complete the task better. After a long while, footsteps came out to open the door. Wait a moment. A voice called. The seven criminals did not respond. But for no reason, he felt that the voice sounded familiar. Creak. The door opened. And he was startled. Thousands of miles of flying sand? The person opposite was also startled. At this time, Wanli Fascia was holding a broken umbrella, wearing an old Taoist robe, and pulling on his cloth shoes. He really looked like a Taoist priest who got up at night. Both sides asked in unison, Why are you here? Don't shout too loudly. Wanli Fascia pushed him away and whispered, Why are you here? The criminal Chizong frowned. Of course I'm here to kill people. Ah? Oh? Wanli Fascia was shocked. In fact, since he arrived in Hangzhou, the tasks he received were completely different from those of those in the city. And those few people didn't think highly of him. And since the matter had to be kept secret, no one tried to communicate with him. Therefore, Wanli Fascia knew very little about their involvement with King Jiangnan. Otherwise, the moment he saw Li Chu and the others hijacking Suzy's mansion, he should have thought of the connection behind it. The seven criminals looked at him and asked again in a deep voice, Why are you here? Last time, the subrider in Pingan Town was destroyed and the children were rescued. Afterwards, both Shuang Fei Temple and Fei Lai Sect publicized that they had played a role in it. Therefore, the Yan Yu sect's few people naturally took their revenge on them, thinking that the local sect is rude. However, the guardian ghost Lian Xia, who may be the most powerful warrior who came out this time, is dead, and he can't take revenge for a while. So he put it aside for the time being. Unexpectedly, I suddenly saw thousands of miles of flying sand here. Could it be that there was something more hidden about what happened last time? Wanli Fascia sighed and said, Don't mention it. I'm here for labor reform. I advise you to leave quickly. Of course, the seven sects who committed the crime would not leave. He simply ignored Wanli Fascia's words and asked himself, Why are you not dead? Who killed my senior brother? Wanli Fascia blinked. Why didn't I die? Who killed your senior brother? It's hard for me to answer this question for you. So he didn't answer, silently took two steps back, and then started to pull up his neck and shout, Little Talus Priestly! Talus Priest you! A killer is coming to the door! The seven sect convict frowned. He was not afraid of the flying sand calling people from thousands of miles away. So he did not stop him. But his move was really unexpected. Yu Qian didn't come out. Only Li Chuxia walked to the front yard. He glanced at the seven criminals outside the door. Somewhat surprised. The resentment entangled in this person has almost condensed into substance. I really don't know how many people have been killed to accumulate so much resentment. 
if such a person had a name on his head. He would be red enough to bleed. You are the one who robbed Susie's mansion? Instead, the seven criminals asked first. Li Chu said, It's me. Who are you? The seven criminals sneered. The people who came to kill you. Li Chu's expression remained unchanged. But he was a little angry in his heart. The other party actually came to Dehun Guan at night. If he was not there, wouldn't the master be killed? Wake up. Next to him, Wanli Feisha came over and said, He is a disciple of the Yan Yu sect who plays with swords. Li Chu glanced at him. And he immediately added, I'm not familiar with him. On the opposite side, the seven criminals had already begun to draw their swords. Laugh. A bright sword slowly unsheathed with his left hand. And at the same time, there were hundreds of souls captured in it. In an instant, Li Chu's soul suffered countless invisible impacts. But he still stood there calmly. It was no surprise that Chi Zong was ordered to commit crime. And he pulled out a second knife. Laugh. Two hundred souls. Li Chu remained unmoved. Wanli Feisha said, Dao is priest Shao Li. Be careful. His killing knife accumulates strength by killing people. Every time he kills someone, he becomes stronger and has a very evil nature. Li Chu nodded slightly. Accumulate strength by killing creatures. This is so evil. At this time, the seven criminals suddenly shouted. And with a flash of light, four arms popped out from under their ribs. A variant of the great supernatural power with three heads and six arms. With six arms holding a sword. Laugh. Three hundred souls come out of their sheaths. The violent impact of the virtual body has caused a dark wind to rise in the courtyard. Li Chu was still calm and calm. A smile appeared on the corners of Chizong's lips. Very good. You are not the kind of weakling who will wet your pants if you pull out three knives. It seems that your living soul is qualified to be included in the knife. Laugh. Immediately. Four hundred souls gathered. If the divine monk were here, he would be surprised if he glanced at it with his discerning eyes. The entire courtyard was filled with evil spirits. All of them rushing towards Li Chu's body like crazy. Trying to create a ripple in his soul. But it has no effect. Laugh. The fifth knife. Unsheathed. The seven criminals were slightly excited. The opponent's chi was still in perfect harmony. Seemingly invulnerable. Not affected at all. And as if he had not felt the impact of the soul at all. He recognized Li Chu in his heart. Perhaps this is an opponent who is qualified to make him go all out. Laugh. The sixth sword. Take it out of its sheath. Boom. Six hundred living souls. The dark wind is howling. And the air waves are violent. The thousands of miles of flying sand that was just affected by the edge could no longer bear it for a moment and retreated into the main hall. But Li Chu still stood calmly. Looks playful. Yes. Li Chu was a little strange at first. Why didn't the other party pull out all the knives at once? Do you think slow motion looks better? Now he became a little curious. You only have six arms. What should you do with the last knife? Just as he was thinking about it, he obeyed the order and said with a sneer, You can persist until I draw the seventh sword and still pretend to be calm. Although you will eventually die today. You are proud enough. As he spoke, he put a knife in his mouth. Then he drew out his seventh knife. Roar. In an instant, all seven swords were drawn out. And their power did not increase by a small amount. But increased several times. Seven hundred powerful living souls gathered above Li Chu's head almost forming dark clouds and raining down thunder. Even cultivators in the dragon transformation realm, or even the early stage of the Vientian realm must retreat when faced with such an impact from the soul. Just the power of drawing a sword. However, Li Chu still stood there calmly, looking at the seven criminals with interest. Did you actually bite it with your mouth? This is quite interesting. I just don't know how to cut someone with a knife in his mouth if a fight breaks out later. The seven criminals frowned. How is this going? Why did he act as if the shock to his soul when he drew the sword didn't exist from the beginning to the end? A whole seven. Isn't he just pretending? Even the soul of the Vientian realm cannot remain unmoved by such an impact. Wrong. He thought for a moment and slowly put the seven knives back into their sheaths one by one. My posture for drawing the sword must be wrong. Li Chu was moved now. It's been a long time since you pulled out seven knives. Now you're inserting them back. Do you want to pull them out again? Don't. He pulled out the pure Yang sword. Even if he kills such a resentful opponent, he will not feel any psychological burden. However, the seven criminals who drew their swords this time were no longer so slow. But in an instant, electric light and flint. Shocking. But when he bowed his body, he instantly turned into an afterimage. Disappear in place. 
The next second, when he reappeared, he was already in the courtyard, where Li Chu was standing before. At this moment, all seven swords were drawn out, with an awe-inspiring aura, and where his sword energy just passed, there was an explosion in the air, and half of the wall in the front yard of the Taoist temple was shattered. That's right. It either collapsed or was broken. It didn't look like it was slashing with a sword, but it looked like it was being blasted by a giant cannon, and Li Chu's figure had already appeared on the top of the main hall. At first, he felt slightly apprehensive. What a fast knife! If his speed were a thousand times faster, he might be able to catch up with his own Lan Dai and cut the corner of his clothes through the clouds. But when he saw the courtyard wall disappear, Li Chu's eyes turned red. He had indeed considered tearing down the courtyard wall and rebuilding the Taoist temple before. But he had always been reluctant. So he put it off. But even if I struggle again, it's not your turn to take action. Suddenly, the pure Yang sword was raised high. The seven criminals were surprised at this time. If the other party could just dodge his knife, it wouldn't be a big deal. But the opponent's movement was completely traceless. And he could instantly fly more than ten feet away. Which was a bit astonishing. This level of teleportation is an immortal method. Right? A trace of doubt began to appear in his mind. I, Shouldn't he be his opponent? Then, a sword light appeared like a red dragon. And this brief doubt disappeared. Roar. The moment he was swallowed by the sword. Chizong. The criminal. Recalled his sinful life. The beginning of his sin should have been the moment he was led into the demon sect by his master. The master said that his killing knife is the most powerful magical power in the world. There is an end to practice. But there is no end to plunder. Only by becoming stronger through killing can you achieve true invincibility. He he. Fart. Boom. The red dragon swept through the seven criminal sects. And a ball of white light invisible to others converged into Li Chu's body again. Very fulfilling. Killing people does have experience points. Seeing this scene, Wanli Fascia was glad that he had abandoned the darkness and turned to the light. And at the same time, he also sighed cryptically. Well, even if you carry seven full layer killing knives on your back, why do you dare to come to the Yun Temple? This is the little Taoist priest. The old Taoist priest behind him hasn't taken action yet. Chapter 137 It's Not Impossible The next morning, when Yu Qian walked out of the room, feeling refreshed as before, yawned like an immortal, stretched out his waist like a worldly expert, and was about to walk to the stone table to taste a piece of tea worth ten cents and one tail. Suddenly, he frowned. He slowly turned his head, looked in the direction of the front hall, and walked quickly over. Then, walk through the front hall and look out to the main entrance. No, there is no main entrance at this time. The front half of the courtyard wall of Dehun Temple is gone. The old Taoist priest raised his hand tremblingly. Now you don't even tell anyone about the demolition. So you just push it away? The fox girl behind quickly came to hold him. Master, there was no demolition. Bad people entered our temple last night. There was such a big commotion last night that except Yu Qian, who was sleeping hard. The others were awakened early. After such an explanation, the old Taoist priest understood what happened last night. He was still a little angry. How dare these little bastards from the demon sect come to your door to tear down the wall? Even though I'm dead in my sleep, if I wake up, my ashes will be spread out for them. Li Chu, who had just sat down, heard this and said calmly, There is no ashes left. Yu Qian was then satisfied. That's pretty much it. Li Chu muttered, It's just that the disciple feels that Diyun Temple is very dangerous now. Oh, Yu Qian said, Are you worried that they will come to your door again? Yes. The other party is a member of the demon sect. He can be unscrupulous and ignore the law. Li Chu expressed his worries. And we are good and law-abiding citizens. So we are naturally at a disadvantage. Indeed. Yu Qian nodded. Now they know where we are. And they are even willing to send people to our homes to intrude. The disciple is very worried that Diyangwen will not have peace in the future. I am even more worried that sooner or later, even the master will be killed and cannot sleep well. This is too serious. Yu Qian frowned. What are you going to do? For the sake of our overall safety. It seems that the only way is to eliminate this group of villains. Li Chu said solemnly. Then how to destroy them? Disciple, do you have any plans? Yu Qian asked again. Of course, it's the reporting officer. Li Chu said very naturally. Huh? Wan Li Feisha next to him was startled. I didn't expect you to say that. Li Chu said. Based on the current situation, it is very likely that these people in the demon cult have colluded with King Jiang'an. 
It would be better to report all this to Chao Tian K and let them handle related matters. Yu Qian smiled slightly. Yes, a very safe method. Huh? Wanli Feisha was stunned again. These two masters and disciples. One is inhumanly strong. The other is as powerful as heaven and earth. After a long discussion here, we came up with this. Immediately, he saw Li Chu looking at him. And he quickly sat upright, raising his head and chest. Junior Brother Sha, if you know of other situations, please tell us in time. You know our Guanli policy. I know. I will be lenient if I confess. But strict if I resist. Wanli Feisha said loudly. Yes. As long as you stick to the right path. That's fine. Wanli Feisha said loudly. I know. Transform yourself and become a new person. That's right. Li Chu nodded and added. In addition, Xiao Bai reported to me that you have been harassing her recently. But she made it clear that she has no feelings for you. So I hope you. Wanli Feisha said loudly. I know. Make money in three years. Um, don't listen to what's inappropriate. See what's inappropriate. Wanli Feisha quickly changed his words. The autumn wind rustled. And a yellow remaining leaf turned and fell on the shoulder of the flying sand. Along with his cold sweat. When Li Chu came to Chao Yan Palace again, he found that it was very busy up and down. He held his hands and waited for a while before he arrived at Li Sini. Unexpectedly, Li Sini directly brought Miss Xiaolu here. Lu Qinglian had already become somewhat accustomed to the twisting of the snake's body. She was wearing a floor-length skirt and walking and swinging. Not only did she not look abnormal, but she actually had a bit of charm. When she saw Li Chu coming over, her eyes were clear. Little Taoist Li, are you here to see me? Li Chu replied gently but firmly. No. Miss Xiaolu pursed her lips and silently took a few steps back. Li Sini explained to him. Yesterday we interrogated Su Zifu overnight and got a lot of information which we cannot disclose to you. Even if Chen Huaji has made meritorious service, he must be severely punished. It doesn't matter to Miss Xiaolu. Since she is victims can choose where to go. You can stay in our Chao Yan Palace, or you can go back to Taobu Tower. In her current condition, it's not really suitable for her to go out. I still suggest she stay here. Li Sini said and glanced at Lu Qinglian again, making Miss Lu's face turn red. But she personally wants to stay in Yangwen temporarily. Huh? Li Chu was stunned for a moment. Come to our temple? Yes. Lu Qinglian agreed with a whisper. Although we only got along briefly yesterday, Sister Bai and Sister Yur and I felt quite happy together. They won't discriminate against me just because I look like this. I feel like the old temple master and junior brother Shaw are both pretty good. By the way, I can also get closer to the other people in your temple. Li Chu was a little embarrassed. If it were before, it would be nothing. It's just that our Taoist temple is too small. He didn't mean to make things difficult. It would have been okay to take in a poor little girl. I believe the master would be very happy. It's just that Diyongwe originally only had two bedrooms. But Wang Longji later paid for the addition. Originally, I wanted to add another room. But when the little koi came along, I built another room. This is only four rooms. Yu Qian and Li Chu each have a room. The fox girl and the little koi share a room. After all, the little koi spends less time sleeping on the bed and more time sleeping in the water. So a separate bedroom is a waste. A new guest named Wanli Feisha came and occupied another room. As a result, Di Youngwen's bedroom is always in a saturated state. Last time Chen Huaji and Miss Xiaolu came, it was just a few men squeezing together and a few women squeezing together. And they made do for the night. If we take her in now, she will have to stay for a while. So we can't make do with it. I can pay. Miss Xiaolu said suddenly. Li Chu pondered seriously for a moment. It's not impossible. It's not impossible to let Wanli Feisha sleep on the floor or sleep in the main hall. Lu Qinglian took out a small sachet from her waist, which looked bulging, and handed it to Li Chu's hand. The money bag is heavy. At this weight, it's not impossible to sleep in the front hall by yourself. Open the purse and take a look. Oops. Gold. And all. No matter what the world is like you can still make money as an artist. Calculating it this way, it would be better to take advantage of the collapse of the courtyard wall and start a major construction project. It's not impossible to build a separate bedroom for Miss Lu. Present. It was agreed upon to take Lu Qinglian in temporarily. But there was still one problem. If I don't go back to Taobu Tower, I should still say H, low to the boss. Miss Xiaolu said pitifully to Li Chu. Our boss has a very mysterious background. 
I heard that people from both the black and white circles are very powerful. The sisters in the building are very afraid of him. I don't want to go back like this and be seen by them. Can you please, Mr. Lee? Please go back and tell our boss. I can't perform anyway. So it should be okay. It seems that this boss must be very scary and has left a deep shadow on the little girl. Li Chu agreed immediately. Who can say no to a girl who just gave you a small bag of gold? After explaining yesterday's situation to Li Sini, she went to report it with a solemn expression. After finishing his business, Li Chu went straight to Taogu Tower. This once splendid old brothel in Hangzhou has not opened its doors for two days. First, there is a goblin in the building. It takes time to deal with the inspection and eliminate the impact. Second, without Lu Qinglian, there would be no business if the door was opened. When Li Chu arrived, he explained his purpose, and someone immediately led him upstairs. After several announcements, he arrived outside a luxurious room. Go meet the boss with a mysterious background and great power. Before he could enter the door, he heard bursts of coughing coming from inside. When he opened the door, he saw a smoke-filled room. He had good eyesight and could see the person sitting in the middle of the smoke at a glance. A young man who kept coughing while smoking a cigarette pipe. His face was pale and his face was weak. A puff of cigarette and a cough. It was like smoking with my life in mind. Li Chu couldn't help but blinked. Second cousin? Chapter 138 Little Miracle Doctor. It's okay. Ahem. Taoist Priestly. The sick young man waved the smoke in front of his eyes and was a little surprised when he saw Li Chu. Who did I think was coming? I didn't expect it to be you. The sick young man looked at him. We did find out earlier that a Taoist priest rushed into Winru and kidnapped Su Zifu, which may be inextricably related to Miss Yulio's incident. Is that Taoist priest actually Li Chu? I didn't expect to see Brother Chen either. Li Chu nodded slightly. It was no longer easy for him to remember this brother's name. After all, when he went to Qin's house before, he was really not that eye-catching. The boss Lu Qinglian talks about has a mysterious background, knows both black and white, and is afraid of good girls. Is it actually this sickly, coughing scholar from the Qin family? The two people looked at each other and expressed surprise in their hearts. Please take a seat. The sick young man put down the pipe and pot in his hand and asked Li Chu to sit down first. After Li Chu took his seat, he looked around. Needless to say, the lobby of Taogu Tower below is magnificent. This clean room seems quiet and simple. But in fact, the decoration hides mysteries. The utensils, screens, copper stoves, and the mirror-like floor in the house all exude an ancient atmosphere. To put it simply, it is expensive. After all, this has been the number one brothel in Hangzhou for many years. Even if it has lagged behind in the past two years, the money it once earned will still be worth a fortune. Thinking about the Qin family courtyard in Weeping Willow Alley, I really can't connect it. When the sick young man saw the look in his eyes, he naturally knew what he was wondering about and rolled his eyes. Little Taoist Priestly, are you confused? Ahem. I am obviously the boss of Teogulu. Why do I still live with my family in Weeping Willow Alley? He asked proactively. Li Chu said. It's a little bit. Alas. The sick young man sighed. The thing I regret most in my life is the founding of Taogu Tower. He said with emotion. I didn't expect that this would change my life. I originally just wanted to run a small brothel. But it turned into such a big one. I don't like money. I have no interest in money. So I continue to live in Weeping Willow Lane with my family, because there I can stay away from the troubles of money and live peacefully. Li Chu closed his eyes and watched his performance. Believe it or not. Of course, he had no major interaction with the Qin family. He was just curious. He had no interest in delving into other people's secrets. So he changed the topic directly. As I told you before, I am here because of Miss Julio's matter. Seeing that he had successfully passed the test, the sick young man couldn't help but breathed a sigh of relief and said, Yes, what's wrong with Shaolu? Now that she is free, she has not yet recovered her body. She wants to go to the Yun Temple to live in seclusion for a while. Please let me know, Li Chu said. Well, the sick young man hesitated. Ahem, as long as it's safe. There's no problem with her going anywhere. But I recently made an appointment with a miracle doctor, who originally made an appointment to treat me. It just so happened that this happened to her. I want to ask the miracle doctor to take a look at her. If she goes to the Yun Temple, she will come to disturb her in the future. Miracle Doctor? Yes. It is said that he is the disciple of Xian Huang. Li Chu was a little hesitant at first. 
because Chao Tian Kei ordered the matter of the creation pill not to be spread outside. It was not convenient to speak out at this time. But he knew in his heart that Miss Yilio's situation was complicated at this time. And ordinary doctors would not have any effect. The true path of elixirs is closer to magical powers. And is mostly studied by cultivators. However, there are indeed some miraculous doctors in this world who use their supernatural powers to assist medicine. And their methods are almost spiritual. The Xuan Hu Wang was one of them. If he were this kind of real miracle doctor, he might actually be able to find the antidote to the fortune pill. No problem. He nodded in agreement. Ahem. That's settled then. The sick young man also nodded. After talking about the matter in a few words, Li Chu was about to get up and leave. When the sick young man stopped him again. Ahem. Tao is priestly. He said. Will you come over to my house again when you have time? Li Chu looked at him. Is your house haunted again? Ahem. No. No. The sick young man waved his hands repeatedly. Even the family members in our small courtyard miss you. Come and sit down when you pass by. Oh. Li Chu showed a polite smile. Definitely next time. Jinan General Mansion. This generation of Jinan General Lin Jigong rushed back from the Jiangnan military town. In a hurry and sweating profusely, the servants hurried forward to remove the general's armor and change his clothes. As soon as the heavy armor hit the ground, a burst of dust flew up. A burst of steaming mist rose from the general's body, burning and burning, because he thought the BMW was too slow. He ran all the way back from Jiangnan military town. This is not surprising. The martial arts world is also divided into seven realms in general, imitating the seven realms of heaven and man. It is normal for warriors in the upper three realms to move as fast as flying. Someone came forward and asked the general to wait a moment, and they had already begun to boil water for the general to bathe. Lin Jigong glared and said, Is your mother dead? The servant was confused. No. Yes. No wonder you are not in a hurry. Lin Jigong said angrily. My mother is dying now. You want me to take a hot bath before going over? Get cold water. After that, several servants went to get some large buckets of cold water. The general stood in the courtyard with his bare spine and let a few people pour cold water on him to wash away the sweat and anger. Just the smell of sweat is nothing. But it would be terrible if the steaming warrior's anger hits the patient. Changing into casual clothes, he strode through several courtyards and arrived at the back garden. Since the founding of the Lin family, there have been only two things passed down to the family. One is Wu, and the other is Xiao. The general has the ancestral eyebrows and ringed eyes, and his natural temperament is like a blazing fire. He looks menacing when he smiles. When he doesn't smile, he looks like a devil who is not stingy. But he is also an out-and-out -out filial son. As soon as the footsteps entered the backyard, they suddenly became softer. There were some maids and women in the courtyard who were waiting quietly outside, not daring to make any sound. The general also asked in a low voice, like a child who had done something wrong. How is it? It's just that his voice was too thick. Even if he lowered his voice by 99%, he still shocked everyone in the yard. Immediately, a maid turned around and reported, the little miracle doctor from Xuanhu Villa is diagnosing the old woman's pulse. Madam is accompanying her. Lin Jigong rubbed his hands and asked nervously, How about the little miracle doctor? The maid replied without hesitation. Very handsome. The general was so angry that he almost lost his breath. Why are you asking you what he looks like? I'm asking you how his medical skills are. The little maid immediately flattened her mouth in a grieved tone. I don't know. I don't understand. And I don't dare to make random guesses. That's all. The general didn't like to get angry with women. He waved his hand, took a breath, slowed down his steps, and stepped lightly into the house. As soon as he entered the room, through the screen, he saw a young man sitting by the bed, diagnosing his mother's pulse. His wife stood aside, watching nervously. Lin Jigong approached almost tiptoeing, turning around the screen. I saw that this little miracle doctor was indeed handsome, with her hair tied in a bun, red lips and white teeth, and hanging temples. She looked somewhat like a boy or a girl. No wonder the little maids were confused. At this time, he was holding his hand to diagnose his pulse. Looking attentive, seeing Lin Jigong walking in, he turned his head and smiled. Seeing that he could still smile, Lin Jigong felt that there was a way to do it. So he nodded quickly. At this time of life and death, no matter how great an emperor or general you are, you must still be polite to the doctors. After a long while, he carefully explored it and then put down the old man's hand. After all this action, 
The old man was still unconscious and breathless. And he saw that he was about to do it. Lin Jigong felt distressed and asked hurriedly, Little Miracle Doctor, how is my mother doing? The Little Miracle Doctor smiled. It's okay. Hey! Mr. Lin Ji was overjoyed. But he didn't dare to make any noise. So he hugged his wife heavily. Immediately, I heard the Little Miracle Doctor continue to say with a smile, I am 85 years old this year. In the early years, the husband and wife were loving and harmonious in the later years. The children and grandchildren are filial and enjoy a family life. It can be said that a life is full of blessings. Today's journey to the West can be called a happy funeral. Hearing this, the general's big eyes blinked. The smile gradually disappeared from his face. Chapter 139 Hidden Dragon and Crouching Tiger into Yun Temple Master! Master! Please calm down! I'm not angry! I just want to hear him explain what it means to be okay! In the courtyard of Janan General's mansion, a group of maids and servants, led by Madame, tried their best to block their master. Master! That's the doctor from Xuanhu Villa! Why did you take out your mace in broad daylight? I won't hit him! I just want him to explain to me what it means to be okay! Lin Jigong brandished a thick, strong and long mace, his eyes wide with anger. Master! How can an ordinary person withstand your big stick? The lady tightly wrapped her arms around Lin Jigong's waist and shouted loudly. Yes! Right! That's right! Several maids nodded in agreement. In the midst of her busy schedule, Madame glanced around and wrote down the names of these maids one after another. At this time, we were approaching the door. Many passers-by heard the shouts inside, and their faces turned red. Lin Jigong felt that he had a lot of face. So he stopped here. He hung twice. Don't let that kind of idiot into your home from now on. If you call the doctor next door, you must save my mother. Yes, yes, yes. Seeing that the general was relieved, all the servants felt relieved. At this time, the handsome little miracle doctor had already sneaked out through the small door under the guidance of the maid. He looked back at the general's mansion, which was constantly noisy, and shook his head. Is your master so rude to everyone? The little maid stuck out her tongue and said, My master doesn't always take out his mace when needing everyone. The way she looked at the little miracle doctor seemed to be saying, Don't you think about it yourself? The little miracle doctor was reflecting. After leaving the general's mansion, he suddenly raised his hand and touched his cheek before he had taken more than three or five steps. Is it because I'm too handsome? That made him jealous? Well, it must be. Thinking this, a smile appeared on his face again, carrying a small medicine box. We walked through the streets and alleys, heading to Tao Valley Tower. When he arrived at Taogu Tower, he was informed and soon someone respectfully led him upstairs. As soon as he entered the room, he saw smoke filling the air. A sickly young man was sitting on a big chair, coughing and puffing on a cigarette, as if he had a cigarette now and smoked it now. Hey! The little miracle doctor exclaimed. It's quite addictive. Ahem! The sick young man laughed twice. Uh-huh. The little miracle doctor is joking. Can't you smell the quality of this smoke? Just kidding. The little miracle doctor calmly sat down across from him and said casually, I'll give you a new cigarette recipe later. If you smoke that, you won't cough. Really? The sick young man's eyes lit up. Of course. It's just a lot more expensive than yours. After all, you get what you pay for. The little miracle doctor smiled. Money is not an issue. The sick young man waved his hand grandly and said, If the little miracle doctor can completely cure my disease, he will be rewarded even more generously. Well, the little miracle doctor hesitated. I originally thought I was here to treat an ordinary terminally ill patient, but I didn't expect that he was not a human being. To be honest, the investigation is very strict now. Little miracle doctor. The sick young man lowered his voice. Although I am a demon, my origins are absolutely innocent. The little miracle doctor thought for a while and said, How about you go to Chow Eon K to get a sign? That way I can feel more at ease. This is a bit difficult, the sick young man said. To be honest, I was born in Ningyu Township. This trip out of the mountain was not ordered by our king. It is considered to be sneaking out. If Kaodiank knows about it, there is no way he will be sent back. Mingyu Township, the little miracle doctor nodded. No wonder. There are really not many places where mirages still exist in the world today. The sick young man corrected. It's a mirage dragon. Whatever. The little miracle doctor spread his hands and said. Come and take your pulse first. The sick young man was so happy that he immediately stretched out his thin wrist. 
My energy will enter your body. Don't resist. I will try to be gentle. The sick young man didn't answer. He just let out a cry. The little miraculous doctor put his fingers on it and fell into a trance for a moment. He stared at nothing for a while before recovering. Before he could open his mouth, the sick young man nervously stopped him. I've heard about your habit. As long as you say it's okay, the person will definitely be hopeless. The sick young man said. Don't ever say that I'm okay. Ha ha. The little miracle doctor smiled and said. This is the first time I see someone who hopes that something will happen to him. Yeah. The sick young man was extremely serious. Not only is there something wrong with you, but your illness is very difficult to treat. It's the only one I've ever seen in my life. The little miracle doctor said. The sick young man breathed a sigh of relief. As if he had heard great news. The sky is broken and the earth is broken. It's a miracle that you are still alive. Although you can barely rely on mustard smoke to practice. There is an upper limit after all. Your lifespan will not exceed 800. The little miracle doctor you said. But you are only about 720 years old this year. Right. If you work hard, you might be able to send me away. In fact, there is nothing to be reluctant to do. The sick young man smiled bitterly and said. Can a human's 80-year-old be the same as a demon's 80-year-old? You may need to make some powerful medicines for your disease. I have to go back and discuss some things with the master. It won't be that fast. The little miracle doctor said again. I understand. I can afford to wait. The sick young man said. However, there is something I need to trouble you about now. To Yun Temple. A new round of construction has begun. Workers are busy building walls in the front yard and tearing down walls in the backyard. After discussing with his master, Li Chu decided that since he wanted to build a house, he would build more rooms. Since you want to expand, expand a little bigger. Anyway, they are the only family in Chilipo. Just after the construction started, the incense in the Taoist temple stopped again, which made me feel a little sad. From left to right, Yu Qian, Xiao Kui, Fox Girl, Lu Qingyan, and Li Chu. A row of people sat on the pony, leaning on their knees with their left hands to support their chins, tilting their heads to watch the construction. All movements were uniform. In addition to Wanli Fascia, he is helping. After all, he has quick legs and strong strength, so he can save a job as a hired worker and not use it in vain. I was just bored here when a figure carrying a small medicine box slowly walked over. The little miracle doctor looked at the young one and then at the row of people sitting there. Suddenly, his eyes burst into light. He rushed to Li Chu with a look of disbelief on his face and exclaimed, What is this? What is this? Look what I found. Li Chu looked at him calmly. It's not that he has never encountered this kind of situation before. It's just that it's usually a woman. This is the first time for a man to see him like this. But, that's understandable. Times have changed. Both men and women are the same. Then I heard the little miracle doctor shout again. The immortal body without leakage. There really is the immortal body without leakage in the world. Li Chu was about to ask Junior Brother Sha to come over and drive him away, but suddenly heard him say this. He felt a little strange and asked, What did you say? You don't know? The little miraculous doctor frowned. You only exist in legends. You have a flawless immortal body that is immune to all diseases, evils, and chi. Li Chu shook his head. I haven't heard of it. He didn't know who the person in front of him was but he didn't look like a normal person. It doesn't matter. I can explain it to you in detail later. The little miracle doctor said, By the way, can I cut you open and take a look? Don't worry. I will try to cut it carefully and then close it carefully. There won't be any problems. Li Chu blinked. Live vivisection? He now feels that this person is probably a member of the demon cult. His hand touched the pure yang sword of justice behind him. Thanks to Yu Qian, who quickly stopped his apprentice. He looked at the sign on Xiaoshan's medicine box and asked, Are you from Xuanhu Villa? Oh, yes. The little miracle doctor then remembered to introduce himself. Master Xian Huang. People down here call me the little miracle doctor. You can also call me that. He calmly said something shameless and said, It was the boss of Teogulu who asked me to see a doctor. Miss Xiaolu. Let me see. He glanced around and saw Lu Qinglian among the three women and was a little surprised. The human connection demon body is you. Right? It's quite strange. As he said that, he moved his eyes again and looked at the fox girl, feeling a little surprised. It's quite rare for the lightning tribulation to be incomplete. 
He looked at the little koi again and was surprised again. Colorful koi carps turn into dragons the day after tomorrow. Looking at Yuqian again, he was even more surprised. Oh, your kidneys are so weak. Old Talus Master, you should exercise restraint at your age. Yuqian's face turned red and he flicked his sleeves. I am also forced by life. The little miracle doctor looked at everyone. I didn't expect that in such a small Talus temple. There are hidden dragons and crouching tigers. It's really disrespectful. Chapter 140 Chains of a Demonic Bear Backyard Stone Table The little miracle doctor took a few more glances at the old locust tree behind him before slowly sitting down. Opposite him was the somewhat anxious Miss Lu. Behind Miss Xiaolu stood Li Chu. Li Chu stared closely at the little miracle doctor, ready to take action at any time if he saw anything unusual. Because this person always smiles to himself. Behind that almost flattering smile, it was clear that he needed to find an opportunity to dissect him. While the little miracle doctor was diagnosing Lu Qingyan's pulse, Li Chu approached Yu Qian and asked, Master, what is the immortal body without leakage? He only knew that the immortal physique refers to some kind of innate miraculous physique, which is difficult to find among millions of people. Anyone born with an immortal body will definitely be trained as the core disciple whenever they enter the immortal gate. Yu Qian picked up his beard and replied, The so-called leak-free body, the leak-free immortal body, or the harmonious body taught by Taoism. Each school has different opinions, and it does not mean the same thing as those who practice the immortal body. Instead, it is used let's describe a possible perfect form of the human body. No disease, no evil, no leakage, harmony and ease. But this is just a legend after all. No one has ever seen a real immortal body without leakage. So naturally there is no template. He said you are. It's just that he thinks you are. Maybe it's just that your physique is beyond what he knows. So you don't have to worry too much. You are gifted. And it's not surprising that you are different from others. This boy may have superb talents and high cultivation in Yuchi Huangdao. But his qualifications and knowledge are still shallow. A medical student. He's not bald yet. Ha ha. At the end, Yuchian sneered. Judging from his expression and tone. It was clear that he was still dissatisfied with the little miracle doctor who pointed out in public that he had severe kidney deficiency. While the master and apprentice were talking for a moment, the little miracle doctor also completed the pulse diagnosis with a playful look on his face. Lu Qinglian was very nervous. The fox girl held her shoulders and asked for her. How is it? The little miracle doctor smiled. This good fortune pill is a bit interesting. It uses demon power and medicinal power to completely change the human body, which is incredible. If there is a chance, I would really like to meet the person who refined this pill. He looked up at Lu Qinglian again. It's quite difficult to recover your body. I don't know the way yet. Lu Qinglian trembled. Although she had already suspected it, she still couldn't help but feel sad. When her long eyelashes fluttered, tears welled up in her eyes, which made me feel pity for him. Seeing this, the little miracle doctor hurriedly shouted, Hey, don't cry in a hurry. Although we don't know now, we can try. Huh? Miss Xiao Lu held back her tears for a second. Is there still a chance? Hey. The little miracle doctor leaned back and said with a smile. What is a miracle doctor? If the little miracle doctor has any solution, please let me know directly. Lu Qinglian said. In order to restore my body, I am willing to do it no matter how difficult it is. It's not difficult for you. But it's difficult for me. The little miracle doctor said. If I want to find the antidote to the good fortune pill, I have to refine the good fortune pill first. Yu Qian nodded slightly and said, This is indeed extremely difficult. Compared to him creating an elixir from scratch, my difficulty has been slightly reduced. The little miracle doctor said, At least I can deduce two of the main elixirs now. He said slowly, Demon pill and immortal returning grass. Li Chu glanced at the master and saw that the master had asked Miss Xiaolu about these two things early in the morning. Thinking about it, if you want to transform a mortal into a demon, you will inevitably come into contact with these two things. The little miracle doctor took out a book from the medicine box and read it. At the same time, he said, The demon pill is easy to obtain, but the returning immortal grass is rare. It is recorded in the Jiozhou Treasures and Medicines Collection, written by my master that the only place in Hangzhou Prefecture that produces returning immortal grass is Transparent Valley. There is a swamp in the Tongming Valley called Qinza, and the immortal returning grass grows around Qinza. Many of these natural and earthly treasures have treasure-protecting beasts. 
The protecting beast of this piece of immortal returning grass is a kind of magic bear, with an unnatural physique, violent temper, and extreme danger. So my master has specially marked it here. Sheen said what demon bear. Tomming Valley got its name, because the surrounding mountains are extremely gentle. Whenever the moonlight shines, the valley is full of transparency, as if it is rippling in the water, and it is very open between pitches. And that piece of Chinza is a clear lake. From a high altitude, it looks like a regular piece of beautiful jade embedded in the valley. This night, along the Chinza River, there are several clusters of swaying fairy grass. The leaves are golden in color. The leaves are long and slender, and the veins of the leaves are buried with a dark red line. Like blood vessels, it's extremely magical at first glance. There are several huge black bears patrolling this place, each one standing more than two feet tall. The black mane is mixed with light golden hairs in varying shades. They sometimes play by the water, and sometimes run in the open space. But no matter what, he will not leave this fairy grass too far. There may be a high-pitched howl coming from the room on the mountain. Ouch! At this time, the bear by the water will also howl in response. Ouch! As if it was a long-distance communication. The two howls asked and answered, then turned around, and each did their own thing. Apparently the bears here are extremely intelligent. In the middle of the night, suddenly, ripples appeared on the water for no reason. All the black bears stood upright, with alert looks in their eyes, staring straight at the water. After a while, a woman in white floated on the water. Her black hair hung down, almost covering her entire face. Dressed in white, it looks almost ethereal in the moonlight. The figure falls down, as if in a dream. He remained motionless all the way and floated quickly along the water. As she quickly approached, several ferocious-looking black bears leaned together, their dark eyes wide open and trembling. In a blink of an eye, the woman arrived at the water's edge, as if she didn't see the treasure-protecting black bear so close at hand. As soon as she raised her hand, a mortal return grass flew up into the air and flew towards her. Several black bears whimpered unwillingly, but they did not dare to make a loud noise. The voice was particularly aggrieved. The woman seemed to have heard them, glanced at them, and said softly, I won't take what you got for free. Upon hearing this, a black bear suddenly let out a sad and indignant, ouch. It probably means that. You are clearly getting it for free. The woman glared at it, her black hair flying. Ouch. The black bear suddenly covered its eyes with a pair of bear paws and fell to the ground, not daring to see what happened. Nothing happened. The woman glared at it and immediately gave in when she saw it. Then she turned around and left without making any move. The black bear lay there with its but stuck out for a long time. It felt like it was fine. And then it removed its paw. He touched his big head, his chest, and his butt. Everything is fine. It looked around with big eyes and let out a surprised oh. At this time, another sound came from the mountains. Ouch. Several black bears looked at each other. And their expression suddenly collapsed. The woman took the immortal return grass and waded back through the water again. After a while, I arrived at the center of the lake, where there was a pavilion in the middle of the lake. A man in black robes was waiting in the pavilion. Give. As soon as the woman let go, the immortal grass flew leisurely towards the man in black robe. The man in black robe took it, took out a pure bottle, and put the immortal grass into it. After a pause, he said, Why not be more direct? You give me all the immortal return grass at once and I will kill everyone there. The woman seemed to smile and said faintly, The bear is so cute. How can I bear to pull out all the fairy grass at once? As for those people, I don't want them to die all at once. I just want to watch them struggle constantly and die in fear and despair one by one. Chapter 141 Studying Medicine Cannot Save Chijia Village Tongming Valley is not very far from Yuhang Town. Li Chu and the Little Miracle Doctor set out after lunch. At dusk, they arrived at a village in front of the valley. Going with the little miracle doctor was something that made Li Chu quite nervous. You have to keep an eye on him at all times. For fear that he will take out a knife and hit you. Although ordinary swords cannot break his own defense. But what if? He clearly remembered reading in some news that all medical students were masters of knife use. They originally planned to go into the mountains overnight to collect herbs and then return quickly. But this village attracted their attention. Because here, every house is plain. Looking around, in a village of 80 or 90 households, there are actually 40 or 50 households wrapped in white cloth and wailing. This is obviously not normal. Li Chu looked at it with his heart and soul, but did not see the lingering Yin Chi, 
indicating that there was currently no evil spirit here. He was a little curious. And after discussing with the little miracle doctor, he walked into the village. The village is well organized. And every household raises a lot of livestock and poultry. It seems that life is pretty good. There was no famine in war. And it was not a year of famine. So it would be strange for so many people to die at the same time. Is there a plague? The little miracle doctor muttered. Thinking like this, I saw a house in front of me, with many people gathered in the dirt yard. He then stepped forward and called through the gate fence. Fellow, fellow, I am a doctor who is passing by. Can I come in and talk to you? A child here came to open the door, looked at Li Chu's clothes and the little miracle doctor's medicine box, and ran back. Grandpa, Grandpa, a Taoist priest and a doctor are here. Yeah, then maybe your mother can be saved. A neatly dressed old man walked out of the house followed by a large number of people who should be his children and family members. The old man looked at Li Chu, who looked calm, and then at the little miracle doctor who was eager to try. Then he stepped forward tremblingly and held Li Chu's hand. Little Taoist priest, do you have any magic power? Can you help us? Li Chu said. My father-in-law, I am indeed a practitioner. You can tell me what happened to you. That's great. If my daughter-in-law is ready, come and do it. With that said, he led the two of them through the door. He saw a middle-aged woman lying on the bed, looking painful and unconscious. Li Chu observed with his mind's eye and felt that her breath was extremely weak, like a candle in the wind that would be extinguished at any time. But he did not see anything unusual. At this time, the little miracle doctor coughed twice and said, My husband? She may be sick. Instead of asking a Taoist priest to do it, why not ask a doctor to see the doctor first? Doctor? The old man raised his eyebrows. It's useless. If medical treatment was helpful, more than 50 people would not have died in our village. She must be acting like this. Li Chu immediately asked. Did all the deceased families in your village die in this way? Yes. The old man sighed and replied. They all suddenly fell into coma and then died in less than a day. In these two months, one day at a time, one day at a time, just like the king of Yama clicks his finger, I burn incense and worship Buddha at home every day but I don't want it to be our turn again. After listening to him talk carefully for a long time, the two of them knew the details. It turns out that this place is called Chijia Village. It is said that our ancestors moved here from Tiananmen and are a branch of the Chijia family among the seven Tianan families. The villagers have always been proud of this. Life here has always been good. But unexpectedly, in the past 50 or 60 days, people suddenly started to die strangely in the village. At first, everyone didn't notice it. But after two full months, it was one every day. No more. No less. This was too strange. After listening, Li Chu looked thoughtful. Indeed, a few days may be a coincidence. But if one person dies every day for nearly two months, there must be something fishy. The little miracle doctor rubbed his hands and said, Let me see if it's a disease first. The old man gave him a disgusted look and said, Okay, just be gentle. I know. The little miracle doctor waved his hand, slid to the bedside, and placed two fingers on the patient's pulse. As soon as he felt his pulse, his expression instantly fell into trance. After a long while, he took back his finger and came to his senses. How is it? The old man asked, still a little nervous. The little miracle doctor smiled. It's okay. Ah? Oh? There was an uproar around him. Some were surprised. Some were surprised. And some people were about to smile. Then the little miracle doctor said again, I just took the time to do some math. And it turns out that seven days from now will be an auspicious day. And it's a good time to be buried. Although my daughter-in-law is hopeless. The day she chose for herself is still good. Um. When the old man heard this, blood started to rush to his brain. He wanted to pick up the broom by the door, but was reluctantly stopped by his relatives. There was noisy and noisy over there. But the little miracle doctor ignored it and lowered his voice to Li Chu. I just took a look. Her three souls are dim. Her seven souls are misty. And her energy and blood have declined. As if she died of natural causes. She is just a little younger. But if she is overworked, it's not impossible. I didn't see many abnormalities. Weak soul. Exhausted chi and blood. Li Chu thought for a while. Let me try it. The little miracle doctor was startled. You know how to heal? Li Chu shook his head and said, I just learned a small magical power like recovery. The little miracle doctor muttered. 80% of it is useless. 
Your magical powers cannot replace medicine. Before he finished speaking, Li Chu had already picked up the little Bodhi mantra. Call out. With a flash of light, the whole room was suddenly filled with the light of the sun. Everyone who was illuminated by this light felt warm and comfortable all over. This is Bodhisattva! An old man shouted and immediately fell to his knees. Immediately, people huffed and fell to their knees. Especially the middle-aged woman whose face was illuminated at close range by the little sun gradually became rosy and her breath became stronger. When Li Chu put away the little Bodhi mantra, she actually opened her eyes just like that. Moreover, he flopped over and fell to the ground, shouting, Why am I here? Am I not in the field? A crowd of people came up. The husband called his wife, and the child called her mother. But he went to explain to her without mentioning it. More people, led by the old man, knelt around Li Chu and said, Little Taoist master, you are really a living bodhisattva. These words made Li Chu very embarrassed. And he quickly helped them up and said, They are just some small magical powers. Not worth mentioning. The little miracle doctor also opened his mouth wide. You call this a little magical power of recovery? You're almost back from the dead. Right, Li Chu said calmly. It can only temporarily help people improve their energy and blood. If we don't find the root cause, we still can't solve the problems in the village. How could the little miracle doctor listen? He murmured and shook his head. Studying medicine can't save Chijia village. After a lot of trouble, it was already dark. The grateful family wanted to kill chickens and sheep and entertain Li and Chu hospitably. But they were in a hurry to go into the mountains to retrieve the fairy grass. So they only agreed to stay here when they came back next time. And then walked out. As soon as they went out, they saw fires burning everywhere on the roadside in the village. Almost every household burns paper money in a brazier. It's okay for families who have funerals to burn paper. But for families who don't have funerals, they still burn paper. This is strange. On the side of an ancient road in a mountain village, red fire reflects yellow money, and the scene is indescribably weird. Li Chu couldn't help but ask, my father-in-law, what are they doing? This, the old man's expression became a little strange, and he sighed. Oh, they are paying homage to Luo's daughter. Chapter 142, isn't it just about grass? Luo's daughter? The little miracle doctor acts like a curious baby and wants to ask about everything. The old man said in a vicissitudes of tone. It's a legend. A hundred years ago, there was a Luo woman. Her husband went out to fight. So she waited by the lake every day for her husband to come back. Hoping and hoping. Somehow one day, she suddenly threw herself into the water. No one in the village could save her. And three days passed before the news came. It turned out that Luo's daughter's husband had died in the army. When he died, Luo's daughter threw herself into the lake. After that, there was a legend that the ghost of Luo's daughter was always lingering in the village. Still waiting for her husband to come back. So whenever something strange happens in the village, Everyone will think that the ghost of Luo's daughter is still there. And every household will pay homage to her. The little miracle doctor touched his chin and wondered. This is strange. She died for her husband in love. And she was not killed by anyone. Why does she still linger? What's more? The villagers have done nothing wrong. So why do they pay homage to her all year round? The old man's expression changed. And it took him a long time to hold back a sentence. You too. Leave early and come back early. Being sent on the road by the old man whose attitude changed very quickly. Li Chu glanced at the little miracle doctor next to him and shook his head. This person's emotional intelligence. Too low. No future. Pavilion in the middle of the lake. The black shadow flashed. And the man in black robe reappeared in the pavilion. Immediately, I saw ripples on the lake surface. There was a circle of ripples in the calm wind. And a figure slowly rose from the ripples. Dressed in white with black hair hanging down to cover his face. He looked cold and eerie. Lord Water God, where is today's immortal return grass? The man in black robe asked. The woman said faintly, We have agreed that each person's life will be worth one plant of immortal returning grass. No one died in Chijia village today. So naturally I won't give you the grass. The man in black robe said, Impossible. My young Lu insect has obviously bitten someone. And that person will definitely die. The woman said, but the fact is that no one died. Okay. The man in black robe muttered. I will kill two more people tomorrow. You give me grass first. The woman seemed to be smiling faintly. We clearly agreed to kill people first, and then provide them with straw. It's already past midnight, and you haven't killed anyone yet. So I have to wait until tomorrow to give you straw. 
The man in black robe said, Master Water God, please don't joke. If you don't give me grass for a day, do you know how serious the consequences will be? I don't know what evil things you are doing. But we agreed. And that's it. The woman did not waver at all. Lord Water God, I call you that again. There was an implicit threat in the black robe man's tone. I know you have a weird temperament. But this is not something you can make a fuss about. You are affecting the world's plans. And the consequences will be it's definitely not something you, a little water ghost, can bear. Ha. Huh. The woman smiled coldly. If you give me grass, you will call me Lord Water God. If you don't give me grass, you will call me Water Ghost. You men are really. As soon as they disagreed, the man in black robe suddenly stood up. What? Do you still want to use force? At first glance, the woman's black hair was flying and her aura suddenly increased. Only then did the man in black robe see that her pupils were pure white. But he was not afraid and said solemnly, I'll just go and get it myself. The woman said solemnly, How dare you? Those demon bears can't do anything to me. But they can't do anything to you. Snort. The man in black robe snorted coldly and raised his hand to draw a white talisman. The woman said something was wrong, rolled up her hands, and a huge wave suddenly rose around her, trying to stop him. But it was still slow after all. Just listen to the man in black robe shout loudly. My lord is coming. Distraction is coming. With a bang. The entire white talisman began to burn from the tail. The moment the fire ignited, a shadow of a white bearded old man began to appear in midair. Just a shadow suppressed all the surrounding water waves. And the momentum was supreme. It was faint at first. But as the talisman burned more and more, the figure became more solid. Seeing that the situation was not good, the woman turned her head and dived into the water, instantly melting into it. For the water ghosts who have become river gods, this lake is like their own bodies, like arms and fingers. When the figure of the white-bearded old man was completely solid, he was seen wearing a wide plain white linen robe with a thick white beard, not much hair, and a bright and full forehead. The pupils of his eyes were bright, shining with a gentle light that seemed to be compassionate. The man in black robe had already knelt on the ground shouting, Master! The white-bearded old man looked around and smiled slightly. Twidanu, you encountered some difficulties, and you actually used my distraction talisman. The man in black robe knelt down and said, Master, I am responsible for collecting the materials for the good fortune pill. The immortal returning grass is the only one that grows here in Hangzhou. I have reached an agreement with the water god here to exchange one immortal returning grass every day. But today she will not give me the grass and the refining of the good fortune pill in the future will be cut off. I don't dare to bear such a heavy responsibility. So I respectfully ask the master to come to me. That's it. The old man in white robes nodded slightly. He seemed to be walking forward. But if you look closely, you could see that his feet were not touching the ground at all, but were walking in the air. In a few steps, he stepped onto the water. Call out. There was a ripple in the water. Immediately, the entire water pool centered at his feet, turned black at a speed visible to the naked eye. It's like a lot of thick ink was poured into it. Bang. In an instant, the entire Qin Zhe turned into a pool of black water. The woman was forced out of the water again. He looked at the white-bearded old man with hatred. Who are you? My name is Mr. Baishur. The old man still smiled. My slave works hard every day to fulfill your agreement. Why don't you give him grass? This is too much. He didn't know what method he used to influence the entire swamp. The water in the swamp was closely related to the water god. The woman's body trembled. Obviously because she couldn't control the water below. She had no choice but to grit her teeth and say, I'll give it to you. The white-bearded old man smiled and shook his head. It's too late. The woman said angrily. What else do you want? The white-bearded old man smiled and said, I want them all. As he spoke, he said to the slave lying at his feet, Twidanu, Go and collect all the immortal grass on the shore. If you leave it here for those beasts, you will end up wasting all natural resources. Yes. The man in black robe received the order and immediately turned into a black shadow and flew towards the shore. Several demon bears guarding the immortal return grass on the shore were originally lying on the ground, watching with trepidation the gods fighting in the middle of the water. At this time, I suddenly saw someone coming this way. I was shocked and angry, but I didn't dare to stop him. I could only say, Ouch! From the other side of the valley, there was an angry cry. Ouch! The roar was still echoing in the valley. 
but two loud bangs were heard. A huge black shadow crossed over. It was a huge black bear that was almost half a mountain high, with a thick black gold color in its fur, as if it was about to return to its ancestors. These demon bears living here are not monsters, but weirds. They are the remnants of the ancient golden demon bears. The ultimate goal of their practice is not to transform or attain enlightenment, but to return to their ancestors. That is, through practice, he constantly awakens the power of his ancestors in his bloodline and eventually becomes a true prehistoric beast. It's just that in today's world, it's very difficult to achieve. So they need the help of precious medicine. For a demon bear king of this level, the immortal return grass has no effect. What it needs is an immortal flower that will take hundreds of years to bloom among the many immortal grasses. And it will take hundreds of years to bear an immortal fruit among the immortal flowers. Therefore, the demonic bear clan will wait here, quietly waiting for the immortal return grass to flourish and grow. Jean Zay Water God has the ability to nourish the immortal grass and promote their growth. So she takes away one from time to time. These demon bears dare not speak out in anger. But now there are others who want to get their hands on the fairy grass. And they want to pull them all away. This is something the demon bear clan will never tolerate. With the bear king taking the lead, one ferocious black bear after another crossed the mountains. And the bear army was huge. Jean Zay Water Demon Bear. What he said is true. Roar? The bear king roared again while walking. And then the whole clan roared. The bears will never be slaves. The white-bearded old man turned to look at them. And his body moved as if floating in the wind. Extremely ethereal and extremely fast. In the blink of an eye, they were on top of the bears. With a big moon on his back. He hunts in white robes. His figure was right on the forehead of the bear king. The towering bear king looked at him like a human looking at a fly on his head. The bear king was about to stretch out his claws and slapped the little thing to death when he heard two words softly uttered from the old man's mouth. Suppression. Boom. Follow your words. Divine power descends from heaven. It was as if there was an invisible mountain falling from the sky. Pressing on Juan Ho's back, the bear king suddenly fell down. His cheek on the ground. His teeth bared. His face in pain. At the same time, the hundreds of tall demon bears behind them all lay prone on the ground. It's like kneeling down to worship. With such a brain, even becoming a demon slave is too stupid. Let's kill them all later to get the pills. Remember to cut off the bear's paws and bring them back. The old man smiled and said casually. His eyes still had that gentle light. As if he was filled with compassion, the man in black robe just flew to the shore. He repeatedly claimed that it was true. With supreme reverence in his tone, the water god looked at all this and felt a deep despair enveloped him. She didn't think the old man had forgotten her. She couldn't leave this lake. The old man could turn around at any time and kill her again. At this moment, two tall figures crossed the transparent valley side by side. Li Chu and the little miracle doctor were in a daze looking at everything in front of them. This scene is really shocking. An old man was suspended in the air, like an immortal, while a mountain-like giant bear in front of him knelt down and bowed to the ground. By the quiet water side, the moon fills the valley. The little miracle doctor said in surprise. Mr. Baishur? Do you know him? Li Chu said. Mr. Baishur is one of the famous doctors in the world. He is as famous as my master Xuan Huang and the Chan Chun old man from the north. The little miracle doctor looked cautiously and said in a deep voice. It's just that his reputation as a doctor is not obvious. Because apart from his medical skills, he has there is another person who is one of the five Dharma kings of the demon sect. The mighty one of heaven and earth. This was the first time he looked so nervous. Li Chu said. It's just a clone. Before crossing the valley, he had scanned this place with his mind, knowing that the one in midair is just a projection of divine consciousness. It's just a clone. But it's powerful enough. Since he is a member of the demon sect, he is undoubtedly his enemy. Facing such an enemy, it is natural to strike first. Ha! Huh? The little miracle doctor smiled bitterly. You may not understand the real power. Even a distraction has unpredictable power. It is an existence on another level. Don't move yet. My master and he's old. Maybe what are you going to do? Before he could finish speaking, Li Chu saw that the other party seemed to be making a move. So he took a step forward and slashed out with his sword. Opposite, when the white-bearded old man saw the two new young men appearing in front of him. He smiled softly and was about to suppress them when he suddenly felt something was wrong. One of the handsome young men suddenly raised his hand and brandished a sword. This sword? Lightning flashes. Earth shattering. Earth shattering. 
earth-shaking. Rumble. A pillar of sword energy and fire swept across the sky, leaving him no room to perform. The white-bearded old man who had climbed up to the water just now and uttered his words was suddenly swallowed up by this pillar of sword energy. The woman on the water was stunned. The men in black robes on the shore were stunned. The bears at the foot of the mountain were stunned. The little miracle doctor next to him was stunned. The brilliant power of heaven came too quickly and unexpectedly. And they were not prepared at all. This thick and long sword energy pillar, after swallowing the figure in midair, continued straight towards the moon without stopping. For a moment, the woman had an illusion. It's as if this thing is going to go directly into the moon. I don't know if the moon can withstand it. As soon as it appeared, it eliminated the most powerful existence in the field. Then, Li Chu raised his hands to the stunned crowd and said, Everyone, I'm just here to collect medicine. Ah, no one responded to him, and everyone had not yet been freed from their sluggish state. Li Chu pushed the little miracle doctor and asked him to go collect the medicine. The little miracle doctor ABA gasped twice before he came to his senses. You? Li Chu said. Go and collect the medicine first. If you have anything to do, we can talk about it when we get back. Ah, good. The little miracle doctor took a few steps to the shore and saw the man in black robe standing blankly beside him. He felt that there was something wrong with his temperament and asked, Who are you? The man in black robe looked at him, at the empty sky, then at Li Chu, and touched his head. Oh, that one I passed by. Huh? The little miracle doctor frowned, passing by this wilderness in the middle of the night. Nothing to take a walk? At this time, the woman shouted loudly from the water. He is the servant of the old man with the white beard. And he summoned that distraction. The man in black robe was furious. It's okay if you don't give me grass. Why bother to harm my life? When Li Chu heard this, his eyebrows rose. Well, this is not only a member of the demon sect, but also a lewd thief. And that's a water ghost. Too bad. His mind was spinning. And the pure yang sword in his palm was already raised. Seeing that something was wrong, the man in black robe immediately flicked his sleeves and shot out a few gold stars. He quickly rushed towards the little miracle doctor. He wants to quickly take the weaker control as a hostage. Unexpectedly, when Venus reached the little miracle doctor at that time, it suddenly stopped and stopped moving forward. Instead, it started flying around him. It's the rare Yanglu insect in southern Xinjiang, said the little miracle doctor. He was the one who harmed the people in Chijia village. Li Chu's sword has fallen. The man in black robe finally yelled. That water ghost is the one who asked me to kill him. As soon as the words were spoken, a red dragon swept them away and annihilated them. Call. A ball of white light entered his body, and Li Chu let out a breath. Level 76. Unexpectedly, one day, I would reach the point where I would level up by killing people. It's just that this man was surrounded by resentment and had killed countless people. At least dozens of people in Chijia village were killed by him. A worthy death. Li Chu said to the little miraculous doctor, You collect the fairy grass first. If the devil bear here stops you. He set his sights on the bear king, who was as strong as a mountain. The bear king had just been freed from the suppression and was slumped on the ground. Seeing Li Chu's eyes sweeping over him, it shook its head hurriedly and stretched its legs at the same time. Don't you just want grass? Whatever. The bears will never be slaves. Unless the attack is too vicious. The little miracle doctor then walked into the bush of immortal returning grass with confidence. And Li Chu also turned his attention to the last person in the field. The water ghost who had become a river god. Chapter 143 The Taoist Priest is Fierce When Li Chu's eyes turned around, the water god felt a dangerous aura envelope him. The god's intuition told her that there were not many opportunities left for her to speak. So she quickly said, I can explain. Li Chu nodded slightly and gave a continuing look. Please start your performance. I heard the water god say quietly. Actually, I was also from Chijia village when I was alive. At that time, I had a husband who was considered loving. Although my family was poor, I didn't feel bitter at all. But my husband always feels that he owes me. He has some martial arts talent. Although he is not enough to join those sects, he can join the army. After I saw what he was thinking, I tried to persuade him several times, but he still went after all. He said that the salary of being a soldier is very high and the world is peaceful. If he goes there for a few years, he can improve his family's life. Unexpectedly, he had only been in the army for three months, and a witchcraft disaster broke out in southern Xinjiang. All the troops from the three continents went to quell the chaos. The scourge of witchcraft. It was a great chaos 
that occurred among the barbarians in southern Xinjiang a hundred years ago. It caused rivers of blood and cost many lives before it was quelled. Li Chu looked at the water god and remembered the legend of Luo's daughter. I was waiting for his return at home. Every day. Every night. For several years. But in the end, what I was waiting for was a jar. I will be a widow from now on. I wanted to live a good life. But the men in the village began to show shameless faces. People often came to my door in the name of caring and wanted to do evil things to me. And even my husband's relatives. Of course, I refused to obey. But gradually I discovered that there were some rumors about me in the village. In their mouths, I was already a womanly woman. Some women even insulted me in the street, saying that I seduced them. Husband. Until one day, the village chief's son tried to rape me after drinking. I resisted desperately and ran out of the house to seek help. Unexpectedly, they actually confused right and wrong and accused me of being a prostitute in the village and having an affair with many people. The village chief took the lead and decided to put me to death. In such a big village, no one intercedes on my behalf. I was sunk into Chinza like this. Thanks to my spirit, I became a water ghost in the lake. I have devoted myself to practicing here for more than a hundred years and have never harmed anyone. I was finally recognized and became the water god here. It wasn't until a few days ago that the man came to pick the fairy grass. I got the opportunity to make a deal with him. The condition is that he kills the people in Chijia village for me and I pick the fairy grass for him. I know that his background is not right. And he will probably do something harmful to nature by picking this grass. But only such a person will be willing to avenge me. Li Chu listened to her and was silent for a while. He said, But more than a hundred years have passed. And the people of Chijia village today are no longer the same people who harmed you back then. Those who died because of you are all innocent ordinary people. I know. But after all, they are the descendants of those people. The water god was very calm. I have a century-old grudge that is difficult to understand in my heart. Little Taoist master, you have great magical powers. Even if you kill me with a sword, I will not complain. Li Chu hesitated for a moment and slowly shook his head. I will report the matter between you and Kajayakin to Kaodiang, and you will be judged according to the law. Actually, he could probably guess how Chao Tian Kei would deal with the water god. And the most likely possibility would be to kill him. A small number of people may use her divine power to do some universal deeds to atone for their sins. The little miracle doctor over there was picking the immortal grass mercilessly under the pitiful gaze of the bear king. In fact, the amount he picked was not large. Considering that although the immortal grass was important in alchemy, the dosage required was not large and storage was difficult. He only planned to pick a dozen plants. It's just that the water god had picked a lot before. So the patch of grass looked a little empty. The bear king was inevitably a little distressed. It sat slumped on the ground, like a bald patient before middle age. And what the little miracle doctor pulled out was either grass or its hair. It was bleeding and chanting in its heart. Bald? Bald? Stop it! Please! Li Chu walked over and asked. Is it okay? The little miracle doctor said. It's almost done. He placed almost a dozen immortal grasses in a brocade box. Filling it very full. The bear king was relieved. Sit a little straighter. Then I heard the little miracle doctor say again. If it's not enough, come again. King Bear's eyes widened again. Are you coming again? His body suddenly collapsed. Naturally, the two of them did not notice its silent performance. The little doctor said, I am also worried that people from the demon sect will still come here to collect medicine. Their demand for the immortal return grass is obviously huge. Li Chu said, Just call the people from Chao Tian K to seal this place. The Bear King felt his eyes darken as he listened to their discussion. He knows the name of Chao Yan Quebec. When they come, all the herbs will be confiscated. It's over. It's all over. It couldn't help but collapse to the ground. The little miracle doctor nodded and said, Yes, and I heard that there are experts in Chao Tian Palace who are proficient in the art of biochemistry. Maybe they can produce the immortal returning flower or even the immortal returning fruit from this piece of immortal returning grass hundreds of years in advance. Um, the bear king's big eyes suddenly lit up, and they were as wide as copper bells. It bounced up from the ground and returned to the immortal fruit? Are you talking about the immortal return fruit? Did I leave the whole clan to stay here for hundreds of years just to get a piece of the immortal return fruit? Human beings still have merit. If you can give me a piece of the immortality returning fruit, it doesn't matter if you pull out all these immortal returning grasses. Return to immortality fruit? Li Chu asked. It takes hundreds of years for the immortal returning grass to bloom. And it takes hundreds of years 
for the returning immortal flower to bear fruit. A returning immortality fruit is extremely precious, said the little miracle doctor. It can greatly increase the chance of a spirit returning to its ancestors. And there are many relics of the prehistoric times raised in Chaotian, Quebec. I believe I will not miss this opportunity. Ah, the bear king collapses again. After all, I am waiting for a loneliness. Li Chu looked at the demon bear clan over there and said, Then they are so pitiful. They have been guarding for so long. But in the end, they were in vain. The little miracle doctor said, Chaotian K should provide some compensation. If it is willing to join Chaotian K, it should be possible to give it one. Clam? The bear king's eyes widened again, and he jumped up suddenly, like a big bear doing sit-ups. But there is no way. The ups and downs of Xiongsheng are really exciting. Jiang and Prince's Mansion. Back Garden. What you the? Master has something to tell you. A man in black robes stood in the courtyard and said coldly, Senior by Shergong, what can you teach me? The young man in Taoist robes stood up with a flattered expression. The man in black robes said, The first sentence is, Swadanu is dead. The second sentence is, Taoist priests are fierce. The young man in Taoist robes known as Wajuga rolled his eyes and digested these two confusing sentences. He asked, Then how long can our good fortune pill be refined? The man in black robes said, If we don't return the fairy grass, the furnace will be shut down tomorrow. Wajuga frowned and shook his head. It's far from enough. It's still at least half of what the young prince planned. The man in black robe said, I'm afraid we have to get the immortal returning grass from elsewhere. Zwidanu has the master's distraction talisman on him. He will be killed. Which means that he encountered a very powerful enemy in the Tongming Valley. I know. Wajuga pinched Renjong. Needless to say, he also knew that those who could bear the words of fierce from by Shergong would not be ordinary Taoist priests. That was one of the five Dharma kings, a powerful being on the same level as his grandma. The man in black robe turned and left. After he left, Wajuga complained, Taoist, another Taoist. The seven criminals also went to the Taoist temple to kill people and were killed by the Taoist priests. Now Zwidanu was also killed by the Taoist priests. Half of these people I brought out are dead. Do you think I was in conflict with the Taoist priests? He was not talking to himself. Next to him stood a silent giant. The giant thought for a moment and said, You are also a Taoist priest. Doesn't it say in the Taoist scriptures that fellow travelers are enemies? Chapter 144 Are you just entertaining Sagia? Hey, have you read the Taoist scriptures? Huizhuga looked at him in disbelief. No. The giant shook his head confidently. But I know that no matter what you say, if you add a Taoist scripture before, it is absolutely correct. Huizhuga was secretly shocked. What this fool said is true. After thinking for a while, he stood up and said, I have to go see the young prince. Just as the giant was about to leave, Wajuga waved his hand first. You don't need to follow. Oh! The giant flattened his mouth and agreed in a low voice. Looking at his expression, he looked like an angry brother who went out to play without his own child. Seeing his appearance, Wajuga had no choice but to say, You have to follow me wherever I go. I don't know what's fun. Come on! Come on! He, he The giant smiled and followed happily. The two walked through the nine-curved corridor and came to the other side of the palace. Outside a large pavilion. When the guards guarding along the way saw it was them. None of them stopped them. Only when they arrived at the pavilion. A middle-aged man dressed strangely stopped them. This middle-aged man has a fair face and ancient clothes. He is wearing a white robe with ribbons and a flat crown. It seems to be the clothes of the previous dynasty. But it is very different. Mr. Wu, I would like to see the young prince. Please inform me, Wujuga said with a smile. Mr. Wu said, The young prince is absorbing luck. Are you in a hurry? Quite urgent, Wujuga said. Okay, wait a moment. Mr. Wu turned around and entered without saying anything. After a moment, he turned around again, raised his hand and said, Please come in. Thank you. Wujuga cupped his hands and led the giant Shirshiran into it. This pavilion is very large. But there are no very large rooms inside. There is only a small door. After passing through it, you can enter the next level, and you will find a very open area. The sound of water bursts. This is actually a large pool built indoors. In the pool, countless colorful koi were crowded together, their tails slapping the water crazily. But they seemed to be suppressed by something and could not jump out. Wujuga used the art of looking at the chi. And with a touch of his eyes, 
he saw a powerful stream of colorful chi condensing into streaks, converging towards a figure in front of him. Above the figure's head was an invisible dragon of luck. The dragon greedily swallowed up this colorful luck. Every time it swallowed up, it became stronger and more ferocious. Under the dragon is a tall young man. His hair is disheveled and his facial lines are flat and smooth. He may seem inconspicuous. But if you look closely, he reveals a silent domineering presence. The figure is broad-shouldered and muscular. She was wearing a gorgeous brocade robe, with her chest bare and her feet bare, stepping on the edge of the pool. Seeing Hu Zhuda come in, he took a deep breath and collected the luck dragon. In the pond, the pond full of koi suddenly dispersed and rushed to leave. It was as if some painful punishment had just ended. Young prince, Hu Zhuda called out. Although his tone was respectful, his behavior was casual. When he saw the prince, he did not salute at all. The young prince didn't have any displeasure at all. He walked over quite casually and said with a smile, What you da? But draw slave. Why are you in such a hurry to see me? Something happened to the immortal returning grass. Maybe the good fortune pill furnace will have to be shut down for a few days until we find a new immortal returning grass. Wajuga said. Oh, didn't Wadanu say last time that the source of immortal return grass in Hangzhou prefecture is quite sufficient? He died. Dead again? The young prince was a little surprised. If I remember correctly, you have lost a lot of troops during this period. Right. Wajuga smiled and said. It doesn't matter if a few of our disciples die. I'm just ashamed that I delayed the prince's important event. These words obviously made the young prince very happy. He smiled and said, I'm not in a hurry. Anyway, Mr. Wu said that it will take several months to completely refine my luck dragon. Okay, then for a while. I want to free up my hands to avenge some of my fellow disciples. Hujuga said, Revenge? To whom? Taoist priest. Hujuga still smiled. But for a moment, murderous intent surged into the sky. King Jiang then seemed to feel it. He shook his head and said with a smile, It would be really pitiful for anyone to be targeted by you. After returning to Diyun Temple, Li Chu began to do nothing again. He chatted with his master about this experience. Mr. Shiraishi, Yu Qian rubbed his dark circles, smacked his lips, and said, That's a hated old thief. He does many evil things? Li Chu asked. People in the demon sect do a lot of evil. That's the basic operation. Yu Qian said angrily. The most outrageous thing about this old thief is that he raised thousands of concubines on his Baishur mountain. Everything is possible. Even the emperor is not as comfortable as him. Who among the righteous people in the world doesn't want to kill them quickly? Kill them quickly! Based on the context, Li Chu vaguely felt that the master's words had connotations. But he had never been too lazy to delve deeper. He asked again. Is this person very skilled in medicine? Yes. Yu Qian said. This old guy is also a model of inspiration. It is said that in his early years, he began to study medical classics in order to delve into health preservation. After learning, he became a top-notch miracle doctor in the world. He is as famous as Xuan Huang and Changchun old man. Health care? Li Chu touched his chin. A man over a hundred years old has thousands of concubines. This is too healthy. Yu Qian said leisurely. A sage named Lu once said that if it is not for indulgence, there is no point in maintaining health. But among the five Dharma kings of the Yin Yu sect, he is the least harmful one. At least his only desire is lust. And he never forces women. Instead, he uses the temptation of rich clothes, fine food, and eternal youth to attract women to the mountain. Unlike the others, each one is more perverted than the other. Li Chu said, The little miracle doctor said that the good fortune pill was most likely made by him. It is possible. Yu Qian nodded although he does not want to get involved in the affairs of the demon sect. He is one of the five Dharma kings after all. If someone comes to the door, ask him to make a recipe for elixirs, and send too, it is very possible for Danu to refine medicine. In fact, many righteous cultivators secretly come to him to make elixirs. After all, this old thief has unparalleled attainments in Xia San Road, far surpassing the other two miracle doctors. As he spoke, he hit his waist. Ouch. Twice. Li Chu couldn't bear to look at it and said, Master, why don't I come and take a photo of you? Take a photo? Yu Qian was startled. With that said, Li Chu pinched the little sun. Call out. Around a supreme golden light. A long while. After the little Bodhi mantra ended, Yu Qian's eyes filled with tears. Disciple. Disciple. He held Li Chu's hands. 
If I had met you 30 years earlier, I would have made you my master. We can discuss matters with you on our own terms. If I had this magical skill long ago, why would I end up like this as a teacher? I remember it back then. Thousands of words turned into a heavy sigh. Li Chu looked at his impassioned speech and was speechless for a moment. At this time, deep voices came from behind. Little Taoist Priestly, what are you doing? When Li Chu turned around, he saw the Shenmu monk with a very bad expression. His expression was gloomy and grudge, like a harem who has been deceived. Li Chu couldn't help but tremble. My master has been overworked recently, so I used the little Bodhi mantra to take a photo of him. Li Chu replied, Is this what my Buddhist little Bodhi mantra is used for? The Shinmu monk said quietly. Halfway through, he seemed a little surprised. Wait, what did you use just now? That round of Buddha's light just now almost blinded me. You call that a little Bodhi? Yes. Li Chu nodded. The Shinmu monk was stunned for a moment as if he was recalling the way other people cast the little Bodhi mantra, trying hard to find some similarities. Li Chu looked at the machine and asked, Why did you come here specially? Mentioning this, Monk Shenmu suddenly felt sad and forgot everything else. He flattened his mouth and said slowly, With three parts grievance, three parts anger, and three parts cowardice, let me ask you a question. Are you just entertaining Sagia? Chapter 145 The Road of Life is as long as a beautiful dream. Li Chu looked at the wronged little daughter-in-law and asked with a guilty conscience, Where do you start talking about this? Monk Shenmu asked, Are you lying when you asked me to practice iron clothes? Li Chu said, No, that is definitely a genuine iron cloth shirt. That's the problem. Monk Shenmu touched his bald head, feeling very sad and angry. Who in the world doesn't know that iron clothes shirt is an inferior skill? I even practiced it for a month while holding Baba in my arms. Think back on this month. Whenever his classmates found him holding a copy of learning the iron shirt in 30 days in the back mountain, they would be shocked and ask him how to practice such a thing. Monk Shenmu could only answer hesitantly. This is the iron claw shirt given by Taoist Master Xiao. It is different from the others. Do you know some ways to practice the iron claw shirt? However, he mastered it in just three days and found that it was simply an inferior body training technique, considering Li Chu's strength and looking at the title of the book. He wondered if he hadn't practiced for a full month. So he didn't know the secret. Another fellow disciple saw it and said that this iron claw shirt is no different from those in the Jianghu. Have you been deceived? The monk Shenmu was about to have veins swelled. And he argued loudly. What do you know? How can you cheat on matters between masters? The fellow disciples would burst into laughter. And Shuangfei Temple was suddenly filled with happy air. Finally, he practiced for a whole month. He has a master level iron claw shirt. Even the senior who created the iron shirt may not be able to defeat him. But, this technique is still quite unpopular. Compared with the Buddhist body refining magical powers he had practiced since childhood, its effect was completely different. In fact, as a Buddhist martial arts master, he had long seen that this technique was too simple. If Li Chu hadn't given it to him, he wouldn't have finished reading it at all. But out of trust in Li Chu, I practiced conscientiously for a month and got such a result. He was even more angry. He was so angry that he picked up those fellow disciples who had laughed at him one by one and gave them all the same headbands as the Buddha. Completely pissed off. Only then did I dare to come to Li Chu Xiao and ask. After hearing what he said, Li Chu nodded, understanding in his heart. If the technique is really inferior, it must be because his spiritual power is different. It may be a bit stronger energy than the so-called infuriating energy. This also proves that no matter what magical power you practice, you will have extraordinary performance. And it is not the previous secrets that are so powerful. This discovery made him so happy that he couldn't help but smile. The Shinmu monk suddenly widened his eyes. How shameless are you still laughing? Are you gloating because you saw me so angry? Wow, that's too much. It seems that the poor monk must show you. This ignorant little Taoist priest. Today, what does it mean to endure the calm for a while? What is repaying evil with kindness? What is tolerance? What is Buddha? Then, the Shinmu monk who has always punched Shuangfei Temple in Nanshan strikes whenever he disagrees and has been known for his hot temper for many years. He raised his arms and then hugged them to his chest. He let out a loud voice. Oomph. The old Taoist priest behind him twitched his eyebrows. What's going on with this coquettish posture? Li Chu explained. Master Shinmu, don't get me wrong. I am definitely not intentionally deceiving. 
It's just that the exercises I practiced before were indeed bought from the bookstore in the town. Maybe they are not popular for you. But to me, it is better than nothing. Monk Shinmu glanced suspiciously at Li Chu several times to see if he seemed to be faking it. Then I felt a little confused. If Li Chu grew up practicing immortality, he would still be able to accept it. If he practiced these inferior skills all day long, he would be like this. That. The reincarnations of Arhats like mine are all fake. This one is the real god who descended to earth. Right? I simply don't dare to think too much about this matter. Li Chu looked at the day's Monk Shinmu and asked. Did you come all the way to Shilippo just to ask about this matter? Only then did Shinmu come back to his senses and said. Oh, I do have another little thing that I want to ask Taoist Priestly for help with. Li Chu asked expectantly. Is it evil? As he reached level 76, his spiritual power improved greatly. Having just confirmed the extraordinary nature of his spiritual power, he is now looking forward to having some stronger, but not too strong evil spirits show up, so that he can gain experience. It should be. The Shinmu monk nodded. The old Taoist priest next to him twirled his beard and said to himself that there have been too many evil spirits in Hangzhou Mansion recently. But Yu Hang Town has settled down. He glanced at Li Chu. It seems that it started when this kid walked out of Yu Hang Town. Um, the place where the accident happened is on the outskirts of Jinhua Town. There is a willow forest on the outskirts. In recent days, young men have often disappeared here. At the beginning, those who were killed were all local gangsters and idlers and no one paid any attention to it. Later, several scholars who went to study in Hangzhou Prefecture were killed one after another, and only then did anyone report it to the official. The local government sent people to search vigorously, and eventually many bodies were dug up under the willow forest. These people have been sucked into mummies. Apparently they encountered a ghost that sucks people's yang energy. But where exactly the ghost is is unknown. The locals asked us at Shuangfei Temple to help find out. I took a look and found that there is a Lan Luo temple that has been abandoned for many years in the suburbs of the forest. Lan Ruo temple? Li Chu couldn't help but repeat after hearing this. A soul-stirring prelude suddenly sounded in my ears. It's Lan Luo temple. Monk Shinmu glanced at him strangely, wondering whether there was something wrong with Taoist Li's ears or his tongue. Oh! The prelude in Li Chu's ears suddenly turned off. The Lan Luo temple is located in the lower suburbs of Lulin, where in energy gathers. In the early years, the temple was built to suppress evil spirits. Later, the evil spirits became more serious. Some people were killed in the temple, and the monks were scattered. Only then did it become deserted. Just because there is a ruined temple there, passersby will still get used to going in and resting. Although the evil spirits that caused trouble back then have been eliminated, new evil obstacles will inevitably arise where the Yin Chi gathers. Li Chu wondered, this level of exorcism shouldn't be difficult for Master Shenmu. Right? Alas, Shinmu sighed. The trouble is, I stayed there for three nights in a row, almost turning the temple into my own home. But not a single ghost came out to seek my misfortune. Ghosts like this if you are determined to hide something in one place. It will be extremely difficult to find it. I'm thinking about it. And I don't know whether it's because those ghosts dislike the great monk's appearance and don't want to suck me. Or because they can sense my cultivation energy. So they don't dare to show up. Either way, they are all evil. Li Chu nodded lightly. This is indeed a bit evil. Because there are many ghosts blocking the road and sucking in Yang Chi. They will usually be cleared away within a few days. Because they will come out to suck out Yang Chi from any living person they encounter. All other monsters and monsters, even the smallest animals, are afraid of death. But in the hearts of weak ghosts, there is no concept of fear of death. For practitioners, just stand there and wait for them to appear. That's why it's so convenient to brush lantern monsters. In fact, the vast majority of ghosts are like this. Even the slightly stronger ghosts among ghosts will appear in a certain location. Generally speaking, one has to reach the level of a ghost general, or a complete ghost can be retained by some combination of circumstances before one can have true spiritual intelligence. In other words, only powerful ghosts know how to be patient. As for the ghosts in Lan Luo Temple, although they have already caused a lot of harm to people, they have only been causing trouble for a few days and cannot become a problem at all. The monk with divine eyes went over and showed his Vidra demon subduing pestle. He struck three times, five times and two times, killing a bunch of female ghosts crying for their fathers and mothers. This is the plot as it should be. Li Chu thought about it and quickly understood the meaning of the divine eye. You want me to go? That's right. Monk Shenmu said, although you have strong cultivation, you don't cultivate Qi. 
Even I can't see it. And it's probably impossible for those ghosts to feel it. If there are really ghosts there, they must be there as soon as you appear. We'll show up. Okay. Li Chu naturally agreed. To be cautious, you have to change your clothes. Monk Shinmu pointed at his Taoist robe. If they feel unstable when they see the Taoist robe, it will be difficult. Change clothes? Change for what? Li Chu scratched his head a little. On weekdays, he had no clothes other than Taoist robes. He he. I've thought of it all for you. Monk Shinmu smiled. You just wear a Confucian shirt and pretend to be a scholar. Go to Lan Luo Temple and pretend to be a scholar? In an instant, Li Chu's ears rang again. Life journey. Sweet dreams are like long roads. Chapter 146 Where is the ghost? In the late autumn evening, the twilight is full of miserable sunshine. In the quiet forest of withered willows, the wind blew, and thousands of black and bare silk ribbons fluttered, as if the maids of the former dynasty were lining up to express their sorrows. The already cold wind inevitably added a bit of refreshing chill. Willow is one of the four ghost trees. There has been a saying among the people that don't plant mulberries in front and don't plant willows in the back, which means don't plant willows near your home. This large willow forest gathers together, making it easier to gather in chi. The dirt road on the outskirts of the mountain goes straight down along the willow forest. After turning halfway up the slope, you can see a building protruding from the slope. Although it has been dilapidated for many years, the signboard and courtyard of Lan Luo Temple are still neat and tidy because pedestrians often pass by. In Feng Shui, this hillside is the place where three paths of in gather. If a dead person is buried, it will be easy for the body to be deceived within a few days. It is said that the temple was built to suppress the evil spirit here. Unfortunately, within a few years, even the temple was plagued by evil spirits, and all the monks there dispersed. At dusk that day, a handsome scholar came here, but I saw that he was wearing a Confucian shirt, when Sheng Gongzi's scarf on his head, a large book basket on his back, and an awning on the front and back, which was obviously used to protect him from the rain when he was on the road. You can tell at a glance that he is a passing scholar, and most of them come from poor families. Looking at his face again, it is indeed indescribably otherworldly. His eyebrows are like swords, his eyes are like lightning, and his two temples are swaying in the wind floating in front of a face that does not look like an ordinary person. The scholar entered the dilapidated temple and saw that the courtyard was quite tidy. It was even more obvious that the front hall had no door. On the altar, there is nothing else except a dark wooden Buddha statue. The clean main hall. One side of the main hall is covered with hay, which seems to have been cleaned up by frequent passers-by. Or, what's nearby is packed away for passers-by. All in all it looks quite comfortable. Especially at this time. It was getting late, and it would take two or three hours to reach the nearest Jinhua town. So it was better to rest here. So the scholar Sher Shiran stepped into the front hall, put the book basket aside, sat on the hay, leaned his back against the hall wall, and began to close his eyes and meditate. This scholar's surname is naturally Lian Chu, coming from ten miles slope of Yuhang town, three miles away from here. At the other end of the willow forest, there is a large hollowed out tree. In the center of the tree, is a dark tree hole, and the inside cannot be seen clearly. If someone can lean in, they should be able to find that there is a cave in this tree cave. A big tree that doesn't seem to be thick can actually move forward for more than 10 feet along the tree hole. And then it suddenly becomes clear. There is actually a vast cave inside. In this cave, Ying Ying Yin Yin hides more than 10 women. All of them are dressed in cool clothes, with large areas of skin exposed, and they seem not to be afraid of the cold weather at all. If they weren't in such a weird place and in another pavilion, they might have been honored as good girls. But in this tree hole, it is quite intriguing. There are some tree stumps in the tree hole. So some people are standing and some are sitting. Directly in front of them is a bronze mirror. In the bronze mirror, the panoramic view of the main hall of Lan Luo Temple is reflected. Looking at the perspective, it's like looking through the eyes of a Buddha statue. It's hard to tell what evil spirits had done to the black painted wooden Buddha statue. Beside the bronze mirror has been guarding a girl who looks young. She is wearing a colorful silk skirt and a pair of ponytails, squatting on the ground. She looks young, but her figure has not lost any weight. When half squatting, a round shape protrudes like a full moon, and the waist hip curve is astonishing. Until Li Chu's figure entered the painting, the girl suddenly called out, Sisters, come and see! A handsome scholar has come in! After hearing this, several women rushed over to take a look. 
and as expected they also exclaimed, Where is it? Ah, he is so handsome. Isn't this too handsome? Why should such a person go to school? Yeah, it's not easy to hack me. Before she could finish her words, her mouth was covered. At this time, a woman in purple sitting on a tree stump laughed in a sinister way. She is swang. You girl is so troublesome. If there is a handsome scholar, of course you must tell the third sister quietly. Only one person knows. You are making such a fuss. If you yell out, what should you do if someone robs your third sister? As soon as the purple-clothed woman said these words, a white-clothed woman sitting quietly in the corner suddenly changed her expression. She stood up immediately and said, Fourth, what do you mean? Isn't it just that I robbed you of a scholar last time? But I hadn't completed my grandma's mission at that time. Why should I still let you go? Huh? The woman in purple sneered. Yes. How can the elder sister let the younger sister be? Such a handsome face. But it has not been used a few times. So it was wasted on you. The woman in white crossed her arms and said angrily. I was not a prostitute when I was alive. Even if I become a ghost, I still can't forget what happened. What? Are you looking down on your younger sister? The woman in purple didn't change her face and still sneered. Enough. The two were having a heated argument when a woman in a goose yellow skirt stood up. Judging from her appearance and bearing, she seemed to be the leader here. Because of the young energy, there is nothing to argue about. This scholar, fourth child, you can go ahead, she said with great authority. Clam? The woman in white didn't object, but she made a few unwilling cries from the side of the mirror. A woman in black stood up and said, Sister, I never argue, but this time I want to go. The woman in purple suddenly glared. Second sister, what do you mean? Are you trying to rob me? The woman in black glanced at the mirror with a complicated expression. Then at the woman in purple and said, Next time I will give it to you, even if I give it all to you. As long as I am allowed to do this order, I am willing to take the initiative this month go and receive grandma's punishment. The woman in white couldn't help but look into the mirror. And she was so fascinated by this look. She couldn't help but turn around and kneel down. Sister, can you let me do it this time? If I do it this time, it will be worth it even if I die. The woman in black said angrily. Third brother, don't go too far. The woman in white knelt down and raised her eyes, saying, Second sister, you clearly saw this face and were reluctant to give up. The woman in black moved her collarbone. Her chest rose and fell, and said after a while, At worst, it's not impossible for us to work together. Ha uh ha. -huh. The woman in purple suddenly smiled. I would like to see what kind of scholar it is that can make the always proud second sister say such shameless words. With that said, she stepped forward. The woman in white hurriedly shouted, Don't let her see. But it was already too late. The cave was extremely small. And she moved quickly. She was in front of the mirror and took a quick look. Then, another look. Then, take another look. It's like you can never get enough. As she watched, tears fell from her eyes. She turned around and knelt down. Sister, you know me. I worked in a brothel before I was alive. I hated men all my life. And I was killed by men in the end. Every time I inhaled Yang Chi, I did it several times intermittently. They all said I was shameless. Only you know that I did it for more torture. Those men, let them know that they are going to die and die in fear. But please give me a chance this time to resolve my resentment towards men. As she talked, she felt it was not enough and started kowtowing heavily. The third child, the elder sister in the yellow skirt, seemed to be unable to bear it and wanted to be moved. Behind these three people, several other women suddenly raised their hands timidly. That eldest sister. Actually, I also hate men. Me too. Me too. I can hate men too. I suddenly hate men too. Please give me a chance. Eldest sister. The woman in the yellow skirt frowned and murmured. What kind of scholar is he that allowed the souls of you ghosts to be hooked away? Her figure floated forward, about to take a look. The girls quickly stopped. Sister, don't look at it. But how can it be stopped? The eldest sister floated closer and took a look. Suddenly, her whole body seemed to be frozen in midair. After a long while, she gritted her teeth and said, Everyone, get up. Sister, the woman in purple cried. If you don't promise me, I won't get up. Stand up. The woman in the yellow dress shouted. The shoulders of all the girls were shocked. Under her prestige, they had no choice but to stand up together. More than ten pairs of eyes looked at her. 
because of such a man. We sisters are separated, and you are not ashamed. The woman in the yellow dress closed her eyes and said with difficulty, Are we still the good sisters we swore to be when we were resurrected? If you don't think about it carefully, whoever made this order today will only be happy for a while and will not become a thorn in everyone's side or a thorn in the flesh in the future. How do sisters get along with each other? Do you really think it's worth losing all the friendship between sisters for a man? All the girls lowered their heads, their faces red with embarrassment. But whether it was worthwhile to recite it silently in my heart is unknown. Immediately, I heard the eldest sister say again, In order to prevent you from fighting again, I will do this as a thorn in your side. Ah? Huh? The girls were stunned. The woman in the yellow dress turned around and said resolutely, I will never let him destroy our relationship as sisters. I will suck his young energy dry right now. Sister, the purple-clothed woman was so frightened and angry that she suddenly raised her hand and shot out a rainbow light. Whoosh! The rainbow light hit the woman in the yellow dress right in the back of the heart, knocking her away hard. She turned around, vomiting blood. Her face was horrified and somewhat unbelievable. The girl named Xu Shuang hurried over to help her. The woman in white also screamed, Fourth brother! How dare you hit the eldest sister! With that said, she also struck out with her palm, sending the purple-clothed woman flying away. But almost at the same moment, the woman in black took out her palm again and knocked her away, shouting, She is unfair! Why should she be the eldest sister? The next second, several more rainbow lights were seen lighting up. Second sister, you just want to steal the man! If you want to take the opportunity to take the position of the eldest sister, my sister will never follow you. The woman in the yellow skirt stood up tremblingly, suppressed her injuries, and said bitterly, It seems that you have disobeyed me a long time ago. Okay. Who else has this intention? Please stand up together. At this time, another pop was heard, and the little girl next to her pierced her body with a knife. Although no blood flowed out, it went straight in and out, still causing great damage. The woman in the yellow dress had a sad look on her face. Xiao Shuanglian, you too, the little girl said angrily. Sister, I really think you are unfair. Why do you give the younger ones to your sisters every time? And leave the older ones to me? drink, the woman in the yellow skirt mustered up her last strength and hit the little girl with a palm until she vomited blood and threw her away. Her figure was on the verge of destruction. It seems that her cultivation is indeed the strongest in the field. It's a pity that if he is seriously injured, he doesn't know how much he can perform. Call out. Call out. Call out. Bang. 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 For a moment, in the tree hole, there was an endless rainbow glow and constant banging sounds. More than ten female ghosts fought in it, and they fought an earth-shattering battle. It wasn't until nearly two hours later that it completely calmed down. No more sound. In Lan Luo Temple, Li Chu looked through the only book he brought boredly, and from time to time, he put his hand into the book basket and touched the hilt of the Chunyang ancient sword to calm its restless mood. Looking at the dark sky outside, the moon is already halfway through. Strangeness. He couldn't help but murmured. Where's the ghost? Chapter 147 Who Did This? Who Did This? Early the next morning, Li Chukai left Lan Luo Temple and went to the place where the monk Shenmu was hiding outside the forest to meet him. Did you come last night? No. Not once. Never. Doesn't it seem possible? Probably not. Well, the two looked at each other, feeling a little confused. From the outside, except for his unusually handsome appearance, Li Chu looked just like a normal person. If you can't hide it from those ghosts, then it means that any disguise is useless. Is it possible that ghosts don't harm people in Lan Luo Temple at all? He asked. The Shinmu monk touched his bald head. No, there is no place more suitable than this temple. Or maybe there is someone behind the ghost. So it knows how to avoid it. Li Chu added. But even you can't lure them out, said the monk Shinmu. Can we still find a real scholar? Li Chu suddenly said. It's not impossible. Shinmu waved his hand and said. This is a matter of bumping into ghosts. Not a joke. Even if you and I can guarantee that we can take good care of people. Who dares to believe us? Li Chu said slowly. I have a friend. Um, he has experience in this area. Deep in the mountains, there is an extremely huge cave. A young man in Taoist robes, followed by a giant-like man, walked into it one after the other. Although this cave is not dark, it makes people feel chills running down their spines because there are countless black threads hanging down on both sides of the cave wall, which look like human black hair 
or rootless willow branches. The giant was walking, maybe out of boredom. So he grabbed a piece of black silk and pulled it. But it didn't break. He suddenly became interested, used a few percent of his strength, pulled hard, and finally broke one with a click, just by breaking this one thread. The surrounding cave walls seemed to be in pain. And an ouch came out from nowhere. The giant was startled. Huizhuga quickly turned around and said, Don't be careless in other people's homes. Oh! The giant stuck out his tongue and followed closely behind him, not daring to move any further. The two walked through the cave for a long time before they saw a bright light in front of them. When they walked out, they saw another cave. As soon as he walked out, he called out, Junior Huizhuga! Come and pay homage! Several mountain spirit willow monsters with leafy hair on their heads, not yet fully grown, heard the sound and gathered around, chirping strangely. At this time, a lazy voice sounded from behind. Children, please step aside. Don't disturb the distinguished guests. On one side of the cave, there are several extremely thick wooden ridges, which look like the roots of some trees deep in the ground. It's just that the root system is so thick. I don't know how tall the tree must be. On this smooth root system, a couch and a square table are neatly placed, with some wine and food on the table. On the couch, there was a fat old woman half-lying. She was dressed in a rich green robe, and her disheveled hair was stuck with countless gold hairpins and jade hairpins. But it was still messy. His facial features are rough. But he looks more like a man. It seems that she is also the owner of this place. Huizhuga hurriedly lowered his head and said with a humble smile, Junior from the demon sect, I have taken the liberty to come to visit Grandma Lu. How dare you call me a distinguished guest? Hee <laughs> hee. You are quite polite. The old woman sat up and laughed in a sharp and unpleasant voice. My cultivation has improved by leaps and bounds in the past hundred years. All thanks to the method of controlling ghosts and transforming into young. Taught to me by Lord Ean Emperor. I will always remember the kindness of the demon sect. What's more, your grandma and I are also very close and we have not been in contact for many years. Now that you come to my door, of course I will treat you well. While he was talking, countless black threads suddenly stretched out from the side. Coming from nowhere, they brought tables and chairs for the two of them and set them up with food. Once the items were placed, the threads were instantly removed, as if the items appeared out of thin air. The giant looked amused and wanted to grab one to prevent it from going away. Huizhuga coughed slightly, and he quickly retracted his hand and sat down obediently. Grandma Lu looked at the giant man with interest and asked, Which family does he belong to? Why does he look familiar to me? Ha ha. Huizhuga smiled. It's the golden bodhisattva. But he hasn't lived at home since he was a child. We grew up together, and we are brothers. When the giant heard this, he raised his face and said, Yes. While showing a bright smile. Oh, he is actually the child of Jean Dharma King. Which is quite honest and interesting. Grandma Lu smiled again and asked, Okay, let's just talk about it. What's the matter with you guys coming to see me? Huizhuga smiled slightly. Grandma speaks quickly, and I will not delay this junior. I came here this time just because I got news that someone is going to Lan Luo Temple to prevent the ghosts under Grandma from absorbing Yang Chi. So I came here to inform him. You don't know this. Grandma Lu smiled and said, I raise ghosts outside Lan Luo Temple to suck people's Yang energy for me. I knew something would happen. So I hid them very deep. And only one ghost was allowed to come out to suck Yang energy at a time. Chi. Rotate in this way. And I will go there every month to collect Yang Chi. Even if a cultivator comes to exorcise the evil spirits. They can only eliminate one ghost. After dormant for a few days. They can continue to attack. Even if it doesn't work. If someone catches the clues and kills them all. They are just a few ghosts. If it doesn't come to my body. I can grow it again in ten and a half months. So things outside Lan Luo Temple are very safe. I never worry about it. So, Huizhuga pondered for a moment and said bluntly, I don't hide it from Grandma. That little Taoist priest who came to exorcise evil spirits is actually the enemy of my demon sect. A master I traveled with this time was killed in their eyes. I don't know whether he was killed by him or by his master. So, I kept watching his movements. When I saw him coming to Lan Luo Temple this time, I remember Grandma. I want to ask Grandma to deal with him together. Hey, you should have told me earlier. Grandma Lu waved her hand. It's just a little Taoist priest. I can just deal with it casually. Why do you need to attack together? Wajuga said. 
This is a bit embarrassing. Don't talk about it. With my friendship with your grandma, it's okay even if you come to me directly for help. Besides, this time the little Taoist priest went to Lan Luo Temple to ruin my business. As she spoke, she stood up suddenly and said, Come with me. Good. Grandma Lu also acts vigorously and resolutely, and leaves as soon as she says it. Without saying a few words, he took Wajuga and Vidra slave out of the cave and flew into the wind. Wajuga made a hand and recited a mantra, followed by Yufeng following behind. The giant couldn't fly, so he ran along with it on the ground, leaping up and down without falling behind at all. In a blink of an eye, the three of them arrived at the willow forest outside Lan Luo Temple and the old tree with a deep hole. Then Grandma Lu waved her hands and shouted, Open the door! The tree hole did not require anyone to lean forward, but it actually expanded by itself, and in the flash of light, it turned into two tall wooden doors. Grandma's method is indeed mysterious, Wajuga praised. You can recreate the cave sky at your fingertips. No way. It's just a cover-up, Grandma Lu said. It's just my little trick. Not many people in the world can find it, she said with a smile. Before she finished her words, she saw the door in front of her opened, revealing the scene inside. Inside is an empty cave. Only the tree stump and the mirror remained in place in the cave. There are faint ghosts floating in the air, which are like ghosts and corpses of ghosts. After the ghosts are eliminated, they may remain in the air for a few days before dissipating. The smile on Grandma Lu's face disappeared instantly. With her cultivation level, she could certainly feel that there was a fierce collision of Yin energy and then all the Yin souls died. He couldn't help but feel angry. He said he didn't care about the life and death of these little ghosts. But after all, it was a den that was carefully managed. And, if there weren't two juniors around her, or if she hadn't said anything bragging just now, she wouldn't be so angry. Who did this? Who did this? Grandma Lu looked up to the sky and roared. Which Yuga said in a low voice at the right time. The little Taoist priest I mentioned as some tricks. Maybe even he can do it. Grandma Lu didn't want to believe it. My tree hole is so hidden. Who can find it? The giant behind him chuckled. If no one can find out, then they can only kill themselves. Huishuga glared at him and signaled him to stop talking nonsense. And then said, Talus magical powers are complicated. And everything is possible. Ha ha. Grandma Lu laughed angrily. Okay. Then this time, I will go to Lan Luo Temple to guard it personally. I will kill any passers-by and wait for that little Taoist priest to come again. I want to see how powerful his methods are. As she laughed ferociously, the withered old tree twisted painfully, and the tree body made a squeaking sound. Wajuga lowered his head. A flash of light flashed in his eyes. Is there a ghost that sucks Yang Chi? Do you want me to use a beauty trick? It's okay if you insist on saying that. Wang Long Chi looked at Li Chu and Shinmu in front of him and fell into thought. That's right. Monk Shinmu said, those ghosts are not necessarily very powerful, but there may be people behind them. So they always avoid us. So we thought, find a real ordinary person to try. Wang Longchi glanced at him, seemingly worried. Li Chu said, I will watch you from a distance. If something happens, I will be there in time. Wang Longchi touched his chin, still thinking. The monk Shinmu took out a palm-sized golden Buddha statue and said, You can carry this Arha Dharmakaya with you. Not only will it ensure that your Yang Chi will not be lost, but if you take it out at a critical moment, ordinary ghosts can be killed instantly. This Buddha statue has a gilded lacquered body and was acquired at a high price. It is obviously a good Buddhist ritual instrument. Wang Longchi took it and said, Actually, I'm only worried about one problem. Huh? The two listened carefully. Is this Yang absorbing ghost a female ghost? Wang Longchi asked seriously. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, Monk Shinmu seemed not to have expected this question. He paused and then replied, The victims were all men. If a ghost wants to attack, it will naturally transform into a young woman. Wang Longchi asked again, Then this female ghost you are talking about, is she beautiful? Monk Shinmu couldn't figure out what was going on in this person's mind. So he replied thoughtfully, It's not a question of whether she is beautiful or not. Chapter 148 The First Intimate Contact Between Wang Longchi and Grandma Lu It's the setting sun again. In the distance, a sneaky figure of a dog slipped along the hillside to the front of Lan Luo Temple. The person who came had thick eyebrows and big eyes, and his appearance was bright and lively. Even though he was wearing a Confucian shirt and a Confucian crown, he didn't look like a scholar. Judging from the expressions in the corners of his eyes and eyebrows, 
He looked very much like those literati who came to brothels in the evening to wait for good girls. In fact, there was no need for him to dress up as a scholar, but he insisted on doing so. He also had no choice but to say that a scholar, a ruined temple, and a female ghost are a perfect match. The human road. Happy young man. The visitor was naturally the seventh young master of the Wang family. Coming from Yuhang town, Wang Longqi stepped into Lan Luo temple, looked around, and frowned. This is too simple. Fortunately, there was a lot of hay beside the wall. After inspecting it, he made a pile of hay that could accommodate a row of people lying side by side. After thinking about it, he divided the hay into two piles, one on the left and one on the right. Then he smiled and said, While working, sleep at the same time. After thinking about it again, he patted the middle of the pile of hay on the left side so that that part was higher than the front and rear. It's comfortable when you have a cushion. After making these arrangements, he finally clapped his hands with satisfaction. Yeah, it's good. It's good. After struggling for a long time, the sky gradually became dark. It's just that the sky is dark in late autumn, and there are no sounds of living creatures in the mountains. What's more, the atmosphere next to this gloomy willow forest has always been dead. He was actually vaguely looking forward to what would happen next. Recalling the time when I was tortured by the ghost bride and was in agony. It was actually last year. He he. But I am no longer the boy I used to be. During this period, Wang Longchi followed Li Chu and gained a lot of knowledge. Not only was he not afraid of things like life and death, but he felt vaguely excited about it. After all, this kind of thing always hurts once and feels numb the next time, and feels raw the other time, especially now that there are two masters taking care of him. He has already told Li Chu and the others that there is no need to rush out, and they can wait until he calls for help and show up again. With his rich experience, he knows that inhaling Yang Qi is a long process. Before the female ghost sucks your manhood, there will definitely be a charming and charming seduction. Just like a sugar-coated bomb, you have to peel off the enemy's sugar coating and shoot the cannonballs back. After a while, there was no sound everywhere, and he felt a little cold. Wang Longqi shrank his shoulders. Could it be that there was no female ghost at all? After all, they had said before that Meng Shenmu came to stay for a few nights. And Li Chu also came to stay for one night. Nothing happened. Are worried. Suddenly I heard a gust of wind blowing across my body. And suddenly a damp and cold air rushed into my body. Wang Longqi was trembling all over. But my heart was filled with joy. Ha uh ha. -huh. Here it comes. The female ghost didn't show up when Meng Shenmu came. And the female ghost didn't show up when Li Chu came? I came, and she showed up. What does this mean? It shows that in the world of ghosts, strong men are of no use. And neither are beautiful men. This one from Wang Qixiao is still the most popular. What a rare female ghost. It's not like I'm so sure of it. Bring it on. Seduce me. Show me your icing. Thinking like this, Wang Longqi stood up and walked impatiently to the window. Wanting to see what the female ghost coming outside looked like? Long-legged royal sister? Pink girl? Fonian milf? When he looked over, he was stunned. Grandma Lu was furious and had experienced with Zhuge's efforts all afternoon which were called comfort but actually consolation from Gonghua. At this time, her inexplicable hatred for the little Taoist priest was already extremely high. I can't wait to rush directly to Diyun Temple. But Wajuga warned her that the cultivation level of the old Taoist priests there was unfathomable. So it was better to stay here and wait to kill a young Taoist priest to vent her anger. So she planned to go on a killing spree at Lan Luo Temple tonight and lure the little Taoist priest here again. She was not disappointed. In the evening, Another scholar, who was described as Lu came. Just blame yourself for your misfortune. Grandma Lu came to Lan Luo Temple with a fierce and powerful wind. Walking along the door wall, I met the scholar inside who poked his head out. The scholar was suddenly stunned. It seems that his expression is not fear. But anger? Grandma Lu also frowned. Wanting to see what this unlucky guy meant. Immediately, then Wang Longchi cursed angrily. Get out! Then he retracted his head. Grandma Lu was stunned. She has been practicing cultivation in a willow tree by the river for nearly 2,000 years. Since her transformation, she has never seen any mortal dare to speak so wildly to her. This is so rude. Wang Longqi naturally had reason to be angry. This was the first time in his life that he had seen such careless-looking people, including all monsters and monsters. Such a female ghost also wants to suck my manhood? With bad eyesight. You can't even tell that this is a female ghost. Who do you think I am? 
and anger. He suddenly entered a situation where he went to a gathering place for literati and met a good girl who looked like this. It's hard to say what the tastes of rich people are. But we rich people are not blind. He poked his head out, cursed, and immediately shrank his head back. Just when I was thinking about whether to shout again and ask her to bring over another batch, I heard two whooshing sounds. Two thick black tentacle-like threads that came out of nowhere suddenly appeared, entangled his whole body, and rolled him out at once. Wow, Wang Lungchi exclaimed. When he opened his eyes again, he was already floating in the air, and that tall old woman with an indescribable appearance was opposite him, with an angry look on her face. Grandma Lu gritted her teeth and said, How dare you disrespect me? She was already holding back her anger, but Wang Longchi's endless scolding seemed to have fuel to the fire. Wang Longchi was not afraid at all, and replied, You look like this, and you still come out to absorb Yang Chi. Have you ever given me any respect? Grandma Lu was originally very angry, but after thinking about it carefully, she actually felt that what he said made some sense. So she became even more angry. I want you to die! Grandma Lu roared, and another tentacle popped out. Wang Longchi violently threw the Buddha statue from his arms. Buzz. In an instant, the golden light was dazzling. A huge golden body of Arhat lay in front of him. What the monk Shinmu said is true. If you see ordinary ghosts, you may disappear from the world. But the next second, the golden light was dissipated by the tentacle. And in an instant, the entire Buddha statue was broken into one piece and almost fell to the ground. Only then did Wang Longchi realize that something was wrong. The great monk Shindao lied to me. He also said that the Buddha statue is so powerful that it can kill ordinary ghosts instantly. The difference is that your Buddha statue was smashed to pieces with just one blow. So he opened his mouth and shouted, Li Chu! Save! Before he could finish his words, a black tentacle fiercely stuffed into his mouth. Wang Longchi would never have imagined that one day he would experience this feeling. At that moment, countless thoughts flashed through his mind. They were probably about God sparing him. God's way. Reincarnation. One explosion. One retaliation. One retaliation. But this thread is not injecting anything. But absorbing his yang energy. In an instant, all his yang energy was sucked up like water. At this critical moment, Li Chu finally appeared. If he waited until Wang Longchi shouted for help, it would be too late. Li Chu said something was wrong the moment Grandma Lu popped out her tentacles and revealed her demonic aura. And rushed over instantly. He shouted, Let him go! Grandma Lu saw Li Chu wearing Taoist robes, and her eyes instantly turned red. Is it you, the little Taoist priest, who killed all the ghosts I raised? Huh? Li Chu frowned, not knowing what she was talking about. Today I want to see how powerful your magical power is, and how dare you be so arrogant in the entire Jiannan continent. She was still chattering, but Wang Longchi's longing eyes showed that Li Chu didn't care if she continued talking. Wang Qixiao might be in trouble. So Li Chu drew his sword and stopped Grandma Lu's words. Sorry to interrupt. Not to interrupt you. But to interrupt your life. Chapter 149 The Fish Is Not For Sale The moment when Li Chu's sword fell. Far away. In a tree hole. In front of a mirror. Hui Shuga and Vajra Nu both covered their eyes with their hands. Shook their heads. And smacked their tongues. Huh? Grandma Lu died so tragically. It's really blinding. A red dragon appeared out of the sky swallowed his weak body instantly and dissipated into smoke in the blink of an eye. Not a hair was left. This little Taoist is so vicious, thinking that he had wanted to take action with Grandma Lu before. Wajuga couldn't help but feel scared. If Grandma Lu hadn't been so proud and had to let them stay here and watch, she might have been cold. Thinking of this, he paid an extra tribute to Grandma Lu who disappeared from the world. The Vidra slave was a little restless. He sat on the tree stump and twisted around muttering to himself. I really want him to try to cut me with his sword. Wajuga quickly stretched out his hand to hold him down. No, you will die if you try. When he said this, his voice trembled a little, because Li Chu's sword really exceeded all his previous imagination. At this age, could he be the reincarnation of some land god? There is absolutely no second explanation beyond this. Even a person with a natural immortal body would not be able to achieve such a level of cultivation. It's just that the reincarnation of immortals usually leaves many arrangements for themselves, including magic weapons, immortal arts, and powerful protectors to ensure that they can quickly regain the cultivation level of the first life and avoid being strangled by the enemy. Apart from a sword, this little Taoist priest had nothing that could be called a treasure. 
not to mention the financial warriors. Even among the civilian cultivators, they are relatively simple, and they are really a bit poor. Of course, the poverty of the strong cannot be called poor. It should be said to be low-key. No wonder the seven criminals died so simply. Only one courtyard wall of Dayun Temple was replaced. After all, this little Taoist priest is so powerful, and his master's cultivation level is unimaginable and can only be said to be unfathomable. There is really no difference between attacking someone else's lair like that and committing suicide. The Vidra slave asked. Then we won't deal with him, Wajuga said coldly. I have no intention of giving up easily. Then if you don't let me try, you will definitely not be able to defeat him, Vidra slave said bluntly. Wajuga was not annoyed and said with a smile. The arena is not about fighting and killing. The arena is about human relations. The Vidra slave rolled his eyes. Tell riddles again. No need for him to guess. Wajuga explained to himself. Of course, I am not the opponent of this Taoist priest. But in fact, this Grand Ma Lu is not a powerful demon. After all, most tree demons are stupid in nature. Even if she practices for a long time, she can only err. But I happen to know that one of her sweethearts in the past was an extremely rare cultivation genius among tree demons. That person was quite powerful. The Vidra slave was shocked. How can we have a good relationship with someone like this? Looking at his face with his mouth wide open in disbelief. It was obvious that his young values had been strongly impacted. Yeah. Wujuga was also a little speechless. After thinking for a long time, he could only say one sentence. Sometimes, it's hard to tell the taste of the great demon. In order to avoid accidentally injuring Wan Longchi, Li Chu still used only a trace of spiritual power with his sword. Fortunately, the willow tree demon was successfully killed. A burst of satisfying experience points came back into the body. But as the level got higher, the experience bar grew to a scary level. This willow demon only filled nearly one-tenth of the space. When the willow tree demon disappeared, the sword energy red dragon also dispersed. Immediately, there was a thud, as if something heavy fell to the ground. Li Chu was overjoyed. He hasn't exploded anything in a long time. In fact, with the intensity of his sword energy now, it would be difficult for anything to explode. After all, with one strike of the sword, the physical body of the thousand-year-old demon was instantly annihilated, and ordinary magic weapons and materials could not escape the end of evaporation. But correspondingly, what can be preserved from his sword is absolutely extraordinary, not to mention anything else. At least the tenacity aspect is full of points. For example, the last time it didn't turn into bones, he walked forward quickly and saw a dark piece of wood on the ground. It didn't look surprising. Just like a piece of rotten wood that had been burned by fire. I picked it up and held it in my hand. I waited and found that it was quite heavy. At this time, I heard Wan Longchi, who had fallen to the ground beside him. Just after he recovered, he wailed, Wow! The monk Shenmu from behind had just rushed over. When he heard him crying, he asked, What's wrong? Wan Longchi cried and said, I'm not clean anymore. The Shinmu monk frowned and said, Li Chu is late. You have been given to a female ghost. Wang Longchi twitched and said intermittently, It would be nice if it was a female ghost. An old and ugly female ghost. Or a banshee. Whatever. Anyway, she sucks Yang Chi. Not like this, but like this. How to suck it? Shinmu was puzzled. My tentacles are so big. Wang Long gesticulated, but he was embarrassed to speak too clearly. He couldn't explain for a long time. So he finally had to say, Do you know the fifth sentence of the twelve zodiac signs? Huh? Monk Shinmu was stunned. What does this have to do with it? He counted silently in his mind. Children. Rats. Oxen. Oxen. Tigers. Rabbits. Dragons. Dragons. Snakes. Horses. Horses. Sheep. Monkeys. Roosters. Dogs. And pigs. Etc. I seem to understand something. With the help of Wang Longchi's huge sacrifice, the Lan Luo Temple matter was successfully resolved. After finishing his errands at night, he rushed back. By the time Li Chu returned to Diangwen, it was morning again. Early in the morning, I saw Yan Xuya's dazzling figure walking out of the temple. Turning around, her face covered with peach blossoms, Li Chu nodded and saluted. Yin Xiaoyao seemed a little shy, glanced at him, said H. Lo and left without saying anything. Stepping into the backyard, I saw the master Shirshiran sitting under the old locust tree. His face was full of pride in the spring breeze, 
and the previous bitter look was wiped away. Seeing Li Chu, his smile suddenly became stronger. Ha ha! My good disciple, you are finally back. I miss you so much. Li Chu was a little flattered, even though his master always loved him very much. But I have never been so enthusiastic in my life. Before he could think about it, he heard Yu Qian say again, Come on! Let me take another photo of you. Is it because of this? No wonder. Li Chu said, Okay, but I have a question. Oh, but it doesn't matter. Yu Qian said with a smile. This attitude is usually only shown to the little koi. Li Chu clearly felt that his status had suddenly improved. Although it was due to some strange reasons. He placed the large piece of dark wood in his arms on the stone table and asked expectantly, I got this from a willow tree demon last night. What kind of treasure is it? Oh! Yu Qian looked at it, touched it with his hand, and then came closer to smell it. Judging from his posture, it seemed that he wanted to stick out his tongue to lick it. But luckily he finally took it back. After a while, the old Taoist priest replied, This is a tree struck by lightning. What is that? As the name suggests, it is the wood that remains after being struck by lightning. However, in the world of spiritual practice. This leite refers to the thunder tribulation and the heavenly tribulation. This kind of lightning strike wood is the last piece of witchy essence left by a tree demon that was annihilated in the catastrophe. It contains the essence of wood with supreme yang energy. It contains at least a thousand years of cultivation of a tree demon, which is in line with the way of heaven. The power of the sun in thunder tribulation is a very rare treasure of heaven and earth. Li Chu's eyes flickered. He paused and asked, is it valuable? Yu Qian smiled and gave an answer that satisfied him. In terms of the highest value, it's a little worse than the non-transformable bone you had last time. However, the non-transformable bone has a price but no market. There are very few buyers and it's easy to be priced down. So I advise you to keep it. And the lightning strike wood is different. Various immortal sects buy it from many people, especially those from our Taoist sect. Taking it back to refine magic weapons and artifacts often has the miraculous effect of restraining evil objects. So it is very popular. You can put it up for sale at Danding Pavilion in Fuching. You should be able to get a good price. Li Chu couldn't help but smile. After a moment, he picked up his fingers. Master, my disciple is here. Oh, under the sun. The old Taoist priest let out a sigh of relief. There are many sects in the world. And there are many practitioners. When there are more people, there will be business. However, the world is so big that it is inevitable that some things that cultivators need are extremely rare, and some treasures that cultivators obtain are difficult to get rid of. At this time, the importance of the platform is reflected. Some large sects took advantage of their reputation and began to operate trading platforms that integrated functions such as shops, auction houses, and pawn shops. As long as the cultivator is in need, he can come to look for it. If it is temporarily out of stock, he can also list to buy and let the platform help keep an eye on the purchase. If a cultivator has treasures of heaven and earth that he cannot use, he can also sell them to such platforms in exchange for cultivation resources. Of course, platform acquisitions will inevitably lead to severe price reductions. If the practitioner is not in a hurry to spend money, he can also choose to sell. That is to say, store the items here and let the platform sell them on your behalf. Although Jianghu rules charge at least 10%, the final price is often much more cost-effective than purchasing on the platform. Among the platforms of this type of large sex, the one with the best management is Danding Pavilion. Danding Pavilion is the most pyrotechnic among the 12 immortal sex, because it can be said that it started by doing business. Alchemy and weapon refining are the absolute means passed down from generation to generation in Danding Pavilion. By refining elixirs and magic weapons for others and selling their own finished products, Danding Pavilion became one of the twelve immortal sections. Later, relying on the familiar business methods and the reputation of the old Xianin, Danding Pavilion's shops were prosperous and opened all over the world. Nowadays, every city in the Hulua dynasty has a Danding Pavilion shop. Because of this, its efforts in collecting heavenly materials and earthly treasures are far greater than those of other sections. As a result, more cultivators are willing to make it their first choice. Over time, a virtuous cycle gradually formed. Hangzhou Mansion. Danding Pavilion. The huge shops on the upper and lower floors are magnificent. For beautiful women with high slit skirts stood in front of the door on the first floor. Different from the good girls soliciting customers. Their temperaments were noble and elegant. 
but they were used to persuade customers to turn away. This formation can make quite a few people who are carrying strange things and always want to try their luck to see if they are valuable treasures feel ashamed and dare not come to the door. On this day, a little Talus priest in green clothes came to the door with a beautiful girl. Seeing this little Talus priest, all the women who were welcoming the guests couldn't help but their eyes lit up. Their thighs unconsciously moved outwards, showing off their beautiful figure curves. These two people were Li Chu and Xiao Kui. Yu Qian said that if you go out to do business and take the little Koi with you, you might get something unexpected. Li Chu felt the same. The two walked up to the door and saw a group of warblers and swallows nodding their heads in unison. The first one asked, Welcome to the Taoist priest. Do you want to buy treasures or sell treasures? Li Chu patted the package in his arms and said, There is something I want to sell. Please come with me. With that said, she moved her waist and led Li Chu up the stairs to the second floor. The first floor is wider, and the hall is filled with a variety of dazzling treasures, as well as some samples for people to browse. The second floor is more quiet, divided into several small and medium-sized rooms, obviously for people to discuss business. The woman led Li Chu out of a room and said, Mr. Chen happens to be free. I can discuss your treasure with him in detail. With that said, she ushered the people in and quietly exited. When Li Chu walked in, he saw an elegantly dressed old man sitting beside a bee stove with a copper mouth burning incense. Smiling at the two of them, Please sit down. Directly opposite the old gentleman, there is a huge bronze mirror that covers both of them. As soon as he sat down, the colorful body of the little koi appeared in the mirror, and the old man couldn't help but take a glance. Not long after, the woman came back to serve tea, then quietly left, closing the door behind her. The atmosphere is extremely comfortable. The old gentleman then asked slowly, I wonder if there is anything on the trail that you would like to sell. Li Chu spread the package on the table, revealing the section of lightning struck wood. Oh! The old gentleman was slightly surprised and quickly took a closer look. He looked at it, touched it, smelled it, and finally licked it. Then he said in surprise, This is such a big piece of lightning struck wood. Li Chu couldn't help but secretly feel a sense of respect for the master who didn't lick it at first. Well, the master is indeed amazing. After a long while, the old gentleman said, This item is indeed a rare treasure, and there are many buyers. I believe it can be sold for a good price. At least 3,000 chi gathering pills. Li Chu had learned before that most of the currencies used in transactions among cultivators were not gold and silver. After all, most practitioners feel that gold and silver are of little use. It is a chi gathering pill that can infinitely increase the true chi. This chi gathering pill can be regarded as one of the starting magic pills of Danding Pavilion. Of course, saying it is a magic pill does not mean it is expensive. On the contrary, it is not very valuable. Almost three to five tails of silver can be exchanged for one. The effect of a chi gathering pill is not outstanding. After taking it, it can only add a little bit of chi to the cultivator. However, the great thing about it is that it can be taken unlimitedly. Unless you hit a bottleneck, you can keep improving. This means that a cultivator can rely on the chi gathering pill to advance from the early stage of the Chisi realm to the peak of the Chisi realm within a few days. If he can still break through to the Shinha realm, he can reach the peak of the Shinha realm in a few days. Of course, there are countless shortcomings, and there is no need to go into details one by one. This kind of elixir is, firstly, in high demand and is a hard currency. Secondly, its annual output is fixed, so there is no need to worry about sudden depreciation. Soon it became popular all over the world and became one of the equivalent items circulated among practitioners. Although there were many imitators later on, the imitation pills were not as effective as Danding Pavilion, so their value was greatly reduced. And they did not threaten the status of Danding Pavilion's Chi Gathering Pill. On top of the Chi Gathering Pill, there are 10 small returning pills, large returning pills, and the highest golden pill that can be exchanged for advanced levels. No need to mention it. Then I'll bother you. Old man. Li Chu nodded lightly. Well, we agreed in advance that our Danding Pavilion will try our best to sell this treasure for you at the highest price. But afterwards, no matter how much the selling price is, we will take a 10% commission. The old man reminded. Okay. Li Chu nodded. This is the rule of the world. And he asked about it before coming. After finalizing the deal in a few words and signing the contract. Li Chu and Xiao Kui got up and left. When he turned around, he saw his huge fish body in the mirror. The little Koi responded with a cry, then quickly covered his mouth and pointed to the bronze mirror towards Li Chu. 
The hair on his forehead was already standing on end. Li Chu smiled slightly and shook his head. It was just a demon mirror. Although he had never seen it before, he had heard his master talk about it. It is not an exaggeration to put one in every room of the extremely wealthy Danding Pavilion. Um, seeing this, the old gentleman added, I don't know whether to say something or not. Little Taoist. Huh? Li Chu turned around. Do you want to sell this koi of yours? The old man asked. There are many wealthy families who come to my sect to buy lucky koi. Especially for such a rare colorful koi. The price is absolutely to your satisfaction. Huh? The little koi's eyes widened. Shock. You old man looks kind and kind. But it turns out you are not a good person. Thanks to Li Chu. He answered directly without thinking. This fish is not for sale. The little koi's dull hair fluttered down. I turned around and was about to leave when I heard the old gentleman ask again. There is one more thing. I don't know if I should say it or not. If Li Chu wants to say something that is inappropriate, then don't say it. But after all, he still had to do business with others. So he looked at the old man politely. I heard him ask. I wonder if you are selling yourself? Ah, I don't mean to sell myself. There are many wealthy female cultivators who come to my sect to buy young and handsome cultivators as companions. It only takes a few times, and the price is quite it's not cheap. Little Talus Master, if you don't want to work hard anymore. He he. Isn't this selling oneself? The road to Danding Pavilion is quite wild. Li Chu quickly replied. No need to. He hurried away with the little koi. Well, if I stay here for a little longer, I'm afraid even the master at home will be sold. Walked out of Danding Pavilion and took to the street. I saw the little koi fish kept taking something out of his pocket and eating it. Li Chu was curious, and it seemed that he didn't bring her any snacks before going out. He asked, What did you eat? The little koi smiled and took out a handful of black pills. I don't know what they are. They are very sweet. Do you want to try them? Li Chu was startled. Where did this come from? The little koi said angrily. I picked it up in that bad old man's house. Chapter 150 Tell me. Who is the most handsome Taoist priest in Hangzhou Prefecture? Picked it up in someone else's house? Li Chu blinked. He first stopped the little koi from continuing to eat, but carefully pulled her back, picked up one of the elixirs, and asked a guest at the Danding Pavilion. Excuse me, do you know what kind of elixir this is? The woman responded with a sweet smile. This is the cheek gathering pill produced by our Danding Pavilion. You see? You can see it in the sunlight. There is a special emblem on it. So this is the cheek gathering pill. Li Chu murmured. Yes. And the cheek gathering pill produced by our Danding Pavilion is much more effective and valuable than the counterfeit products circulating in the world. If another cultivator had come to ask, Ingbin might have laughed at him like a country bumpkin, having never even seen a cheek gathering pill. But I don't know why. When Li Chu asked such a simple question, it made people feel a little simple, real, sincere, and cute. Thank you. Li Chu nodded and thanked. Then he estimated the amount and took out a banknote worth dozens of tails from his pocket. Please give it to Mr. Chen just now for me. Oh? What is this? The woman was confused. Li Chu felt a pain in his body and said, Buy the elixir money. Immediately, he took the little koi and left. He looked at the girl with sad eyes and warned, Next time, you can't pick up things in other people's rooms. That's not picking. That's stealing. Stealing is wrong. You must eliminate bad habits from an early age. Be a good fish. And be a fish that contributes to society. Li Chu is like an old father who teaches by words and deeds. The little koi kept silent. Why did that bad old man want to sell me? If he was a good old man, I would give it back to him. Li Chu glanced at her silently. The little koi blinked its big, watery eyes, raised its white and tender hands, and said to please, Why don't you give it a try? Li Chu was really curious about this chi gathering pill. Knowing that it was not a bad pill, he picked one up and tasted it. When you take a chi gathering pill, it tastes really sweet and melts in your mouth. After taking it, he suddenly felt a magical feeling. It seems like the experience bar has changed. Although there was no white light entering his body, he seemed to have gained a little bit of experience value out of thin air. This has never been encountered before. He was a little surprised. Picked up another one and drank it. This time it didn't seem to move. But it may be that the added trace is too weak and the feeling is not obvious. So Li Chu picked up three pills and took them. Sure enough it moved. This Chi gathering pill can increase experience points. Although it is extremely weak. There is no risk after all. This is definitely a major discovery. 
Li Chu picked up a few more pills one after another and estimated the experience value of a qi-gathering pill, roughly similar to a lantern monster. But, even killing a lantern monster is laborious and risky. However, the qi-gathering pill can achieve the same increase in experience points without taking any risks. And there is no upper limit either. This is simply an upgrade elixir. After thinking like this, when he picked it up again, he suddenly found that the palm of the little koi's hand was empty. The little girl looked at him with watery eyes. Her mouth flattened, as if she dared not speak in anger. You ate them all. Um. Li Chu hurriedly rubbed her head. I'll take you to buy candied haws. I will tell the old Guanju when I go back. Two skewers. Let him know you bully the fish. Three skewers. We. Oui. Li Chu and the little girl drifted away. But they didn't know that their delay on the street was noticed by another interested person. At this time, a middle-aged man wearing a white robe and ribbon, an ancient crown, and a somewhat strange appearance happened to be arriving at Danding Pavilion. Just then I saw Li Chu and Xiao Kui leaving. This person has been practicing the art of luck all year round and is extremely sensitive to luck. At this time, a long street away from Xiao Kui, I felt like I was being forced by a burst of great luck. He quickly touched his eyes with his fingers and opened his gaze eyes. Suddenly, a huge colorful ocean of luck rose into the sky. Shocked. What a big bundle of luck. This is definitely not human. But when he came to his senses, the man and woman were already gone. This man had no choice but to go to the gate of Danding Pavilion first. All the guests recognized him. And they all saluted and said, Mr. Wu. That's right. This person is none other than Mr. Wu from the Jiangnan Palace. He nodded slightly and asked, which gentlemen were those two looking for just now? Well, the women hesitated. Logically speaking, Danding Pavilion should not reveal any information about other guests. Mr. Wu added, That gentleman should be free. Just take me to see him. All right. A woman had no choice but to take him upstairs to the old man's room just now. Mr. Wu. Mr. Chen. The two of them are also familiar with each other. And they greet each other quite familiarly when they meet. The old man asked, Mr. Wu. Are you here because of the luck beast? Not bad. Mr. Wu frowned and said in a deep voice, It's been many days, and you still haven't received the new luck beast? Alas. The old man smiled bitterly. Lucky beasts are not Chinese cabbage. If there are any, they will be there. You have bought up all the lucky beasts for sale in Jiangan Continent. I have already spread the news to Jiozhou Danding Pavilion. Once the supply is available, it will definitely be delivered to us as soon as possible. Mr. Wu was silent for a while. Then he said slowly, I saw just now that a ball of extremely colorful luck left your Danding Pavilion. It didn't look like a human being, but more like a colorful koi. Yeah. The old man hesitated and said, To tell you the truth, this does exist. I also asked for you, but the owner is unwilling to sell it, and we can't force it to buy it. You don't need to force me. I'll do it. A smile appeared on Mr. Wu's face. You tell me who that person is and I will definitely reward him generously. A smile also appeared on the old man's face. Mr. Wu, Danding Pavilion cannot leak any guest information. This is a rule. You only tell me secretly, and don't tell the six ears. Mr. Wu leaned forward and quietly approached. Heaven knows and earth knows. You know and I know. I can give you a thousand chi gathering pills as a reward. Ha ha. The old man's smile did not change. I know Mr. Wu is very wealthy, but rules cannot be broken. When we do business, credibility is what matters. If I break the rules for a moment and take advantage, I may seem smart, but in fact I am stupid. Mr. Wu frowned, as if he was angry. Mr. Chen, your eyes and ears in Danding Pavilion are very good, and you should also know who is behind me. You can't offend that person just because of a koi. I know that Mr. Wu is backed by the Jiannan Palace. But, the old man said with a calm expression, So what? Mr. Wu's face froze. Indeed, King Jiangnan has a distinguished status. But, so what? This is the confidence of the Twelve Immortal Sect. Good. After a while, Mr. Wu only uttered this word, then stood up and turned around to leave Danding Pavilion. Empty-handed, but not empty-handed. There was a sneer on his face. If the people at Danding Pavilion don't tell me, do you think I can't find it? Just blame. That little Taoist priest looks too eye-catching. Mr. Wu practices the evil god way. On the eve of the war between gods and demons that year, Siesh and Dao once flourished and was regarded as a guest of honor by many princes and kings. Because of their luck skills, 
They can fight for others. Even behind the Helioji family at that time, there was still the shadow of the evil god. After all, things like the avenue of luck are very important. In the process of fighting for the dragon, you don't have to use it, but you can't live without it. In the end, the Halua dynasty ruled the world. The strange inheritance of the evil god Wei, instead of flourishing, was labeled as a crooked and evil way overnight and was vigorously executed. In the bloody early years of the Halua dynasty, it experienced the same level of suppression as the demon sect. It has been passed down to this day that Mr. Wu is already a single passer of the Nine Meridians. Sometimes he even felt that he might be the only believer of the evil god in the world. But he didn't think it was the evil god's fault. It is the fault of the general trend of the world. Times make heroes. In times of peace, the ruler certainly did not want others to control the way and threaten the fate of the dynasty. But once the world is in chaos and all parties are fighting for the dragon, then the evil god will once again become the darling of the world. After searching and searching, he finally found King Jiangnan. When two ambitions collide, they are like dry wood and a raging fire. Originally, everything was going smoothly according to the original plan. He tried every means to collect the luck beasts for King Jiangnan, captured, bribed, and robbed them, and helped him refine the luck dragons. Then, he would offer part of the profit to himself to the evil god in exchange for power. But a while ago, the evil god suddenly issued a new order. It's ten times more lucky. Mr. Wu's pressure increased sharply. His search for the luck beast was also forced to restart. And he took great strides. Because of the great pressure, Mr. Wu even lost his hair for a time. Luckily, he met a colorful koi on the street who was very lucky. He, as long as he can catch this koi, or even absorb part of her luck, it will be enough to offset the evil god's request. For Mr. Wu, this is like rain in a drought. After returning to Jiangnan Palace, Mr. Wu immediately used all his strength to find out something. Tell me, who is the most handsome Taoist priest in Hangzhou? As long as you find the little Taoist priest who is traveling with the colorful koi, it is not difficult to know the whereabouts of the colorful koi. And some people are destined to be unable to hide. Soon, several answers with shadow graphics were placed on his desk. Mr. Wu recognized the most handsome one among them at a glance. Yes, that's him. You hang town. Shilippo. Dayun Temple. Li Chu. Chapter 151 The Evil Spirit Short Circuited. I don't know how long the sun and the moon are. Before we knew it, it was late autumn. The expansion of Byungwen is getting bigger and bigger, and the workers are working hard to complete it before winter. There was no news about the lightning struck wood. At that time, Mr. Chen said that if he was in a hurry for money, he could find a buyer immediately. But if you are not in a hurry, you can wait for a month or two, and then you can really get a high price. The relationship between the three girls in the audience is getting better and better. And Lu Qinglian, the fox girl, and the little koi get along unexpectedly harmoniously. She grew up in a brothel and was accustomed to intrigues. Suddenly, she met two friends with extremely simple hearts. And she felt that she cherished them very much. And Di Youngwen has no income these days. The reason why it can still eat hot pot every three days is all because of Miss Yulia's rent. Therefore, the fox girl and the little koi cherish this friend very much. Li Chu has one more item in his expectations these days. Qi gathering pill. If there is a way to upgrade without taking any risks, that would be the best. The old Taoist priest's mood has been getting better and better recently. When he has nothing to do, he will call Li Chu to give him Zhao Yiha, Zhao Yiha, and return the Yang infinitely. Until one day, the arrival of an uninvited guest broke the tranquility. Ten miles uphill, under a tree with fallen leaves, Qin Huaji who had just gained his freedom, suddenly met Lu Qinglian. The awe ah, sound in his mouth showed his deep feeling. Miss Xiao Lu! Suddenly there seemed to be the sound of The north wind is blowing and the snowflakes are fluttering. The world is vast. Lu Qinglian blinked and recalled for a moment before showing a sweet smile. Mr. Chen, are you out? Chen Huaji's deep affection made her a little embarrassed. From a subjective point of view, Chen Huaji worked hard for her and made a lot of sacrifices. But objectively speaking, this guy really didn't do much to help. It's even almost a disservice. Anyway, she thought he was a good guy, but had no feelings for him. Thanks to her knowledge of human affairs, she has encountered this kind of thing a lot, and she can handle it without embarrassing both parties. Lu Qinglian enthusiastically but distantly led Chen Huaji to the backyard and met Li Chu. Li Chu was slightly surprised. You came out so soon? He had committed a serious crime of robbing a prisoner 
and was thrown into prison. He was released in less than a month, which was quite lenient. Chen Huaji's eyes were still glued to Lu Qinglian, and his tongue was ready to move. At the same time, he smiled bitterly and said, I have not fully atoned for my sins, and I am currently without a salary. I was asked to come out because of the lack of manpower, so I was sent to redeem my sins and perform meritorious deeds. Li Chu nodded. It's a good thing after all. I came here to ask Taoist priestly for help. He added. Oh. Li Chu asked. What's the matter? Chen Huaji then said slowly. There is a mysterious case in the south of Hangzhou Prefecture. It is said that a child who was herding cattle was brought to a mysterious cave by heavy rain one day. Lightning and thunder. And the old cow running around. He picked up a paintbrush in that cave. The shepherd boy had always wanted to learn calligraphy and painting. But because his family was poor, he didn't have the conditions. After picking up this brush, he took it home. But that night, he discovered something magical. Everything he painted with the brush could come true. He painted some gold and silver jewelry, which fell out of the painting the next day. He painted a beautiful woman, and the woman fell out of the painting that night. Is there such a good thing? The old Taoist priest appeared out of nowhere with a strange smile on his face. Well, I have some rare and unique copies. I wonder if I can ask that little brother to help me copy them. With a whoosh, the flying sand came out of nowhere, still holding a few bricks in his arms, and his whole body was shaking with excitement. Is it true? Can I see them in person? Golden Lotus Pinger Chun Mei. Forehead. Chin Huaji was interrupted by this sudden enthusiasm and was speechless for a moment. At this time, I heard the foreman shouting over there. Where are the bricks? Where are the bricks? Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Wanli Feisha agreed, and then swooped over. You can still vaguely hear the foreman's scolding voice. If you don't move bricks properly, you will think about pornography all day long. Ha uh ha. -huh. Chin Huaji smiled and added. I'm afraid it's a little difficult to copy. After this incident spread, some local powerful people wanted to steal this treasure from him. That little shepherd boy actually drew a bunch of ghosts. Those evil spirits slaughtered several families and killed many people. When the matter became serious, they reported it to Chaotian, Quebec. The little shepherd boy knew that he had committed a serious crime and disappeared. But the paintbrush was still in his hand. It is a huge threat. So we have deployed a lot of manpower to look for him. I am also one of them. It is said that if I can make merit this time, the previous matters can be put aside for the time being. Otherwise, I will go back to jail again. Chin Huaji looked at Li Chu expectantly. Li Sin he said, I can come to you to try out Taoist Priest Li's magical powers. If you are willing to help me, then I will probably find the target. Before Li Chu agreed, Yu Qian said first, Disciple, I need help with this. Chin Huaji was greatly moved, and he paused and said, The old Taoist is highly righteous. Then I heard Yu Qian say, Don't rush to hand over the brush to the state when you get it. Take it back and give it to the master for a few days. The master also has a dream of painting. Chin Huaji. Li Chu. On the day Li Chu left with Chin Huaji, a salesman came to Shilippo carrying haystacks filled with candied haws. Although this man was dressed in shabby clothes and had a dark complexion, he did look like a salesman. But looking at the sparkle in his eyes and the demeanor when he walked, he didn't look like a poor man in any way. This man is none other than Mr. Wu of Xieshen Dao, the chief minister of Jiangnan Palace. A few days have passed since I met the little koi on the street that day. During this time, he has been secretly investigating Diyun Temple. The more I checked, the more frightened I became. The young Taoist priest, who is at the peak of his career, has been able to exorcise evil spirits many times without fail. And every time he kills the enemy with one sword, his cultivation level is difficult to determine. The little Taoist priest is so powerful, not to mention his master, who can only be described as unfathomable. Maybe it's a reclusive great man of the world. Moreover, the Yin Yu sect seven sect convict actually died in this Taoist temple. He knew the young man with seven knives. Even if Mr. Wu were to confront him head on, there was no guarantee of victory. So when he came this time, he had already made up his mind. You could only outweep, not attack by force. This little koi loves sweets, especially candied haws. And there are not many candied haws sellers in Jiangnanzu, and even fewer in this rural area. As long as you sell the candied haws on your own and hide the spell on the candied haws, you won't be afraid that she won't take the bait. Before hawking, he first selected an area in Shilippo, secretly planted four small black flags, and laid out a tight formation. This is the secret technique of Xie Shen Dao, 
which is used to block the effects of luck. If not, no matter how you deal with a person blessed with great luck, she may have 10,000 ways to escape, but all in vain. It was this secret technique that helped King Jian and catch so many koi. But the plan almost went awry, because his formation hadn't been set up yet. The little koi came to find it on its own. As soon as she saw the salesman, she immediately explained in surprise. Look, I just said it smells like candied haws. Mr. Wu was shocked. This guy actually came here by himself after smelling the smell. You are a fish, not a dog. Helpless. He had to sell the prepared candied haws to the little koi. The little koi left happily. Mr. Wu breathed a long sigh of relief. And after a while, a sneer appeared on his face. Ha ha. So what about the colorful koi? Even if it is blessed by great luck, it still falls into my trap? His witchcraft was buried on the string of candied haws. The power of a witchcraft is that it is hard to guard against. The function of this witchcraft is to deprive one of luck. That's right. Luck cannot flow from more to less. But unlike the evil spirits at that time, he arranged this witchcraft to target the entire Xingqi Academy. He only targets the little koi. So he has a lot more room for maneuver. This witchcraft can gradually deprive the little koi of its luck. Start with the loose parts and work your way to the core. She might not notice it at first. But by the time she notices it, it's already too late. The beneficiary of this deprivation is not Mr. Wu himself, but him as a bridge, directly offering sacrifices to the evil god. This can reduce a lot of unnecessary losses. A far away unknown place. The evil spirit, who was trying hard to warm up his new body and try to return to his peak strength, instantly felt the thoughts of the believer. So it passed through the night and gave the only believer a thought of appreciation. Well done. It felt a gurgling flow of luck flow to itself through the channel established by the believer. Pure and abundant. Much more than before. It's very satisfying. He couldn't help but smile. With the addition of this large amount of luck, the day when he can regain his strength and take revenge on the little Taoist priest is getting closer. But before its smile fully unfolded, it suddenly froze. Because it suddenly realized that the suction power of the witchcraft that had been sucking luck from itself suddenly strengthened. Just like. Originally there was only one mouth sucking. But now there are suddenly two mouths sucking. His chest began to ache. This speed is too fast. No. What happened? In shock. He had no choice but to increase his demands on believers. Otherwise if this continues. He may be sucked dry before long. But something terrible happened. When he draws more luck from the channels established by believers. In turn. The channel that absorbs itself begins to become stronger and stronger. Rapid circulation. Ah. It seems to be a vicious cycle. The harder it sucks. The harder it is sucked. And the losses in the process are completely borne by itself. Witchcraft is a magical inheritance created by the witch god. Even though the evil spirits have studied it for endless years. They still cannot understand 10% of it. After all. That is the realm of god. At best. They can only be applied and cannot be fully understood. For example, now, the evil spirits don't know why this is happening. If it had come into contact with something called a power bank, it might have a deeper understanding of its situation. If you charge yourself, you will either run out of power or have a short circuit. It feels like a pool, with water in and out, all getting faster and faster. Output before and after. Faster and faster. Unbearable. It's going to be broken. Bang. After an unknown amount of time, its uncontrollable body suddenly let out a loud roar. The evil spirit collapsed on the high platform. Legs spasm involuntarily. Can't move. Oops. Many thoughts flashed through its mind. And thousands of words were combined into one sentence. This luck is poisonous. At this time, Mr. Wu was immersed in the happiness of being praised. He was praying very devoutly. My master, please enjoy my most sincere offering. And then give me more power. He couldn't think of it anyway. His master, the evil spirit, was also praying silently in his heart at this time. Who can help me? Chapter 152 The Storm is Coming The little shepherd boy's name is Ma Liang. He is only 11 or 12 years old. Maybe because he was lonely since he was young. His mind is a little more mature. But under the dragnet of the Yaman and Chaokian cave, it is a bit strange that he was able to abscond for so many days. The place where he last appeared was in Xiling County. The Yaman quickly sealed off the entire county. Only people were allowed in, but not allowed out. We have been investigating for three days, but there is still no trace of him. When Li Chu followed Chen Huaji to Xiling County, it was almost dusk. 
Chen Huaji stood on a high slope outside the county seat and told him about the current situation. Many of the ghosts he drew the day before yesterday are also lurking in this county. There may be trouble at some point. Chao Tian Kei is doing its best to investigate and will kill them if found. It's just that those ghosts seem to have escaped his control. Li Chu listened quietly, thoughtfully. After a while, he asked, Where did the shepherd boy live? Banshan Village in Xiling County. Chen Huaji was a little surprised. What? I want to take a look, Li Chu said. Oh, okay. Anyway, Banshan Village is not far away, and the two of them walked very fast. So they arrived in a short time, arriving at Ma Liang's former residence. There was a small thatched house that had almost collapsed. It can be seen that his past life was not good, but on the walls and the ground inside and outside the thatched house, there are many traces drawn with charcoal or branches, which are quite subtle. He is indeed a shepherd boy who likes painting. Next to the thatched hut was a row of cattle pens, which were also empty at this time. Li Chu asked, Where are the cows he originally raised? Chen Huaji thought for a while and said, Maybe the owner took them away? After all, the cattle he raised are the landlord's fault. It seems that on the day he disappeared, he opened the cattle pen and let the cattle run away. I can't remember clearly. He scratched his head. After all, ordinary people wouldn't pay much attention to this. The reason why Li Chu asked was because the master quietly mentioned it before leaving. A shepherd boy was led by an old cow into a mysterious cave in the wind and rain and got a magic pen. In this story, all eyes are focused on the shepherd boy and the paintbrush. Instead, Yuqian reminded him to find the old cow if there was a chance. Maybe it's even more precious than that magic pen. Thinking about it carefully, if the cave was so easy to enter, the shepherd boy would not be able to get the paintbrush. The cow that can enter it is indeed somewhat magical. It's a pity it's gone. In the thatched house, there is another wall, which is strangely blank at this time. But the smell of low-quality ink remains. When the mind scans it, there is still a gloomy atmosphere. Chen Huaji explained that at that time, Ma Liang's family heard that he had such a magic pen and wanted to seize it. Ma Liang drew some ghosts on this wall and asked them to deal with the landlord. Unexpectedly, as soon as those ghosts were born, they seemed to escape his control and directly slaughtered the landlord's family and also implicated several nearby families. Those ghosts seem to be able to become stronger by sucking blood and are very harmful. While talking, the two of them had returned to Xiling County. At night, the small county town was very quiet. The Yaman has informed you that there have been ghosts and monsters in the city recently. If you have nothing to do, don't go out. Close the doors and windows at night and be vigilant. As a result, people in the city were in panic, and not many people dared to take to the streets even during the day. Li Chu opened his mind and instantly covered the entire county. He could feel dozens of ghosts scattered here and there. However, Ma Liang's existence was no different from that of a mortal. And he could not find it. Opening his eyes, he shook his head at Chen Huaji. Isn't it possible? Chen Huaji was a little disappointed. I don't know where this kid is hiding. The Yaman sent out many people to check the whole city door to door. But they couldn't find him. Li Chu analyzed calmly. Two assumptions can be made now. One is that he has left Xiling County through some unknown method. This is impossible, Chen Huaji said. But after a pause, he felt a little unconfident. It's 80% impossible unless he can turn into a fly. We can't handle that. So we can only stick to the second hypothesis, Li Chu continued. He is in Xiling County. If we can't find out, there are several possibilities. For example, he changed his body shape in some way. He has some kind of special hiding method and he hides it in a place where no one can find it. Thinking about it this way, there are too many uncertain conditions, and there is no way to start, unless a certain condition can be found. What definite conditions? Chen Huaji still looked confused. Li Chu sighed secretly. He didn't seem to be able to match his teammates with online IQs. This condition must be something he needs, such as food and water. But these things are necessary for everyone. So it is not easy to distinguish. If we want to find him, we must have a condition that he needs that is not what ordinary people need. In accordance with, Chen Huaji was dumbfounded. Li Chu muttered, Ink. He uses a magic pen to paint. And he also needs ink. Oh, Chen Huaji suddenly realized. Xiling is not a big county. There are not many scholars in the city. And the number of people who buy books and ink is relatively fixed. Go to the study store to check the strangers who have bought ink recently. Maybe you will gain something. 
Li Chu finally said directly. Give a conclusion. That's right. Chin Huaji thumped his left hand with his right fist and said with a smile. It sounds ordinary and simple from what you said. But it seems difficult to think about it yourself. Li Chu said. It's not difficult. But you have done too few questions. As long as you practice diligently, you can master the problem-solving ideas. Qin Lian Qin Lian? Lu Qin Lian? Chen Huaji was startled. Are you talking about Michao Lu? Li Chu shook his head helplessly. Licking poison attacks the heart. Hopeless. But? Li Chu didn't think he would be the first to think of this. There are many capable people in Chao Tian Palace. And someone must have taken the lead. If all his disciples were of Chen Huaji's level of intelligence, then the twelve immortal sect of Chao Tian K should have abdicated their throne long ago. Maybe the results will come out tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow. The top priority tonight is to eliminate the ghosts lurking in the city. Just as the two were about to set off, they heard a loud roar from the north of the city that shook the sky. Chen Huaji's expression changed. It's my cloud-penetrating arrow directed towards Tian K. Someone is in danger. A cloud-piercing arrow. Thousands of troops come to meet you. Ignoring the vulgar slogan of complaining, Li Chu rushed over with Chen Huaji. With lightning speed, because he could see that five ghosts gathered in that direction, and a cultivator's aura was surrounded by them. Boom. A courtyard wall was smashed through. A man standing under the Chaotian gate rushed out with a flying sword. And there were hundreds of silver lights flashing around him to protect his body. Hundred swords technique. These sword lights were all solid and real. Flying up and down around him. But there were several extremely fast shadows around them. Swishing around. Suddenly impacting towards them and several flying swords piercing through them. But the black shadows didn't even care. Roar. Seven or eight flying swords pierced through. And the black shadow only let out a sharp roar. There were holes in its body. But there was no blood. And only a few drops of black ink dripped. Looking at its figure, it looks like a huge bat with wings spread over one foot. The bat approached the cultivator's body, and a pair of sharp claws like iron hooks stretched out, trying to grab his shoulders. He raised his two fingers under the Chaotian gate and made them form one. And shouted, Screech. Boom. The blazing fire came out of his hand and blasted the bat ghost several feet away. But at the same time, there were several other ghosts that looked like jackals, tigers, and leopards, each with long wings. They broke through the sword formation at the same time and rushed over. The people at Chaotian Palace were complaining endlessly. He originally just discovered the figure of a ghost today. He was greedy for success and did not immediately call his fellow disciples, but chased after it alone. Unexpectedly, there were five ghosts hidden in the courtyard, and each one is much stronger than the ones encountered before. The strength of these ghosts is obviously constantly improving. He released the ringing arrows and broke through the siege. Although his speed was very fast, he didn't know if he could hold on to the support of his fellow disciples. Life and death are only between lightning and flint. He knew that as long as he wandered around in the alleys and houses for a while, using the terrain as cover to avoid these things, he would have a high chance of survival. However, just behind the courtyard wall, he just broke through. He heard a child crying. Oops. Once the people are implicated, they will die. With this thought in mind, he gritted his teeth, resolutely turned the tip of his sword, and rushed towards the spacious long street on the other side. Call out. However, the wider the open space, the harder it is to get rid of those things. Roar. A flying tiger fell from the sky and pounced on its food viciously. With black air lingering between its claws, he was instantly dwarfed and could hardly avoid it. But he was not careful when the black energy passed by him, and he lost a piece of flesh in an instant. Laugh. Blood spurts. Perhaps stimulated by the smell of blood. Several ghosts and monsters around him roared. The bad ghost also made a comeback as if it hadn't been injured. The man under the Chaotian K sect was unstable with his sword skills, and fell from the sword with a thud. Hundreds of sword lights shuttled back and forth, holding his figure up. But that's all they can do. No amount of sword energy is enough to kill these ghosts. Damn it. He cursed secretly in his mind. Why are these things as if they can't be killed? The very second this thought appeared in his mind, Li Chu and Chen Huaji appeared on the street. Li Chu looked at the injured cultivator under the claws, and was about to draw his sword. Suddenly I heard a loud cry in the air, attracting the attention of everyone in ghosts. I saw a huge night owl flash past, as if crossing a dark cloud under the moon. Immediately, a black shadow fell from the back of the night owl, 
pure black clothes, pure black knife, sharp sword, sharp eyes, laugh, laugh. At the moment when the figure broke through the wind and fell, the two ghosts closest to the injured person instantly split into two halves. Because it was too fast, it was completely impossible to see. What exactly was the movement that chopped them apart? There was only a continuous bang-bang sound, and two balls of ink scattered in the air. Roar. The other three ghosts roared uneasily, and all retreated. Fear. The figure stood up straight. He was wearing a black cloak, hunting and dancing, and his body looked like a dragon. The left hand is a black sword, which is better than the color of ink, and the right hand is a bright white sword, which is better than the color of snow. There are people coming with swords and swords, and one person is like a thousand troops. Commander Jean, the injured man said excitedly. Commander Jean! Chin Huaji on the street also smiled. The cultivators who were gathering from all directions shouted in unison. Twenty guards under the Chaotian gate. Respectfully welcome Commander Jean. It seemed that after just a second of confrontation, the three ghosts finally gave in. They turned around together and ran away like crazy. But can I leave? Boom. There seemed to be two dragons passing by. Passing through the long street causing a huge turbulence and agitation. The next moment, Na Zhan Luming had already jumped up and landed lightly on the back of the night owl. He stood with his head held high and his eyes were like lightning. The night owl gave a long cry, spread its wings and flew towards the moon. A moment later, a pair of swords came back from the other side of the long street and returned to his palms, and those three ghosts disappeared into ashes at some point. Li Chu looked up at the departing night owl. Is this the most popular exhibition in Hangzhou? It's really cool. He had already passed out without even looking at the injured fellow student on the ground. A slightly noisy night passed. It's daybreak. There was a knock on the door of a small house in Shilin County. A middle-aged man in a green shirt went out to open the door. He was staggering. Skinny. And his temples were turning white. As if he had suffered for half his life. Opening the door. A woman in a gorgeous red dress walked in. This woman was seen to be in her prime. With skin as white as snow and sparkling eyes. And for a moment, she was as beautiful as a fairy in a painting. Standing next to this middle-aged man, he felt a little out of place. But when she saw this middle-aged man, she immediately held his hand and said, Master! Hey! M.O. Xian! The middle-aged man carefully closed the door, turned around, and said with a wry smile, I told you! Just call me Ma Lian, And don't call me Master again! The woman named M.O. Xian looked at his haggard look and said, it's all thanks to your creation that I can come to the world of the sun. If I don't call you master, do you still want me to call you father? Is that okay? The middle-aged man's eyes lit up, as if he thought of something happy. His response was a soft, Bah! The middle-aged man walked into the house with a sneer and said at the same time, Is him on my back? Yeah. Emosian nodded. The middle-aged man then showed a sincere smile and said, Let me draw you a bracelet. Many girls on the street were wearing them that day. You should have won too. Owner! Emosian held his hand with tears in his eyes. You can't use that magic pen anymore. The middle-aged man touched his hair and said, It's like this anyway. Not even a little bit worse. The older I get, the harder it is to be discovered. Emosian sobbed and said, Yes, a bracelet can consume so many years of life. The owner should not do it at all. He should not use that magic pen to create living beings. Now. Every day that I and those ghosts live, this lifespan will be counted on you. As she spoke, she took out a sharp knife from her arms. I have made up my mind to make my own decision today to relieve the master's burden. When the middle-aged man saw this, he didn't panic. He just smiled. He closed his eyes slightly and said, You are dead. So I only need to draw you again. I will remember every stroke of your hand and make sure it is accurate. Emosian said, What are you doing? I... The middle-aged man said with a smile. A while ago, I was a little shepherd boy with no hope in life. I liked to draw, but couldn't afford pen and ink. I didn't dare to talk to any girl I liked. Maybe I should have been like this all my life. If you can't afford a wife, you can't touch a pen. Thanks to this magic pen, I have seen the most magical things in the world. So far, the most satisfying thing I have drawn is you. He looked at the woman in front of him lovingly. Emotion. You made me understand what love is. The woman's face turned red and she spat. The middle-aged man was stunned for a moment. Immediately, he chuckled and shook his head and said, Now, 
I just hope that Chao Tian K will clear out those ghosts and monsters quickly and unblock the county. Then we can find a place to remain anonymous and stay together for the rest of our lives. Even if it's a little short. I deserve to live a few more years. Mo Xian seemed to be looking forward to such a scene and was very moved. For a moment, there was deep affection. In a shadow invisible to the naked eye, two ghosts squatted on the ground, holding their heads with their wings, shivering. With the cleaning of Chao Tian Tower last night, all the ghosts and monsters in Xiling County were wiped out. Even many evil spirits that originally existed in the county were affected. There are still two fish that slipped through the net here, which is really strange. In front of the two ghosts, two strange figures stood. Both of them were wearing ancient robes. The white ones looked like gray, and the blue ones looked like green. They all have strange bronze masks on their faces. One is crying, and the other is smiling. You can't even see the edges. It's like it's framed on your face. I know that you can feel the position of the master of the magic pen. The man with the crying face said in a strange voice. You have to rely on him to survive. And you are afraid that he will find a way to get rid of you. So you have been avoiding him. The smiling man also continued in a strange voice. Take us to find him. I have a way to get the magic pen and let you live. Crying face said. No need to doubt. We won't lie to you. Because we come from. The smiling man said proudly. The alien demon sect. Alien demon gate? The two ghosts both showed extremely horrified faces. Immediately, the two of them looked at each other, their eyes communicating wildly. What is the alien demon gate? I do not know. I do not know either. Damn it. Why don't you know anything? How many days have I been born? You don't know anything. You were born a damn moment earlier than me. So why are you shocked? I was shocked because I saw you shocked. I was shocked because you saw me shocked. I was shocked when I saw you were shocked. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. Looking at the two ghosts nesting in silence. The man with the crying face seemed a little impatient. He raised his hand and pointed. Bang. Without seeing what was happening. The ghost on the left suddenly exploded. The ghost on the right got a face full of ink. Shock. The ghost on the right trembles as he looks at the two masked men. The smiling man asked. Can you take us to find the owner of the magic pen now? The ghost immediately nodded wildly like a ghost, south of Jiangnan, by the South China Sea, a place with beautiful mountains and clear waters. On one side of the ancient mountain peak with the sound of clear springs, a huge nest was built on the cliff next to the sea. Looking at the scale, even the largest bird in the world would be more than enough to live in it. If it were in a well-traveled place, this giant nest would definitely attract thousands of tourists to watch. It is in this secluded place that one can find incomparable tranquility. When we came to this giant nest, the first thing we saw was a Taoist temple. Yes, there is actually a Taoist temple here. A plaque reading, Mulberry Temple, hangs at the entrance of the Taoist temple. There is indeed a big mulberry tree in the view. I don't know why it can grow on this rootless cliff. A black-faced Taoist priest was sitting cross-legged under the tree, with a dark square face. He does not look like a Taoist priest, but rather an old farmer who has been working in the fields for many years. He is breathing quietly, with each breath. Two air dragons circled from the sea. Birds followed. It seems like a moment. But it has been seven days. This peaceful scene seems to be unable to be broken even by white clouds and dogs. Until this day, there was a knock on the door outside. The black-faced Taoist priest was slightly unhappy. Dispersed the two chi dragons. And asked, Who is it? A young man's gentle and respectful voice sounded outside the door. Junior Wajuga. Come and pay homage. Chapter 153 You come up and I will appear. Because of a magic pen, undercurrents surged in this small county town. Even in broad daylight, few people dared to wander on the streets. Last night, the sound of swords and the roar of ghosts were heard frequently in the city, frightening many people who were used to living a peaceful life. Evil spirits have occurred frequently recently. Not only Hangzhou Prefecture. I heard that this is the case all over Jiuzhou. Rumor has it that inside information has leaked out from the city in prison. The Nandu is tilted. The fortune of the dynasty is declining. And the world will soon be in chaos. The proliferation of monsters is just a sign of the chaos. For a time, people were panicked. But in a small courtyard in the city, there are peaceful days. Ma Liang bowed in front of the table, which was covered with a large piece of rice paper. He held up his wrist, held the pen in his hand, and splashed ink. Of course, I used an ordinary brush. Mo Xian was quietly adding spices to the beast stove, grinding with plain hands. 
red sleeves at fragrance. This was a scene that Ma Liang had only dared to dream about in his dreams. And now, he got what he wanted. But he lost his most precious time, and became a middle-aged man. The gains and losses in the process are difficult to calculate. But he was a smart man, and thought that given his background, it would be good if he didn't starve to death, even if I work hard for half my life. I don't know how lucky I am to reach such a situation. At this point, just skip the hard work and fast forward to enjoying the results. Think about it this way. You can make money with blood. Unfortunately, happy times are always short-lived. Mo Xian was about to take out the embers poured out of the furnace, and suddenly heard two popping sounds, as if something heavy had fallen in the courtyard. She opened the door, and was greeted by a sharp cold light. Dang lang lang. The jar containing the furnace ashes fell to the ground, and Mo Xian stepped backwards and retreated into the house. Outside the door, for tough masked men forced themselves into the house. One of them was holding a dagger and said in a low voice, Don't make any noise. Don't make trouble. The gentlemen only want money, not life. A little man from behind said sharply, This little girl is so pretty. Why don't we take advantage of her and rob her of her beauty? A man with a scar between his eyebrows turned back and glared at him. The little man immediately shrank his neck. Mo Xian looked at Ma Liang helplessly. Ma Liang put down his pen calmly and said, You guys, our small family and courtyard don't have much savings. There are some scattered silver coins in the box beside the table. That's all our money. If you take it, please leave. A man went over to open the wooden box he mentioned. And sure enough, he took out some silver from it. About 20 or 30 tails scattered here and there. The man with the scar between his eyebrows looked at Ma Liang and sneered. Oh, you still want to deceive us? If you only have this little savings, how can you afford such good paper? Such good ink? Are you really ignorant? Good boy. The little man screamed again. It seems that you won't shed tears when you see the calamity. With that said, he was about to step forward and pull him in. Stop! Ma Liang shouted. He glared at a group of strong men and said, If you think this paper and ink is valuable, you can take it away. I am a poor family. I came from other places and my family really has no money left. In fact, as long as he picked up the ordinary looking ball brush beside him, he could draw thousands of tails of gold and silver at will for the convenience of going out. He has always used gold and silver as he goes. So he doesn't have much savings. But if the magic pen is used in front of this group of thieves at this time, they will take away more than just gold and silver. If he lost his magic pen, for Malian now, it would be tantamount to losing half his life. Really half a life. The scarred man stared at him, seeming to be thinking. The little man on the side said, Brother, this person has made it clear that he is tricking us. I suggest you rob him and put some pressure on him. The scarred man finally nodded. Okay. Ha ha. The little man laughed evilly and stepped forward to pull him Xian again. The scarred man grabbed the back of his neck and threw him out of the house, saying, I'll explore the way ahead. After a thud outside, another flattering voice came. It should. It should. Brother, please take a preemptive strike. The younger brother strikes later and everyone takes turns to strike first. Although Mo Xian came out of the painting, she is no different from an ordinary woman and does not have any magical powers at all. Seeing that she was about to be humiliated, Ma Liang was so angry that he picked up the magic pen beside him and sketched on the paper. Mo Xian suddenly called him. Master! No. Ma Liang looked at her concerned eyes and understood what she meant. If he drew another ghost, he might become an old man. But the current situation... Ma Liang had no choice but to draw a very realistic steel knife after some thought and a few strokes. In a flash of light, the steel knife popped out of the drawing paper and appeared on the table. Ma Liang lifted it up, strode forward, and shouted, Let him Xian go! Without him having to say anything, the scarred man's attention had already shifted from him Xian to him. The man looked at the brush on Ma Liang's table greedily. The reason why our brothers are trapped in this city and can't get out is because a little shepherd boy picked up a magic brush. Everything he draws can come true. This is a pen is actually here. Ma Liang stepped forward with a knife and angrily shouted. Get out of here if you know it. Huh? The man sneered. How about you give me a try? As he spoke, he walked towards Ma Liang. Ma Liang had no intention of killing. But when he saw him approaching again and again, he became panicked, frowned, shouted, and swung his knife fiercely. Clang. The steel knife hit the man's neck hard. 
But the sound it made was not the sound of the blade penetrating into flesh. But the sound of gold and iron colliding. Ha ha! The man sneered, took out a book from his arms, and waved it in front of Ma Liang's eyes. I saw only eight big characters on it. Learning the iron shirt in thirty days. Do you know me? The scarred man said. I have been studying iron shirt by myself for three years. With this rubbish technique, I have become invulnerable. I have a talent. And I robbed my house just to continue to learn martial arts from my master. I have already contacted the Yin Zhao Gate in the north. They can accept me as long as 500 tails of silver. Originally, I didn't want to kill anyone. But I couldn't have imagined that I actually met the magic pen here. Ha ha ha. From now on, I will practice martial arts and just cultivate immortality. Outside the door, the little man watching the wind couldn't hear it clearly. And he was puzzled for a while. Brother. What happened to him to make him feel so happy? Could it be some kind of legendary weapon? He couldn't help but rub his hands. Expect? You? Inside the house? Ma Liang didn't expect that there was actually a warrior among this group of thieves. It was too late to pick up a brush and paint. In desperation, he could only swing the sword again and wanted to strike again. But the scarred man didn't give him a chance. He flew up with a kick. And there was a bang. Ma Liang's thin body flew high. Hit the wall and slowly slid down like a painting. Master! Emosian shouted tenderly. From now on, your master will be me. Ha ha ha! The scarred man picked up the magic pen and looked at Ma Liang, who was lying aside. With a cold gaze, the news of being pregnant with a treasure must not be leaked out. Not just this person. The scarred man has made up his mind that not one of the brothers who came with him tonight will be left behind. If a person is not ruthless, he cannot stand firm. He was about to pick up the steel knife and hit Ma Liang, when he saw the little man outside suddenly walked in with a strange look on his face. The scarred man frowned. Didn't I ask you to look out for the wind? Yes, the little man said. I came in just to inform you that the people from Kaodiank are here. Huh? Where are you? It's behind me. After saying that, the little man took a few steps forward, revealing a black figure behind him. The scarred man's pupils narrowed instantly. Leave a name for the exhibition? Yes. The person who came was dressed in black, with a stern face and lightning-like eyes. It is the youngest commander in Chaotian Palace who has left his mark. In the past few years, all thieves walking around Hangzhou must remember Zhang's name and be on guard in advance. But at this time, it was already too late to be careful. Brothers! Scarface shouted. Let's get on our shoulders. If you kill him, you will be rich and powerful. This is not a lie on his part. How can the magic pen held in his hand be described by the word, wealth? Only. The person in front of them cannot be dealt with by them all together. John Looming turned his eyes. Raised his eyebrows. And there seemed to be an invisible explosion. Bang. 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 There were four strong men gathered together. All of them fainted and fell to the ground without saying a word. And the tall young man standing at the door clearly didn't move. Just a look in his eyes. The strong man is so coercive and terrifying. If he wanted to, he could even scare these strong men to death on the spot. The dust has settled. Pause. John left his name before asking aloud. Are you Ma Liang? Ma Liang and Imo Xian in the room were not attacked by his coercion and were conscious at this time. But Ma Liang couldn't say a word. He looked at the commander of Kaodiank who came to his door. He knew that his true feelings had been exposed and could only smile bitterly. As Li Chu expected, when John Looming came the day before yesterday, he had already ordered the Yaman to cooperate in the investigation of the study shop. At this time, he happened to find a woman in red who was very suspicious. He came to check and encountered the scene. Save Ma Liang and Mo Xian. But Ma Liang didn't know whether he should be sad or happy. After a long time, he responded, It's me! John Looming picked up the magic pen from the ground and glanced at Ma Liang again. There is indeed a price for putting pen to paper, and making it come true. Because he is only immortal. How can he master such immortal weapons? Suddenly there was a gloomy voice outside the house. John Liuming's eyes were solemn, and he said to Ma Liang and Mo Xian, Don't come out. After that, he walked alone into the courtyard and met two strange masked men. One wears a bronze mask. The other also wears a bronze mask. It's just that the left side is a crying face, and the right side is a smiling face. Behind the two of them, there was a ghost with its head downturned like a pet. When it saw John looming, it blinked its big eyes like copper bells. 
Maybe it brought back some bad memories from last night. It's all your fault for delaying things. We're late. The crying man said in a low voice and looked at the ghost. The ghost suddenly trembled all over, as if he wanted to beg for mercy. But before he could say a word, the crying man pointed his finger at it, and it exploded with a bang. Ink splatters. Here, the smiling man said to Jean Lu, Leave the magic pan and you can go. Jean Luming did not say anything, and looked at them coldly. His left and right hands went back respectively, holding a pair of swords behind his back on his left shoulder and right waist. Black sword. White sword. The world's magic weapon. I've heard that you, the youngest commander of Chao Yan K, are born with an immortal body and seven stars to follow your orders. But I advise you, it's best not to draw your sword. The smiling man's voice was cheerful and seemed out of tune with the tense atmosphere. You can ask your life star. Once you draw the sword, will you die? The cry-faced man's voice was extremely gloomy, as if someone owed him a few ounces of money. John Leoming's face was as sinking as water. He is indeed born with an immortal body, and the immortal body he carries is called Seven Stars Illuminating Life. As the name suggests, he was born with the Big Dipper to guide him. Beidou is the main killer. He can see where everyone's death omen is, and detonate and trigger this death omen. Relying on this ability, he has been in the industry for many years without a single defeat. But sometimes, the omen of death will appear on his head. At this time, he knew that he had encountered something life-threatening. Relying on this ability, he also escaped many catastrophes of life and death. For example, today, ever since these two weirdos appeared, he felt that his destiny was dimming. Danger? I thought about it for a long time. He placed the magic pen quietly on the ground. The appearance of these two weirdos was obviously unexpected. Kaodiank was not well prepared for the forces that might be involved behind the magic pin. There is no need to make unnecessary sacrifices. This is not an escape. It's a strategic retreat. I'm going to take those two in the house. He said. Whatever. The smiling man spread his hands and said. We are law-abiding citizens, and we are not here to kill people. After saying that, John left his name and retreated into the house. Helping him Ocean and Ma Liang up. If they were left here, they would most likely be killed casually. Save if you can. Bang. John Looming led the two of them straight through the roof and flew high into the sky. A night owl shot out of the thorns. And he stepped on the bird's back. Before leaving, he looked back. His gaze is profound. This kid makes me feel bad. The crying man muttered. Shouldn't we let him go? This kid will definitely become a big trouble in the future. Who doesn't know this? That is a natural immortal body. As long as it grows up. Who is not a powerful person? As soon as the smiling man raised his hand, the magic pin on the ground automatically fell into his sleeve without any wind. Then he said, But it's not that easy for us to kill him. And it will also lead to revenge from Chaotian, Quebec. If the matter of Demon Dao Xinzong is exposed, it will be even more troublesome. Yes, but not necessary. After putting away the magic pin, the two of them turned and left. When they walked out of the courtyard, they found someone waiting outside. When the man saw them, he smiled slightly and said, Long time no see. Sir! The man had a black square face, like an old farmer. But he was wearing a clean blue robe, which was a bit inconsistent. The crying-faced man and the smiling-faced man froze on the spot when they saw him. Sand out people. The cry-faced man let out a low cry, as if he was really about to cry. Are you just going to stand and talk to me? Taoist Nazong asked casually. Many years have passed since the feud between the alien demon sect and you. The smiling man seemed to want to smooth things over. Mr. Sang glanced at it. Plop. Plop. The crying-faced man and the smiling-faced man knelt down together, without any trace of their calm demeanor. Coward. I came to this city to find someone else, but I didn't want my spiritual consciousness to sweep over and find you. Tell me, what are you here for? We, the smiling man hesitated, not knowing how to answer. Taoist Sang said calmly. Don't lie. I can see it. It's the Demon Dao Immortal Song. The crying-faced man said directly. The Demon Dao Immortal Song is about to appear. This is why we are going to Jiang in this time. No wonder. I said you guys who can't stand on the stage. Why do you suddenly dare to come south? Mr. Sang scratched his head. I just got something. Put it on the ground. You can get out. Mr. Sang. This matter is of great importance. The smiling man wanted to say something else. Taoist Sang raised his eyes again. He suddenly threw the magic pen on the ground. 
turned around and ran away, shouting at the same time. Goodbye! The crying-faced man was shocked by the speed of his companion's escape. It felt like such a big person beside him was gone in an instant. After blinking, he quickly stood up and walked away. The large streets and alleys inside and outside suddenly became deserted, with only the old Taoist left. With a movement of his fingers, he took the magic pen into his palm, looked at it, and smelled it. Sure enough, it tastes like Taoist brother. I didn't expect there would be unexpected gains from this trip. He smiled and put the magic pen in his arms. Then, he stood up and muttered. Then, there is the little Taoist priest named Li Chu. He is said to be extremely handsome. I want to see how handsome he is. Just as he was about to turn on his spiritual consciousness and scan the entire Shiling County, he suddenly noticed that a little Taoist priest was walking over at the street in front of him visible to the naked eye. He was wearing a plain blue Taoist robe, with a calm expression and an extremely handsome appearance. This word is so apt. It's the kind of person that when you see this person and think about this adjective, you immediately know that there will be no other person. And he must be describing him appropriately. Taoist Sang looked at Li Chu with serious eyes. Li Chu and Shen Huaji walked side by side. When he saw the black-faced Taoist priest, he quickly noticed something was wrong. Pupils shrink. Because? Both of them. Wearing shirts. Chapter 154 What a Big Death Star John Luming quickly returned to Xilin County Yaman and took Ma Liang and Emo Xianjua to prison. Since the city was closed, the county government office has been taken over by Chao Yan K. And the prison is also under the supervision of Chao Yan K. All of Ma Liang's experiences will be discussed in detail. Then, he briefly wrote down everything he had just seen and heard in the letter. The letter paper was rolled up and placed in a small gold tube. When he walked into the courtyard and whistled, a smaller night owl flew over and landed on his shoulder. Tie the golden tube to the night owl's leg and let it deliver the message to the capital. After doing all this, he breathed a sigh of relief. Thinking of the life and death crisis just now, he glanced in the direction of the courtyard where Ma Liang lived. This glance made his dark pupil suddenly shrink. I saw pale blue clouds in the sky and a huge star teetering on the edge of the sky, almost breaking. What a big death omen star. Can you actually see it from half the city? This is a scene that no one else can see. Even he, who is destined by Qixing, usually just feels something in his heart and will not see such a clear picture because the deceased's cultivation is not enough. The higher the cultivation level of a person, the brighter the life star and the greater the omen of death. He once saw the sign of death of a powerful man in the Vientian realm. There were stars hidden and dust swirling around, as if the sky was about to fall. But compared with the scene in front of me, it pales into insignificance. Could it be? There? Is there a powerful person in the realm of decline who is about to fall? This is too appalling. It is known all over the world that once a cultivator reaches the state of cutting down, it will be difficult for him to die because of people. The only thing that can kill them is heaven. But looking at the intensity of this sign of death, it is clear that this is not normal aging. And it is definitely an unprovoked and violent death compared with the imminent demise of a great power. What is truly frightening is that the existence that can cause a great power to fall must also be in this small city. I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse. Tao Sang looked at Li Chu with an unkind look. Li Chu looked at Tao Sang with a little hesitation. Because this black-faced Taoist priest didn't bother to hide his hostility. But Li Chu didn't know where he had enmity with him. Just because of the matching shirt? Then this anger is too much. Even though he's wearing the same clothes. He's hundreds. Well, a thousand times uglier. It's not like you hate yourself. Right? He just scanned it with his mind and saw that although the black-faced Taoist priest had a restrained aura, he was still as motionless as a mountain, like a master whose realm was unknown. Obviously it won't be seen everywhere in small counties. Such people don't know their enemies or friends. And they don't know the depth of things. Why don't you give it a try with a sword first? This was his first thought. After all, the Taoist scriptures say, strike first to gain advantage, strike later to suffer disaster. But, this is a legal society after all. There was also a civil servant beside him. He glanced at Chen Huaji. Although this guy looked timid, he was proficient in countless ways to escape. And it was not that simple to kill someone and silence them. It's hard to clean up the end. Certainly, the most important thing is that killing people indiscriminately is definitely not something he can do. But the hostile gaze from the other party really made him feel a little uncomfortable. After thinking about it, Li Chu decided, 
It is better to ask the other party in a peaceful and friendly tone why he is looking at you like this. And then decide on the next action. So he walked three feet away from Tao as saying. An extreme distance that allows both parties to maintain a sense of security. Li Chu asked proactively and friendly. What are you looking at? The black-faced Taoist priest looked at Li Chu for a long time, then sneered when he heard his friendly inquiry. You were the one who killed Grandma Lu? He asked bluntly. Grandma Lu? A series of entries such as Grand View Garden, Jia Baoyu, First Test of Yunyu King, etc. flashed through Li Chu's mind. A thousand-year-old willow demon who practices in Hangzhou. Taoist Sang explained patiently. So Li Chu nodded. I did kill a willow tree demon a few days ago. Did it turn out that the other party came to see me specifically because of this matter? Tao Sang asked again. Why did you kill her? Li Chu said. She absorbed Yang Chi and Lan Luo Temple and killed many innocent passers-by. So I took action to kill her. Impossible. Tao Sang frowned. A little disbelieving. Although she acts deviantly, she would not do such a thing that goes against the laws of nature. Li Chu didn't say much and looked at the other party quietly. Tao Sang's eyes fluctuated. He had practiced Taoism's infallible magical power. Whenever someone spoke a word, he could immediately tell whether the words came from their true heart and whether they were true or false. Is it possible? He actually knew it too. Li Chu thought in his heart that this black-faced Taoist priest should have some connection with Grandma Lu. Maybe they are also demons. I just don't know how the other person wants to be treated. Maybe let's try a sword attack first. After a long while, Tao Sang looked at Li Chu and said solemnly, if she really did such a thing. If you kill her, it won't be considered a mistake. Li Chu nodded. It seems that the other party is quite reasonable. John Looming observed carefully for a long time. He had the intention to go forward and check it out. But he hesitated a little. The terrifying existence that can make the great power fall. If he passes by it, the aftermath may be enough to kill him. Taking the initiative to approach him would be a sign of seeking death. But as he watched, the star slowly shrank back into the sky. The surrounding gloomy blue clouds gradually dispersed. And there was a tendency of recovery. This means that this sign of death is being resolved. This phenomenon is not uncommon. The omen of death is just a sign of good or bad luck. Not a message from the king of hell or a life-threatening talisman. No matter how bad the omen is. There is a way to solve it. In the ever-changing moment of life and death. A single thought may make the omen of death come true on the spot. Or it may be possible to find a glimmer of hope for oneself. Because of this, Qixing Xiaoming can be ranked among the immortal bodies. Having a pair of eyes that can see through the ominous omens of the world is an incredible ability. Perhaps only he knew that there was a powerful person in this world who had just experienced a near-death crisis. But, Tao Sang frowned and said, I will investigate carefully. If I find out that she has been practicing peacefully and you are the one who created the killing karma for no reason, I will never spare you. Li Chu has a clear conscience and is naturally not afraid. He smiled, ignored it, and walked towards the courtyard with Chen Huaji. The results of the Yaman's investigation must be given priority to inform Zhan to leave his name. By the time it reached Chen Huaji's ears, it was already much too late. Therefore, they will be quite late on this trip. Mr. Sang was about to leave when he suddenly saw that they seemed to be entering the courtyard and said, There's no need to go in. Huh? The two looked back at him. You are late. The people inside were taken away by a young man riding a big bird. As for the treasure they are fighting for. It is in my hand, said Mr. Sang. You mean the magic pen? Chen Huaji asked. Do you call it a magic pen? That's right. Mr. Sang took out the bald-looking brush from his sleeve and played with it. Not shying away and full of confidence. Looking at the legendary magic pen that made the pen come true. Li Chu's pupil shrank. John Luing looked at the sign of death that was about to come to an end and was about to leave. Suddenly, the sound of wind, thunder, and rumbling seemed to ring in his ears. The star tilted toward the clouds again, slowly rolled down, and the blue clouds reunited, almost pale in color. Death is coming again. John left his name and then frowned. Come again? Why did this powerful man jump repeatedly on the edge of death? Seeing the change in Li Chu's eyes, Tao Sang smiled slightly. Do you want to rob it? It's useless, he said calmly. This pen is an immortal weapon and cannot be controlled by human beings. Maybe you can only use it a few times when you reach the realm of land gods. If ordinary people use it, it will only consume their own vitality and longevity. People with greed will turn into rotten dust in a short time. 
if it falls into the hands of people with evil intentions and is used in other places, the consequences will be even worse. It's unimaginable. So I will never allow it to spread to the world. Li Chu asked, Then what are you going to do with it? Sang Daoran said, The property returns to its original owner. Do you know who its owner is? Of course. Its owner was a senior friend of mine back then. Tao Sang said with emotion, It's a pity that he couldn't find immortality and died in Jiangyan. This magic pen should have been in his tomb. When Li Chu heard what he said, it didn't seem like he was lying. He thought for a moment and said, Then it's up to you. Tao Sang sneered. Otherwise, are you still planning to stop me? Li Chu didn't answer. He had indeed considered countless times in his mind the feasibility of striking the opponent with a sword first. But they all felt that it was not necessary. Interesting. Tao Sang turned around and said, Remember, I may come to you at any time. Immediately, he took a step and disappeared in the blink of an eye. Boom. The blue clouds in midair finally dissipated. The huge star also disappeared back into the sky and stopped falling. The omen of death disappeared. John Looming breathed a sigh of relief. Something that originally had nothing to do with him was caused by this fate star. Still a little nervous. Outside the city, Wajuga and Vidranu were chatting under a big tree. Suddenly, he took a step forward and Tao Sang's black face appeared out of thin air. The two people immediately became serious and stood up to greet each other. Master Sang. Wajuga saluted respectfully. Tao Sang looked at him expressionlessly. I know that you, a member of the demon sect, have evil intentions. You may have another purpose in provoking me to kill that little Taoist priest. Wajuga was startled. What does the Taoist master mean by this? You didn't make it clear to me before that Lu once took the yang energy of a living person to practice. The little Taoist killed him. Which was the right way. If I had done it indiscriminately, wouldn't I have killed a good person by mistake? Sang Tao's people speak calmly without any anger. But some cold sweat broke out on Wujuga's forehead. He seemed to want to explain this. But after saying just one word, he remembered the magical power of Tao's Sang and simply kept silent. Humph. Tao Sang sneered and said, I will find out the whole story myself. You want to use me. But it is your wishful thinking. If it weren't for your grandma's sake, I would definitely punish you. I hope you take care of yourself. After that, he flicked his sleeves, took a step forward, and disappeared into the vast sky. Next to him, the Vidra slave scratched his head and said, This old prime minister seems unreliable? Yes. Wajuga also muttered, Look back at Shuling County, and said, It's a pity that he escaped. Chapter 155 The Tower and Breaks into the Prison at Night Night is like a wolf's deep eyes. In Shuling County Prison, Ma Leon leaned against the cold wall, silently bowing his head. Today he very cooperatively explained all his experiences. The person from Chaofian Cave focused on asking about the location of the mysterious cave. Unfortunately, he didn't know anything, and it was impossible to find it back with his memory. Without the magic pen, he is of little use, and he only needs to wait quietly for the verdict. Because of this, his supervision was not strict. Towards midnight, a figure suddenly appeared in the prison. He seemed to have walked in through a wall, making no sound. Ma Leon was startled and looked at the person in front of him. There was a middle-aged man with a somewhat kind-hearted appearance. He looked like the farmers who lived next door, and his temperament was somewhat familiar. But Ma Leon would never recognize him. Who? He screamed in fright and wanted to call someone. The man smiled and said, Don't you recognize me? Ma Leon was suspicious. Have we met before? Maybe you'll get to know each other this way. The man thought for a while, then touched his face. And in an instant, a human head turned into a bull's head, with a pair of curved horns pointing toward the sky, copper bell-like eyes, huge nostrils, and traces of a ring on the end of the nose. It clearly looks like an old ox that has grown into a spirit. Ma Liang's eyes trembled, and he couldn't help shouting in disbelief. Are you Lao Huang? Lao Huang is the name of his old scalper. It's me! The Torin's voice was muffled, but still honest, looking at Ma Liang. His callous face showed a very humane expression of guilt. I didn't expect you to become like this. Ma Liang smiled bitterly. I don't blame you. But are you a sperm now? Alas. The tower inside. It's a long story. With that said, he came over and put one hand on Ma Liang's head. Ma Liang let him get close. He had been lonely since he was a child and had always regarded this old scalper as his closest relative. Of course, it was before MOCN appeared. 
as Lao Huang put his hand on his head. He suddenly felt a warm current pouring into his head. Call out. In a blink of an eye, he found that his clothes had become extremely loose. No. It's because my body has become smaller. He looked around and touched up and down. Then, he was more surprised than happy and asked, Why have I become so small again? Lao Niu was startled. You don't like becoming smaller? Ma Liang blinked. I think it's better to be a little bigger. How big do you want it to be? At least 18. Lao Niu scratched his head honestly and said, It's okay if I give you the lifespan. But if you deprive me of the lifespan, it would be an evil practice. I can't do it. Ah, Ma Liang sighed. The Taran said, You are growing up slowly. You won't be 18 in a few years. It has to be like this. Ma Liang looked like a thin little shepherd boy with a dark complexion. Although he is 11 or 12 years old, his development looks like he is 8 or 9 years old. What's special about her is that her eyes reveal a maturity that belies her age. On the contrary, his original middle-aged appearance seemed more in line with this look. He looked at the tower and expectantly again. Can you take me out? Of course. The tower and tucked the thin man under his arm. You must follow me. Then can you find him, Oxian? The woman I drew? Xiao Ma Liang shouted again. Yes. I want to find her. The tower and touched his head. Then, it hit it with its horn. And it looked like it was going to poke two holes in the wall. But the next second, it appeared in another cell with a child's body between it. The place where Mo Xian was imprisoned was not far from Ma Liang, because she was no different from a mortal. The guard was not very strict. She was surprised when she saw the Minotaur. When she saw Ma Liang, she was overjoyed again. She had seen Ma Liang like this before, and she didn't know whether to be surprised or happy when she saw him change back. Master, have you become so small again? Yes, Ma Liang replied with a smile, and then quickly said, but don't worry. I will be 18 in a few years. Bah! Emosian blushed and spat. The tower over there looked confused. It felt like they were telling riddles. Ma Lian said, Old Wang, can you take Emosian away with you? Take her away? The tower was stunned for a moment. Aren't you going to kill her? Ma Lian was shocked. On the other hand, Emosian suddenly felt relieved and sighed softly. It should have been like this a long time ago. Ma Lian said angrily. What do you mean? The Tauren said. She is a creature you drew. As long as she lives for one day, she will use your life. I'm not afraid. Ma Liang shouted. I want to stay with him, Xian. It was a bit strange to say this from a child. But he was very serious. But? The Tauren hesitated. You might have lived 70 or 80 years. But with her, you can only live 30 or 40 years. Are you willing to do that? Put me down. Ma Liang didn't answer. He struggled and jumped down from the Torrens' nest and came to Emosien, a little shepherd boy, with a dirty face and wearing loose, ill-fitting clothes, looked at the gorgeous woman in front of him. Emosien, I am willing to share half of my life with you, because I feel that being with you is more enjoyable and meaningful than living alone. He stared at the woman. I know that if I don't tell you clearly today, you will commit suicide in the future, but you have to know that as long as you die, I will no longer have the courage to live alone. Are you willing to be brave and accompany me? Finish this life? Emosian's eyes were suddenly blurred by tears. Behind them, the tower looked at them and scratched their heads in confusion. Ma Liang and I have been together day and night for more than ten years. Why do I feel worse than this woman has been with him these past few days? Mother! A little sour. Li Chu returned to Diyun Temple, but did not bring back the magic pen. Yu Qian was visibly disappointed. Of course, without further delay, he couldn't wait to grab his apprentice and say, Take a photo. Take a photo. After listening to Li Chu describe what he saw in the past two days, he smiled slightly. When I heard what they said, I thought, Where can such a magical pen exist? It turns out to be a raw flower pen. Shenhua pen? It is said that when the heaven and earth first opened, there was a sacred tree named Flower Willow Dot. The Shenhua pen is an immortal weapon made by an immortal from the branches of the Shenhua Willow. Since it is an immortal weapon, it can only be activated with the power of the immortal. If ordinary people want to use it, they can only use it by spending their lifespan. It is said that the writing comes true. Actually, it also depends on whether your longevity is enough. And the creatures you draw will all shorten your lifespan. In fact, there are many restrictions. And they are not very magical. Later, Li Chu talked about the magic pen being taken away by Tao as saying. Yu Qian smiled disdainfully. 
The owner is his senior friend. He must be a demon. Right? This immortal weapon was originally in the Shin ruins in the four great immortal hiding places and was later accidentally obtained by a demon. I heard that the demon has fallen away many years ago and the little shepherd boy probably entered the secret realm of that demon. But there must be some origins as to why he was able to enter. As for that Tao is saying, I've never heard of him. I guess he's just using chicken feathers as arrows. Next time you meet someone who dares to snatch a treasure from us, just give him a try with your sword. The old Taoist priest talked about the figures in the world with a scornful attitude. Li Chu didn't know how to explain to the master that the baby had nothing to do with us and was not snatched from us. At this time, a masked weirdo broke into Yun Temple in a hurry. Li Chu stood up and looked at him warily. Who is he? It's me. The person came and showed the medicine box on his waist. Little miracle doctor? Li Chu was surprised and pointed at him. What are you? Two news. One good and one bad. The little miracle doctor put down the medicine box, sat down, and said, The good news is that I successfully refined the good fortune pill. Um, the bad news is, as he spoke, the little miracle doctor took off the mask, revealing a handsome face, but with an abrupt pig nose on his face. I can't seem to hacking make an antidote. Chapter 156 I think of happy things. See his extremely funny pig nose. The corners of Li Chu's mouth twitched slightly. Then he immediately suppressed this arc. But the little miracle doctor noticed it very sensitively. And a cold light flashed in his eyes. Did you just laugh? No. Li Chu denied seriously. The little miracle doctor was looking at Li Chu suspiciously. Only later did the old Taoist priest see his face. He was surprised at first. And then twitched the corner of his mouth. Kukukuku. He lowered his head and tried to suppress his laughter. The little miracle doctor was ashamed and angry and looked at the old Taoist priest angrily. Are you laughing at me? No. The old Taoist priest waved his hand and wiped his face vigorously before raising his head, barely showing a serious expression. But the corners of his mouth couldn't help but curl up. He quickly pressed it with his fingers. Again. Press again. The little miracle doctor's nose twitched angrily. You are obviously laughing. The old Taoist priest looked at the sky and said, I think of happy things. What happy thing? My wife is giving birth to a baby, the old Taoist priest said with a sullen face. Which of your wives has given birth to a child? The little miracle doctor asked loudly. This guy even gave such perfunctory reasons. He must have been laughing in his heart. I don't remember. I'm not very familiar with him. We haven't contacted Kakuka for more than ten years, the old Taoist priest said, but couldn't hold back anymore. He laughed a few times and then stopped. The corner of Li Chu's mouth next to him twitched again. Why are you laughing again? The little miracle doctor turned to Li Chu angrily. Your wife also gave birth to a child. I didn't. Li Chu denied. Let's get down to business. He changed the topic and asked. Not giving the little miracle doctor a chance to have an attack. How did it become like this? You also took the good fortune pill? Of course. The little miracle doctor nodded and said. If I don't take one, how do I know that the elixir of good fortune has failed? Respectable. Li Chu said solemnly. Doctors are benevolent. Yu Qian also said. Kukukuku. You're going too far. The little miracle doctor slapped the table. I've tolerated you for a long time. The big nostrils were breathing heavily and looked red. It's a bit cute. Yu Qian said. My wife is giving birth to a baby. You were obviously laughing at me. But you never stopped. The little miracle doctor revealed. No. Yu Qian glanced at his apprentice. We have gone through special training. No matter how funny it is, we will never laugh. Yes. Li Chu nodded. At the same time, he silently added in his heart. Unless he couldn't help it, the master and apprentice looked at each other with extremely correct attitudes. Serious. The little miracle doctor settled down with hesitation and was about to tell the story of his process of refining the chemical elixir. At this time, the fox girl walked in from outside, waving her big fluffy white tail. The first thing I saw was naturally Li Chu's face. And the second thing I saw was the little miracle doctor's nostrils. She stayed for two seconds. And then suddenly she arched her eyebrows and pursed her lips. Kukuku. Laughter is the most fearful thing about spreading from person to person. This laughter was like an introduction. And the master and the disciple couldn't help it anymore. And the corners of their mouths raised randomly. Little Koi and Lu Qingyan, who came in hand in hand from behind, didn't see anything yet. So they started laughing too. When they saw it, they laughed even louder. The only insulator in the yard 
was the lonely little miracle doctor. He was unable to stop him, so he could only put on a stern face, looked up at the sky, and murmured, This world is not worth it. Talking means talking. Laughing means laughing. In order to cure Lu Qingyan, the little miracle doctor did not hesitate to test the medicine himself, which still moved her very much. After she realized this, she even wanted to kneel down and thank the little miracle doctor on the spot. The little miracle doctor helped her up indifferently and said, I don't do it all for you. Mainly because I want to challenge this fortune pill. Alas, he sighed. It's just that Bai Shergong's alchemy skills are really superb. Although I can imitate the good luck elixir, I can't figure out how to crack his alchemy method at the moment. Look at him looking deep in thought with a pig's nose on his head. Miss Shalu was moved, and the corner of her mouth curled up. Kukukuku. Little Miracle Doctor. In short, the Little Miracle Doctor will temporarily stay in Diyungwen. Here he can stay away from the hustle and bustle of the world, allowing him to study the method of cracking the good fortune pill with peace of mind. At the same time, it can also prevent him from being seen by too many people and causing social death. The arrival of the Little Miracle Doctor also triggered some thinking in Li Chu. For cultivators in the world, cultivation has never been a simple upgrade game and also includes many complicated knowledge systems. Making talismans, refining weapons, refining elixirs. These are all subjects that a mature practitioner should master. Even if he is not proficient, he should still have some understanding so that he will not fall behind at critical moments. After all, in the world of cultivating immortals, these things are like technology, and my knowledge in these aspects is zero. It is no different than an illiterate person. It's okay just to be in Yuhang town but it's obviously not enough to face the growing new world. This gave him some sense of crisis. A sage surnamed Lu once said, Learn to grow old and live to grow old. Li Chu's understanding of this sentence is that once you stop learning new knowledge, new forces will soon appear to punish you. Only by learning can you live to be old. If you don't learn, you may not survive. A knowledgeable person like the master often sighs. There is no end to the acupoints. While reading books, it can be seen that the master has never stopped learning. But the knowledge about the alchemy cauldron talisman is not like those crappy martial arts techniques that can be bought in any bookstore. Things in this area are monopolized by formal cultivation sects and are not easily spread. Like Xiao Liangchen's talisman making technique last time. He had also seen a rough outline of it. It was unremarkable on the surface. But it was absolutely impossible to implement it without the matching spiritual thoughts, formulas, and mental techniques. Just as he was thinking about it, he heard the fox girl knocking on the door. Master, there is a strange-looking cultivator outside looking for you. Strange appearance? Li Chu wondered for a moment, then stood up and left. As soon as he went out, he saw Zhao Liangchen's extraordinary figure. No wonder. Li Chu nodded lightly. Brother Zhao. Zhao Liangchen smiled and said, Zhao Tao is priestly. After getting along several times, Zhao Liangchen now actually has a good impression of Li Chu. Although his entire existence... Even his breath felt like a humiliation to himself. But he had no arrogance at all. Even though he was not polite to him when they first met, he was not angry at all. Later, he saved his own life and never took credit for it. After saving many children that time, he didn't care about the fame and distributed all the credit to Shuangfei Temple and Fei Lai sect. It's good that he's handsome and has good character. Does this kind of person really exist? Although thinking about it, this way made Zhao Liangchen want to cry even more. But? After crying, he was still willing to come to Li Chu for help when something happened. For example, today, Li Chu's eyes lit up when he heard that he came to him for help. What do you really think about? This is simply how the male protagonist of a novel is treated. I heard Zhao Liangchen say, This matter is quite difficult. I have no choice but to ask Taoist Master Li for help. Is it very difficult? Li Chu suddenly asked. Well, Zhao Liangchen said cautiously, It's very difficult for me but it may not be for Tao as priestly. Anyway, if it's very difficult, Li Chu said, you may need some reward. That's easy to say. Xiao Liangchen smiled. I also have some savings. Whether you want gold, silver or qi gathering pills, I don't need those for the time being. Li Chu said, I want to make talismans now. Clam? Xiao Liangchen was stunned for a moment. Just now I was thinking that Li Chu was almost perfect, but I suddenly discovered his dark side. It turns out that Mr. Li is a pervert. Chapter 157 Invitation to the Four Flying Conference Seeing Zhao Liangchen's expression change, Li Chu knew that he was probably thinking wrongly about his daily interactions with his master and Wan Longqi. 
which allowed him to accumulate rich experience in cross-server chatting. He added, I mean, I want to learn how to make talismans from you. Oh! Zhao Liangchen breathed a sigh of relief. He thought for a while and replied, If it is a basic talisman-making technique, of course it can be done. But if Talis Priestly wants to learn some of my Fei sect's unique talisman, please forgive me for not teaching it to others. Li Chu said, If it is a unique talisman and a secret that is not passed down, of course I will not get involved. I will only learn some basic techniques. That's no problem. Zhao Liangchen agreed readily. Then, after negotiating the terms, Li Chukai asked, Brother Zhao, why are you here? He looked at Zhao Liangchen quietly. Please start your performance. Zhao Liangchen sighed and said, It's a long story. The founder of my Feilai sect is named Fiderin. He traveled all over the world and founded four sects in total, including Jian and Feilai sect, Baini Fagin sect, Zhongzhou Faishengguan, and Shi Faishin city. Although our four sects are high in the mountains and far apart in rivers, we have one flower and four leaves, and they are connected by the same spirit. Every five years, we jointly hold a four-flying conference for our disciples to participate in competitions. Um, while the two were talking, the old Talus priest suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Element awareness. He looked at Zhao Liangchen, narrowed his eyes, and asked, Is the sea fei you mentioned serious? Forehead. Zhao Liangchen knew that he was Li Chu's master, so he was full of respect. But the old man asked strange questions. After thinking about it, he still answered seriously. Theoretically speaking, it's quite serious. Then, he continued, the four Fei conferences are hosted in turn. And this year it is my turn to be held in Fei Lai sect. The four sects will send their respective Junyan disciples to attend the meeting. As the host, I, Fei Lai sect, must pay special attention to it. It's just that there was an accident the day before yesterday. Mentioning this, Zhao Liangchen smiled bitterly. My junior brother Lang Yuyan is the chief disciple of Fei Lai Sect's generation. Naturally, he should go and fight in the Four Fei Conference. Li Chu nodded slightly. He also had some understanding of Zhao Liangchen's experience. Although he is the strongest disciple of Fei Lai Sect's generation, due to image reasons, Lang Yuyan was still chosen as the chief disciple. The sect accumulated a lot of resources, and promoted Lang Yuyin to become a very popular young cultivator in Hangzhou. The cultivators all knew privately that Lang Yuyin was quite weak, but it is undeniable that he did bring a lot of popularity and profits to Fei sect. Li Chu actually disagreed with this. In his opinion, it is very undesirable to judge people by their appearance. Um, but the day before yesterday, when the two of us were fighting each other, I accidentally seriously injured him. Zhao Liangchen scratched his head, a little confused. It's quite strange to say that I had already absorbed 70% of my sword energy, but I still managed to pierce his defense. Now something happened. Although my junior brother is alive and well, he will need to recover from his injuries for a while. He will definitely not be able to participate in the four flying conference that will be held today. The chief disciple of my Fei sect is absent. No one can replace him for the moment. One of the elders in the sect asked me to participate on behalf of the sect. But... Zhao Liangchen frowned and expressed his concerns. First of all, I seriously injured my junior brother by mistake. It would be too disgraceful for me to go out to fight. If I achieve results, I will inevitably be said to be scheming and intentional. If I fail to achieve satisfactory results and lose the sex phase, it will be even more serious. Li Chu can understand. Once Zhao Liangchen agrees to fight, he is equivalent to being put on the fire, regardless of whether he is positive or negative. There will be a group of righteous people who stand on the moral high ground and will mercilessly spit on him. Rhetoric such as, I owe Lang Yuyan a first-class title, an expert in civil war, but an outsider in foreign war, a gangster in the nest, etc. are enough to make him die socially. Especially for Zhao Liangchen. Just four simple words were enough to instantly penetrate his soft heart. Phases come from the heart. Secondly, I also know something about the other three sections. Their power is slightly stronger than that of my Fei sect. And the strength of their disciples is also quite impressive. What you said is a bit conservative. The old Talus priest suddenly poked his head over again, startling Zhao Liangchen. I heard you Qianan say leisurely. Jiang and Fei sect is just one of the more outstanding sects among the many sects in Hangzhou Prefecture. It is not even ranked among the top three. Baby Faking clan is a sect as famous as Jian Zhao clan. It has thousands of disciples. And there have been many talented people in the past hundred years. 
Zhongzhou Feishing Temple status in Chaoga City is similar to that of Feilai Sect in Hangzhou Prefecture. But that is Chaoga. So the difference can be imagined. Feishian City in the western regions is rich in beauties of the Hu people. With blonde hair and blue eyes. Protruding front and back. As passionate as fire. And as wolf-like and tiger-like. As Yu Qian spoke, his eyes suddenly became distant. As if he was recalling something. And he was about to go off track. Zhao Lianchen coughed quickly. Yu Qian withdrew his gaze and said, Ha uh ha. -huh. As we get older, we tend to lose focus when talking. Zhao Lianchen also laughed. My heart says that the direction you are always going is not the direction that an elderly person should go. Feishian city should be considered the strongest among the four sects you mentioned. After all, it is a city. In terms of foundation and power, it is much stronger than the other three sections. If you ask me, if you fail a sect competes with those three families, you are a bit overestimating your abilities. I guess it will be harder to win than anything else. The old Taoist priest ruthlessly exposed it. But Zhao Lianchen was a little embarrassed. One flower and four leaves. For more than a thousand years, the results are completely different. Due to the location of Jiangnan continent and subsequent encounters, the Feilai sect was indeed the least developed among the four sects. The fact is, as Yu Qian said, in the past hundred years, Feilai sect has almost never won a first place in the Four Fei Conference. Most of the time, it's at the end. But he wasn't the one who wanted to go up and be embarrassed before. Thinking about his situation, his expression became worse and worse. Li Chu quickly stopped the master with his eyes. About there. People are almost crying. Don't worry about killing people. Then, he asked, So brother Zhao, you are looking for me? Oh, Zhao Lianchen said quickly, That's it. I thought about it, and thought of a way that might solve my dilemma. That is, find another person with profound cultivation and handsome appearance to take part in this competition on my sex behalf. This will not only save the sex face, but also save me from being criticized. After much deliberation about this candidate, there is no one better than Taoist Priestly. After Zhao Lianchen finished speaking, he looked at Li Chu carefully. After all, it was a big trouble, and he wasn't sure whether Li Chu would agree. Li Chu also frowned slightly. This kind of impersonation is a bit disgraceful. He hesitated. Admittedly, I also know that you will have such concerns. Zhao Lianchen said, It's just that although you are more famous in Yuhang Town, not many people in Hangzhou Mansion know you. And the other three sects are absolutely unknown. May know your origins. As soon as the four flying conference is over, they will leave. If there is another conference like this, it will be the next group of people in five years. So the possibility of exposure is extremely small. Li Chu frowned again. Besides, fighting for others is a big responsibility. You don't have to have any psychological burden. Even if you lose the competition, I will bear all the responsibilities. I will never. Li Chu listened to his ramblings and couldn't get to the point for a long time. He simply looked at him and said, We need more money. Huh? Zhao Lianchen blinked suddenly. I didn't expect you to say that. It's not about money. Li Chu explained. It's mainly because I've been interested in qi gathering pills recently. Which cultivator is not interested in qi gathering pill? Zhao Lianchen smiled bitterly in his heart. One thousand. He gritted his teeth and said, One thousand qi gathering pills. This is all my savings over the years. The sect did not give me many resources. Many of them were accumulated by me privately exorcising evil spirits for others. It would have been really difficult if it hadn't been for this time. Before he finished speaking, Li Chu held his hand. Don't worry about any difficulties. There is true love in the world. The little Taoist priest said with a sincere face, When one party is in trouble, all parties will support it. Chapter 158 Kodon Amamiya and the girl holding the umbrella. Zhao Lianchen stood respectfully in front of the hall, with two people sitting at the head. One is the leader of Feilai sect, Master Yao Ding. One is Zhao Lianchen's master, Elder Yao Yan. Elder Yao Lian is the senior brother of the head of the clan. He has a red nose, a slightly fat figure, and looks cute and naive. He is highly respected in the sect. And both Zhao Lianchen and Lang Yu Yan are his disciples. Zhao Lianchen's feelings towards this master are very complicated. Back then, Elder Yao Yan secretly gave him an 8 jade dust removing pill every month saying it was a private nourishment for his beloved disciple. Later I found out that the master gave the younger brother an 18 jade cleansing pill every day. After he broke through to the Chisi realm, Elder Yelian gave him a high-quality flying sword. 
He regarded it as a treasure and polished it every day. A year later, Junior Brother made a breakthrough. And Elder Yalian asked for the Night Dragon Sword directly from the leader. After he missed his chief disciple, Elder Yalian gave him a secret Lei Bu talisman to comfort him in his loss. Later I found out that every time my junior brother exorcises evil spirits, he piles a pile of Lei Bu's evil killing talismans on top of the opponent to death. Zhao Lianchen wanted to cry several times, but had no tears. There was also a time when I dreamed of completely crushing my junior brother with my strength. However, after meeting Li Chu, he became bearish on the resources in the sect. Even if you give me all these. So what? In front of Li Chu. Can I surpass his face or his sword? Maybe. Unconsciously. The person who haunted him has changed. Just now. He loudly stated his plan to the head and master. Nonsense. Before the leader could say anything. Elder Yalian retorted. How can we rest assured when we find an outsider to pretend to be a disciple of our sect to join the war? How high is that person's realm? And how strong is it? Can you guarantee that? Better than you. Zhao Lianchen replied. That's right. Elder Yalian seemed to be about to sneer. He only laughed once and suddenly got stuck. Wait. He looked at Zhao Lianchen suspiciously. You mean he's better than you? Better than you. Master. Zhao Lianchen repeated it clearly. Really or not? The leader next to him, Master Yao Ding, was a little suspicious and asked aloud. After all, it would be an exaggeration for a young Taoist priest from the countryside of Yuhang Town to suddenly say that he was stronger than Elder Yao Yin, who was in the early stage of the Dragon Transformation Realm. At this age, even the pride of the Twelve Immortal Sects may not be able to break through the transformation into a dragon. He once killed a squid that was comparable to a ghost general, Zhao Lianchen said. What's the big deal? Elder Yao Yin curled his lips. One sword, Zhao Lianchen added. It's just a sword. Master Yao Ding shook his head. This was not impossible for Elder Yao Lian. And I saw with my own eyes that the sword changed the color of the world and the earth. Not to mention a single squid. Even ten more were killed. Although a long time had passed, Zhao Lianchen felt a little lost when he mentioned the charm of Li Chu's sword. Master Yao Ding stared at Zhao Lianchen for a long time, seeing that he didn't seem to be faking it. So he asked, How did you recruit such a master? What price did you pay? Making a talisman, Zhao Lianchen said. Ah? Oh? Elder Yalian looked at his disciple with regret. Is the sacrifice so big? Zhao Lianchen grinned in panic and explained. He wants to learn basic talisman making techniques. And I promised to teach him. A cultivator with such amazing talent doesn't know how to make basic talismans. Master Yao Ding was a little surprised. He is a little weird, Zhao Lianchen said. In addition, he also paid a thousand qi-gathering pills which is all the disciples' savings. Master, if this matter is really feasible, the master will be reimbursed. Matter. Um. Upon hearing this, Master Yao Ding stood up with his sleeves raised and put his hands behind his back and said, I can make an appointment with him to meet him. As for whether it is feasible, I will decide later. I remembered that I had not confiscated my clothes while drying them. So I took a step forward. As soon as he took a step, his figure drifted away from here and appeared on the ethereal mountain peak outside the door. Just take one step. Zhao Lianchen was shocked and turned to look at his master. Ah, when I went out, there was still soup cooking on the stove. It was broken. Elder Yao Lian muttered, jumped up, used a light body move, turned into an afterimage, and fled out in a flash. In an instant, Zhao Lianchen was the only one left in front of the hall. He blinked, a little sadly, head and master. These two good people will be gone if they say goodbye. He couldn't help but think of the time when he was 12 years old. When he knew for the first time that Master Yalian was the real person. The common surname is Boo. A full name almost blurted out. At the top of Fei Lai, there is a flying cloud palace. In Fei Palace, the statue of the ancestor is enshrined. That is, the amazingly talented flying Taoist more than a thousand years ago. The golden statue of Dharma enshrined on the altar shows a flying Taoist sitting cross-legged and playing the Yao Qin. The Dharma image is fake, but the Yao Qin is real. It was the beloved thing of the Taoist priests in the past and was left here. Legend has it that the reason why Taoist Fei stayed here was because there was a woman he loved who lived on the opposite mountain peak. This woman's whereabouts were elusive and she would only appear when it rained. Listening to the rain playing the flute, the flying Taoist stayed at the top of the mountain every day. Whenever it rained, he would play his harp 
and keep in touch with the woman from a distance. During the sunny days, he took in disciples and preached, and founded the Phalai sect relatively casually. Later, this relationship probably came to nothing. No one heard the patriarch mention that woman again, and Zhang Yaoqin was also left here, unable to travel around the world with him. However, immortal music has spirit. From later generations to this day, every time it rains on this peak, this Yaoqin will play automatically, emitting an ancient rhyming sound, as if it came from thousands of years ago. Therefore, Feiyun Palace is also known as Yugong. The sound of the piano that appears automatically every time it rains has become one of the top 10 wonders in Hangzhou. And is called the sound of the Qin in the Rain Palace. Fortunately, it was raining when Xiongji went up the mountain. The gurgling sound of the piano flows from Feiyun Palace, which makes people feel comfortable both physically and mentally. She looked to be 18 or 19 years old, with wavy blonde hair tied around her neck with a ribbon, creating a beautiful arc. Looking at her appearance, a pair of beautiful, almost amber pupils seem to reflect gems. His skin is snow white. He is tall, and he has a curvy figure. He is obviously a bit of who people from the western regions. But she has delicate skin and a slender frame. From a distance, she looks just like a Hulu woman, probably a rare mixed race. This beautiful girl wears a rare plain white dress, with a wide upper body, and only a jade belt tightly tied around her waist to outline her waist. But the slender and round legs are unobstructed, and most of them are exposed. They are slightly fleshy and tremble slightly when walking, which is eye-catching. In her hand, she held a thin oil paper umbrella, printed with beautiful patterns of petals just like the flowers and trees on both sides of the path up the mountain. Although the autumn rain and wind are cold, as a practitioner there is no need to hold an umbrella. It's just that the picture of my daughter's house is pretty. Hold an umbrella to catch fallen flowers. Look at the west wind riding a thin horse, walking in front with the disciples from the Phalai sect. It was the first time I visited someone's mountain gate. I had to walk up a section of the road behind the mountain gate to show respect. Behind him was a rather unattractive middle-aged fat man wearing a suit of silk and satin, embroidered with copper coins. His eyes were narrowed, and his chest and belly were swaying as he walked. He doesn't look like a practitioner, but more like an ordinary businessman. This person is the guardian elder sent by Faishian City. Shinerfu. Oops. Shinerfu looked around. Tut tuting. They say Jiangnan has beautiful scenery, and we have experienced a lot along the way. How can we see such beautiful flowers, and trees in our desert unless they are planted with wonderful methods and carefully cared for. How much money can we get from selling them? The sound of Amamiya's piano is also wonderful. I've heard about it a long time ago and finally saw it today. It really cleanses the soul and cultivates sentiments. Yes, it's really good. If you ask me, we might as well take the Yao Qin as the winning ticket for this conference. No, it doesn't rain all year round in our place. Well, I guess the people from Feilai Sect can't give it either. Uncle Second Master. Xiongji originally wanted to create a beautiful artistic conception. But this middle-aged man kept chattering in her ears. And the little girl finally couldn't bear it anymore. She frowned and said, We may not win for sure. So what's the point of mentioning the lottery? Ha uh ha. -huh. Shinerfa patted his belly. Others may not be sure to win. But we are not sure about Feilai Sect. Second Uncle did some research before he came here. The chief disciple of their generation is just a silver pewter spearheaded person who looks good but is useless. He is no better than anything else. Every time I exorcise evil spirits, I take a bunch of thunder talismans and send them back and forth with electricity. You can't see or hear anything. So you just rely on your pretty face to trick little girls into liking you. It's just you little girls who are stupid and only look at faces. Otherwise who would think he can okay? Ha uh ha. -huh. Ask him what else he can do without electricity. The leading disciple of the Feilai sect in front heard him belittle his chief disciple. And he was determined to refute. But after thinking about it, I actually think he is right. Angry. I had to shut myself up for a while. Quan Dang couldn't hear. Xiongji also had a dark look on her face. Uncle Second Master, please be careful what you say. What do we mean by little girls? I am different from those superficial girls. I don't care about faces. Real? Of course. Xiongji frowned and nodded heavily. Before he finished speaking, he turned his head and saw that he had already reached the top of the mountain. At first glance, she saw a figure standing in front of Feiyun Palace. He was wearing a blue monk's robe with fine stitching. He was extremely plain, and he didn't hold an umbrella in the rain. A white jade face, 
with two wisps of clouds on the temples following the wind. The blue sky is above your head, and the clouds and mountains are under your feet, floating as if left behind in the world, as if he had become an immortal. Xiong Ji's conversation suddenly changed. Her voice trembled slightly. Of course not. Chapter 159 The White Tiger Girl Gathers from All Sides His Next to him, Shen Erfu took a breath of cold air when he saw it. This guy actually has a bit of the demeanor of when I was young. He asked curiously, Who is this person? The leading disciple had already been reminded and replied, It's my alternate chief disciple of Fei sect. Li Chu. Shen Erfu secretly thought that the two words were so terrifying. He pulled Xiong Ji, who was in a daze, and continued to move forward. The two came to Fei Lai Zong Shengtang. Many people have already arrived in the hall. Master Yao Ding and Elder Yao Lian, as the masters and seniors in the world, still sit at the top with kind smiles. On both sides, people from Baby Fei Yin sect and Zhongzhou Feixing Temple also arrived, including a Dharma protector elder and a disciple representative. Seeing the two of them arriving, Master Yao Ding stood up to greet them on the steps and then introduced them one by one. From the Feixing sect came Liu Zhuang, the leader of the four sect, a middle-aged man with a refined scholar's appearance, a white face and a slight beard, who looked quite amiable. The disciple he brought was also his son, named Lu Fufeng. This Lu Fufeng was dressed in a smart outfit, with his hair tied high and hanging down on one side. He has strong eyebrows and stubble on his chin. He looks young, but his temperament is quite vicissitudes of life. From the Ascension Temple, a senior elder came with a Taoist named Wugen. He has a childlike appearance and a fairy-like Taoist body that is about half of Yu Qian's. It can be seen at a glance that he is an expert in Taoism. The disciple brought by Elder Wugen was actually a female Taoist priest, which was quite rare. This female crown wears a silk Taoist robe with a meticulous bun on her head. She has fair skin, an indifferent expression, and an indescribable heroic spirit. This person needs no introduction. Shen Erfu and Qiong Ji guessed it immediately. Lu Zhanmei must be the most popular disciple of Feixing Temple in recent years. It is said that she came from a powerful family in Chaoga. Although she was a girl, she was extremely aggressive since she was a child. No boy her age could rival her. All kinds of discipline failed. And in anger, her father simply sent her to the Ascension Temple to polish her character through practice. After she became an adult, her family wanted her to come back and get married. Lu Zhanmei who has achieved great success in spiritual practice, immediately stepped down from the ring. Anyone who wants to marry her must first defeat her with his own hands. On that day, many famous men fought with her in a sword fight, but she defeated 28 of them in a row, which immediately caused a sensation in Chaoga. This uncompromising act won her countless fans, including many high-ranking official wives. The 13th princess of the Ji family became her best friend and directly announced that if she didn't get married, Lu Zhanmei would not be allowed to get married either. The 13th princess is his majesty's favorite daughter, and she has promised to make all the decisions regarding her marriage. Lu Zhanmei's father was helpless and had no choice but to let her continue her practice at Ascension Temple. Today, Lu Zhanmei is one of the most popular young cultivators in Chaoga City. His reputation was so great that it spread throughout Hulua and other countries in the western regions. Xiongi jumped up to New Guan, blinked her big eyes, and said enthusiastically, Sister Lu, I have heard of your name in the western regions. We sisters all like you very much. Come on! I hope you will never get married. Ah, these words came out. Xiong Ji herself felt strange, and added, I mean, I hope you are invincible. Lu Zhanmei blinked, and responded with an awkward but polite smile. Cough. Shen Erfa coughed lightly, pulled Xiong Ji back by her braided tail, and said with a smile, Children don't go out often, and they don't know the etiquette. It's a joke. Elder Wugan of Ascension Temple smiled and said, It doesn't matter. It's a good thing for young people to be simple-minded. After the guests and hosts took their seats, Elder Yading said with a smile, This four-flying conference is being held in our Feilai sect, and we are also very frightened. Everyone has come a long way, so let's have a good rest today. The competition will be left to tomorrow. Eh? Liu Zhuang asked. Why don't you see the chief disciple of Feilai sect? I heard before I came that Lan Yuyin, the chief disciple of Guizong, is also a good young hero. Well, Elder Yao Lian let out a long sigh. You don't know, but my disciple accidentally messed up the plot the day before yesterday when he was exorcising evil spirits. 
he was seriously injured and may not be able to participate in this conference. But it doesn't matter. Before anyone could express their regrets, Master Yao Ding continued, Our sect will send a candidate for the chief disciple. He will definitely go all out to participate in the competition and will not give up just yet. Ha uh ha, -huh, Elder Wugan said with a smile. I believe that there will be no ordinary people who come to the sect. Li Chu. Xiongji muttered the name. Wasn't it the handsome young man she had just met? She couldn't help but clenched her fist and made two crisp sounds. Look so good looking. I don't know if I'll cry for a long time if I take a punch. That night, Li Chu was in the room arranged by Phylazong, knocking on the chi gathering pill in boredom. Although this stuff tastes good, it will only be so if you eat too much. But the feeling of increased spiritual power is real. Every time you hit a chi gathering pill, it is equivalent to destroying a lantern monster. This made both Li Chu and the lantern monster happy. While he was knocking, there was a knock on the door, and Zhao Lianchen quietly walked in. Li Chu asked, Brother Zhao, is there something wrong? Zhao Lianchen came in and said, The questions for tomorrow's competition are out. I'll do it. Before he finished speaking, he saw Li Chu holding a handful of chi gathering pills in his hand, as if he was cracking jelly beans. Shouldn't it? Zhao Lianchen said in shock. Zhao Tao's master, you can't eat this chi gathering pill like this. Oh, although this thing can increase the true energy, it actually does a lot of harm. Zhao Lianchen sat down quickly and explained to Li Chu. To put it simply, if you rely on taking pills to increase your true energy, firstly, you lack the process of cultivation and understanding. And secondly, the true energy obtained in this way is mixed and impure. Don't underestimate these two points. Because of this, taking too much chi gathering pill means that the possibility of another breakthrough is cut off. Usually only people who are older or extremely talented will take a large amount of chi gathering pills. After they reach the peak of the realm, they will no longer make progress. You are young and of profound cultivation. How can you do such a foolish thing that is eager for quick success and quick gain? It is tantamount to destroying your own future. Zhao Lianchen was heartbroken and talking. When he looked up, he saw Li Chu's very grateful but untouched eyes. That expression seemed to say, Are you teaching me how to do things? Well, Zhao Lianchen sneered. Of course, it's just a small suggestion. In fact, Li Chu understood the dangers he mentioned. After all, if there were no restrictions, everyone would be able to eat land gods, which is obviously impossible. But, these dangers don't seem to exist to him, because he does not have the many complicated processes of breathing in and out, moving the heavens, refining dragons and tigers, and reconciling yin and yang. He only has the simple and crude process of killing monsters, upgrading, and understanding. Maybe it means that the movement of swinging the sword should be fast and the posture should be cool? He didn't know whether the form Shinchi was mixed or not, but the form spiritual power seemed to be quite pure. Thinking about it this way, it seems that Qi Gathering Pill is indeed more suitable for me. It won't work for others to take Qi Gathering Pills. I'll take the Qi Gathering Pill. Okay? Thank you, Brother Zhao, for the suggestion. I have my thoughts on it. Li Chu still thanked him. Okay. Let's get down to business. Zhao Lianchen returned to the topic and said, The test questions of our four flying conferences are different every year. Each time, four families come up with one question, and the other three must agree before it can be implemented. The first competition this year was proposed by Faixian City and has been passed. Li Chu nodded slightly. In this way, the topics proposed by each company should be slightly beneficial to them, but not too beneficial. A slight advantage makes it easier to win. It can't be too beneficial. Otherwise, other people won't agree. Xiao Lianchen said. The competition proposed by Faixian City is to walk through the mountains. The appearance of a mountain? It's a magic weapon from Faixian City. I didn't expect that they even sacrificed this. Xiao Lianchen said. This competition can be roughly regarded as a competition of physical strength. He looked at Li Chu. How is your physical condition? Yeah. Li Chu thought for a while and replied cautiously. It's okay. Have you ever practiced the art of body refining? Yes. Li Chu nodded. I have practiced iron clothes. Zhao Lianchen resisted the desire to complain. What kind of body refining technique is the iron claw shirt? If it had been anyone else, he would have kicked him out on the spot. But Li Chu, he said, I believe you are not too weak, but you must not underestimate others. This time the opponents are very strong. Lu Fufeng comes from Fei Clan and is a martial artist in the north. 
he must be very proficient in martial arts and body training. Lu Zhanmei can stand out in Chaoga City and become famous all over the world. He is probably the strongest among several people. He glanced at Li Chu again and added, You're not included. Li Chu touched his nose, wondering if he was scolding him. And Cheong Ji from Faixian City is the most difficult to deal with, Zhao Liangchen said. Before, I was wondering why a little girl sent by Faixian City proposed such a competition. I just learned that it turns out that Cheong Ji has a nickname in Faixian City. What nickname? Zhao Liangchen frowned and said, White Tiger Girl. Chapter 160 Is There Something Wrong? It rains heavily, and the vegetation in my old hometown is deep. Feilai Peak is hidden in a misty cloud, blocking all sight lines up and down the mountain. The practitioners on the peak also sealed the mountain gate early. It is not accepting foreign visitors these days. Older people should remember that there was a time like this 20 years ago, when they flew to Zongfeng Mountain for five days. The white clouds remain on the peak. If there are cultivators here, they will also find that this white cloud cannot even be penetrated by spiritual consciousness. It is clearly the fairy mist condensed by the magic circle, blocking out all sounds and paintings. In the fog, the sound of Amamiya's piano flows gurglingly. The cultivators from all over the world have already formed a team and are standing in an empty square in the back mountain. Many disciples from the Feilai sect were surrounding the square, not only to watch the ceremony, but also to cheer for their fellow disciples which was a small home field advantage. Disciples from the four schools of Faixian City, Faixian Temple, Faixian Sect, and Feilai Sect stood in the center. Xiongji looked around, glancing at Li Chu from time to time, then at Lu Zhanmei, and finally turned her head as if she was afraid of being discovered. Lu Zhanmei stood with his head held high. To be fair, in terms of appearance, she should be a cold beauty no less than Xiongji, but her aura was too fierce especially the corners of her eyes and eyebrows, which seemed to contain sword energy, making it difficult for anyone to have a love for beauty when looking at her, and would only feel a sense of awe. The last one, Lu Fufeng, was careless, with his head hanging down, looking a little listless. His father, Liu Zhuang, the fourth master of the Fagin sect, was looking at him from a distance with a complicated expression. Directly in front of the four of them, Shen Erfu from Faixian City was standing in the air holding a mountain-like model in his left hand. Just now Master Yao Ding has briefly talked some nonsense. And now the competition is about to begin. Everyone! The magic weapon I hold in my hand is called the Face of the Mountain. It was made by the ancestor Fei Taoist, who refined a mountain with a height of 10,000 feet in the western region. Its power is that it can gather the weight of an entire mountain into one point. And when released it can penetrate gold and gravel. It's very terrifying! This competition, of course, does not require you to fight against the entire mountain. We will divide four roads under it to evenly distribute the weight of the mountain. The further forward you go, the more difficult it will be. The content of the competition is to see who of you can withstand all the pressure and go further on this road. If you can both complete the journey, let's see who can go faster. Speaking of this, he glanced at Cheong Ji. The girl waved her small fist at him. Shen Erfu smiled and continued. My manipulation of Shan Yue's appearance will be absolutely fair and impartial, and will not be biased. This will be jointly supervised by Master Yao Ding, Elder Wugan, and Master Lu. The others smiled and nodded. In this situation, no one will be cunning. If he really resorted to tricks, it would be impossible to hide it from the eyes of so many experts. Of course, Xiongji definitely has an advantage. Since this mountain is a magic weapon of Faixian City, she must have experienced it before and maybe even receive special training. In addition, she is also a white tiger girl who is well known in all the countries in the western region. That is one of the natural immortal bodies. The white tiger imperial body. The four elephants royal body is not the strongest among all immortal bodies, but it is definitely the most practical. There are not so many bells and whistles. But as she grows, she cultivates the white tiger soul inside and refines the white tiger essence outside to kill and become invincible. Today. She looks like a bright and beautiful girl. But in a sense, she is also a ferocious beast in human form. Even the imperfect white tiger body is something that many body refiners cannot obtain despite their hard work for a lifetime. Not to mention ordinary cultivators. Many will ignore the aspect of body training. Faixian City proposes this competition because it wants to use its own strengths to attack the other's weaknesses. And its own white tiger to attack the other's weaknesses. Of course, 
This level of advantage is completely within the acceptance range of several other sects. After saying this, Shin Urfa saluted the other elders, and then yelled, Give me a big boost! The small mountain in the palm of my hand flew high into the sky, rising in the wind. In the blink of an eye, it grew thousands of times, turning into a high mountain that almost enveloped Fae like Peak. Everyone below was instantly shrouded in shadow. Of course, this is still subject to limitations. If the mountain's appearance reaches its limit, it will be much larger than Fae like Peak. In that case, the magic circle on the peak will not be able to cover it. Even so, it was enough to release all the pressure. As the leader of the mountain, Shin Urfu flicked his sleeves and rumbled down five long rock walls. In doing so, four channels are separated. At one end of the passage are four disciples, which serves as the entrance. The other end, closed to the seniors of various sects who were watching the ceremony, was the exit. According to past experience, those who participate in the trial will probably not look very good looking under the pressure of the mountain appearance. Today's young cultivators are all idols and no one wants to remain like that in the eyes of the world. Peeping from a distance is also a humane consideration. It's just that the spectators outside can only see the final result, which makes it even more exciting. The four disciples participating in the competition can walk into the road separated by the stone wall. Shin Urfu's voice sounded again. At first glance, this passage is only a few hundred feet short, and it seems that it can be crossed in a few steps. But if there is any mystery in it, only these four disciples can feel it. The four of them walked in together without any hesitation. Boom. As soon as you enter this deep passage, you can immediately feel the heavy pressure. This pressure falls heavily from above, as if it will crush you instantly. Moreover, this kind of pressure is difficult to withstand with true energy, and can only be resisted with physical strength. Master Yao Ding and Elder Yao Lian stood side by side, both looking bad. Last night, I asked Zhao Lianchen to ask if Li Chu had practiced the art of body refining. As a result, Zhao Lianchen came back and said that Li Chu had practiced iron cloth shirt. A shadow fell on their foreheads at the same time. It's better to say it didn't come more directly. Even if he has strength comparable to that of a dragon transforming cultivator, without having practiced the art of body refining at all, his physique may not be comparable to that of a Shinha realm cultivator who specializes in body refining. Lu Zhanmei and Lu Fufeng's strength is deeply hidden, but they are at the peak of the divine union and the possibility of breaking through to transform into a dragon is very low, as long as they have specialized in the art of body refining. Li Chu is likely to be incomparable. In fact, according to the current information, they have indeed specialized in it, not to mention the white tiger girl. She should be the first person booked this time. Master Yao Ding and his senior brother looked at each other. Elder Yao Lian whispered, Hey, if nothing goes wrong in this opening battle, our Fei Lai sect will be at the bottom again. Master Yao Ding also nodded and said, Yes, time is also destiny. Sad. Sigh. Alas, the two of them sighed at the same time. Quite helplessly, Zhao Lianchen, who was standing closest behind them, heard their words and carefully interrupted. But aren't we the last ones every year? The master and the master won't be so worried. Right. Huh? Elder Yelian blinked, as if he suddenly realized. What my disciples said makes sense. That's true. Elder Yao Ding twirled his beard. I've already gotten used to it. The two looked at each other and smiled. Suddenly enlightened. Behind him, Zhao Lianchen was thoughtful. From, Oh, I'm a waste. To, Yeah, I'm trash. This process is probably called growth. Right? I just hope that Junior Li Chu won't feel guilty because of this failure. Elder Yalian recalled. At that age, he had a strong desire to win and lose. I won the last place in the Four Flying Conference. So my Taoism was shaken. And I stayed in a brothel for a month. I'm so embarrassed to come out and meet people. Ha ha. That thing of yours that moves and shakes is the Taoist heart? I'm embarrassed to point it out to you. Master Yao Ding sneered twice and said. But I think he is destined to fail I sect. Now that the competition is over, I might as well persuade him to stay. I think so too. Elder Yao Yin agreed. Looking at his appearance. He is no different from when I was young. I know that this son is destined to me. If he is willing to switch to my Fei Lai sect, that would be great. Elder Yao Ding resisted the urge to spit at Elder Yao Lian in public, turned his head and looked not at him, but at Zhao Lianchen. Based on what you know about him, is this possible? Zhao Lianchen, who was behind him, said, it would be better if the master, the master, 
asked him himself. Isn't he right there? Oh! Master Yao Ding turned his head and saw that Li Chu had arrived in front of him at some point. He waved his hand. Hey, little friend Li Chu, I have something to ask you. Li Chu sure walked over, saluted the two seniors, and then said, Master Yao Ding, can you give me some advice? Master Yao Ding saw his appearance and politeness, and the more he looked at him, the more he liked him. He smiled and opened his mouth, about to ask something. Suddenly a flash of lightning flashed above his head, etc. Is there something not quite right? Chapter 161, He is Too Fast. Snap, snap, snap. Xiongji walked forward step by step with difficulty. The footsteps soaked in sweat made a crisp sound. She was no stranger to the feeling of carrying a mountain on her back. Before this competition, she had tempered her body with the appearance of the mountains many times. Faixian City would only propose such a competition content after she could carry the pressure of a whole mountain to complete the journey. Xiongji felt that it was a bit bullying to compete with others in terms of bearing pressure with her white tiger body. Walking to the middle section, the pressure she endured became a little bit too much to bear. She bent down and hunched her back. But her steps remained firm and unstoppable. Thanks to the shield. This ugly look will not be seen by people outside. Come to think of it, several other cultivators may have been suppressed to the point of vomiting blood. Right? She still remembers the feeling of walking into the mountain for the first time. Even if she is very strong, there is still a process of adaptation. Vomiting blood, fainting, and physical tearing are all things that can happen if you are not careful. It took her a quarter of an hour to reach the end of the passage, which was more than a hundred feet long. Compared to the past, this is already an excellent performance. There was light in front of her, and Xiongji smiled slightly. I believe that once you go out, you will be able to accept the shot and admiring looks of everyone. From now on, some people in Jiangnan continent will remember my reputation as the white tiger girl. Ouch. Snapped. Stepping out of the passage. Cheong Ji's shoulders suddenly relaxed. She didn't forget to use her energy to dry off the wet sweat on her body. So that her image remained bright and charming. Then. Sure enough. She saw everyone's surprised looks. Not only surprised. But also puzzled. Horrified. And regretful. But only regretful eyes were looking at her. The rest were looking forward where the other three participants in the competition were standing, holding hot tea in hand, either in a daze or chatting. It looks very comfortable. Ah, something's wrong? Xiongi couldn't help but want to retreat into the passage. If she walked out again, it must be because the way I came out was wrong. She looked at Shin Erfu in surprise, and the latter smiled bitterly and shook his head. Apparently he didn't know why. Xiongi walked up to a few people with empty steps, her eyes wandering as if she wanted to ask something, but she didn't know where to start. Lu Zhanmei glanced at her and said, I'm only one step ahead of you. They too are the monsters. She looked at Li Chu and Lu Fufeng. Lu Fufeng held hot tea in his hand and took a sip. Hearing her words, he raised his eyes and said, I'm not far ahead. There's only one monster. He looked at Li Chu. Li Chu put his hands in his sleeves and stood quietly aside, as if he was bored, hearing his words. The little Taoist priest stretched out an index finger, scratched his face, and said modestly, I just walked around casually. Take a walk. Do you think this is a stroll? Take a walk after dinner, and live to be 99? Is that the appearance of a mountain? Xiongi looked at his surprisingly handsome face in confusion. Question marks appeared above her head, and she couldn't help but become suspicious. Am I the only one struggling with stress? In fact, Li Chu was also quite surprised. When he first stepped into the passage, he did feel pressure coming on him for a brief moment. Immediately, there seemed to be some heat on the shoulders, and there was some weak spiritual power in the body, which spontaneously offset or even rebounded that part of the pressure, so much so that after he took a few steps, he was still a little puzzled. Where was the promised 10,000 meter high mountain? That's it? Soon after walking halfway, he felt something was wrong. This competition not only compares the completion of the journey, but also the speed. To be on the safe side, I can't wander around anymore. So he took up the blue butterfly to swim in the clouds, teleported twice, and came out of the passage. His appearance was so sudden that the people around him didn't know how to react. The originally noisy square suddenly became quiet. Everyone is a bit incompetent. Only Elder Yao Ding greeted him over with a smile. But before he said a word, Elder Yao Ding's expression suddenly changed. Expressions become more and more exciting. After a long while, 
Elder Yao Lian still held back his words. Taoist priest Xiao Li, why did you come out so quickly? This is my first time entering this kind of way. Li Chu looked at him and said, I don't know much about it. Should it take a long time? No, it's just that young people shouldn't be so fast. Elder Yao Lian said with a smile. More than that, Daoist Yao Ding next to him said, Even an old guy who has been practicing for many years may not be as fast as you. Your physique is really extraordinary. Li Chu heard the underlying meaning of their words, and it seemed that they were saying that he was very powerful. The other three people haven't come out yet, so he is definitely the number one. So he doesn't have to worry. He put his hands up and waited aside. After a while, the second person who came out turned out to be Lu Fufeng. He still looked listless. When he looked up and saw Li Chu standing there, there were some mood swings in his eyes. Soon, Lu Zhanmei also walked out. Faixian City chose such an event to test physical fitness, and never would have imagined that the white tiger girl would be ranked last. Shinerfu had no choice but to step forward and pat Xiong Ji on the shoulder. It's okay. Just think of it as gaining experience. There are crouching tigers and hidden dragons in the world. So never think that you are a sure winner. Even so, the way he looked at Li Chu was still a little unbelievable. It's fast. But isn't it too fast? After thinking for a moment, he reminded Xiong Ji one more time. Be careful about that Li Chu. He is too fast. Something's wrong. Yeah. The girl nodded. Needless to say, Xiong Ji also regarded Li Chu as her number one rival this time. Even if it is a specialized physical training. This is too abnormal. It was precisely because his performance was so outrageous that everyone almost ignored him. Lu Fufeng and Lu Zhanmei also surpassed the white tiger girl. After returning to Fisherman's camp, Lu Zhuang frowned and looked at Lu Fufeng. That Li Chu seems a little strange. Can you deal with him? He asked. It was obvious that he was the father and the fourth master of the Fagin sect. But it seemed as if Lu Fufeng had a higher status. Lu Fufeng smiled slightly. There is indeed something wrong with him. But I have an idea that I can try. Night. Li Chu sat in the room, knocking on the qi gathering pill. When the elixir enters the abdomen, it immediately turns invisible and blends into the body, feeling the imperceptible increase in his experience bar. His heart was full and happy. It's a pity that I earned too few qi gathering pills this time. A thousand lantern monsters inside and outside are insignificant to me now. But it's a great start. Maybe taking over the sex job is a good idea. It's probably not going to be a simple matter for the cultivating sect to shamelessly ask for foreign aid. It's probably rare to find a good job like this that makes money just by strolling around. Just as he was thinking about it, he heard Zhao Lianchen knocking on the door again. After entering the door, he looked worried as usual. Li Chu looked at his face and asked, Has tomorrow's competition event come out? Not bad, Zhao Lianchen said. I don't know. What topic? It's a question from the Fatian sect. Zhao Lianchen said. There is a treasure in their sect called the Yuanhua Heavenly Furnace. Dot. The magical thing about this original fire heavenly furnace is that it can turn the true energy into flames to an unlimited extent. The purer the true energy, the hotter the flame, the greater the amount of true energy, the stronger the flame. What they will compete with tomorrow is simply the strength of Qi Hai. Those who participate in the competition must activate the Yuanhua Heavenly Furnace respectively to see who can activate the stronger flame. Speaking of this, Xiao Lianchen frowned. I suspect that they notice that you have no true energy fluctuations today and suspect that you are practicing a different kind of inheritance. That's why they propose such a competition to target you. Yes. Li Chu was a little confused when he heard this. I don't know if it will work. Although my own spiritual power can often be used to support my true energy. But who knows if the stove is recognized. This contest. I don't know if I can stand it or not. Chapter 162. Do I reveal myself? An autumn rain and a cold. After days of rain, even a rare sunny day can't help but feel a bit chilly. Mortals are saddened by the spring and autumn. But for practitioners, the Taoist heart is strong, and they can only forge ahead with determination. The second day of the Sifei conference started with great enthusiasm in such weather. The seniors were still first, and a group of Feilai sect disciples were watching the ceremony. But on this day, especially many Feilai sect elders arrived. Previously, Due to the poor performance of the Feilai sect in consecutive years, especially among the elders, there were many people who had won the last place in the Four Fei Conference when they were young. So people often used the excuse of seclusion and illness. In fact, I just don't want to be embarrassed. It was heard that the foreign aide that was invited yesterday won the first place with a crushing force. 
so the elders rushed over one after another. But there are also some opposing voices. After all, I have a legacy of more than a thousand years, a large sect, and hundreds of disciples. But I can't find anyone who can participate in the competition. In this regard, Elder Yelian gave ruthless affirmation. Just can't find it. Your local disciples are such useless people. In comparison, foreign aid is cheap and powerful. What to do? Besides, the sect cannot produce good disciples. Which of you old guys is not responsible? They usually use the sect's resources to enrich their own pockets and engage in some unhealthy practices. They have been doing this for many years. And now they say they can't train good disciples? This refutation made several diehard elders tremble and couldn't say a word. For a long time, all I could say was naturalization and naturalization. Only, can Li Chu really be naturalized? Originally, if he was really just an ordinary Taoist priest from the countryside, then there would be a way for him to join Fei Lai's sect, a thousand-year-old sect. However, after two days of contact, even the leader Yao Ding Jinring could not tell the depth of his cultivation. This made him a little less confident. After another round of greetings, Liu Zhuang, the four masters of the Fagan sect, rose up in the air and offered sacrifices to the Yuan Wei Heavenly Furnace. He unfolded his long robe, raised his hand, and struck it in the air. Boom! A golden light turned into a huge bronze cauldron in midair, which was about ten feet long, nearly seven feet high, and crashed down. There are ancient and mysterious inscriptions engraved on the top of the furnace, which look like gods and bodhisattvas, and also like gods and demons dancing wildly. The meaning is unclear for a while. Looking at it carefully, the inscription seems to be constantly changing, and it is actually different from before. Quite mysterious. Liu Zhuang stood in the air and said loudly, Everyone, this original fire heavenly furnace is one of the top three treasures in my fate sect. Use this furnace to smelt magic weapons and elixirs and everything will go wrong. This is because the furnace is born with divinity and can be catalyzed by infinite true energy. The purer the true energy, the brighter the furnace fire, the more true energy, the stronger the furnace fire. Today we will take this furnace as our theme because it has always been difficult to comprehensively judge the purity and strength of true energy. I placed a sacred golden pill in the furnace. This golden elixir can combine the heat and intensity of the fire to manifest the divine light depending on the strength of the divine light. It's clear who has stronger chi. The four disciples participating in the competition only need to step forward and activate the fire with their whole body's energy. The wind blows across the ridge. The clothes were rustling. Xiongji was the first to stand up and said, I'll go first. The other people had no intention of competing with her. A tall girl in a French skirt was the first to step out of the queue. The little girl was quite frustrated by yesterday's defeat. And she looked a little depressed today. The white tiger imperial body's increase in Chi Hai is not large. She is young and feels that she cannot compare with a few people. It is better to show up first to avoid a strong contrast in the end and make her even more embarrassed. But she was overthinking it. No one thinks she is embarrassed. Everyone thinks she is beautiful. As soon as she walked out, many Fei sect disciples clapped and shouted. Very enthusiastically. The majority of male disciples in Fei sect are male. Any man who wouldn't like a fair-skinned and beautiful white tiger girl. Originally, these disciples were embarrassed to support outsiders because of their own reputation. But Xiongji's failure yesterday made the love in the hearts of these male disciples burst out. Such cheers made Xiongji barely smile. And she waved her hands to the disciples watching the ceremony as a token of thanks. The crowd suddenly burst into cheers. Brothers, she is smiling at me. Does she like me? Xiongji in the middle of the field took a deep breath and shut out all the noise from her mind. She slowly placed her hands on a pair of handrails on the outer wall of the Yuanhua Heavenly Furnace. There is a path for infusing qi. Boom. Take action with all your strength. The Yuanhua Heavenly Furnace can transform the true energy infinitely. So there is no need to hold back. Bang. There was an explosion in the furnace. And there was a flame. There is a faint red gold light shining through the furnace wall. Which looks very strong. However, firelight is not the criterion for judgment. After just a few breaths, a ray of light steamed upwards and gradually condensed and formed above the sky furnace. Head and tail. Minions. Mane. King. A big snow-white tiger with a body length of more than three feet appeared in midair, with a golden king pattern on its forehead. Manifestation of the holy body. It's actually a real white tiger. 
None of the Phalaisek disciples present had ever seen this. Even the elders with some knowledge could not help but be surprised. Elder Yelian even smacked his lips repeatedly. It's so beautiful. Boom. After a while, the light and shadow in the sky dispersed. Xiongji took two steps back. With beads of sweat on her forehead and her face turned pale. For anyone, opening the sea of chi to fully output the true chi is a very consuming task. In order to show her white tiger in front of everyone for a little longer, Xiongji also persisted for a while. Well done! Shen Erfu encouraged her with a smile. Xiongji was also very happy with her steps and was very satisfied with her performance. Then, Lu Zhanmei glanced at the two remaining men, and Lu Fufeng raised his hand towards her. She nodded and stepped out. Come to the Yuanhua Tianlu. The Yuanhua Heavenly Furnace. Which had just been heated up by Cheong Ji. Actually cooled down in just a short moment. Which shows how strong this magic weapon is. Lu Zhanmei pushed on the armrest with only one palm. Boom. The turbulent sea of Qi surges out. In an instant. There was a ripple from the ground. The onlookers were all shocked at how much powerful Qi this woman contained. Bang. The red gold flames are instantly dazzling. In this alone. It can be seen that it vaguely surpasses Cheong Ji. Immediately, there was the sound of a long sword being unsheathed. Laugh. As if coming from the broken void, a giant sword more than ten feet high instantly appeared on the top of the furnace. The Divine Sword of Manifestation. This woman's swordsmanship is so terrifying. Elder Yao Ding exclaimed. A genius in the way of swordsmanship. A genius in the way of swordsmanship. Elder Yao Lian also said. Faishing Temple has picked up a treasure. Next to him, Elder Wugan twirled his beard and smiled. That's not all. Lu Zhanmei seemed to still have some strength left. And he raised his eyebrows. Boom. A wave of sword and tech comes rolling in. Like ripples. Swinging across the top of Feilite Peak. Zhanmei! Don't mess around! Elder Wugan gave a clear shout and suddenly flicked his sleeves. Confining the sword and tent in the field and preventing it from spreading. If it is allowed to sweep across all directions. I don't know how many Feilai sect disciples present will have nightmares tonight. It's just the power of the Holy Spirit. The disciple was careless. As the storm was about to subside, Lu Zhanmei's voice came. She returned to the team calmly, as if the shocking scene just now was not caused by her. Elder Wigan smiled sheepishly at the others, while Elder Yao Ding waved his hand indifferently. With so many Feilai sect elders present, these disciples would not be allowed to cause trouble, which he didn't care about. In the field, Lu Fufeng glanced at Li Chu. Who goes first? Li Chu Qin gave way. You should go first. Lu Fufeng smiled slightly. Okay. I saw him fluttering his robed sleeves and taking a big step forward. His momentum seemed to rise sharply. Bang. 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 With every step he takes, his momentum increases. When they arrived at the Tianlu, all the elders present were frightened. Master Yao Ding's eyes narrowed. Where does this child come from? Lu Fufeng held the handrail of the stove with both hands, and his eyes suddenly became sharp. Boom. He changed his previous casual attitude and shouted, Show me the Holy Spirit. Appearance. It's as if the words follow the law. Boom. 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 Countless explosions resounded in the air, and a blue-gold color appeared in the sky furnace. Fire like never seen before. Appearance. After a while. There seemed to be an echo coming from the sky. Boom. There was a loud noise in the sky. And a huge figure appeared out of thin air. Unimaginably big. Hui Tianzuan! Elder Yao Lian exclaimed, widening his eyes and looking at Liu Zhuang not far away. Is this kid? Liu Zhuang looked at him and shook his head slightly. It cannot be said. Boom. There was another sound. The figure seemed to squeeze in from another space. It wasn't until there was a crack of thunder that it was completely manifested. Hundreds of feet tall. A sound of flaming golden armor. Three heads and six arms holding the sky. In comparison, the previous white tiger and giant sword were actually insignificant. Lu Zhanmei's eyes were blazing. And instead of being cold and cold before, he actually ignited a fierce fighting spirit. Bang. This figure was so terrifying that when it dispersed, it was accompanied by a loud noise that echoed in the air for a long time. Everyone who saw this scene was immersed in shock and could not extricate themselves for a long time, including Li Chu. He looked at Lu Fufeng and thought to himself, He is so strong. This god of manifestation may not be able to help you fight. But to some extent, it can completely show a person's cultivation. This Lu Fufeng is unfathomable. 
before everyone could escape from the shock. Lu Fufeng's casual figure had returned to the team. He smiled lazily at Li Chu. It's your turn. Um. Li Chu nodded. I couldn't help but feel a little uneasy. If everyone is mediocre, then that's it. But before the wave of people in front subsided, another wave came to attack. It made him quite difficult to get off. When he appeared on the stage, everyone's eyes were fixed on Lu Fufeng. I don't know what secrets he hides, but it is indeed difficult for him to fail in this round of fake insect selection. It is really terrifying to directly manifest a deity at the level of a heavenly being, in the atmosphere where no one was paying attention. Li Chu slowly stepped forward, holding the handrail. Zhao Lianchen shouted encouragingly. Li Chu, just go all out! Um, Li Chu nodded and calmed down. Granted, just give it your all. Call out. He first injected a bit of spiritual power. Boom. The fire seemed to be aroused, and white light came out. White? Li Chu was stunned for a moment. Probably because the spiritual power injected was too weak. But it doesn't matter. He just wanted to test it first. He felt a little relieved that Tian Lu could be activated by spiritual power. Then it's time to go all out. Boom. In an instant, he poured all his spiritual power into the furnace. Call out. This time, the voice seemed to be particularly quiet. Two streaks of white light came out from the furnace wall. And they didn't seem to be hot at all. This firelight, Elder Yalian scratched his head. I think I have seen it somewhere. It looks familiar to me. But I just can't remember it. Elder Yaoding also nodded. But soon, the two of them had no time to think too much and were attracted by the figure that appeared on the top of the furnace. Yes, Li Chu's manifestation of the Holy Spirit was very smooth. There was no struggle. In midair, a faint figure appeared instantly. He is about seven feet long, with a thin body and a jade tree facing the wind. Although his face is a little blurry, he can still see the rare elegance in the world. Everyone around him was confused. It seems that this holy person is himself? Someone murmured. Of course it's him. Look at his posture and demeanor. He's exactly the same. But why is this possible? Dad doesn't know either. Li Chu looked up at the human figure that suddenly appeared above the stove that day and was a little confused. Am I manifesting myself? It's not that all those who manifest the saints are. Kara Law. Etc. A crisp sound interrupted his thoughts. Kara Law, Kara Law. It seems like something is gradually falling apart. Then, white light filled his eyes. Oh. Boom, 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 boom. Chapter 163. Fei Sex Disaster. Inside Hangzhou Prefecture, a pretty woman opened the window from the attic and used a bamboo pole to support the window lattice allowing the market wind to penetrate into the house. On the long street downstairs, an official in brocade passed by in a hurry without raising his head. At this time, a loud noise suddenly came from the distance. Rumble. It was like thunderclouds rubbing against the ground, with explosions ringing in my ears. Ah. The woman cried out in shock. Her heart trembled. Her skin trembled. And she dropped the bamboo pole by mistake. The official was also shocked by the loud noise and was stunned for a moment when a bamboo pole hit his head. He said, ouch. Picked up the bamboo pole, looked up angrily, and saw that the woman was also lowering her eyes and bowing her head. The two suddenly looked at each other. The most tender thing is the gentleness of bowing one's head. The anger in the official's eyes suddenly dissipated and turned into a gentle gaze. There was also a hint of shyness in the woman's eyes. Just because autumn is about to change, causing the heart of spring to feel uneasy. The culprit that caused the loud noise was the supreme treasure Yuenhua Heavenly Furnace at the Fakian Gate outside the city. Li Chu was surprised when the God of Manifestation actually manifested himself. Then I heard a shattering sound coming from the Sky Furnace. A crack crawled up, and immediately, strands of white light seeped out. The blazing white light seemed to contain tens of millions of powerful forces. The Yuenhua Heavenly Furnace could no longer bear it. The furnace wall collapsed, and the suppressed power was released in a surge. The result is an explosion. And it was an explosion beyond imagination. At that moment, Elder Yalian suddenly remembered what that white light was. It's the real Yongji fire. He shouted loudly. It was a type of fairy fire. Extremely rare to see in the mortal world. He once went with Master Yao Ding to the main hall of Zhongzhou Danning Pavilion to observe a very high standard Dan Chung ceremony. At that time, the half-step earth immortal of Danning Pavilion used a wisp of immortal energy that he had refined over three years to activate a Yang Pole true fire. Only this kind of fairy fire can make elixir. At this moment, 
The blazing anode real fire exploded in front of his eyes. Elder Yalian is stupid. He has not made any progress in his practice for many years. And this situation is obviously not something he can handle. But he vaguely felt that this might be the biggest crisis for the Phalai sect in more than a thousand years. The real person yanting next to him immediately intervened to stop him. Senior figures including Elder Wugan, Lu Zhuang, and Shinerfu all took action, eager to reach their full cultivation level in an instant, hoping to prevent the explosion from spreading. But, it's like a mantis using its arms as a chariot. The layers of true energy barriers were shattered at the first touch. In the rush, there was no time to set up strong restrictions or magic circles. Seeing that the surrounding Phalai sect disciples would suffer, that's not all. I'm afraid the entire Phalai peak will be razed to the ground. No one could have imagined that the Phalai sect would suffer such a sudden disaster. A sudden catastrophe of annihilation. Buzz. At the critical moment, a startling sound suddenly came from Feiyun Palace. As soon as the colorful light appeared, the fairy music played. A misty figure appeared in the sky. This figure seemed to be a middle-aged Taoist. Wearing a Taoist robe, with fluttering beard and hair and an unbridled immortal aura. I saw him yelling softly, Stop! As soon as he raised his hand, the white light that was about to spread froze for a moment. It seemed as if it was trapped by some huge circle, but he was not enough to eliminate this huge energy. He raised his handprint upwards, and a beam of light was suddenly pulled towards the sky. The weather in Hangzhou Prefecture seems to be troubled recently. The next moment, the light beam exploded high in the sky. The rumble is like divine punishment and the sound is like a crack in the sky. On that day, all the people in Hangzhou Prefecture saw a huge mushroom cloud rising in the sky. After a while, it suddenly started raining. The sound of the piano comes again. Ancestor! The voice of Master Yao Ding was the first to be heard, followed closely by him, and he knelt down to worship. That ethereal figure in the sky is actually the common ancestor of these four sects. Taoist Fei. Immediately, Many disciples who had inherited his inheritance knelt down and worshipped. You don't have to worship me. The voice of the figure in the sky was gentle and low-pitched. But it clearly reached the ears of every disciple. I'm just a distraction left in the Guqin by Fei Dao. When the people around heard this, they were surprised. The elders of the Fei Lai sect looked as usual. They already knew the secret. Why does the music sound when it rains? It's just because of the distraction of the ancestor hidden in the Guqin that he can still play the Qin. The purpose of leaving this distraction is to save the Phalai sect when it is in danger of being exterminated. Now that I have exhausted all my power, it is time to dissipate. You can take care of yourself from now on. As he spoke, the ethereal figure became lighter and lighter and gradually disappeared into the air. From now on, there will be no sound of Amamiya's piano in the world. Everyone felt sorry for him. Sad. Deplorable. Master Yao Ding stared at the sky, watching the distraction disappear only to feel that his eyes were turning black, and his energy and blood were rising up one after another. This patriarch is distracted. But Phalai Sek's last trump card, for more than a thousand years, even in critical moments, as long as they can survive, no one wants to use it. This represents a life for the sect. Today, it was actually in his hand, and it disappeared in a daze. At this moment, he felt that he was a center of Phalai Sect. If a foreign enemy really invades and life or death is at stake, forget about using it. The key is that this is just because of a competition between disciples. The entire sect was blowing the wind, singing songs, and watching the assembly. And suddenly the whole clan was almost wiped out. It's a little too funny. Thinking of this, he suddenly frowned. Where is Li Chu? Elder Yao Lian looked sad and pointed at the empty space with only a big pit left. There is no trace of the Yuanhua Heavenly Furnace. He is just wowing. Before he could finish his words, he heard a young Taoist priest in plain green clothes say from the side, I'm here. When Li Chu came to Elder Yao Ding, his mood was slightly ups and downs. He didn't expect it either. His own spiritual power can not only activate the Yuanhua Heavenly Furnace, but also has outstanding effects. The moment the sky furnace shattered, he felt bad. It flashed several times in succession and moved to an extremely distant place in an instant. In a little while, I'm afraid he would have left Feilai Peak. Thanks to the distraction of the flying Taoist at this time, the explosion was stopped. Li Chu then turned back. Master Yao Ding looked at him in surprise, blinked, looked up and down again, and then asked, Are you okay? Yeah. Li Chu nodded. Alas, Master Yao Ding sighed heavily 
and said with a wry smile. My Fei sect almost had a big accident. Looking at the messy scene, Li Chu felt a hint of worry in his heart. Why is Master Yading looking for him? Could it be that he was asked to compensate? He felt slightly apologetic about the current consequences. He expressed deep sympathy for the losses suffered by the Fei sect. But, if Master Yao Ding really asked him to compensate, then he could only refuse awkwardly, firmly and ruthlessly. Can't pay. Absolutely no compensation. Chapter 164 I understand the truth. But who are you? Master Yao Ding looked at Li Chu with a complicated expression. If he had thought about naturalizing Li Chu before, he didn't dare to do so now. He didn't know what inheritance Li Chu practiced and what realm he had reached. He only knows that among the many powerful powers he has seen in his life, it is possible to melt and explode the Yuanhua heavenly furnace with no more than one palm. With his shallow cultivation and vision, he didn't dare to make a conclusion and could only rely on guessing. I'm afraid only land gods can do it. Right? After all, the Yang Pole true fire can only be activated by immortal energy. For something like immortal Qi, even a half-step earth immortal or an early heaven reaching immortal would have to spend several or more than ten years of hard work to condense even one strand. As long as it comes into contact with a little boundary, it is no longer the category of mortals. No, it is no longer a category that mortals can understand. In the heart of Master Yao Ding, he quickly experienced gasps. This kid is extraordinary and so terrifying. This is a surprise for three consecutive times. Thinking that yesterday, he was still thinking about what conditions to use to naturalize Li Chu. I feel a little guilty now. But luckily I didn't really ask. The wind on the top of the mountain made his face hurt. Who is naturalized? Just as the patriarch was no longer distracted. Did he invite Taoist priestly over to be the honorary patriarch? As for Li Chu's origins, he had some vague guesses. But he didn't dare to say it. And he didn't dare to ask. After thinking for a long time, he could only squeeze out an extremely kind smile. I hope you're okay. I'm worried about you. Thank you for your concern. Mr. Master, Li Chu said his thanks lightly. At the same time, he secretly praised in his heart. Yao Ding is a nice person. Over there, Liu Zhuang, the fourth master of the Fagin sect, recovered from his shock and made gestures with his hands in the air. He was a little frightened, a little hurt, and a little confused. So the big Yuanhua Heavenly Furnace will be gone if you don't? The Yuanhua Heavenly Furnace is not only the top-ranked treasure in the Fakian sect. It is also relatively famous among the pill furnaces in the world. Although it is a bit rough. It is not suitable for refining exquisite high-level elixirs. But just the infinite transformation of true energy is enough to make it irreplaceable. But, since it can transform infuriating energy infinitely, why did it explode? Liu Zhuang doesn't know this question anymore. It's just a stove. If it's gone, it's gone. On the contrary, his son Lu Fufeng said lightly, I am more curious about his identity than this. He looked at Li Chu with a playful look. After some confusion, Master Yao Ding brought Elder Yao Lian to Elder Wu Jin. Elder Wu Gen, Master Yao Ding asked, For the next competition, you? Elder Wu Gen smiled bitterly. He did prepare a treasure and prepared to do the test questions. But look at this posture. If you take it out, you may not be able to put it back. The people who participated in the four flying conference this time were all terrifying. It is outrageous that there are only four disciples. And there are two suspected reincarnations of great powers. So he looked at Master Yao Ding and said with a smile, What's the comparison? Isn't it worse than this? Elder Yao Yin frowned. Winning this project would be disgraceful. Master Yao Ding rolled his eyes, grabbed his senior brother and walked away, muttering as he walked. No one can compare with you. So don't be embarrassed. The Sifei conference ended unexpectedly. All four families admitted that the gap between the disciples who came this time was obvious. Cheong Ji, who possesses the white tiger body, might have been able to compete for the top spot in any previous session. But this time, she could only reluctantly admit that no matter what the competition was, she was the weakest one. This is a natural immortal body, but it has been reduced to such a state. And all the elders are extremely sad. Lu Zhanmei has never fallen behind anyone among the younger generation of cultivators. But in the face of these two terrifying opponents, I can only accept defeat and don't know what I feel in my heart. Lu Fufing simply admitted defeat. The next two competitions were temporarily cancelled. In this way, as long as the other three teams left Fei sect, Li Chu could call it a day and go home. This was an unexpected surprise. That night, 
someone knocked on his door again. Li Chu opened the door and saw that it was Liu Zhuang from Fisherman. Master Lu, he nodded gently. Ha ha, it's my little brother Fu Feng who wants to meet little friendly Chu. So I'm here to invite you, Lu Zhuang said with a smile. Li Chu wondered for a moment. The son wanted to see him. So he asked his father to inform him? Is this wrong? Of course. Everyone sent his own father to invite him. So he had no reason to refuse. Then he followed Lu Zhuang all the way to the courtyard where Fisherman lived. Lu Zhuang stretched out his hand and said, Little friendly Chu, please come in first. I won't go in for now. After saying that, he turned around and stood at the entrance of the courtyard. Looking at his posture, he clearly looked like a guard. Li Chu was even more puzzled. First come to deliver the letter, and then go to the door. This Master Lu is simply being used as a servant. What is the origin of Lu Fufeng? Could it be that he is a filial son? With some irrelevant questions, he walked into the courtyard and knocked on the door. Please come in! Lu Fufeng's voice came to mind. Li Chu pushed the door open and saw him sitting at the eight immortals table with several jars of fine wine on the table, different from his carelessness during the day. Lu Fufeng's eyes were shining with a strange and passionate light at this time. Li Chu became cautious. In this world, there are some things that you have to guard against. Ha ha. Sit down. Lu Fufeng raised his hand enthusiastically. Li Chu sat down as he was told. Brother Li, do you know why I invited you here? Lu Fufeng suddenly asked first. Li Chu shook his head lightly. Lu Fufeng leaned forward and said, I want to ask who you are? Li Chu blinked. Who am I? That's right. Lu Fufeng smiled slightly and said, Do you know who I am? Who are you? Li Chu couldn't help but frown. Did this person really come to him to engage in philosophy? Will he ask later, Whether the universe has an end? And, Whether time has a length? Then he won't commit suicide. Be careful. Seeing that he was a little confused, Lu Fufeng smiled and said, you and I can be honest. There is no need to hide it. Since you don't trust me, I can tell you first. In my previous life, my name was Chuan Fong. I believe you have heard of the wind Chuan in the north. Right. The wind from Northland. Li Chu's pupils shrank slightly. A little surprised. He had actually heard of this name. Jiang Incontinent is far away from the Northland. And most of the Northland cultivators who can reach here are famous people. The messenger is one of them. He started his career nearly a hundred years ago. He has no family or sect. And he does both good and evil things. He often does things to rob the rich, give to the poor, enlighten the common people, and show himself as a saint in front of others. Among the people of the North, many legends have been left behind. Among the many legendary stories in the world, there is also one of his most colorful ones. It's just that this person disappeared decades ago, and his life and death are unknown. This is normal no matter how big a person is in the world. Once he enters the realm of decline, he will gradually disappear and work hard to seek transcendence. If you are a land god, your eyes will not be on the human world. It is not uncommon for this kind of casual cultivator who has no family or friends to suddenly disappear from the world. I just didn't expect him to turn into a teenager. Then there is only one possibility. Second life. According to legend, if you reach the peak of decline, that is, the realm of half-step earth immortal. If you cannot break through and your life is approaching, there is another option. It means that after enduring a series of extremely dangerous and near-death disasters, it is possible to live a new life, keeping the memory of the previous life. Living another life can once again hit the highest bottleneck. And when you reach the realm of land gods, you can freely choose whether to reincarnate and cultivate again. Every land immortal has a chance to cultivate a second life. Only, compared with the first body, the second body has more powerful cultivation experience and the practice is rapid, but it also has many disadvantages. First, many people have many supernatural powers in their lives, such as being born with immortal bodies, through which they can achieve great powers. But the second life is reincarnation, and he may become a person with mediocre qualifications. The second is that the law of heaven does not favor the second body, no matter how strong a person's luck is. Once he cultivates his second body, he will no longer have luck around him. Only by accumulating virtue and doing good deeds throughout one's life can one's fortune be equal to that of ordinary people. Third, those who have overcome all obstacles and become powerful have not only had relatives, friends, masters and disciples in their previous lives, but they must also have had countless enemies. Even if you are not an enemy, just a competitor, 
it is inevitable that they will want to completely kill you before you mature. Therefore, every powerful person who has cultivated his second body will not reveal his identity easily until he returns to his peak state. Usually, he will leave himself a rich treasure and a powerful protector. Li Chu's knowledge of the reincarnation of the powerful came from market rumors. And that was the extent of it. Seeing that he seemed a little surprised, Lu Fufeng smiled and continued. Few people know that I am an acquaintance of the old head of the Feijin sect. He also contributed a lot to my rebuilding my second body. After completing the cultivation, I will throw this body into Fishiman. My identity as the son of Liu Zhuang is just a cover. He also named me Lu Chuanfeng before. I thought, doesn't this name clearly tell people my identity? So I changed it to Lu Fufeng. All right. After saying that, he stared at Li Chu seriously. You are so honest. Brotherly, please stop covering up. I have absolutely no ill intentions. And I can swear not to reveal even a single bit of today's conversation. I really have something extremely important to ask about. So I have no choice but to invite you here. You are about the same age as me. But your cultivation is higher than mine. You must have been extraordinary in your previous life. And you must be the best in the world. Li Chu looked at him. A little embarrassed. Brother Lu. Senior. He replied. You may have misunderstood. I am not the reincarnation of a powerful person. Impossible. Lu Fufing shook his head in disbelief. Your alien inheritance is definitely not a disciple of the Feilai sect. At such a young age. You have such amazing cultivation. No one will believe that you are not the reincarnation of a great power. Huh? Li Chu smiled helplessly. Even if no one will believe it. I am indeed not the reincarnation of a powerful person. In fact, strictly speaking, he may not be said to be a second incarnation. Only, in his previous life, he was just an ordinary student who failed the college entrance examination. It is far from what Lu Fufen calls the best in the world. Then where did your current cultivation level come from? Could it be that you came from your own cultivation? No matter how evil you are, you have never heard of such a monster. Lu Fufeng stared at Li Chu. What do you want to do? Do you believe in my sincerity? Li Chu spread his hands. I believe in your sincerity. But I really have nothing to tell you. Lu Fufeng persisted. You just need to tell me first which boss you are reincarnated. Li Chu had no choice but to say calmly. Okay. If you promise not to tell anyone else. I can be honest with you. Lu Fufeng nodded with satisfaction. I am indeed not a disciple of Fei Lai sect. I am a disciple of Yu Hang Town. Shalipo and Di Yongwen in Hangzhou Prefecture. I have a master whose cultivation is astonishing. Participating in the Four Flying Conference, this time is actually to earn money and compete for others. As for the reincarnation of the great power you are talking about, I don't know much. You said that my cultivation is amazing. Maybe because of my different inheritance. But it is definitely not because of past life experience. These are my words from the bottom of my heart. You and I are strangers. And there is no need for me to lie to you. If you believe me, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. Li Chu spoke sincerely. Lu Fufing seemed to have finally been convinced by him. His eyes wandered on Li Chu's face for a long time. After a while, he said something. I understand the truth. But which boss is the reincarnation of you? Li Chu scratched his head. Um, momentarily speechless. Chapter 165 All the Way North North Then North All the Way North Li Chu left Fei Lai Zongho. Master Yao Ding and Elder Yao Lian stood at the top of the mountain at the Sea of Clouds. Looking across the vastness, their Taoist robes fluttering. Alas! Master Yao Ding let out a long sigh and said, In the past hundred years, we finally won the first place in the four flying conferences. It's just that it was a bit disgraceful and it also consumed the most precious ancestor's distraction. If there is really a chance of annihilation in the future, if you blame me, the leader, I will be the center of the sect. Ha uh ha. -huh. I think it's not a bad thing. Elder Yao Lian smiled, and his eyes were clear. Oh. Master Yao Ding looked at him. Senior brother, what do you mean? The sect barely survived, and the patriarch's distraction and expense can actually be regarded as a kind of retribution. Right? Elder Yao Lian said slowly, The Patriarch set the rules for the Four Flying Conference because he wanted our four sects to be united, support each other, and encourage each other. But we cheated and invited outsiders to join the battle. It couldn't be more wrong. It was said to be a temporary measure at the time. But now that I think about it, it is simply an escape from Feilai's sect's years of weakness. 
The reason why Fei sect is weak is because there are too many root causes. Not to mention anything else. How many of the chief disciples we have selected over the years are worthy of being the chief disciple? As a cultivator, my first priority is my image, not my strength. No matter what the short-term gains are, when my disciples see it, they will naturally care about it. In the long run, the atmosphere will be bad. We are all responsible for the formation of these unhealthy trends. Master Yao Ding said, but in today's world, everyone is like this. If other families have disciples who are amazingly talented and good-looking, we can naturally deduce them. Elder Yao Lian said, we don't have any, so we should choose the more important one. But we forcefully abandon the good and the bad, which is stupid in itself. Master Yao Ding was silent for a long time before he nodded. You're right. Why not take the sex loss as an opportunity for us to work hard? After that, he sent a message. Tell Lang Yuyin to come to the top of the mountain. After a while, a young disciple, half-body wrapped in medicine cloth and holding a cane, stumbled up. Judging from his appearance, bright eyes and white teeth, he is a handsome young man. No wonder he is liked by many girls in Hangzhou. Master, Master, Lang Yuyin reluctantly saluted and said, Why are you calling this disciple to come here? Master Yao Ding said straightforwardly, this four flying conference has inspired your master and this sect leader. I plan to reselect the chief disciple among the sects in a few days based on their strength. Strength comes first? Lang Yuyan was startled. Then me. He almost blurted out. Then I'm done with it. Fortunately, I swallowed it later. Just rest in peace and recuperate. Elder Yao Yan said. Anyway, you can be seriously injured by Zhao Liangchen's sword. So you are probably no match for him. You don't have to worry about these things. It's not master. This incident was actually an accident. Lang Yuyan was shocked and wanted to argue. Don't worry. You have contributed a lot to the sect in the past two years. And the sect will not treat you badly. Elder Yao Ding said. But chief, Lang Yuyan said in a panic. The disciple was actually injured by his senior brother because he was pretending. I also asked Master Master to think carefully. This disciple just didn't want to make a fool of himself at the four flying conference so he deliberately hit his senior brother with a sword. Master, master. In fact, I have regretted it these days. If I give this disciple another chance, he will definitely choose to participate in the four flying conference. I am willing to fly around for the sect. As many as you want. Give me another chance. Lang Yuyan's helpless voice echoed in a sea of clouds. Li Chu returned to Diyun Temple. After not seeing each other for a few days, I feel a little unfamiliar. The size of the Taoist temple has expanded a lot, occupying almost half of the 10-mile slope. Seeing it, the back door over there is about to connect to the area where lantern monsters are spawned. Think about it. If the Yun Temple was bigger, you would be able to bump into a few lantern monsters when you go to the toilet in the future. This would be such a happy scene. After coming back, he got into the room. Before leaving Feilai sect, Zhao Lianchen taught him the detailed process of making talismans. Now he can't wait to try it himself. It's actually very simple to say. There are only three key points in making talismans. Spiritual thoughts. Spirit attachment. And talisman techniques. The first step is to manifest an idea in your mind with your soul. This idea must be firm and powerful enough. The content of the thought is what you want this talisman to realize. For example, calling for wind, rain, thunder, lightning, etc. This level excludes all mortals. If you want to have enough ideas to write down, you need at least several years of meditation practice. The second step is to possess the spirit. I saw this idea completely transmitted to the paper of the talisman. This level is the easiest to fail in the entire process. The difficulty of realizing it is like going from fantasy to actual combat. Of course, it also depends on the content of the thoughts in your mind. This is why the more powerful and mysterious the talismans are, the more likely they are to fail. Combining divine will and true energy using cinnabar and yellow talismans as carriers, is the basis for making a talisman. The third step is the talisman. This step is the biggest restriction on the talisman. It is naturally impossible for people to follow their thoughts and words. In fact, if you combine the true energy with your spiritual thoughts, it is just a piece of yellow paper that has been injected with true energy, and you cannot do whatever you want. Each talisman has its own talisman. The ancient characters written on the talismans may seem to many people to be ghostly talismans, but they contain the power of the great avenue of heaven and earth. It is said that when the world first opened, there were only a few hundred words in the world. 
all of which were extremely complicated and obscure. They were understood from the most primitive traces of heaven and earth. And only a handful of sages could master them. Because these words are not used for people to communicate with each other. It allows people to communicate with heaven. The functions of these ancient characters are for casting spells, offering sacrifices, and fighting. Every word can activate the power of heaven and earth. As long as you master the appropriate arrangement and combination, it is possible to manipulate the five elements and reverse yin and yang. It was not until later that a wise sage of the human race created another set of much simplified characters based on this. Although it does not contain the power of heaven, it can convey civilization. The day the word was written, the sky rains millet, and the ghosts cry at night. The talisman of the talisman is to find the ancient character combination that can display your spiritual thoughts. These key knowledges are monopolized by sex all over the world and will never be passed on to others. The talisman that Xiao Lianch and Tot Li Chu was the simplest talisman. Sing Swifu. This walking talisman comes from the common walking talisman in the world. It is a little trick. Just by placing your consciousness in one place, you can feel the scene nearby. There are many restrictions on performing the curse. So if it is written as a talisman, the effect will be much better. After listening to what he said, Li Chu understood. If you stick a talisman somewhere, you can imagine installing a camera there. His first thought was that this thing was very practical in preventing thieves. Then, he asked Zhao Lianchen how far the effective sensing distance of a walking talisman was. That is, how far away the talisman must be from the caster before it becomes ineffective. Zhao Lianchen was about to answer. Generally it is a radius of 10 miles. Suddenly I thought that it was a bit funny that Li Chu could see all the valid traveling talismans within a radius of 30 miles and 10 miles with just one scan. In fact, he didn't know that after upgrading again, Li Chu's range of vision was already close to 50 miles. So he smiled and said, This depends on the individual's cultivation level and the strength of his spiritual consciousness. Some are far away and some are close. Li Chu nodded. Judging from the magical effect of my spiritual power, if it can be used to make talismans, it should be relatively far away. Naturally, writing brushes, cinnabar, and yellow talismans are all prepared. The Yun Temple is, after all, a serious Taoist temple. Li Chu spread the yellow paper on the table, picked up the brush, and dipped it in cinnabar. Thanks to the two classes of soft pen calligraphy he had learned in the second grade of elementary school, his writing skills were barely comparable to those of ordinary scholars from the Huluid dynasty. It will not cause failure due to unstable strokes. Gather spiritual thoughts. Infusing. Just about to put pen to paper. Li Chu suddenly raised his eyes. Thought for a moment. Went out. And called Xiao Yurin. The little Koi looked confused and asked. What are you doing? It's nothing. Just stand here for a while. It's troublesome. With the Koi beside him. Li Chu started writing again. As if divine help had come. His mind is different from the spiritual consciousness of ordinary qi practitioners but he uses the so-called soul to explore the world. And if he can separate out a ray of spiritual thought, he may succeed. Thinking like this, he tried to cut out a ray of spiritual thought and injected it into the paper. In his first attempt, he only injected a trace of spiritual power. The incident with the Felicet gave him a long memory. He still had many questions about spiritual power. So he must be cautious about its use. It took a long time to draw this simple talisman. He dusted off his pen and picked up this neat talisman. The surface of the talisman is slightly hot. Zhao Lianchen said that this is a sign of the success of the talisman. The heat means that the true energy in the talisman is circulating. Li Chu closed his eyes and thought. Boom. The scene of the entire room appeared in his mind from another perspective. It really looks like a camera with no blind spots in all directions. Li Chu felt that if the house hadn't blocked it, the monitoring range might have been even larger. It's done in one go. Barely, after thinking about it, he thanked the little koi. He went out again and found Wanli Feisha. Wanli Feisha, who had been working hard at the construction site for many days, had long since turned into a gray-haired man. Seeing him like this, Li Chu couldn't help asking, Are you tired of moving bricks? Wanli Feisha raised his head and said excitedly, Tired? But tired is fine. Comfort is reserved for the rich. Li Chu said, Actually, I want to ask you to do me a favor. Wanli Feisha waved his hand. But it doesn't matter. Yes, Li Chu said. This is my first time making a talisman. I drew a row of talismans. I want to test its effective distance. You have fast feet. 
so I would like to ask you to run farther with it. It doesn't have to be too far. Just wait until the talisman stops getting hot. Hey, it's such a big deal. Wanli Facia smiled. This is much easier than moving bricks. Just wait for me and come as soon as I go. He is also a practitioner. Although he is not proficient in talismans, he still understands them and knows the effectiveness of these talismans. The first time he heard about the Xing Sui Fu, he thought that this thing was quite practical for peeping. So I learned a little bit. It must have run a few dozen miles at most before it would be ineffective. He was thinking if he should be lazy for a while and run slower so that he would not have to move bricks when he came back later. But he soon shook his head and dismissed the depraved idea. Although the days of moving bricks into Yangwen were hard, it was much better than the days of being in fear in the demon sect. What's more, I am trying to atone for my past mistakes. By the way, the old Taoist priest often gave him some benefits that were insignificant and not worth mentioning. So he didn't take them seriously. Thinking of this, he felt ashamed of what he had just thought. You don't work hard to move the bricks yourself. How can the old temple master and little Taoistly live a better life? After saying this, Wanli Facia spread his legs and headed north. Li Chu watched with admiration as his sparks and lightning disappeared in an instant. This guy has never learned any special magical powers. He has only been able to reach this point with his extreme talent in running. In some fields, it is not an exaggeration to call him a genius. Immediately, he hurriedly returned to the room, closed his eyes, and sensed the walking talisman. In such a short time, thousands of miles of flying sand had already crossed the Luwa River. The range that the walking talisman can see is probably within a radius of several dozen feet. But because the flying sand travels so fast, there are afterimages all around. Follow him all the way north. Run, 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 run. Gradually, the green surrounding disappeared, turned khaki. Then we stopped, found a roadside shop, and drank a bowl of spicy soup. Then run again. Running with the wind, freedom is the direction. Chase the power of thunder and lightning all the way. Then we stopped, found a small shop, and ate a plate of gubao pork. Then run again. Gradually, earthy yellow turns to silvery white. At night, Li Chu opened his eyes with a solemn expression and went to Yu Qian's room. Master, do you have any maps outside of Halua? Chapter 166 Miss Pan in the Attic Ten days later, thousands of miles of flying sand returns to the Yun Temple. He was ragged and unkempt, but he was smiling, and there was a sense of refuge in poetry and distant places in his expression. He looked so pitiful that the first reaction of the little koi when seeing him was to give him two steamed buns. It was only at the second glance that he realized that this was one of his own. Ah, what's wrong with you? When the fox girl saw him, she also exclaimed. But Wanli Facia didn't say anything. Just smiled mysteriously. Not long after, half of the people in the Yun Temple came over. The little miracle doctor with the pig's nose looked at him carefully for a while and said, It's okay. Ah, the little koi covered her mouth and was about to cry. Miss Shalu and Fox Girl are also a little sad. They are such good people. How can I say it? What are you doing? The little miracle doctor looked at them strangely. He is really fine. He is not sick or in trouble. He is just a little stupid, and there is no cure for it. At this time, Li Chu and Yu Qian came over, and Wanli Feisha rushed forward excitedly and held Li Chu's hand. Xiao Tao is priestly. Thank you. Li Chu almost thought he was going to bite him, thinking of the scenes he had seen through Xing Sui Fu in the past few days. He wanted to express his gratitude, but felt that the time was not right. I wanted to apologize but I felt the atmosphere was not good. After thinking for a long time, he said, Congratulations. Really? Wanli Facia almost burst into tears. You also know what great things I have done. Right. I know. Li Chi said sincerely. What are you talking about? Why can't I understand? Asked the little miracle doctor. Do you know? Wanli Facia turned around and declared loudly with an excited heart and trembling hands. This world is a ball. I know. The little miracle doctor nodded heavily. Every morning when I get up, I punch the air first. For no other reason than to fight the world. I'm not cussing. Wanli Facia said excitedly. I am heading north all the way. Leaving the season where you are. I went to Donai Continent. To the northern Nahan Continent. And I even passed by the snow mountain of the sword sect. As he spoke, he took out a talisman from his arms that had obvious signs of being soaked with sweat and then dried. It's so cold around here and the snow-capped mountains are so cold. 
My whole body is cold. But this thing is still hot. I traveled through the Northland. And then something magical happened. The weather gradually warmed up again. And I actually saw the sea again. You can't imagine that feeling. Discovering a new world that no one has ever visited. Look up at the sky. The moon is smiling. Look down at the ground. The waves are dancing. Then I went all the way north and came back from the south. Li Chu thought for a while. The reason why Wanli Feisha got such a big name is because he is known as traveling thousands of miles in a day, although it is a bit exaggerated. After all the eating, drinking, sleeping, traveling at dawn and sleeping at night, it is possible to travel 8,000 miles in a day. It lasted 10 days, which meant a journey of about 80,000 miles. Roughly speaking, this world is about the same size as Earth. Of course, he was not too surprised about the world is a ball and just nodded slightly. Everyone else's response to Wanli Feisha was almost the same. In the end, it was Yu Qian who cruelly told the truth and completely broke Wanli Feisha's defense. What's so strange about this? The old Taoist priest looked familiar with the world. There have long been powerful people who have tried to travel around the world and even tried to pick up stars and hang them in their own secret realm for a true power. Watering the East China Sea and Mu Ken Wu is more than just talk. From ancient times to the present, countless people have explored the edges of the world. There is only one reason why Wanli Feisha doesn't know about this matter. He has never been to school and has never read a book. He is a fish that slipped through the net of hello education. Thousands of miles of flying sand suddenly turned everything into despair. I obviously thought it was a tree-lined path opened by myself. But I didn't expect that it was a broad road that had been traveled by people for a long time. And it was even busy with traffic at one time. This feeling. Looking at his suddenly lonely eyes, Li Chu didn't know how to comfort him. So he had to pat him on the shoulder. Strong. Although Wanli Feisha didn't achieve great things, he still helped a lot. Li Chu was greatly surprised that his traveling talisman could be used at unlimited distances. Just thinking about it, the use of line symbols is not very convenient. The most important thing is that he must actively switch to the perspective of Xing Suifu. And he only has one pair of eyes so he can't keep an eye on the surveillance camera all the time. One or two is fine. You can just take a look at it if you have nothing to do. If too many line extensions are used, he will not be able to detect them at all. After thinking for a while, he drew two more talismans. One was posted on the bedside, opposite where he hid the small box. This contains his wealth and life, and there is no room for loss. He usually worries a lot when he is away from home. But now he happens to be here. As for the Taoist temples outside, there is no need to worry too much. After all, the master is here. If an inconspicuous thief dares to come to the Yun Temple and is really caught by the master, he will bear the consequences. The second one he planned to give to Wang Longqi. He doesn't have many friends. If you think about it carefully, he is a mortal who is not in a Taoist temple, lacks the ability to protect himself, and often has affairs with evil spirits. In fact, there are only seven Wang Longs. After finishing the painting, he set off to the Wang family mansion in Yuhang town to deliver it to Wang Longqi. Unexpectedly, it was only when they arrived at Wang's house that they learned that Wang Longqi had not returned home for several days. When asked where he had been, the servants at home hesitated and couldn't answer. Li Chu had no choice but to leave a message, asking Wang Longqi to come to the Yun Temple if he came back. It took another two days before Wang Longqi came over. Looking at the corners of his eyes and eyebrows, there was a sense of spring. He must have been doing well recently. As soon as he entered the door, he smiled and said, You specially asked me to come. What's the good thing? This is for you. Li Chu handed over the traveling talisman. This is a talisman I drew. It allows me to see the scene around the talisman. You are usually prone to evil spirits. Bring this with you. I can take a look at you if you are fine. If something unexpected happens, I may not be able to save you in time. But at least I can see how you died. Well, Wang Longchi grinned. It sounds like this talisman is really useful. He folded the walking talisman into a corner and tied it with a red rope. After thinking about it, he said worriedly, Doesn't that mean you can see whatever I do? Li Chu said. If you don't want me to see it, just tuck it into your clothes. Wang Longchi's face turned red. I don't want you to wear clothes when you see me. Although he was talking dirty words, Li Chu's concern actually moved him quite a bit. In the past, Li Chu had always given him the feeling of being strong, cold, and unconventional. Although the two of them were quite familiar with each other, they still often couldn't figure it out. 
He even felt a little flattered by being actively cared about this time. After being moved, he said, Do you know what I have been doing recently? Which woman are you hanging out with? Li Chu casually guessed. How do you know? Wang Longqi was shocked. Li Chu looked at him and blinked, with a look on his face that said, What serious thing can you do with this loser? Hey, I've been in love recently, but I don't mean to be conciliatory. I'm an upright supporter. Wang Longqi smiled shyly. I bought a small building in Hangzhou and raised her in it. I have been staying with her there all this time, and I couldn't bear to leave. A small building in Hangzhou? How much does it cost? Li Chu suddenly asked. 8,000 tails, Wang Longqi said. So expensive? You have to look at the location. Wang Longqi immediately began to calculate. That's the most central location on Fuching Street. You can reach the Yamenku just a few steps ahead. There are vegetable markets, schools, and various shops around it. Not only that, there is also a small courtyard downstairs, which is also Wang Jiang Tower. In this case, it's worth the price. And the room for appreciation is very high. Li Chu nodded. No, that's not the point. Okay. Wang Longqi covered his forehead helplessly. But now that he said this, he smiled slyly and continued. And speaking of it, I didn't buy it for her. I just let her live in it and said it was her home. But in fact it's still my property. Let her live in my 8,000 tail house. And give her 100 tails of food and clothing every month. Which is enough to make her grateful. After two years of waiting, this house can be raised to at least 10,000 tails. If the market is good, it may be possible to get 10,000, 3 or 4,000. No matter whether we have any results or not, I will definitely be able to earn back the 2,000. For 100 tails I gave her in the past two years. What is this called? It's all for nothing. Li Chu looked at Wang Longqi suspiciously. When did this guy's IQ become so high? Or is it that as long as the matter involves men and women? He will immediately burst out with amazing talents? Regardless, he had to give it a heartfelt thumbs up. Wang Longqi scratched his head in embarrassment. We are friends. But I never dared to tell you this time. Mainly because I was afraid that something would happen if she saw you. But seeing you so worried about my safety makes me feel a little ashamed. Well, how about going to my place later, and I'll treat you to a meal, and let her meet you. This. Li Chu hesitated. That's not necessary. Hey. Don't worry. Wang Longqi waved his hand. I just thought about it. If a woman changes her heart after seeing you, it's not worth having. You are my best friend. How can you not want you to meet your sister-in-law? Okay. Okay. Li Chu had no choice but to agree. Hangzhou Prefecture. In a small attic next to the street, a beautiful woman with a pretty face opened the window, looked out at the bustling street, and smiled. Use a bamboo pole to prop up the window and then tie a piece of yellow gauze to the bamboo pole. At this time, she suddenly saw the figure of Wang Longqi at the street corner. A trace of panic flashed in her eyes. And then she pouted. Then he pulled off the piece of yellow gauze, while Wang Longqi didn't raise his head. She quickly removed the bamboo pole and closed the window. As if nothing happened, at the street corner, Wang Longqi then raised his head, pointed at the attic, and said with a smile, That's the one. Li Chu looked at it and said, it's really good. He asked again. What's that girl's name? What should I call her later? Well, Wang Longchi thought for a while. Her surname is Pan. You can just call her Miss Pan. Chapter 167 I have a friend who was cheated on. But I don't know how to say anything. Huin Yang. Entering the attic, Wang Longchi called out and led Li Chu in happily. A woman dressed in elegant white soft casual clothes slowly walked down the stairs. Look at her. Her eyebrows are like willow leaves in early spring, often filled with sadness about rain and clouds. Her face is like peach blossoms in March, hiding the charm of the moon. When she saw Li Chu for the first time, she was startled, then turned to look at Wang Longqi and smiled with a soft voice. Shichiro, is this your friend? Wang Longqi nodded to her and said, Yes, he is the good brother I often mention to you. Oh, the woman named Huan Yang suddenly said, it's the little Taoist priest you often talk about who looks just as good as you. Right? Ah. Yes. Wang Longqi nodded heavily. Shilong's brother. Wen Yang came down and said softly, Then I should call you uncle according to etiquette. Out of fear of the remaining wine, Li Chu quickly raised his hand. No need. He turned around and said, Just call me Taoist Master Xiao. That's what people in Yuhang Town call me. Uh-huh. 
Queen Yan covered her mouth and smiled. Little Taoist Priest Li is also an interesting person. As she spoke, she helped Wang Longchi change into clothes and brought tea. She looked like a diligent and virtuous woman. Then he boiled water for cooking and cooked a table of dishes. His craftsmanship was also quite good. What made Li Chu especially comfortable was that throughout the entire banquet, she never looked at her again, and she only had normal eye contact. On the other hand, as soon as her eyes touched Wang Longchi, she was extremely gentle and greeted him with greetings, which made Wang Longchi happy. After the meal, Li Chu also felt a little strange, judging from this girl's demeanor. It doesn't look like she likes Wang Longchi, but she seems to owe him something, but he never understood emotional matters and didn't bother to think about it. After the banquet, Wang Longchi sent Li Chu to the boat before he returned. As soon as he returned to the attic, Wang Longchi happily went upstairs, hugged Wen Yang and said, I feel like I want to marry you. Oh? Why did you say that suddenly? Wen Yang asked in surprise and joy. Wang Longchi said calmly, I used to know women, ghosts and banshees. In short, any female creature, as long as it sees me and Li Chu standing together, will immediately not even look at me. I was quite worried today. But seeing your performance, I think you are really a rare and good girl. Hui Yang held his hand and said softly, Chi Lang, don't belittle yourself. In my eyes, you are much more handsome than him. Wang Longchi was so moved that he held the hand of the woman in front of him tightly, thinking that he must cherish this rare blind man for the rest of his life. Hui Yang's eyes were also filled with brilliance. But after flashing twice, she suddenly became lonely again. You are willing. But can your family agree? She asked in a low voice. Although she was not a prostitute, she was alone. And it would be difficult for a wealthy family, like the Wang family, to find a matchmaker for her. Wang Longchi was shaken at first. Then frowned and said, In the worst case, we'll have to fight. Ah? Uh? Are you going to fight with your family? Huin Yang panicked. No, I will fight with you. Wang Longchi said with determination. My parents are most looking forward to having grandchildren. If we have a child as soon as possible, I don't believe they are unwilling to compromise. Huin Yang heard this and resolutely agreed. As soon as possible. As soon as possible. Wang Longchi was about to take off his clothes when he suddenly remembered something. Picked up the walking talisman that was folded into a triangle around his waist. And smiled at the talisman. You can't just watch the big show casually. The next step is paid content. After that, he stuffed the talisman under his pillow and covered it tightly without leaving any gaps. What is this? Huin Yang asked. Nothing. It's a gadget Li Chu gave me. Wang Longchi replied casually. The next day, Wang Longchi went out again early in the morning. In a hurry, he didn't know what he remembered. After he left for a while, Huin Yang got up from the bed, came to the window, and held the window lattice with her hands. I opened the window willingly, but felt tired. But when I took my hand back, I felt a little pity. After a fight between heaven and man, she still opened the window. Use a bamboo pole to prop it up. Then tie the piece of yellow gauze to the bamboo pole and let it flutter in the wind. She turned back to the bed and rested. After a while, no one knocked on the door. And a puff of green smoke drifted in from the backyard and disappeared in an instant. A man wearing a brocade robe and a red flower in his hat appeared in the bedroom on the second floor. He was tall and handsome. But there was an evil aura between his brows. Little lady. As soon as this man appeared, he laughed evilly. Asshole! Huin Yang rolled her eyes at him and let him touch the bed. Seeing her tired look, the man smiled and asked, It must have been rainy and windy last night. Huin Yang said angrily. Of course. You know that after tasting your Li Wan Dan, it will be difficult for a mortal to touch me at all. No matter how violent his wind is. How can I get any rain? He <laughs> he. The man laughed twice more, then turned his hand over, and a snow-white elixir appeared in his palm. Huin Yang looked at the elixir that she loved and hated, and bit her lip hard. After a pause, she said sadly, I don't know if there will be another chance in the future. What's the meaning? Chi Long told me last night that he wanted to marry me. I feel guilty for him, so I have no reason not to agree. But, Huin Yang said with a sigh, but from now on you are going to be the wife of a wealthy family. The man frowned, covered his hand again, and took the elixir back. Is there any reason why I shouldn't do it? Huin Yang asked. The man frowned in deep thought for a long time, and a trace of cruelty flashed in his eyes. If I could find a way for you to marry Wang Longchi and stay with me forever, would you be willing? 
he asked solemnly. Is there a way to have both ends? I have it. The man raised his eyebrows. What if I become that Wang Wangji? You turned into him? Huenyang was surprised. I recently got involved with a big force in the western region called the Strange Monster Sect. There are many big monsters in the sect who specialize in transforming monsters into rich people's homes, keeping them without leaving any trace. Then where will Qilong go? Huenyang asked with some fear. He will go wherever you want him to go. The man smiled sinisterly. After that, he picked up the elixir again and handed it over. I'll make it rain for you first. Huenyang's eyes were watery. Be gentle. Your back is sore. It's okay. Just put it on and it'll be fine. The man said, picking up the pillow on one side. Li Chu was interested in taking a look at Wang Longji's side of the walking talisman. However, considering this man's past deeds, he was not sure at what time of night he should go to see it so that he would not see the contents of the 18 bands. Just waited all night. After dawn, Li Chu woke up, thought about it, and waited for two more hours before closing his eyes and concentrating. There were two faint lights in the sea of consciousness which represented the location of the walking talisman. One was far away, and the other was near. Li Chu chose the far one. A clear perspective suddenly opens up. Everything in the picture is like a thick mosaic. Li Chu frowned and quickly cut it out in less than a second. What time is this? Excessive. Thinking like this, he stood up and was about to go out for a walk when he heard a cry from outside. Li Chu! I'm here again! Um, is there something wrong with this sound? This was clearly Wan Longchi's voice. Li Chu did not go out to greet him immediately. Instead, he closed his eyes and concentrated, switching to that perspective again. This time, he looked at it for two seconds and confirmed. The male protagonist is indeed not Wan Longchi. Oh ha ha. Just as I was thinking about it, I saw Wan Longchi pushing the door open and entering. I just said you must be up. Come on. Come on. I have something to ask you. Li Chu looked at Wan Longchi's sunny face hesitated to speak, and asked first. What's the matter? Wang Longchi said with a smile. After meeting you yesterday, I felt that Huin Yang is really a rare and good girl. Looking back, I decided that I want to marry her. Well, Li Chu pondered for a moment and said slowly. Why don't you think about it again? Eh? Why did you say that? Wang Longchi said in surprise. I thought you didn't care about other people's affairs. Well, Li Chu pondered again, not sure how to speak for a moment and said, For such a major life event as getting married, you still need to discuss it with your family. Will your family agree with you marrying her? Hey, you are so smart. Wang Longchi slapped his thigh. I just thought it would be hard to convince my family, but my parents really want a grandson. If they have children, I think my parents will agree. Speaking of this, he was shy again. But this is not something that happens overnight. It consumes a lot of money. I heard the old Taoist priest say yesterday that you have a little son, which is infinitely powerful. I came here just to ask you to take a photo of it for me. Well, Li Chu pondered one after another, and then said, That's no problem. You probably didn't have breakfast either. You treated me to a meal yesterday, so I'll treat you to a meal today. He did as he was told. Got up and went to cook himself, making a sumptuous table of dishes. When the dishes were put on the table, Wan Longchi took a look. Stir-fried lettuce, stir-fried spinach, stir-fried chrysanthemum, stir-fried chicken feathers, stir-fried lettuce. Ouch, he exclaimed. Is the food in your Taoist temple so healthy now? Not everyone eats these, Li Chu whispered back. After eating for a while, he raised his eyes again and said, I have something I don't know how to talk about. I have a friend. I understand that he may have been, um, brutally betrayed without his knowledge. It's just that he was cheated. Wang Longchi grinned. He himself was not present. Why are you saying so tactfully? And then what? Then of course, I have to tell him. Li Chu scratched his head. But it's hard to talk about this kind of thing. How do you think I should let him know? That's not easy. Wang Longchi said with a smile. Just make more green things in front of him. He will naturally be suspicious after seeing it. Which friend of yours is so unlucky? I don't know him. Talking and talking. He looked at a table of dishes. Suddenly. The smile gradually disappeared. Chapter 168 The Unexpected Reward of Catching an Adulterer As if to reflect Wang Longchi's mood at this time, it started to rain lightly again outside. The autumn wind and autumn rain make me sad. He seemed to hear raindrops falling on the green grass. Li Chu, 
Wang Longchi looked at the little Taoist priest with a stiff smile. Why are these vegetables so bitter when you fry them? He chewed two more mouthfuls, spat it out, and then with a sad face, he confirmed for the last time, Isn't that the friend you mentioned is me? Li Chu reached out and patted his shoulder. Be strong. Immediately, he told the whole story quietly. After hearing this, Wang Longchi's tears welled up in his eyes, and he was about to cry, and said, why is it so difficult to find a good girl in this world today? Li Chu quickly comforted him. Maybe it's because you are not a good person either. Hiss. Wang Longchi took a breath and stopped crying. He lowered his head and said seriously, Is it true that I have hurt too many girls in the past? And I am getting all the retribution together? Li Chu continued to comfort him. What you said makes sense. God's law is clear. You deserve it. That's not right. Wang Longchi frowned and said, I have only been playing for a few years, and I have received retribution. How many years has the old Taoist master been playing? Where is his retribution? Li Chu said, Every one of my master's old friends is willing to rebuild old friendships with him. Which shows that there was no resentment in the past. What about you? Wang Longchi thought for a moment. My former sweethearts also wished that I would die. As he said this, he felt horrified. Thinking about it this way, the old Taoist master's cultivation is really astonishing. Li Chu vaguely felt that their understanding of cultivation was different. But that was not important, he asked. Then are you going to go back and take a look? If you delay for a while, that person may leave. That's right. Wang Longchi slapped his thigh. You're catching an adulterer. That person is still at my house. And you're still cooking a bunch of green leafy vegetables here with me. He ran out in a hurry. And as soon as he walked out, half of his body came back. No. You have to come with me. What if I can't beat him? Wang Lungchi said worriedly. If he kicked me crippled and ran away, I would be lying on the hospital bed unable to get up. And Huenyang would be the only one left there. This woman would definitely not be kind enough to take care of me. If she gives me another poison, I will be completely it's getting cold. When the time comes, I'll shall wait for my brother Li Chu to come back. But it will be too late. Li Chu had planned to go with him. But when he heard this, he was slightly surprised. Why did this guy suddenly become a prophet? As usual, we took the waterway upstream and returned to Fuching. Hangzhou in less than an hour. Wang Longchi ran back along the street. And Li Chu said, Don't worry. He can't run away anymore. With a quick glance, he had already locked onto the scent of the man in the attic. As long as that person doesn't have the magical power to teleport 50 miles, it will be difficult for him to escape. When their figures appeared on the street, in the attic that Wang Longchi bought, a man and a woman were making love. The man was concentrating with his eyes closed, casually saying some thoughtful words to coax Wing Young. And at the same time, he was watching the surroundings. Suddenly, he opened his eyes and said in shock, Your man is back. Wing Young also turned pale. You hurry up and leave. Needless to say, the man turned around and landed on the ground. Already dressed, let's meet again tomorrow. Leaving behind a word, others have turned into smoke and passed through the backyard wall. Li Chu's eyes tightened with a demonic look. It turned out to be a monster. So brave. I'll take the first step. After saying that, he exerted a little strength and disappeared in front of Wang Longchi with a rustling sound. Wang Longchi and the fruit vendor on the roadside were left behind, looking at each other in confusion. That wisp of green smoke escaped unhappily. If not, he would not have dared to take such a big risk to perform magic and expose the evil spirit in the city. Whenever a cultivator happens to pass by and senses this evil spirit, he may be subdued and interrogated. This is still a good temper. When you meet someone with a bad temper, you don't even need to ask. Just start with a set of powerful Tianlong. But no matter how fast he is, he can't be faster than Li Chu. With the infinite flash, Li Chu instantly moved dozens of feet and suddenly appeared in the backyard under the attic. The monster was just a wisp of smoke in the eyes of mortals. But in Li Chu's mind, as long as he used the magic method, there would be a mass of monster energy floating in the air. He pointed directly and said, Ding! Bang! The figure of the monster in the blinding method froze, quickly transformed into a human form, and fell face down to the ground with a pop. Li Chu stepped forward, picked up the body, and returned to the attic. The whole process was lightning fast, but there was no urgency at all. It showed a sense of ease and ease, and was indescribably free and unrestrained. Upstairs, Wang Longchi has just returned and is questioning Huenyang. Tell me, 
What's that man's name? He asked. His name is Dao Fang Yi. Huin Yang replied weakly. Li Chu happened to come in. When he heard the name, he felt that it was really hard to hide it. He threw the man to the ground and said, This is a monster. Monster? Wang Longqi glanced at him suspiciously, and then looked at Huin Yang. Okay. No wonder I felt so in love with you as soon as I met you. And we are similar in this respect? Huin Yang asked tentatively. If I say this is the first time, will you forgive me? Wang Longqi sneered twice. Huin Yang cried again. I just made the same mistake that all women in the world make. Seeing that it was useless to surrender, as the monster lay on the ground without saying a word, she added, I was forced. Li Chu casually opened Dong Fang Yi's mouth. Fart! Dong Fang Yi immediately shouted. She obviously took the initiative to call me over every day when you were not at home. Tying silk on the bamboo pole supporting the window. Is there still this matter? Wang Longqi looked at Huin Yang. Huin Yang also shouted. It was obviously you who drugged me. You forced me to submit to you. Don Fang Yi shouted. I didn't force you the first time. You were the one who took off your clothes first. Huin Yang shouted. It's obvious that you came to see me first. Don Fang Yi shouted. You were obviously the one who hit me with the bamboo pole first and then led me to return the bamboo pole. Huin Yang shouted. The bamboo pole clearly made a loud noise from the peak that day. I was so shocked that my hand shook and I fell down. Yes. At this point, she looked at Wang Longqi. Chi Long, if you want to find the culprit, you should find the person who flew into the sect and caused a huge noise that day. Do not talk. Li Chu heard that the momentum was wrong and quickly stopped the blame game. Wang Longqi was really a little dizzy. Looking at this pair of adulterers and married couples, he didn't know who to blame first. He asked Li Chu, How do you think we should punish them? This kind of thing is quite difficult to deal with if you think about it carefully. If you don't feel relieved, just kill the offender directly. I was so angry just now that I really didn't think about what to do next. Li Chu said, Report to the official. Wang Longqi wondered, Does the government still care about this matter? I don't know about people. Li Chu ignored Huin Yang and said to Dong Fang Yi, The demon will definitely be under control. Go down to Chao Yan Palace. As soon as he said these words, Don Fang Yi shouted crazily. No! Don't send me to Chao Yan Palace. I absolutely can't go in. Something will happen if I go in. No way. No way. Wang Longqi said. You come to my house to steal someone. Don't you expect to be okay? You can punish me any way you want in private. Even if you castrate me. The monster begged bitterly. You just can't send me to Chao Yan Palace. And I dare to swear on the demon pill that it was really she who seduced me first. Seeing what he said, Hui Yang was furious and directly used her trump card. Chi Long, he just told me that he wanted to use magic to kill you. He said that he had hooked up with a monster sect and could steal and become your life. Get down. The monster was horrified. Why do you dare to say anything? Hearing the name, Li Chu's eyes lit up and he asked, Is the monster sect he mentioned a strange monster sect? That's right. Huin Yang nodded in relief. Well, Dong Fang Yi let out a long sigh and closed his eyes. It's over. It's all over. Chapter 169 The Unexpected Harvest of Treasure Hunting I am a donkey spirit born and raised outside Hangzhou. Now that the matter has been revealed, Dong Fang Yi no longer conceals anything and simply confesses honestly. I'm a barely transformed monster. And I'm from Yaluzi. Even if I haven't done anything bad, Kaoriank will not allow me to live in the city but I long for human life. So I had no choice but to sneak into the city quietly. I don't dare to perform magic tricks on weekdays. And I don't dare to go near government offices, Taoist temples, temples, etc. I just live the life of an ordinary person. Li Chu thought to himself. This is similar to a black household without household registration. You can live a normal life, but you must not let anything happen. Once something happens and you need to contact officials, it will be bad. There are many monsters like me in Hangzhou. I know at least dozens of them. We support each other in the city and live a comfortable life. A while ago, two big demons suddenly came. They claimed to be the messengers of the strange demon sect. And their moral conduct was terrifying. They said they wanted to establish a power here and wanted to recruit us to join them. They offered many benefits, such as helping us improve our cultivation. And they also gave us the Li Wan Dan. I and a few friends couldn't resist the temptation. So we joined them. Conscience of heaven and earth. We had never heard of the alien demon sect before joining the group. Only after joining did we know how notorious they are in the western region. 
It's just that we can't quit. So we have to continue like this. We haven't done anything harmful since we joined. Because our skills are low, and we are only responsible for some small things. The foreign demon sect has a stronghold in the city. The stronghold contains an astonishing amount of gold. Silver and jewelry from the foreign demon sect. Our task is to guard it day and night. The amount of gold. Silver and jewelry is astonishing? Li Chu was keenly aware of the elements in his words. Right. Dong Fong Urban said this deliberately to attract their attention. But he didn't expect Li Chu to take the bait so easily. There is absolutely no concealment. So he exaggeratedly said. The alien demon sect has brought treasures from all over the place and accumulated them here. Gold and silver have piled up like mountains. It's enough to buy half of Hangzhou Mansion. They must be making a big move. But they don't have enough manpower. So they can only recruit us to guard them. Anyway, we don't have to worry about us miscellaneous fish daring to betray us. At this time, there are only a few little demons with cultivation levels similar to mine. If you are willing to let me go, Taoist Master, I can take you there. Use your cultivation to subdue them. And take away the treasure. Easily. Li Chu's eyes turned. I have to say that the name, Li Bancheng, made him a little excited. But he still rejected the proposal without hesitation. To make a mistake is to make a mistake. No amount of treasure can be used to offset your crime. Little Taoist priest. Don Fangyi panicked. Are you willing to do this? Who said I don't want it anymore? Li Chu asked. He pulled out the pure Yang sword and tilted it slightly, revealing the sword's surging Yang energy. Originally, I just wanted to twist you and send you to the sky. But now I will kill you without telling you. Clam? The sword light of the pure Yang sword made Dong Fang Yi startled. Unexpected. This little Taoist priest has such a pale face and such a dark heart. He gritted his teeth and gave in. Okay, you can release my restraint and I will take you there. Li Chu thought for a while and unlocked the acupuncture points on half of his body. In fact, he couldn't run away even if it was completely untied. But he still kept a hand just in case. In this way, even if he can use the magic to escape, he will no longer be flexible. Hands, whether for humans or demons, are very important tools when performing magical powers. So, many people saw this scene on the street that day. A poor but tenacious hemiplegic patient struggled to drag half of his body forward with one leg followed by two young men with healthy limbs. They not only watched with cold eyes, but also urged them from time to time. The Luo family's abandoned garden. It is a once extremely prosperous garden on the Luwa River. Belonging to the Luo family, a wealthy family in Hangzhou a hundred years ago. But now it has been abandoned for a long time. There are many spider webs in the garden, and there are few pedestrians. In fact, the controller behind this abandoned garden is the strange demon sect. They built their base underground in this abandoned garden, blocking countless unnecessary sightlines. Outside the abandoned garden, across a street with few pedestrians, Lee and Chu were hiding behind the woods on the other side. There is a monkey-shaped rock under the rockery in the abandoned garden. Turn left and right three times toward it to open the entrance behind the rock and enter the underground, Don Fani said. There should be only a few little demons with low morals there, which are easy to deal with. Lee Chu looked around with his mind, and scanned the general terrain. I understand. Then he nodded and said to Wang Longqi, Look at him. With that said, he sealed Don Fang Yi's acupuncture points all over his body. Then he went into the garden alone. As soon as Li Chu left, Wang Longqi looked at Don Fang Yi with a wicked smile. Hey, let's play a game. He raised his hand and said, Rock, paper, scissors. How about the winner slaps the loser? Don Fang Yi's eyes trembled. At this time, he couldn't move at all, and his hands were tightly clenched in fists. Wang Longqi said something without saying a word. Oh, I win. After saying that, he hit Dong Fang Yi on the face with a snap. After the fight, he raised his hand again and pulled out a pair of scissors. Oh, I lost. But you can't move and you can't hit me, so I can only continue to hit you. What should I do? I'm so angry. Snapped, being humiliated one after another. Dong Fang Yi's eyes flashed with a hint of cruelty. Let's fight and see how long you can stay arrogant. You two idiots don't even know that below the ruined garden. In addition to the little demon whose strength is almost the same as mine, there is also an angry messenger from the alien demon sect station there. There was actually no treasure inside. He was just deceiving them. When the little Taoist priest is killed by the angry messenger and his magical power is released. Then, he looked at Wang Long Kipap coldly. 
I want you to survive without sex. If you want to die, you can't have sex. Hack. Stop hitting. It hurts so much. According to Dong Fang Yi's statement, Li Chu came to the abandoned garden and saw the monkey-shaped rocks behind the rockery at a glance. Walk forward and turn three times to the left and three times to the right. There was a rumble, and a faint tunnel really opened under the rocks. Li Chu flashed in and appeared underground instantly. There are actually a few people guarding the place below the dungeon. According to Dong Fang Yi, they are all little demons that are almost the same as him. When they saw Li Chu coming in, they immediately stopped him. Li Chu raised his hand. One, two, three, four. Bang, 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 bang. There was a moment of roll call, and he seemed to freeze. With one more to go, he headed deeper into the tunnel. There seems to be a dungeon locked by iron chains. And the last monster is in front of the dungeon. His attire was a bit strange. With a thick robe and a bronze mask that seemed to be on his face. With an angry face carved on the mask. One look at this outfit. It seems that it is not a bastard. But it doesn't matter. Just as Li Chu was about to take action, a strong demonic aura suddenly erupted from the monster. It has exerted its magical power. This demon is none other than the angry messenger. One of the four messengers of joy, anger, sorrow, and joy in the alien demon sect. What it is using at this time is its own magical power. Nameless fire. This nameless fire is formless, rootless and rootless. But it is deeply rooted in everyone's heart. Once the supernatural power is triggered, the person who performs the magic will first become furious, even lose their mind, and kill at will, and then they will be burned to death by the 3,000 nameless fires around them. It can be described as terrifying. But, this magical power fell on Li Chu, and the effect seemed to be somewhat unsatisfactory. I can't say it has no effect, but it does have some effect. Li Chu did feel that there was a faint, unreasonable anger in his heart. He had only one target in his eyes and his anger was naturally transferred to this person. He originally just wanted to pin down this monster. But now he is angry. So Li Chu drew his sword. The wrath messenger probably never dreamed that the god of death had just missed him. I pulled it back with my own strength. A sword. With a bang. The sun shines brightly. Needless to say the outcome. After killing the envoy of anger hastily, the weak anger in Li Chu's heart dissipated instantly. At this time, he also guessed that the monster had used magic to interfere with his state of mind. But, according to convention, when he irritates himself, shouldn't he take the damage and let others deal with it? Shaking away the messy thoughts, he walked forward with great expectations and came to the iron gate. What he saw was not a mountain of gold and silver, but a pitiful young man with disheveled hair and shining eyes. Who are you? Li Chu asked him at the same time. Ahem. The man coughed lightly, smoothed his hair and replied solemnly, I am the King Ji Bashu. Chapter 170 I am really brave. Don Fang Yi, who was lying on the ground, saw incredible light in his eyes the first moment he saw Li Chu's figure coming back. This, it's only been a quarter of an hour since he left. Right? The way Don Fang Yi estimated the time was that during this period, Wang Longchi slapped him 300 times at a steady pace and forcefully. Wang Longchi's hand speed has always been practiced. But the problem is, Don Fang Yi was confused for a while. I told you it was full of trash fish just to trick you into entering. It's not really all trash fish in there. There is clearly an envoy of wrath sitting in charge. His old man is the strongest among the four envoys of the alien demon sect. With his nameless fire, he can make people burn themselves to death with just a little effort. On the border of the western region, he once killed a large sect by himself. It is because of his highest moral character that he can temporarily stay behind the scenes as a leader and command the other three messengers. No matter how powerful you are as a little Taoist, the Wrath Messenger really can't defeat you. But he won't commit suicide. You will at least have to spend some effort to deal with him. Right? Could it be that the Wrath Messenger happened to be away? It's impossible. The person imprisoned in the dungeon is said to be extremely important. The angry messenger has never left even half a step these days. Etc. As Li Chu gradually approached, Don Fang Yi saw someone following him. He looks plain and a bit earthy. The walking posture is a dragging eight-figure step. He was clearly the character imprisoned in the dungeon. The little Taoist priest really rescued this man. Oops. The alien demon sect will never let go of these little demons guarding the dungeon. Dead. Dong Fang East was about to close his eyes in despair when he suddenly remembered that Chao Tian K would never let him go anyway. Why are you still afraid of the alien demon sect? 
Can a monster die twice? Thinking like this, he suddenly felt relaxed. Who is this? Wan Longchi saw the young man following Li Chu and was curious. So he asked first. Li Chu glanced at the man. The pulling young man put his hands behind his hands and said arrogantly, Don't you know the king of Jiangnan? King Jiangnan? Wan Longchi asked suspiciously. Isn't King Jiangnan in the palace? That is the fake Ji Bashiu. The young man said anxiously. I am the real Ji Bashiu. Okay. Okay. I know. I know. This was not what Wan Longchi was most concerned about. He turned to look at Li Chu again. Where is the promised treasure? Li Chu's eyes suddenly darkened. Then, he slowly scanned Don Fangyi's face. No. It's murderous. 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 The goosebumps all over Don Fangyi's body popped up again. He quickly explained. The strange demon sect regards this person as extremely important. It is not an exaggeration to say that his value is gold and silver. Oh. After hearing his explanation, Li Chu said indifferently, and then ran towards the hilt of the sword with his right hand. Don Fan Yi's words were quite helpful to the young man. He nodded with satisfaction, and then smiled and said, Seeing that you, a little Taoist priest, have a high level of cultivation, as long as you do one thing for me, I will give you 10,000 tails of gold. So why bother? Um, Li Chu passed Don Fan Yi and looked at him. He gave me a, we can talk. Look, the young man said, as long as you go to Jiangnan Prince's mansion, kill the fake prince with one sword, and help me return to the throne, you will naturally get whatever you want. Hearing this, Li Chu and Wang Longji looked at each other silently. A thought came to my mind at the same time. I believe he is a fool, regardless of whether his identity is true or false. Just say that you broke into the palace and killed the prince, unless you are a land god. After killing him, you can say one, two, three, four, five, and you may not be held accountable. Otherwise, it is just seeking death. Although Li Chu has gained a lot of confidence recently, he is not confident to this extent. Certainly, seeing that their eyes seemed completely unmoved, the young man's tone became slightly softer. If this thing is too difficult, just change it to something simple. Li Chu asked cautiously, What? I'm hungry. Just lend me a hundred tails of silver to have a simple meal. He said weakly, I am the king of Jiangnan. I was a prisoner for some reason and have just regained my freedom. Lend me a hundred tails of silver for a meal. When I regain the throne, I will return you ten thousand tails of gold. This sentence pattern felt inexplicably familiar to Li Chu. Of course he won't be fooled. This prince who doesn't know whether he is real or fake is an unexpected gain. And there is some undercurrent hidden behind him. Li Chu and Wang Longqi simply sent him. Dong Fang Yi and Huan Yan to Chao Tian Palace. Kao Yang took this very seriously and immediately separated the three people for questioning. After a while, Li Sini came back with a solemn expression. She said to the two of them, Today's matter is of great importance. You must not spread it outside. Yes. Wang Longchi gritted his teeth and said, No one is allowed to tell anyone about my cheating. Li Sini was speechless for a moment and said, I am obviously referring to the matter of the strange demon sect and King Jiangnan. Li Chu nodded in agreement and asked, is he really the king of Jiangnan? It's hard to tell whether it's true or not at the moment. Li Sini frowned and said, He is indeed very familiar with the affairs of the Jiangnan palace. And his appearance is very similar. But we still need to go through strict inspections to confirm it. Duan Baipao, our resident, has just personally led a team to the Jiangnan palace. Anyway, there is only one king Jiangnan. If the one in the palace is true, then the one you picked up is naturally a fake. Li Sini had nothing to do so he told them more. Chao Tian K has a special inspection process for the infiltration of the alien demon sect. The demon mirror is naturally the most powerful. It is impossible to illuminate everyone in the world. But once you have a key target, you can tell whether it is a person or a demon with just one look. For a royal nobleman like the king of Jiangnan, who is crowned king of a continent, there must also be strict bloodline tests. A certain amount of true dragon blood is sealed in the Chao Tian palace in each fiefdom. At times like this, there will be special magical powers to test the similarity between the bloodline of King Jiangnan and the true dragon bloodline. The real dragon here does not refer to the real dragon clan, but the royal ancestral blood. Every white-robed person in Chao Tian Palace is at least at the level of Wanxiang Realm. In front of such people, there is no need to worry about anything being done during the inspection. If anything goes wrong with King Jiangnan, he will be captured on the spot by a desperate plan. However, 
This kind of inspection casts great doubt on the current king of Jiangnan. Once the suspicion is wrong, you may be criticized from many parties. Being willing to start the inspection under such great pressure shows that Chao Tian K may have a high degree of trust in the Jiangnan king. Li Chu picked up. In fact, Li Chu also felt vaguely in his heart that young man might be telling the truth because he looks pretty stupid. And that donkey spirit, it is a gangster in Hangzhou prefecture. It also raped prostitutes and joined the strange demon sect. It is not necessary to be punished for three crimes at the same time. Joining the strange demon sect is a crime of death. We also sent people to capture those little monsters you placed in the abandoned garden. In addition, Li Sinhi looked at Wang Longqi. We will also imprison Huin Yang for a period of time. She has been poisoned by Li Huan Dan and must completely withdraw from her before she can be released. Li Huan Dan. Wang Longqi didn't understand it all. It is an extremely vicious elixir refined by the alien demon sect. After they incarnate and replace someone, they will use this elixir to control their closest partner. After taking this pill, people can have extremely happy hallucinations. This kind of hallucination is thousands of times stronger than what it can actually produce. So once you take it, you can never leave it. And as long as you have taken this pill, you will still experience strong hallucinations and backlash once you stop. People who are in the backlash will be extremely painful and are likely to engage in dangerous behaviors. Those who have taken it for a long time may even die suddenly on the spot. Ah? Uh? Wang Longqi asked. Will Huin Yang be okay? She didn't take it many times. So she probably won't lose her life. However, Li Sidi shook his head and said, There is no antidote for this pill yet. Basically, as long as you take it once, you will be ruined. Ah? Uh? Wang Longqi's shoulders trembled slightly. His eyes complex. In Chao Yan Palace, he could barely suppress his emotions. As soon as he left the gate of Chao Yan K and walked onto the street outside, he finally couldn't bear it anymore. Laughed out loud. Chapter 171 The 69th Midnight Moonlight Song The bright moon half leans into late autumn. Li Chu quietly knocked on the chi gathering pill in the room, feeling every strand of breath entering his body and turning into insignificant bits of spiritual power. Although slow, but steady. Steady happiness. Zhao Lianchen had finished eating a thousand qi gathering pills long ago. And what he was taking now was the reward after selling the lightning strike wood. Earlier, Mr. Chen told him that the price of lightning strike wood was at least 3,000 qi gathering pills, which was actually intended to lower his expectations. The reason is simple. The higher your expectations, the harder it will be to exceed them. This is simply making it more difficult for you to do business. The price of the lightning strike wood sold this time was 8,000 pieces. It greatly exceeded that expectation, which made Li Chu very satisfied. But when receiving the money, Mr. Chen said something strange. In Danding Pavilion, the old man suddenly lowered his voice and asked, Little Taoist priest, where is the coy girl who came with you last time? Why don't you see her? Oh, she was playing in the Taoist temple. So I didn't bring her here this time, Li Chu replied. In this case, Mr. Chen blinked slightly in confusion and then asked, during this period, did you encounter any strange things? Or any unprovoked plots? Huh? Li Chu felt a little strange, but still answered truthfully. No. What does Mr. Chen mean by this question? Oh, it's nothing. Mr. Chen smiled. In fact, he was a little surprised in his heart. Because according to his understanding of the Jiangnan Palace and Mr. Wu's behavior, they would never give up until they achieved their goals. Mr. Wu clearly had his eye on the colorful koi carp last time but he actually went out of his way to seize and assassinate it. This surprised him a little. Finally, Mr. Chen reminded Li Chu, Little Taoist priest, the common man is not guilty, but is guilty of having a treasure. The colorful koi is a treasure in the world. Someone may want to steal it, so you should take good care of it on weekdays. Li Chu was even more surprised. Looking at Mr. Chen, he probably knew something inside, but he refused to reveal more. Li Chu didn't ask any more questions and just nodded. Thank you. A distant and unknown place. The highest point of the vast altar. An evil spirit. He raised one of his thumbs with difficulty. Pain. Struggle. Effort. And joy. Then a palm. After an unknown amount of time, he finally stood up slowly, as if a vegetative state had regained a new lease of life. It almost cried with joy to commemorate this exciting moment. The ancient evil spirit finally stood up. Since the last time it absorbed that strange luck, its entire body has been short-circuited and cannot move. 
it is immersed in endless darkness and endures endless fear, coldness, and loneliness as if a hundred thousand years have passed. Long. Finally. I still killed him. Moreover, after this experience, his understanding of witchcraft has deepened. Witchcraft comes from pain. The essence of witchcraft is the true meaning of pain. It vaguely felt that it was not far from that level. Thinking of this, it made it breathe quickly and felt that even if it was imprisoned for tens of thousands more years, it would be worth it. After all, it has endured too many such moments in the long history of time. But regarding that level of enlightenment, it is short-lived and unique. That is the level of God. It has confidence. Just give it some more time. It doesn't take a thousand years. It doesn't seem to take even a hundred years. It should only take ten years to find a way to break through to that level. When the time comes, it will become an existence alongside the witch god. It will do anything. Little Talus Priest. Besides, don't let me know who was plotting against me last time. The evil spirit said to himself with a ferocious face. Since you dare to destroy one of my wings, I will destroy your entire paradise. The familiar and wanton laughter echoed in the unknown space. Gigi Jiji. Gigi Jiji. East China Sea. The place where thunder falls. Boom 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 boom. This is a magical land. Every moment, lightning is falling from the sky and crashing to the ground. However, because this piece of land has endured too many, too long, too violent, and too turbulent lightning strikes, it has already become an extremely solid black rock. In ancient times, this place was called a land of calamity and a desperate place, because it was indeed difficult for life to cross and not even a blade of grass could grow. Until one day, a powerful man named John came here. He had always followed the path of ascetic cultivation. And when he discovered that the thunder and lightning here could temper his body, sharpen his will, and integrate into his practice, he was immediately overjoyed. This is not a land of calamity. This is a land of blessings from heaven. So he created a fairy gate here, called Shinshao Gate, among the twelve immortal sects. There are five sects. The white jade capital of Kunlun in the west inherits the ancient ruins and is adjacent to the Shinshu Xianzong, Yunfu Temple, the pure land in Tianan, once had Bodhisattva manifested and enjoyed the exclusive fortune of Buddhism. The Snow Mountain of the Arctic Sword sect is the most inherited swordsman in the world. In ancient times, there was a god who could open the sky with his sword. The imperial court of Zhongzhou is Jiaqian Palace, supported by two generations of imperial courts, and has the banner of the righteous way of the human race in the world. Only Shishao Gate. They had nothing but scorched earth. There are also sky thunders that can kill people at any time. But they did it. They ranked among the upper five sects. And no one in the world would dissatisfy them. Dissatisfied? Have you ever seen thunder rolling from the sky? Yes. There is nothing else in Shishao Gate. Only endless thunder. Boom boom boom. In a place where thousands of thunders were scattered. A young man with sword-browed eyebrows and starry eyes closed his eyes. And a thick charred log stood quietly in front of him. A long time. The young man opened his eyes and looked at the piece of wood. A little lost in thought. What's wrong? From somewhere. An old man with a wide robe and long sleeves and an extraordinary bearing suddenly appeared and asked in a deep voice. Judging from his expression and eyebrows. He was serious. But his expression and tone towards this young man were extremely gentle. This lightning strike in Muley seems to have no intention of thunder. The young man said hesitantly. Huh? The old man also frowned. Isn't it possible? The lightning struck wood in the world must have been left behind by the tree demon who was killed by the thunder of heaven's Jiang during the calamity. It contains the purest meaning of heavenly thunder in the world. As he said, this is why lightning strike wood is precious. If it were any other monster that was struck by thunder, it would be dead, and its scorched bones would have no meaning. But the wood monsters are different. They have a certain chance of leaving behind the lightning strike wood. This lightning strike wood contains the true meaning of the thunder and can have infinite magical uses. In a sense, this piece of wood contains heavenly calamity. For this young man who was born with the destiny of Thunder Emperor, it also allowed him to understand the divine will of thunder. But I can't feel the thunder see. Instead, my whole body feels hot, as if there is a fire burning. The young man frowned. Heavenly tribulations have always been thunder tribulations. Where can there be fire? The old man took the piece of lightning struck wood and looked at it carefully. Although he did not have the destiny of Thunder Emperor, he had infinite cultivation. Moment, he said slowly. It's actually true. Could it be that there are people in this world whose attacks also carry the power of the sun? And their power can rival the power of the heavenly tribulation? 
This is almost impossible. Where did this piece of lightning struck would come from? The young man thought for a moment and then replied. I'm Joe Manchin. Investigate. The old man waved his sleeves. Use all the strength of the whole family to investigate strictly. Chapter 172 All Encounters in the World Are Reunions After a Long Absence Boom! In the quiet autumn night, there was a sudden roar into Yun Temple, which resounded all over Shirley Slope. The fox girl turned over and woke up in an instant. The sharpness she had gained from years of training in the wild made her lie on the ground immediately with her tail raised. His eyes scanned the surroundings with a profound gleam. The little coy's eyes widened. One of his hair stood up, and his face was blank. After thinking about it, she felt that she was still a little sleepy. So she covered her head with a quilt and fell asleep again. But soon Miss Shalu lifted her quilt. Don't sleep anymore. Come out and take a look. The little koi was pulled out by her with its eyes closed and floated out like a fish in her lotus pond. Wanli Facial lived closest to the explosion site. He immediately jumped up and turned into smoke and ran out. After running for several miles, he suddenly stopped and rubbed his eyes. The night wind blows and I wake up a little bit. Only then did he remember that he was no longer on the road. Should we go back first and see what happened? Li Chu calmly put on his Taoist robe, came to the yard, and looked at the place where the explosion occurred. There was the little miracle doctor's room, a makeshift thatched cottage. Gone now. There was just a swirling black smoke. It wasn't until everyone gathered in the hospital that the little miracle doctor walked out of the smoke carrying a smoke pig's head. Oh! I'm hit! I'm hit! He shouted loudly as he ran out. Wanli Fascia asked angrily. What did you hit? I have been poisoned. After rushing out of the smoke, the little miracle doctor quickly took out a bunch of bottles and cans from his arms, mixed them for a long time, and drank them in one gulp. After that, the blackness on his face dropped rapidly at a speed visible to the naked eye. Huh? He breathed a long sigh of relief, and then raised his head excitedly. I have found a way to deal with the fortune pill, and it will definitely work this time. Really? Everyone looked at him suspiciously, and then at the small ruins behind him. Yeah. The little miracle doctor raised his head again. It just lacks a neutralizer that can blend the 38 herbs. I have already thought of what it is. He turned his head and looked at Li Chu expectantly. Let's go collect medicine. Li Chu looked at him calmly. I have no objection to going to collect medicine in the middle of the night. But I suggest you wear some clothes. Only then did the little miracle doctor realize that he had been blasted by the explosion just now and his whole body was in tatters, and his clothes were not covered. Oh, he sighed. I'm giving you an advantage. The next day, dusk, at the foot of Kasaya Mountain, the neutralizing thing mentioned by the little miracle doctor is called Xian Qing Dan. The nature of this medicine is water, coal, and generally grows underwater, according to Xuan Huang's Jiuzhou Treasures and Medicines Collection. The closest place where Zhuang Kingdom may grow in Hangzhou is Kasaya Mountain. Kasaya Mountain is not far from Yuhang Town. It has many pools, mountain streams, and clear springs everywhere. Along the way, the little miracle doctor covered half of his face with a cloth, revealing only a pair of eyes, which were full of impatient light. It can be seen that he is really passionate and obsessed with medicine. In the village at the foot of Kasaya Mountain, two white-haired old men stood under the big tree at the entrance of the village. They stood there quietly watching the sunset without speaking. It wasn't until Li Chu and the little miracle doctor passed by the big tree that the two old men started talking. Oh, I heard that there are goblins in Kasaya Mountain again. Yes, another old man replied. There was a water dragon in Ziobitan. My grandson and his friends went down to the river to play that day and saw it with their own eyes. They were frightened. So goblins don't eat children. No, I heard that there seems to be a treasure of heaven and earth taking shape under the water of Ziobitan. The monster came specifically for the treasure. I don't know what kind of treasure it is that can grow under the pond. Hearing the conversation between the two old men, the little miracle doctor's heart moved. He stepped forward and asked, Two old men, we are doctors who come to the mountain to collect medicine. I would like to ask where is the little bitten you mentioned? The old man on the left smiled and said, Chow Bitten is the highest pool on the top of Kasaya Mountain. Although it is not big, it is the most beautiful. It is green all year round. The old man on the right said, If you want to go up the mountain, you must be careful. There are not only wolves and beasts in the mountain that cannot be killed, but also monsters. It doesn't matter. My Taoist friend specializes in subduing demons. The little miracle doctor pointed at Li Chu, then cupped his hands and said, Thank you two old people. 
Uh-huh. The old man on the left smiled. If you can subdue the monsters on the mountain for us, we as a whole village should thank you too. The little miracle doctor and Li Chu went up the mountain. The two old men also finished explaining their short story and re-entered the mode of quietly watching the sunset. Or maybe, when the next young hero passes by this place, they may repeat the last conversation. After listening to what the two old men said just now, it is very possible that Little Bitten has Xian Qing Dan. The growth pattern of Zuan Kingdom is to choose high rather than low, and choose deep rather than shallow. That is, the same mountain peak. It is usually at the highest point. The same pool. It is usually at the deepest point. If it can attract monsters to protect the treasure, it must be mature Xian Qing gallbladder. Only mature Xian Qing gallbladder can emit the fragrance that attracts monsters. The little miracle doctor said on the way up the mountain. Li Chu had already looked to the top of the mountain and saw the clear pool. Although the perception of the breath would be slightly blurred across the deep pool, the impact was not significant. In the highest pool on the top of the mountain, there are indeed two long figures with cold auras. One is relatively ordinary, and the other has an extremely weak aura. I think it was the water dragon the two old men were talking about. Not one, but two. There were many other scents around the mountains, so he didn't care. Soon, the two of them arrived at the top of the mountain and saw the small but exquisite pool of water. The moonlight covers the ground and the clear pond is quiet. It's like silver inlaid with jade. Did you see that shadow? The little miracle doctor pointed to the middle of the pool and asked. Li Chu looked over and saw a dark shadow. The surrounding area was illuminated by the moonlight, but it seemed that no light could penetrate there. That's why you must come to collect medicine at night. There is gallbladder under the water, and there is no moonlight on the water surface. So there is guidance. He said, follow the shadow vertically downward, and there must be gallbladder under the water. The whole process went very smoothly. Immediately, Li Chu asked the little miracle doctor to wait on the shore, relying on the waterproofing beads to protect his body. He jumped down. As soon as I entered the water, it felt familiar again. This small bitten is not large in area, but it is quite deep. It took a long time to reach the bottom of the pool. There is a cave here. We followed the cave in the water all the way deeper. And it took a while before we finally reached the end. Deep in the cave, there are indeed two water dragons. These two water dragons were huge. Estimated to be seven to eight feet long. And their thinnest parts were longer than buckets. They were all entrenched in this river cave, which was quite cramped. One of them was covered with fine black scales. When he saw Le Chu coming in, he immediately opened his black and yellow vertical pupils alertly, raised his head, and let out a low voice. Roar. The other water dragon with white scales was still entrenched in place. Motionless. Although it also opened its vertical pupils, there was very little charm in its pupils. Looking at the lower half of its body, nearly half of it was already ulcerated. It seemed to be entangled in a black substance. And it looked extremely painful. These two water dragons didn't have much resentment on them. They probably hadn't done anything harmful to nature. I just heard from the two old men that some children went into the pool. But they were only scared away by them, and no harm was done to them. As soon as he thought of this, Li Chu stopped thinking about drawing his sword. He desperately wants experience points, but he won't get them by killing innocent people. Looking to the side, not far from where the white-scaled water dragon is entrenched, there are several narrow and transparent grass leaf like plants swaying under the water. There is a pure white, this size fruit clustered on the tip of the grass blades, which looks like it is full of fruit. Suet, according to the map shown to him by the little miracle doctor. This one is Xian Qing Dan. Li Chu Zheng wanted to negotiate with the two water dragons to see if he could take Xian Qing Dan peacefully without harming them. He saw the black scaled water dragon that had been staring at him for a long time raised its body and spat out vicious words. Are you another minion of the Jian and Palace? If you dare to take another step forward, I will fight you to the death. Um, Li Chui frowned. Is it the Jiang and Palace again? Has this name appeared more frequently recently? Before he could reply, he saw the white-scaled water dragon struggling to get up. Husband, don't let me go with him. It turned to look at Li Chu again. Anyway, what you want is just the luck beast. I am the white jade dragon, and my luck is a thousand times stronger than it. If you insist on hurting my husband, then I will commit suicide here, too. I will never let you get what you want. Lady! The black-scaled water dragon roared and resisted. No, we two must live together and die together. Husband, I have fallen under the spell of the traitor. 
If I persist, it will only increase the pain. Why don't you go on your own? Let's help each other. It's better for us to forget each other in the world. Lady! Husband! Please wait a moment. The entanglement between them awakened some familiar memories in Li Chu, and he quickly raised his hand and skipped the entire conversation. You may have misunderstood. I have no hostility towards you. I am here to collect medicine. Um? The two water dragons were entangled together and showed their affection. When I first heard him say this, I was a little suspicious, a little surprised, and a little embarrassed. Thousands of words can be condensed into one sentence. You should have told me earlier. Li Chu pointed to Xian Qing Dan beside him again. I need this thing when I come here. The black-scaled water dragon shrank its body, leaving only its head standing upright. But its tone was still unkind. Of course this won't work. My wife is tortured by a spell, and she can only fall asleep with the scent of this black gallbladder. If you take it away, what should we do? Li Chu used his qi-gazing technique to scan around the wounds of the white-scaled water dragon. The strange black energy lingered in the wound, entangled with the flesh and blood of the water dragon, making it impossible for the wound to heal. But instead getting bigger and bigger, looking more carefully, it seems that the black air is composed of countless tangled black lines. Like a witchcraft, Li Chu picked up the seal Ju in his right hand, walked towards the white-scaled water dragon and said, Let me try it. The black-scaled water dragon was furious. You are brave. My wife. Do you want to try too? Li Chu glanced at it and said, I mean I'll try to heal it. Then he raised his fingers and boom. A small sun appeared in the sky. And in the water, the golden light of the little Bodhi mantra instantly illuminated the entire cave. Even through the cave, the black-scaled water dragon suddenly retreated. It's so dazzling. Miraculously, as the golden light shone, the black air wrapped around the wound of the white-scaled water dragon slowly dissipated and finally disappeared without a trace. When Li Chu removed the little Bodhi spell, most of the original wounds on its body had recovered, leaving only a shallow layer of flesh wounds. As long as the black paint is no longer entangled, the wound can heal automatically. Li Chu's understanding of the little Bodhi mantra has deepened a lot in one's own hands. This spell has the magical effect of clearing away almost all negative states and blessing positive ones. But like the fortune pill, it is no longer in a negative state, but has completely changed its form. So there is nothing you can do. This kind of spell should also belong to the category of negative state. So he dared to step forward and try it. Ah! The white-scaled water dragon cried out in surprise. Thank you, Taoist master. The attitude of the black-scaled water dragon also changed greatly. If it had knees, it would probably have knelt down. At this time, it kept nodding to Li Chu. Thank you, Taoist priest, for saving my wife. I was anxious and disrespectful before. Please don't blame me, Taoist priest. No need to thank you. Li Chu waved his hand and asked. You just said that people from the Jianan Palace are arresting you. The black-scaled water dragon nodded repeatedly. That's right. My surname is Jiao. And my name is Jiao Hei. This is my wife. Her name is Jiao Bai. He began to tell. Li Chu blinked thinking that these two names named Jiao were chosen carelessly. We originally lived from the Luwa River to the mouth of the sea. We have always practiced peacefully and never dared to harm others. Unexpectedly, the Jiang and Prince's palace suddenly went crazy to capture the Luck Beast in Hangzhou Palace. My wife, a white jade dragon, was also targeted by them. A group of minions chased us. They chased us from the Luwa River to here. The black-scale water dragon said angrily. Li Chu was thoughtful when he heard the words. Mention the luck beast. The most famous one is naturally the koi. Could it be? While the black-scaled water dragon was complaining, he had already obtained the consent of the two demons and took away the black-green gallbladder. Although Xian Qing Dan is a natural treasure and can suppress pain, it is of little significance to the nearly recovered water dragon. Jiao Hei continued on the side. One of them used spells, and he was particularly difficult to deal with. He used spells to hurt my wife and she couldn't recover no matter what. He trapped us here, and he must be secretly watching us. He wants to wait until we can't hold on any longer. Come and capture again. Um? Li Chu frowned when he heard this. If there are bad people watching outside, will that be detrimental to the little miracle doctor? He hurriedly put away the Xian Qing Dan, jumped up, and headed towards the water. What are you afraid of? As soon as he came out of the water, he saw the little miracle doctor lying on the ground with his eyes closed not knowing whether he was alive or dead, in front of him. 
stood a middle-aged man in strange attire. This person is none other than Mr. Wu from the Jiangnan Palace. Mr. Wu is indeed here to catch those two water dragons. There was nothing I could do. There was something wrong with the spell I used to deal with the colorful koi fish last time. Lord Evil God lost contact for many days. After re-establishing contact, Lord Evil God became more and more demanding. If he doesn't work hard, he will not be able to satisfy Lord Evil God. However, most of the Taoist luck beasts in Hangzhou Mansion were captured, and it was not easy to find this white jade dragon. After several days of siege and interception, they were trapped here. He was originally staring at the lake with his supernatural power from a distance, but the white dragon was caught by his vicious witchcraft. There was no other waterway underneath, so sooner or later they would come out. Unexpectedly, two more people came. He originally wanted to take care of them, but suddenly found an acquaintance among them. That handsome and outrageous little Taoist priest. He, he, unexpectedly, he actually delivered it to the door himself. There is really no end of the world where we will not meet each other. There is a way to heaven. If you don't go there, there is no door to H, L. You can come and join yourself. Seeing Li Chu's figure, he immediately changed his mind. When Li Chu got into the water, he appeared and subdued the little miracle doctor with a spell. The little miracle doctor has some cultivation skills. But the techniques he practices are all in the direction of medical treatment. And they are all practiced concurrently. Purely in terms of combat effectiveness. Probably about 50 to 50 ratio to small koi. Mr. Wu restrained him and planned to wait for the little talus priest to come out before threatening him to hand over the koi. Then, he waited until Li Chu arrived. Li Chu looked at him, raised his eyebrows and asked, Are you from Jiannan Prince's palace? Yes. Those two water dragons under the water told you. Little Taoist, you must not know. I have seen you, Mr. Wu said with a smile. You ever met me? Yes, I know you have a colorful koi. Mr. Wu picked up the little miracle doctor and said, If you want your friend to be okay, then trade it with the colorful koi. Li Chu looked at him strangely. Why should I change? Um, Mr. Wu didn't quite understand what he meant, but he could tell that the little Taoist priest was not afraid of his own threats. So his face darkened and he shouted, If you don't hand over the colorful koi, I will kill this person. Aren't you afraid? Certainly. Before he finished his threatening words, as soon as Li Chu raised his hand, Mr. Wu stood stiffly on the spot, with no time to do anything but chaotic thoughts racing in his mind. Damn it. He really isn't afraid. But why does he have it? Immortal magic. This little Taoist priest actually knows the body-holding technique. Mr. Wu was horrified and secretly resented that the people working under him were still too crude to find out such information but it's too late. No, it's not too late. For ordinary cultivators, their bodies are controlled. Their true energy is blocked. Their seals are blocked. And they cannot use any magical powers. The same is true for witchcraft. However, he also has a life-saving trick that can beat the enemy. That is, the one promised to him by Lord Evil God. One time in exchange for ten times luck. God descends. Although I am reluctant to use it here, once it falls into the hands of this little Taoist priest, it will never end well. He has always been a ruthless and decisive person and did not hesitate much. Gritting his teeth, he chanted the name of the evil god in his mind and prayed wildly. My lord evil god, come and save your followers. I beg to be used once. Your grace. Boom. In the dark starry sky in the sea of consciousness, the door suddenly opened. And in an instant, it spread to the world. Above his head, a huge black light curtain suddenly opened up. The night sky seems to be torn apart. Within the light curtain, infinite evil spirits descend, accompanied by the roar of space being crushed. Rumble, rumble. My followers, I will save you from all your troubles. I am supreme. My coming will take you away from vanity. A silver-white evil spirit slowly fell from the light curtain, from bottom to top, like a true god, descending into this space bit by bit. Listening to this voice, Li Chu suddenly felt that it sounded vaguely familiar. What was going on? I asked for it from you. I will repay you a hundredfold. My gift to you. I don't ask for anything in return. My name spreads throughout the three realms. I? Question mark. I hacked the mud horse. Chapter 173 Wait. Wait. Time. One late autumn night. Place. Kasaya Mountain. Besides Iobitan. Figure. Mr. Wu Imprisonment. Little Miracle Doctor of Vertigo. Li Chu Handsome. Evil Spirit, Request Retrieval. Evil Spirit, 
Fail to request rollback. Evil spirit, requesting for rollback again. Evil spirit, fail to request rollback again. Evil spirit, expletive. Leech you watched this majestic grand arrival and found out that the figure of the evil spirit appeared from the light curtain, which he felt was quite strange. Although it has a different color body, the expression, voice and tone, as well as the dark and evil temperament with a touch of bad luck, are absolutely correct. It was the one I encountered last time at Jinchi Academy, Mr. Sia. It turns out that all encounters in the world are reunions after a long absence. It may be said that it is too late, but that may be too soon. In fact, everything happens in just one thought. The moment the evil spirit came, Li Chu had already drawn the pure Yang sword. He did not dare to take it lightly for this alien evil spirit that had left a deep impression on him. The magic of witchcraft is unpredictable. If it really performs any tricks, life or death may be unpredictable. There's a saying in the Taoist scriptures, strike first to gain strength, strike later to suffer disaster. So before the evil spirit falls, his sword will fall. The sound of breaking wind is like ripping silk. When the evil spirit saw Li Chu swinging his sword, the light and shadow of the big and thick sword energy pillar flashed before his eyes, and its strong desire to survive forced it to shout, Wait! Wait! But in one breath, the evil spirit's intestines turned into a piece of blue and white porcelain. I just stood up from the endless darkness. I just realized the true meaning of witchcraft. As long as I am given a few more decades to digest the results of this epiphany, I can enter the true realm of gods. I should just stay in seclusion outside this world. And no one can find me. Why answer the prayer of this unfortunate believer? Why did God come down at this time? And the most bizarre thing is, the world is so big. Why did he come to this little Taoist priest? What else can I say besides being unlucky? Yes, I have plenty of luck. Why is it bad luck? The culprit is not this little Taoist priest. Although he has already been included in his must-kill list. But not now. People are not ready yet. For a time, these words lingered in the mind of the evil spirit. It decided to beg for mercy for the time being and discuss it with the little Taoist priest. Even if you abandon this only believer, you must save your own life. When he becomes a true god, will he still lack followers? Following is too. Wait a minute. Sounds. Li Chu seemed to have no intention of stopping. But the falling speed of the sword tip slowed down slightly. The evil spirit caught a glimpse of the door and hurriedly shouted. Do you remember? I also gave you a lot of luck. What he said was clearly meant to please. When the evil spirit said this, Mr. Wu was the first to collapse. What are you doing? This fight hasn't even started yet. Why did Lord Evil God surrender first? Aren't you a god? The emotions and thoughts in his heart were immediately reflected in the evil spirit's sea of consciousness through the mysterious connection in the sea of consciousness. Although he did not convey it intentionally, every thought he had about his faith was automatically conveyed to him. This is the shackles of a believer. Believed evil spirits do not. The evil spirits sensed the despair of the believers in their hearts and were naturally helpless. What can I do? I'm desperate too. But you have to understand that begging for mercy is just temporary forbearance. Sooner or later, I will not let every enemy go. This is the creed of my evil god way. Put on your pants first and then your shoes. Be a grandson first and then a father. Hearing its cry, Li Chu thought a little in his heart. It is true that this evil spirit has continuously provided me with a lot of luck. But compared to myself who was bound to the little koi, it was just a drop in the bucket. And these lucks are nothing compared to the experiences that evil spirits may provide to you. In particular, it has done many evil things. To be soft on bad people is to be cruel to good people. This sword leaves no room for maneuver. In a flash of lightning, the evil spirit begged for mercy. The believers collapsed. Li Chu's sword fell. And all living beings were at odds with each other. The autumn wind blows the fallen leaves. Boom. With a thundering sound, the huge sword energy pillar appeared again. And the evil spirit suddenly lost its color. Just as its body completely fell from the light curtain, it jumped back into the light curtain with a forceful movement. This light curtain was originally a rift it tore from the two spaces. As its body drilled back, it began to slowly close. Where did you come from? Where are you going? But can you escape? The moment it disappeared, the sword energy pillar followed it. Rumble. I don't know what happened at the other end of the space, but I saw the light curtain shaking violently, as if the water was hit by a huge boulder. The thick sword energy pillar was completely submerged. The dark crack suddenly trembled three times. There was a loud noise. And Mr. Wu felt that the mountain beneath his feet was shaking and shaking. The next second, 
a burst of white light appeared out of thin air and converged on Li Chu. And then his experience value skyrocketed. Only then did Li Chu feel satisfied. There is no more accurate kill report than this. It seems that this evil spirit's life-saving method will not be used a second time after all. It's just that after reaching level 76, there is still such an increase. The strength of this evil spirit is a little stronger than I expected. In addition, he was quite satisfied with the fact that he was getting better and better at controlling his sword energy. Mr. Wu and the little miracle doctor were very close to the evil spirit. When he made a move with his sword, the raging sword energy did not touch them at all. This was difficult to do before. This kind of controllability is not brought about by upgrading, but by the proficiency gained from constantly using sword energy. Although this kind of implicit experience cannot help you level up, it can make you more comfortable in combat, which is also very important. After thinking for a while, Li Chu looked at Mr. Wu standing over there. He walked over, put the little miracle doctor down first, and checked it out. There was a faint black aura lingering around the little miracle doctor's body, probably due to some kind of hypnotic spell. Li Chu offered the little Bodhi mantra, and the sun shone brightly, dispelling the black energy. The little miracle Dr. Yu wakes up. He opened his eyes, rubbed the pig's head, and when he saw Li Chu, he immediately asked, Did you get Xian Qing Dan? Yeah. Li Chu nodded. I'll tell you later. After that, he stood up, looked at Mr. Wu, and untied his mouth. Mr. Wu immediately smiled like a child. Clever. Just kidding. At that moment, the stars in his sea of consciousness disappeared. What this means is self-evident. There was no time to mourn. His first thought was that Xie Shen Dao originally had only one god and one believer. If Xie Shen Dao died, wouldn't he be the boss of Xie Shen Dao? The second thought was, even the evil god was forced to sacrifice. What else could he do? Of course let this little Taoist do whatever he wants. Li Chu said, I have a few questions to ask you. You ask. Mr. Wu's attitude was very good. Li Chu thought for a while and asked the one he was most curious about at the moment. Is the current king of Jiannan real or fake? Really or not? Mr. Wu frowned. Chao Tian Kei came to inspect the house the day before yesterday. And it was also because of this problem. The result of it? This was what Li Chu was curious about. Of course, Kao Yank would not tell him the results of the inspection. But he felt that the Jiannan king he picked up did not seem to be lying. So he asked. Just listen to Mr. Wu reply. Of course the result is true. Chapter 174 Sneaking into Jiangnan Prince's Mansion Real? This was somewhat beyond Li Chu's expectation. Of course, whether it's true or false, it's just curiosity and has little to do with him. Next, he asked questions related to himself. Did you also capture a family of koi carp that originally lived in the Heishui River? Heishui River? Mr. Wu's pupils opened slightly, and he immediately recalled it in his mind. After a long while, he replied, I can't remember. In the past few days, I did catch a lot of koi for King Jiannan in the water system of Hangzhou Prefecture. There were not even 10,000 but 8,000. And there were also a few from the big family. What do you think? Little Taoist priest? What are the characteristics of that clan? Li Chu said. The leader of that clan of koi is named Lu Chalan. Mr. Wu smiled in embarrassment. Little Taoist priest. When you look at a person catching fish, he still asks what the fish's last name is? Li Chu glanced at him and asked, Why did you catch so many koi? It's because I believe in the evil god. When he mentioned this, Mr. Wu clicked his tongue again. No, Lord Evil God, it's the guy just now. He forced me to sacrifice my luck, and then gave me the power of a witchcraft spell. And King Jiangnan wants to refine the luck dragon. Luck dragon? Li Chu's eyes were not sharp, but they were bright as if they could penetrate people's hearts, making Mr. Wu scared and afraid to hide anything. Of course, maybe it was just in his head. Having just seen such a sword, it is reasonable to be frightened. In short, he stammered and replied, It was Xiao who once gave him a small suggestion. It was really just a casual mention, which is that the luck dragon can swallow the country's luck and become king and emperor. Li Chu nodded. Mr. Wu advised the king of Jiangnan to refine the luck dragon to usurp the country's luck and capture luck beasts everywhere for him. All the koi in Hangzhou Mansion suffered as a result. He himself can take part of it and offer it as a sacrifice to the evil spirit. And these evil spells all originated from the evil spirit just now. In this way, the context is very clear. As for the good luck pill and the demon gate, he continued to ask, 
There is also collusion between King Jian Nan and the demon sect. The little Taoist priest even knows this. Mr. Wu was surprised and didn't dare to lie anymore. He is indeed connected with the demon sect. The demon sect also sent a few young people to assist him. However, those young people are talkative and weak in their work. They have not been seen for many days. I heard that they are going to go out and find someone to deal with a very powerful little Taoist priest. Ha ha. I don't know where the little Taoist priest needs such a big fanfare. A certain sage named Guo once said that naked hatred only exists between peers. Mr. Wu and the members of the demon sect also work under King Jiang Nian. Although they are friendly to each other on the surface, they are secretly at odds with each other. People in the demon sect are treated with greater courtesy when their backs are against a big tree. But Mr. Wu worked hard and worked hard even more. As a result, he was particularly hostile to those from the demon sect. After hearing that Wushuga was wandering around looking for someone to deal with a young Taoist priest, Mr. Wu had always made him laugh. And he also sneered twice out of habit. Then he looked at Li Chu's thoughtful face. The laughter stopped abruptly. No way. Li Chu frowned and said, Who is the Taoist priest he wants to deal with? I heard he is a very handsome man. Mr. Wu's eyes were straight. He had never thought of them together before. If this was really the case, then it would be normal to walk around three mountains and five mountains shaking people. He called over all the evil gods he believed in. As a result, I have since become a non-believer. Li Chu was a little cautious. It seemed that his killing of the sword-drawing fan of the Yan Yu sect had indeed left consequences. This kind of powerful demon sect would really be in trouble if it kept fighting the young ones and the old ones. After thinking for a long time, he asked the last question. What's the relationship between King Jian Nan and the strange demon sect? In the dungeon of the strange demon sect, there is a person who looks similar to King Jian Nan. It is impossible to say that they have nothing to do with each other. Alien demon sect? Mr. Wu was a little confused when he heard the name and shook his head. Obviously, he was not familiar with this monster force from the western region. After asking some questions, Li Chu had some concerns. He picked up Mr. Wu and prepared to turn around. Mr. Wu was startled. Little Taoist priest, won't you let me go? Li Chu quickly sealed his mouth. Let you go? How can it be? There is still much to do. The long night is finally over. When the morning light shines on Dashio Mountain again, the morning bell rings on Shuangfei Temple. The god-eyed monk has already tempered his body under the waterfall. And there is a faint roar of dragon and tiger in his fists and feet. This has been his unshakable habit for many years. In his opinion, Monks who haven't gotten up to practice at midnight don't take their practice seriously at all. Not long after, a figure even brighter than the morning light appeared on the shore. The monk with sharp eyes suddenly spotted this figure. He laughed loudly and jumped to the shore with his upper body naked where the dragon was entwined. The person coming was none other than Li Chu. Long time no see. How are you? Taoist Priestly? Shinmu asked with a smile. The muscles in his chest bulged one after another, as if they were dancing. It's okay. Li Chu smiled and nodded. And then said, I'm here to ask you for a favor. Oh. Monk Shinmu's eyes lit up. Xiao Tao is priestly. Please ask me for help. His chest muscles suddenly tightened. And his whole body became excited. It was as if I suddenly found the meaning of life. Pleasure. Yeah. Li Chu told him his purpose. It turned out that after going back and thinking about it last night, he decided to go to Jiang and Prince's mansion to check on the situation of the Koi. If Xiao Yu's clan members were there, they would do anything to help her out. But, he had a vague feeling in his heart that something was wrong with the king of Jiang Nan. Therefore, he wanted to ask Meng Shenmu to accompany him. If he had the opportunity to meet King Jiang Nan, he would be able to distinguish the true from the false with his discerning eyes. After hearing this, Meng Shenmu laughed. No problem. It's King Jiang Nan. I met him once when he came to Xuanfei Temple to offer incense a few years ago. If I see him again, I'll definitely be able to tell the truth at a glance. Li Chu asked. What was King Jian Nan like you saw last time? Meng Shenmu recalled. He was young and looked silly. That's right. Li Chu became even more suspicious. Okay. Taoist Priestly, please tell me your plan. Meng Shenmu smiled and said. How do we enter the Jian Nan Palace? Li Chu said. I just went there to take a look and found that the Jiangnan Palace is recruiting servants. Half an hour later, Li Chu, who was still handsome in a green shirt and cap, appeared on the long street outside the palace with the tall and tall people around him, whose short shirt was very wrinkled. There was a long queue on the street. 
The salary of servants in the palace is much higher than that of ordinary servants. And the things they can do are not much different. Naturally, everyone is eager to give it a try. Ouch, the Shinmu monk exclaimed. The man in front turned around, and Li Chu saw that he recognized him. Shin Huaji, little Taoist priestly, the two yelled at each other, then raised their fingers at the same time. Sh. In the team, three people huddled together. Chen Huaji whispered, Why is Taoist priestly here? Is your Taoist temple in such a bad situation now? Li Chu said calmly. I want to check some things. What about you? Chen Huaji said. I'm here to be an undercover agent. Li Chu nodded and understood immediately. It seemed that Chao Yan Kei still had doubts about the Jiangnan Palace. So he sent someone to get involved. This kind of job is really suitable for Chen Huaji. He took special cheek condensing pills, practiced special cheek condensing techniques, put on tattered clothes, and had a pair of sinister eyebrows. No one could tell that he was a public servant. I just didn't expect that when recruiting a servant for this palace. You have to take a special test. Alas, I don't know if I can pass it. Chen Huaji muttered nervously. The team moved forward very quickly, because nine out of ten people in front were scolded back within a second. The interviewer was a woman and looked very stern. Not long after, it was the turn of the three. The three of them pushed and shoved each other. But in the end, Li Chu, who did not fight or fight, was the first in line. Li Chu stepped forward calmly. I saw the maid in charge of the interview, who was dressed in fine clothes. She suddenly pursed her lips and smiled before she asked any questions. After smiling for a moment, he raised his eyebrows and said shyly, What's your name? Li Chu. What's your specialty? No. What a personality. Passed. Go get the sign. After a brief exchange of questions, Li Chu passed calmly. The monk Shenmu nodded as he looked at it, as if he had learned something. When it was his turn, he stepped forward with his head held high. The eldest maid asked, What's your name? Shindamu. What's your specialty? No. Roll. No. Monk Shenmu panicked. This seems to be different from the reference answer. He hurriedly waved his hands and said, I'm very good at fighting. The eldest maid frowned and said, All the guards in our house are very good at fighting. We don't need servants. Shin Mu felt embarrassed and scratched his head crazily. After a while, he showed an expression of great sacrifice and said, My specialty. The eldest maid's eyes jumped and she whispered, Passed. When it was Chin Huaji's turn, it was still the same problem. What name? Chin Huaji. What is your specialty? Sister, you are so beautiful. Ha ha. Let me ask you about your specialty. Sister, you have such a great temperament. Specialty. Sister, your makeup is so beautiful. Pass. After Chen Huaji came bounding over, Monk Shinmu felt unhappy for a while. Why can he pass even though I have sacrificed so much? What is his specialty? Chen Huaji said. I have already shown it. The Shinmu monk was confused and looked at Li Chu. Did you see it? What special skills did he show? Li Chu uttered one word coldly. Lick. Chapter 175 Lao Mandrel of Wangfu Hoodie Town. The cool breeze is faith, and the autumn moon is boundless. The people in the palace lived like years. After passing the assessment, the three of them were placed among a group of new servants and successfully sneaked into the Jiangnan Prince's mansion. Mang Shenmu was assigned to the Rockery group because of his physical strength. There are four teams in the Rockery group, namely moving mountains, making hills, unloading mountains, and touching gold. When he first arrived, he was incorporated into the mountain moving team. The daily work is to move the rockery stones from the east courtyard to the west courtyard, and then move the rockery stones from the west courtyard to the east courtyard. He was curious at the time and asked one more question what was the use of moving around like this? I was punished by the head servant of the rockery team and was not allowed to eat dinner for three days. Because this sentence is so dangerous, if it reaches the ears of the young prince, most of the people in their rockery will lose their jobs. Monk Shenmu thus learned his first social lesson. It doesn't matter whether the things you do are useful or not. And it doesn't matter whether the impact is good or bad. It just needs to create an illusion that they are busy. Chin Huaji was assigned to the communications team because of his quick legs and feet. The message was not from outside, but from inside the palace. Because the Jiangnan Palace is really too big. The main entrance of the palace is still on the central street of Fuching. The courtyard wall spans two blocks and stretches as far as the eye can see. The shape is not regular, and the farthest position is almost close to the base of the city wall. With such a long distance, it would take most of a day to walk from the back garden to the front door. 
Chin Huaji's task is to transport the news coming in from the east gate to the transfer point at the north gate. Someone else will transport the letters from the north gate transfer point to the south gate transfer point, and then to the west gate transfer point. Usually it takes half an hour for a letter to be delivered from the east gate to the kitchen. After such a transit, it only takes three days. At this time, if the person delivering the letter is in a hurry, he can add two tails of silver to make his letter urgent. It only takes half an hour for an urgent letter to be delivered from the east gate to the kitchen. Chin Huaji also learned a lesson from this. It turns out that as long as the overall efficiency is infinitely reduced, then ordinary efficiency can be charged. Li Chu was assigned to the cleaning team because he had no special skills. There are mostly women in the cleaning team, and there are fewer men. Generally, men are required to do the dirty and tiring work. The task assigned to Li Chu was to clean the right ear of the stone lion on the left side in front of the west gate. At the end of the day, the three of them gathered together. The palace's servants had a bedroom for four people. So the three of them came in together and were assigned to the same room. At night, I used some tricks to make the other roommate fall asleep and the three of them could talk freely. Chin Huaji collapsed to the ground exhausted and said, Dad is so exhausted. Monk Shinmu also said angrily, Grandpa is exhausted. Chin Huajixin said, Why does this monk also like to play with ethics? He wanted to fight back. But after taking a look at his bulging muscles, he dared not speak in anger. Li Chu nodded. It's indeed very hard. Chin Huaji and Shin Mu stared at him angrily. What's so hard about wiping the stone lion's ears? And only wipe one. Is it going to struggle? Li Chu said calmly. It's not tiring to wipe the stone lion's ears. But there were dozens of maids rushing to wipe them for me. I spent a lot of effort to stop them. Poof. The two of them lay on their backs and vomited blood. After finishing his remarks, Li Chu spread out a huge map of the palace in the center of the room. This was drawn by Mr. Wu based on his memories. It covers important locations in the Jiangnan Palace. And basically all the key things are in the same area. Backyard. Li Chu pointed to the large blurred area at the top of the map. The back garden is the most secret place in the entire palace. Although it is large, few people know what is hidden in it. Most of the palace's servants, maids, and guards were not allowed to approach the garden wall. There are even legends circulating in the mansion. Such as someone who couldn't help but tiptoe to take a look when approaching the back garden. And was arrested and filled in the lake. Before Li Chu entered the palace. He used his mind to spy on the secrets of the back garden. Unfortunately. The judgment of mind's eye skills is not advanced. As long as there is a restriction to isolate. Chi somewhere. Or there is a magic weapon that can block the breath. The mind's eye technique will be greatly affected. He had encountered this kind of experience in the past. But only a few times. This is the first time that a large isolated area like Jiangnan Palace has been discovered. He could see the outline of the garden. But he couldn't sense the presence inside. It's like clicking on the mini-map. And you can only see a hazy fog. And your field of vision is greatly restricted. Chen Huaji entered the palace with a mission. The information at hand was similar to that of Li Chu. Except for a sketch of the palace. As for what secrets were hidden in the back garden. He didn't know. In fact, when Kaodiang sent him in, it was just to temporarily place a chess piece. And there was no clear direction. The creation Dan Yan Yu sect and the alien demon sect are all inextricably related to King Jiangnan. But he has to find the specific evidence by himself. Mong Shenmu listened to Li Chu and Chen Huaji talking for a long time and rubbed his head. From what you said, it seems that all the bad things these days are related to King Jiangnan. He is a great evil man, Li Chu said. Whether it is or not, we still need to check to find out. At least I want to see it here. He pointed to a red circle on the picture. That's where Mr. Wu marked the place where the koi fish are kept. It's just that this red circle is very deep in the back garden. Next to the attic where King Jiangnan lives. To get there, one must pass through a deep fog. After discussion, goals are set. Li Chu took the lead and walked out. Army attack! Crush them! Chen Huaji and Shinmu also shouted slogans and blended into the vast night. The courtyard of Jiangnan Prince's mansion is deep, and there are many guards guarding it. Of course, this will not be a problem for a few cultivators. Li Chu passed through the wall and house without leaving any trace. Chin Huaji's escape skills had already entered the hall. And the Shinmu monk was also an extremely skilled warrior monk. But after passing the front yard, the misty back garden is not so easy. I don't know how many forbidden formations there are. And I don't know what evil spirits are there. And the future is unpredictable. Three figures swished over the high wall of the back garden. 
The first thing I encountered was a mountain lake with a rockery pavilion in the lake. The water was pale, reflecting the waning moon. It was quiet all around, except for the cool breeze, which sounded like an actor crying. Monk Shinmu frowned first and said, Be careful. The atmosphere is not right. Although there was no guard around, the three of them still exercised great caution. Just as I was about to walk through this mountain lake, I suddenly heard a voice in the wind asking, Where are you going? Sure enough, there is someone. The three of them were well prepared and suddenly raised their weapons. The sound of the wind was so vague that it was difficult to hear where the words came from. The rosary beads carried by the monk Shinmu are Buddhist storage instruments. Each rosary bead can seal an item when entering the house. Li Chu's sword and his stick were brought in like this, so he didn't have to be barehanded at this time. As for Chen Huaji, no one knew what his weapons were. The moment he heard the sound, his whole person disappeared in an instant. Immediately, a crashing sound was heard. It is both the sound of water and the sound of gold and iron. A black shadow slowly emerged from the bottom of the water. The first person to emerge was a bald man with sparse water weave like hair. Underneath was a cold, pale face. This man's back was hunched. His skin was pale and bloodless. And his eyes were filled with bloodthirsty and greedy cold light. When his figure emerged completely, it was revealed that he wore two thick iron ropes between his ribs. And the iron ropes were covered with talisman inscriptions. Was he actually locked at the bottom of the lake? This figure was completely out of water. And smiled sinisterly. Why don't you come down? Chapter 176 The famous figures of the demon sect still don't know what they will encounter. The cold wind is chilling to the bones. And the waning moon is in the sky. The silver-gray moonlight fell on the pale and dripping face. And the scene was indescribably horrifying. When Li Chu got closer, he glanced at the lake and saw the overwhelming resentment in the lake. There is even fresh murderous aura and blood energy. I'm afraid there are so many innocent souls filled in this water. His eyebrows immediately gathered together, and the pure Yang sword flew sharply into the air. The man in the water was startled and suddenly said, It turns out that you were not sent blood food. Looking at the clothes you were wearing, I thought you were thrown down for me to eat again. His words contained quite a lot of information. Could it be that the Jiangnan Palace has been filling the lake with its servants to feed this evil spirit? Thinking of this, Li Chu's eyes flashed with coldness. The man in the water rolled his gray eyes and said, Which one should I eat first? The big one is too hard and difficult to chew. The one that escaped from the ground has a small frame and doesn't even have two ounces of meat in total. He looked at Li Chu. Let's start with you. Hey. You also got a broken sword. Are you using it to pick my teeth? As he spoke, he grinned, revealing his sharp hooked teeth. He looks like a human being, but his mouth and teeth look like those of a wild animal. If you look carefully, you can still vaguely see traces of engraved talismans. The divine I recognized that this was not a monster, but an evil technique from the magic sect. There are very few people left who practice this inheritance in the world. Be careful. It's a man-eating mandrill. He practices magic skills. And all his cultivation is in his mouth. He has swallowed countless creatures. Monk Shinmu said in a deep voice. This is a villain wanted by the imperial court. Unexpectedly. He is hiding in the palace. Hide? If they didn't insist on using this talisman to restrain me. I'm afraid there would be no one alive in this palace. The man-eating mandrel laughed twice and licked its fangs with its tongue. Come on. I'm already hungry and thirsty it's unbearable. Before he finished speaking. He curled up his hands and suddenly flew over. The iron rope behind him rattled wildly. But it couldn't drag his body. Laugh. What greeted him was the sound of tearing silk. Immediately, the sword energy red dragon flew away in the sky. In the palace, Li Chu was careful not to make too much noise. This time, it was still an ordinary sword with only a trace of spiritual power. But amidst the roar of the sword energy red dragon, the color of the world has changed. When the man-eating mandrel saw this, his pupils trembled. It was obvious that the power of this sword far exceeded his expectation. But the sword energy is approaching, and I have to take it. I heard him let out a weird roar, opened his mouth, and heard another bang. A huge phantom with a bloody mouth appeared in the sky, with dense fangs, like a jungle of swords and halberds. His lineage has been very weak so far, but in ancient times, it had a great reputation. Back then, the patriarch could swallow a hundred thousand elite soldiers with just one mouth. According to legend, he practiced to the extreme. Can swallow heaven and earth. Li Chu's sword energy. The red dragon poured viciously into the huge mouth. And there was another huge dragon impact. 
For a moment, it was like thunder. Ah! The man-eating mandrel screamed. The giant mouse spell was cast by him, and it was almost like flesh and blood with him. It was extremely painful at this time. The first reaction was to burn my mouth. It was extremely hot. The second reaction was that it was fierce and difficult to take on. Boom. Destroy and destroy. A red dragon quickly broke through the fangs, penetrated the giant mouth of the Dharma, and then fell on the man-eating mandrel. He even opened his mouth in delusion, wanting to continue to devour the red dragon. But in just a moment, like ice and snow melting, his entire body was melted into the air. The Shinmu monk scratched his head again. This was not the first time he saw Li Chu drawing a sword. Normally, he shouldn't be so surprised. But every time he saw it, he still couldn't help but want to curse in his heart. What kind of power is this? Without thinking much, Chin Huaji suddenly poked his head out of the ground and said, If there is such a big noise, someone might come. Let's go! After hearing this, Li Chu and Shin Mu had no choice but to give up and move forward, leaving the back garden for the time being. Returning to the bedroom of the three of them, Chin Huaji took a long breath. It was too dangerous just now. The Shinmu monk looked at him coldly. Good fellow. I wish you had hidden the man-eating mandrel before it was born. How could it be dangerous? Chin Huaji laughed twice and quickly changed the topic. I heard that the reason why Jian and Prince's mansion recruited a large number of servants is because after we came to Chao Yan Palace to check the day before yesterday, a group of servants suddenly disappeared. Now that I think about it, maybe I was actually fed this man-eating mandrel. I'm just afraid of exposing some dirty secret. I have to write it down for him about harboring felons. Chin Huaji took out a small notebook and started recording. Monk Shin Mu smiled and said, It's useless. Don't say that this kind of crime has no effect on the level of the king of nine provinces. You said he was harboring fugitives. Do you have any evidence? Chin Huaji said, Such a big one. As he spoke, he blinked. Such a big man-eating mandrel has no hair left. After much deliberation, he only wrote a few lines in his notebook. September 13th, the 92nd day of missing Miss Shaolu. In fact, the roar at the mountain lake did not cause much commotion. There is a special restriction in the back garden, and the sounds inside will not be heard. The other residents in the back garden of the palace have long been accustomed to the man-eating mandrel under the mountain lake. He often tortured the blood to death in the middle of the night, and the screams he made lasted all night long. And there were even louder sounds than this. Say it again. Even if they really knew that he was going to be killed, no one would save him. If King Jiangan hadn't had to order people to lock him up at the bottom of the lake and release him when needed, I'm afraid he would have extended his claws to other people here. At the end of the back garden, in the attic, King Jiangan faced Wu Zhugo with a bad look on his face. Mr. Wu said he went out to capture the luck beast the day before yesterday, but he didn't come back for three days. This has never happened before. Wu Zhugo smiled and said, There must be some unexpected delays on the way. It's all possible. King Jiangnan said in a deep voice. My luck with the dragon is very important. If the dragon fails, great things will be difficult to accomplish. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. There's no rush. Wujuga shook his head calmly. My lord, the more important things you do, the more patient you must be. Your mood has become a little unstable recently. After he reminded him, King Jiangnan immediately thought deeply. After a while, he nodded and said, You are right. He said with a deep look. It's just Chaofian K's recent movements that make me feel a little strange. Maybe they are already targeting me. What are you afraid of? Hushuga waved his sleeves and said. I have issued a summons for the demon sections. Within three days, countless fellow demon sects from Jiangnan continent have responded. To put it aside, the prince's residence currently supports more than a hundred famous demon sects. If these people are released, his small Hangzhou residence will not be able to stop them. By then, your majesty, the dragon will be finished. All you need to do is release the gate cage. And we, the demon sect, will be there to fight for you. Not to mention the tens of thousands of demon sect disciples lurking in all nine states of the world. As soon as the prince breaks out into the world, countless people will immediately respond. The situation is complete. They're targeting you now. It's already too late. Hujuga looked confident. After listening to what he said, King Jiang and also had a smile of victory on his face. Yes, the group of famous demon sects raised in my mansion really cost me a lot of effort. When the time comes to release the cage, I wonder what surprises it will bring to me. Chapter 177 I'm fine in the palace. Another quiet night. 
As soon as night fell, they used some tricks to make the roommate lose consciousness. And the three of them continued to plot evil. On the map, Li Chu drew a black circle on the edge of the back garden in the fog. Remove the man-eating mandrills from the bottom of this lake, Monk Shenmu said. I made a special inquiry today. It seems that the movement last night did not cause any disturbance. It seems that no one in the palace cares about it. Chin Huaji touched his chin and analyzed carefully. This kind of people in the demon sect are unruly and unruly. King Jian and keeps them in the house. It must be extremely difficult to control them on weekdays. So they should not have much contact. And they will not visit if nothing happens. One less person too. No one will notice for a while. And I took a closer look last night. There are a lot of soundproofing restrictions in the back garden. Almost everywhere. It may be because I am worried about exposing the shameful things. But it can also be regarded as creating convenience for us. You still have to be cautious. Li Chu said. We might as well sneak in from another direction tonight. Okay. The two nodded in agreement. After a brief discussion, a group of people quietly went out. The dog wandered to the edge of the back garden. This time, he entered the garden in a slightly farther direction and walked forward. Just like last night. As we walked, a faint fragrance suddenly drifted in the night wind. Oops. Chin Huaji exclaimed. The Shinmu monk looked around, but saw nothing strange. He frowned and said, what is your ghost's name? Chen Huaji retorted. What do you know? This fragrance is not an ordinary fragrance, but the fragrance of willow flowers. Wherever the fragrance of flowers goes, it is no different from human consciousness. We may have been discovered by others. The monk Shen Mu muttered. Why don't I smell anything different? He he. Chen Huaji smiled proudly. When it comes to eyes, you are the best. But when it comes to noses, you can't compare to me. Monk Shen Mu snorted coldly. My hearing ability is far beyond what you can match. Chin Huaji responded tit for tat. My tongue is a hundred times more sensitive than yours. My, Shin Mu Monk was about to take off his belt. Li Chu turned around and glanced at the two teammates calmly. Is the focus now on whose body organs are more developed? Isn't the point now that we have been discovered? But, this is not the first time he has teamed up with a fool. Got used to. After a quick glance, there was nothing surprising about the surroundings. But there is an ethereal aura wandering underground. Like a pool of water. Moving at an extremely fast speed. In a moment, they were already close. Without saying anything, Li Chu drew his sword first. As soon as I opened my eyes, I saw a bright red flower bed in front of me. But it was clear that it was still an open space. The flowers in this garden are bright red and as big as a human head. They are swaying gently in the night wind. And their fragrance is so strong that it is pungent. Now the Shinmu monk also smelled something special. There was a vague smell of blood in this floral fragrance. The three of them looked ahead cautiously. Among the flowers in front of them, there was a thin and withered figure sitting. She was an old woman wearing a brocade black robe. Her pale hair wrapped in gold embroidered satin. And her face was covered with deep wrinkles. She did not look at the people, but kept moving her hand. A golden embroidery needle wandering around. As if she was sewing an embroidered shoe. The Shinmu monk opened his eyes wide and was a little puzzled, and said, It's strange. These flowers are not illusions. It's not an illusion in the first place. These willow flowers usually lie underground. When they smell people, they can extend their petals several miles away. They want to eat people, Chin Huaji whispered from the side. This old lady can control so many willow flowers. She must be the Miss Hua who has been wanted by the court for decades. I heard that the man she liked got married to someone else. So she went to the wedding and planted all the hundreds of people attending the wedding banquet into willow flowers. Now you have to call me Grandma Hua. The old woman deep in the flowers seemed to hear his whisper. And suddenly stopped her sewing and looked up. Judging from her tone and expression. She seemed kind-hearted. But among the gloomy flowers. It was indescribably weird. You three little guys. Dressed in servant uniforms. Doing sneaky things. Must be spies from outside. Right. You are really lucky to meet me tonight. Grandma Hua said with a smile. Chin Huaji asked tentatively. Grandma, can you let us pass? Of course that won't work. The old woman continued to smile. But Grandma, I can make you bloom. She glanced at the monk again and said. That big guy over there has so much energy and blood. He should be able to bloom two flowers. Shin Mu snorted heavily. You want to have sex? He he. Grandma Hua gave a sinister laugh and raised her hand. And suddenly three willow flowers suddenly swelled and rushed over like wild beasts. The petals opened like fangs. 
At the same time, there are also misty illusions, accompanied by ruthless devouring, a shock between spirit and body. At the same time, Li Chu moved. He was holding a sword and watching because the old woman in front of him had no aura and did not look like a real person. But at this moment, he locked the source of the true energy. Under the flower bed, at the bottom of the long roots, there is a bare head. To be precise, it was not just a head, but her body that was assimilated with the flowers all over the ground. All the roots of the Kailua flowers follow the bottom and are connected to her body. In order to pursue the power of the evil sect, they did not hesitate to refine themselves into such an inhuman and ghostly appearance. These practitioners of the evil sect really frightened Li Chu. This sword was clearly aimed at the ground. But the old woman among the flowers suddenly changed her expression. Laugh. The sword breaks the wind and the dragon is born. Roar. As soon as Qi Longfu burst into the ground, the flowing demonic energy instantly melted like snow meeting hot soup. For a moment, the monk with divine eyes seemed to see an ugly head connected to countless roots in the deep underground. The head let out a shrill scream. I just tried to test it a little bit. But you actually dug three feet into the ground and chopped off my real body. Young people do not respect martial ethics. Boom. There was a dull explosion. Raising dust all over the sky. After the dust settled, when he looked again, there was only a huge pit with a radius of nearly ten feet. And the deepest point could reach three to five feet. An invisible ripple rippled around him. And the sound suppression here really helped a lot. But it is impossible to say that there is no movement at all. Chin Huaji looked at Li Chu. Are we going back? Unconsciously, he had become accustomed to obeying Li Chu's decision. The monk with divine eyes also looked at Li Chu. The reason is simple. If a person just slashed out such a sword in front of you, it would be hard for you not to respect his opinion. Even if he doesn't talk much. Li Chu thought for a moment and said, It seems that there are many people from the demon sect in this back garden. It's a rare opportunity. Good opportunity? Chen Huaji was startled. Isn't this dangerous everywhere? When they see infiltrators, they won't notify others and are extremely indifferent. They don't pay much attention to distant sounds. This is a good opportunity to eradicate evil. Li Chu said what he said. And at the same time, he added in his mind that it was also a good opportunity to fight monsters and upgrade. This place is nothing more than a large leveling point for him. Chen Huaji was deeply moved by Li Chu's awareness and raised his fist. Little Taoist Master Gao Yi. After walking a little further, they gradually figured out the rules in the back garden. Like jungle beasts, every member of the demon sect has his or her own territory. They will not easily enter other people's territory and will be extremely sensitive to people who intrude into their own territory. This is the case with the demon sect. They only have naked interests in their eyes. You dare to speak but don't dare to listen to such nonsense as friendship. In fact, many decent people are well aware of this. But they just dare not show it so calmly. Not long after, the three of them walked into a wild pine forest. A black shadow suddenly flashed in front of him, filled with evil energy. Coming. The monk with sharp eyes was on full alert, hoping that he would have a chance to show off this time. Chin Huaji still used the same strategy when facing the enemy, and disappeared in an instant. I don't know whether it blended into the pine tree or got into the soil. Of course, there is no need to worry about him. Li Chu knows that as long as he kills the enemy, he will always be the first to shout. 666. From strange corners. Call. The black shadow flashed past again and crouched on the top of a big tree. Bliss. He licked his lips and said, It's fresh blood. I smell an extremely fragrant smell of blood. I've never seen it before. What kind of blood is this? At first glance, there was a huge bat on the tree crown. After looking carefully, I realized that it was a thin man dressed in black and wearing a large cloak, which looked a bit strange. He looked at Li Chu with extremely greedy eyes. No matter what it is, I'll suck it. With a shout, he moved his hands. Bang. The Shinmu monk staggered suddenly, with veins all over his body as if the blood in his body was about to burst out of his body. He stamped his feet fiercely, pinched the Buddha's seal with both hands, and shouted loudly, Protect the body! As the true energy circulated, a burst of golden light appeared all over his body, and there was a faint heavenly dragon hovering, stabilizing the blood all over his body. Only then did he have the energy to shout, It's a long-lost blood demon skill that can suck blood from all over the body. It's extremely cunning and treacherous. The word, be careful, was not spoken. Because he glanced to the side and saw Li Chu standing there with a calm face. 
looking at the black cloak with his teeth and claws. Not touched at all. The black cloak frowned in surprise. And suddenly increased his power. Suck it for me. Bang. The Shinmu monk was only affected nearby. And there was another explosion all over his body. He almost couldn't hold on. And the skin that had been tempered since childhood even showed cracks. But Li Chu still felt nothing and looked at the black cloak quietly. Black cloak was instantly irritated by Li Chu's eyes. That look seems to be saying, I know you are working hard, but I really can't feel its existence. No man can bear such gaze. He immediately caused the heavens in his body to surge violently, mustered up 120% of his true energy, and shouted, Tuck it for me! Before he could apply more force, Li Chu had already drawn his sword. It didn't matter to him. But if their duel continued, the Shinmu monk around him might be sacrificed first. Cut it down with one sword. Just as the black cloak shouted the last word, suck. Boom. Get your wish. He finally sucked a red dragon. Then, when he saw that the surging sword energy was too strong, he realized something was wrong. Turn around and try to escape. His movement is not unpleasant. But as we all know, flat it cannot be avoided. With a loud roar, he exploded into a gorgeous firework along with a tree crown. Li Chu's eyes were sharp, and he saw a shiny thing falling to the ground in the night. He immediately stepped forward and caught the thing. Snapped. What fell on the palm was a dark red crystal. It felt warm and hard. And I didn't know what it was. Anyway. The things that can be released now are all good things. Monk Shinmu escaped and breathed a sigh of relief. Then he saw the item Li Chu got and said. It seems to be a blood crystal. Is this the blood crystal? Li Chu had heard of this thing before. It was probably a strange object formed by some powerful being who refined and sealed a drop of his own blood. This drop of blood was naturally different from ordinary blood. But he didn't know its specific effect. How precious the blood crystal is depends on who is refining it. You may have to take it to the Danning Pavilion to test it before you know it. Monk Shinmu said. Li Chu nodded and put the things in his arms. After thinking about it, I felt embarrassed. Chin Huaji was sent by the Imperial Court. So forget it. The Shinmu monk was invited by himself. So if the items exploded he would naturally not be spared his share. So he said to the Shinmu monk, I'll go back and change the chi gathering pill. Let's make it 50-50. Monk Shinmu waved his hand quickly. That's not okay. I didn't take any action. How can I take advantage of you? Li Chu insisted. Although you didn't take action, you still took a risk. This cannot be ignored. Shinmu said. If you want to give me more, then we can have nine and one. That's enough for you and me. If you give me more, you don't regard me as a friend. Li Chu hesitated. Joey, Shinmu said firmly. Joey is very good. Okay. Li Chu could only nod. Then Joey, Just as he was talking, Chin Huaji popped up from the side and said, What are you talking about? Are there any benefits? Yes, but it's not for you. Monk Shinmu laughed proudly, popped up his chest, and strode forward. I thought to myself that I must find an opportunity to take action next time even a punch. Just one punch. Boom. As a red dragon swept past, a figure of fierce flames was suddenly swallowed up, and the place returned to tranquility. The Shinmu monk's eyebrows twitched. Good guys, he counted in his mind and exclaimed, five consecutive unparalleled ones. Six, six, six. Jin Huaji emerged from the rock on one side and showed his presence in a timely manner. Halfway through the night, Li Chu actually killed five famous level demons although King Jiangnan also took credit for gathering them. King Jiangnan obviously didn't put them here for nothing. Li Chu was still very calm. He looked at the night ahead with some reluctance and said, We should go back. One night was not enough for them to fully explore this huge garden. There is still a lot of fog waiting to be dispelled. And there is still an unknown amount of experience in the fog. The devil. Chin Huaji breathed a sigh of relief when he heard that he was going back. But Mang Shenmu was a little unwilling. He gritted his teeth silently. After all, I still didn't get the chance to take action even once. The key point is that Li Chu strikes too hard. So fast and ruthless that the monk can't help but exclaim in his heart every time. It's like a devil descending from the sky. He is really the Tai Sui god on earth. This little Taoist priest. The next day, as soon as daybreak came, they became three ordinary servants again. Chen Huaji delivered the letter in an ordinary way. His eyes were like a rockery in an ordinary way and Li Chu wiped the ears of the stone lion in an ordinary way in the presence of dozens of maids. Right ear alone. At noon, Chen Huaji suddenly sent a new letter. 
if there was a quick turnaround. It would take at least three days for it to be delivered. But this letter belonged to Li Chu. So he took it over directly. Li Chu opened it and saw that it was sent by his master. The general idea is to ask how you are doing in the palace. The question was very vague, like a normal concern from family members. But Li Chu knew that it was everyone in the Yun Temple who was worried about his safety. After all, in the Jiangnan Palace, you have to do dirty work during the day, and the night is no less than wandering into the dragon's pond and the tiger's den. After carefully recalling it, he picked up a pen and wrote a reply. I'm fine in the palace. Real. Chapter 178 One Cloud-Piercing Arrow Two Cloud-Piercing Arrows Three Cloud-Piercing Arrows The moon crescents over Kyushu. And some families are happy and some are sad. A few brothels drink wine. And a few live on the streets. Outside Shulin County. Chinyo Mountain is a rare high mountain in Shulin County. It is towering but not continuous. Like a sudden giant gate blocking the two counties. According to local legends in Shulin County. This mountain did appear out of thin air. It is said that hundreds of years ago. The Xinjiang flood flooded the south of the Yangtze River. At that time. When Su Ling was about to be submerged by the flood and the people were unable to escape and wailing in the fields. A Taoist priest riding an ox fell from the sky. The bull-riding Taoist priest did not know what means he used to pull up a towering mountain from the ground, stop the raging water, save countless people, and then float away. Afterwards, the people did not know his name, so they had to name the mountain Chinyo Mountain to commemorate the achievements of this living god. To this day, on every first and fifteenth day of the Lunar New Year, Many people in Xilin County still come to this mountain for outings and worship in the air, which has gradually developed into a folk custom. Recently, a strange incident occurred in Xilin County. That is, a shepherd boy picked up a paintbrush. Many people say that the shepherd boy must have entered Chinyo Mountain by mistake, and what he picked up was the treasure left by Chinyo Taoist. In fact, Ma Liang's village is nearly a hundred miles away from Chinyo Mountain, and those who heard about it only regarded it as far-fetched. That night, there was a sudden movement on this mountain peak. It was obviously a clear autumn night. But suddenly a thunderbolt fell from the sky. Like a golden dragon. Tearing the sky with a crack and striking hard on the top of Chinyo Mountain. His voice shocked the world. And everyone was shocked to hear it. Many nearby people were frightened awake by this thunderbolt. When they looked in that direction. There was only a vast night and nothing could be seen. What people don't know is that all the beasts on Bull Riding Mountain are running wild. Whether they were jackals. Tigers, leopards, rabbits, rats, insects, or snakes. They all use their strength to flee down the mountain. Shadowy and continuous. As if they had foreseen some natural disaster. Countless rustling sounds of jumping and footsteps almost merged into a loud rumble. No. This loud noise was not caused by them. If the sky is bright at this time, then you can retreat to a distance and look carefully to see. This mountain seems to be slowly splitting into two halves. That rumbling sound is the sound of the mountain splitting. Although it is slow, it is nothing else. It is a high mountain. Even if there is just a small crack, it will be a huge shock to the creatures above. No wonder they want to run away like crazy. Or maybe it's more than that. There seem to be some deep existence hidden in the slowly opening black crack. There are some monsters that have become spirits on Chinyo Mountain. But they are also running away quickly at this time. Some of them, who were of a slightly higher level, turned back from time to time and stared at the obvious crack on the top of the mountain with a hint of greed in their eyes. But the pace of escape did not stop. They could feel something attracting them behind the crack. But what they felt more clearly was the death imprinted in the memories of their ancient ancestors. Another distant mountain in the distance. A smiling man wearing a strange mask and ancient robes stood on the top of the mountain, looking at the scene over there, and said, As expected, Demon Dao Xinzong is in Chinyo Mountain. We have not stayed here in vain. Behind him, the man with a crying face said quietly, As soon as the vision of the immortal song appears, the big forces around it must be coming. It will take three days to fully open the demonic path immortal song. After three days, if the venerable has not arrived yet, what can we do? It's still unclear whether we can get in. How come his holiness is not here? The smiling man waved his hand. Don't worry. An exion? The cry-faced man snorted coldly. It would be easier if it were another venerable. But this one inch, the smiling man said. You must believe in venerable Xian Gu. The crying man was silent for a moment. The smiling man was silent for a while. And then whispered. He is usually late for a month at most. 
The man with a crying face said in a low voice, The whereabouts of the angry messenger are unknown, and he is most likely dead. When this happens, I will definitely file a complaint against this pigeon spirit. The smiling man thought for a moment and said, That's all for later. Just in case, why not call the people from King Jiang and over first? Are you going to touch the people over there? The cry-faced man said hesitantly. Move! The smiling man scratched his head. The Demon Tao Immortal Treasure is very important. It contains the great secret that the Bull Riding Tao has brought out from the Shinshu. At that time, the twelve immortal sects all ended up fighting for that secret thing. And afterwards they all said that they did not succeed. Although it is not ruled out that one of the twelve immortal sects would release false news. The possibility of the twelve immortal sects doing such a thing is very low. And even more so big possibility. It was the bull riding Taoist who got the secret. Since then, he has disappeared from the world and has not appeared anywhere for hundreds of years. Until that big flood, he took action to save Su Ling. There must be a reason. The person with a crying face naturally knows what he said. After thinking for a moment, he nodded. Then the smiling man blew a loud whistle. There were two clatters in the night sky. And a huge cyan flying pigeon fell from the sky and landed in the palm of the smiling man. The smiling man held up the plump pigeon and said to the pigeon's head, The evil path and immortal treasure are about to be opened. Go to Jiangnan Prince's mansion to shake people. Goo goo. The pigeon nodded extremely then fluttered its wings and took off into the sky. Crying face muttered, I hate all pigeons. Poof. Before he finished speaking, something seemed to fall on his shoulder. Fresh and hot. From the sky. Somewhere thousands of miles away from Xiling County. Among the mountains. There are several exquisite thatched cottages. Xiao Ma Liang and Mo Xian were brought here by Lao Nyo. And they have lived a life without shame for a while. When oxen plowed the fields, women came to weave cloth. When oxen came to carry water, women came to water the gardens. It's like a paradise. On this day, the moonlight spread on the ground, and Ma Liang suddenly woke up from his dream. He walked out of the thatched cottage with a feeling, and saw old Huang sitting in the courtyard with a cow's head on his head, staring blankly at the south. Ma Liang walked over and asked, What's wrong with you? The tower looked at him for a while, and then said dully, There are some things I should do. Is it dangerous? Ma Liang asked cautiously. Probably. The tower scratched his head. But I'm not afraid. I'm just worried. Are you worried about me? Ma Liang was thinking sharply. Yeah. The tower nodded. I'm worried that you don't know how to control yourself. Ma Liang's face turned red. Don't just indulge in painting. But also read more. The tower warned. Oh. You said this. Ma Liang breathed a sigh of relief. Huh? The tower was startled. What do you think? Um. Ma Liang looked nervous and quickly changed the subject. Can you tell me what you are going to do? The tower had a straightforward mind and immediately replied. My former master was a very powerful man. He was so powerful that a stupid bull like me became wise after his guidance. He may have lived for thousands of years. But he died in the end. After he died, he left a treasure behind. And that treasure will be open soon. I knew about this before anyone else. I wanted to take you in and secretly take out some. It will be enough for you to enjoy for a lifetime. Who knew it was the pen you brought out? And it almost hurt yourself. Now that the treasure is finally about to be opened, I think he doesn't want those treasures to fall into the wrong hands. I'm going to protect it. Xiao Ma Liang thought for a while, suddenly stood up, reluctantly patted the torrent's tall shoulder, and said with serious eyes, I won't stop you, but you must come back safely. The Taran smiled innocently. I know what to do. Laugh. A strong wind blew through the night, and there were faint ghosts wailing. In a remote alley in Hangzhou Prefecture, several ferocious ghost figures suddenly appeared. They looked ferocious and frightened, and they scrambled to escape. As soon as he got out of the alley, several ghostly figures suddenly froze him, because on the street outside, there was actually a large group of living people surrounding them, probably over a hundred at a glance, mostly women, staring at them with excited and fiery eyes. The devils were stunned. It stands to reason that they have been transformed into ghosts for many years. But when have they ever been treated like this? And these are all mortal women who are obviously powerless. Aren't they afraid of ghosts? Just for a moment when they were in a daze. As soon as the sound of wind passed behind them, the ghost's brief trance ended, and they suddenly remembered why they wanted to run away. I wanted to run again, but it was already too late. A cold black shadow flashed past, 
and landed at the entrance of the alley. But the bodies of the evil ghosts a few feet away had broken into pieces and turned into dust. No one present could see his movements clearly. But they could see his face clearly. Exhibit and leave a name. A powerful female voice started the first scream. And then a large number of warblers and swallows came up. John left his name to slay the ghost and landed. He was originally very cool. Seeing this scene, panic flashed in the eyes behind Lou Hire's bangs. Sure enough, this is how things happen in Fuching. Even if I had already picked up the midnight watch and came to an extremely remote place, I would still be squatted in advance every time. Obviously, they have taken great care to keep it confidential. There must be a mole inside Chao Yan Palace. These admirers, who are flocking up, are the most difficult to deal with. After all, they are also among the common people. If they turn around and leave, it will appear too unfriendly to the people and will be detrimental to the image of Kaodiank. Moreover, they often need the support of these people. If everyone greets you warmly, no one can resist this night. Helpless, John Looming had to sign one by one on the objects they handed over and find another way to escape. Surrounded, he could only show one raised hand. Whose handkerchief does it belong to? It's signed. Whose letter does this letter belong to? It's been written. Whose fan this fan belongs to has been written? Whose trouble is it to wear this belly band? At this moment, a sharp sound suddenly came from the direction of Yanchun Street, and a siren lifted into the sky. John Looming looked up, his expression stern, and then he showed a sense of relief. There is an urgent mission in the door. Unfortunately, we can't continue, he shouted, then raised his head towards the sky. Call. A huge night owl passed by at low altitude and took away his figure in an instant. Ah. All that was left was the sound of screams coming and going. Whether it was excitement or reluctance. Night owl spread its wings and returned to Chao Yan Kei's station in an instant. As soon as he landed, he saw many Shuani guards gathered together. Duan Zhang, the leader of the station in a white robe, stood quietly at the front with a solemn expression. He knew that something big was about to happen. Otherwise, he would never have summoned all Shuani in the city late at night. When Duan Bai Bao saw Zhang leading his name and returned, he nodded and then spoke in a deep voice. There is a strange phenomenon coming from the sky at Chinyo Mountain in Xiling County. There is a divine thunder opening the mountain. It is expected that a secret realm will be opened within three days. With such power, it must be the remnants of powerful and even land gods. All those above the middle stage of Shinha, come with me to investigate. Those below the middle stage of Shinha, stay in Fuching and take charge. Xiling County? A flash of memory flashed in John Liuming's eyes. Thinking of those strange people and the huge death omen star, there is something extraordinary here. At the end of the night, we return to Jiannan Palace. In that attic, King Jiannan looked gloomy, facing Wajuga who had just arrived, and said, Maybe the people from the demon sect will move in advance. Oh! Wajuga frowned. What does the prince want to do? A secret realm will be opened in Chinyo Mountain. And I need help. King Jiannan did not tell him everything. We live in this palace, and it is our duty to serve the prince. Huizhuga pondered for a moment, and said, It's just that these famous figures from the demon sect are not like ordinary worshippers, and what they do for the prince must be kept secret. After all, these people are carrying some murder cases on their bodies. If they are discovered, they will inevitably be in trouble. King Jiangnan nodded, indicating that he understood Huizhuga's concerns. He also frowned and said, if the matter is not urgent and quite difficult. I don't want to use these famous figures from the demon sect. It's just that this time I have no choice. But if it happens, it might be of great help to our big things. Wajuga said, The prince has your destiny. So of course no one dares to disobey it. But I still want to advise the prince. The more imminent something is, the more important it is not to act lightly. I have concerns. King Jiangnan finally said, I will talk to you in detail about this matter later. As long as it is done, it doesn't matter if we don't do it for now. Naturally, Huizhuga no longer refuted. Okay, I will gather all the heroes for the prince. After that, the two of them walked side by side to the balcony at one end of the attic, facing the vast back garden of the palace. Huizhuga turned over his hand and pulled out a talisman. The Yen Yu sect's exclusive soldier summoning talisman. Only those with demonic energy can sense the information in it. But I saw him making the secret with his left hand, and throwing the talisman into the sky with his right hand. Crack. It was like a firework rising into the sky, lighting up the sky instantly. 
and then exploding into a dazzling firework. An arrow pierces the clouds, and thousands of troops come to meet you. Although he had raised these people from the demon sect for many days, King Jiangmen had never summoned them. If nothing happened, he wouldn't want to see these strange and unruly people. But at this time, due to some pressure, he had to move. Raise an army for a thousand days. Use it for a while. Wajuga smiled and said, I believe they will never let the prince down. I believe it too. King Jiangnan also showed a dark smile. Then, a long time passed. King Jiangnan blinked. Where are the people? Wajuga also frowned deeply. You shouldn't. No matter which branch of the demon sect you are in, you must gather together when you see the summoning talisman. This is the rule set by Lord Ian Emperor back then. Besides, I made an agreement with them all before leading them into the palace. Even if someone moves slower, they shouldn't show up at all. King Jiangnan looked slightly displeased and said, Did the photo taken just now be too short? How about you take another photo? Although Wajuga thought this statement was stupid, he had no choice but to summon it again. With a flip of his hand, another summoning talisman was played. Crack. Another cloud-piercing arrow. Then, another half a while passed. Crack. The third cloud-piercing arrow. King Jiangnan looked at Wajuga. Wajuga looked at King Jiangnan. Looking at each other, a trace of cold sweat slipped from Wajuga's forehead. And he whispered, I think something is wrong. Chapter 179 Killing the Murderous Demon When the summoning talisman lifted into the sky, it was not that no one from the demon sect saw it. On an island in the middle of a lake surrounded by cherry trees, there is an old man wearing a black linen robe on the island. He is thin and jagged. He is looking at the housekeepers, in front of him with eyes as sharp as a knife. Lao Jianghu's intuition told him that these young people were a little strange. The handsome man, with a sword in his hand, had a calm look with a hint of eagerness. As if he had some intention against him, he couldn't help but lift his anus. The big man with well-developed chest muscles, and the somewhat wretched little man next to him looked at me with very cold eyes. A bit bored, as if they were looking at a dead person. The old man in sackcloth thought about his identity not to mention being famous in the world. At least, he had a brilliant life. When he worshipped under the sect of the five Dharma kings, Lord Shiraishi, where could the name, Shiraishi Mai, go without attracting a burst of exclamation? It was once able to cure children crying at night. It was only later that Mr. Shiraishi's thoughts gradually became detached from the world, and his old brothers gradually dispersed. He was introduced to the Jiangnan Palace and lived in seclusion on Sakurajima Island, waiting to start a big career again. He was a little angry to be so scorned by a few young people who suddenly appeared today, but he still felt a little bit vigilant in his heart. It seemed like something bad was going to happen. It happened that at this time, the summoning talisman went up and the fireworks were brilliant. His heart moved. And then he said grimly, You guys are lucky. I happen to have something urgent. So I will take care of you when I get back. After saying that, he stood up, unfolded his linen robe, and instantly seemed to turn into a big bird about to fly away in the sky. Roar. But before he could fly far, a red dragon with sword energy viciously wrapped around his body. His instincts are sharp enough, and he can run fast enough. Unfortunately, the world has changed. Today's young people fight against old men and never hold back. It just vanished into thin air, and the ashes were thrown away. Like hundreds of people from the demon sect before. The Shinmu monk looked at Li Chu who was slowly sheathing his sword. Feeling a little numb and a little emotional. It has been more than half a month since I accompanied Li Chu into the Jiangnan Prince's mansion. At first, I thought this place was a dragon's pond and a tiger's den, which was extremely dangerous. Later I realized that it was a tiger infiltrating a flock of sheep. Li Chu coming here is a big terror to the monsters here. If the people hiding here are all bloodthirsty murderers, then Li Chu is the maniac who kills the murderer. Ridiculously crazy. Chen Huaji looked at Li Chu and had similar thoughts. Look at this little Taoist priest. After every time he eradicates a demon, his eyes are clearly full of contentment that is difficult to conceal. It is difficult to explain it with a sense of justice that eliminates demons and defends the Tao. If he hadn't been extremely handsome, he might have been suspected of being a pervert. Right? His perception was correct. Li Chu did feel fulfilled for a while. Nowadays, it is very difficult for him to upgrade. Unexpectedly, he first killed the evil spirits and then entered the palace and he actually reached level 77 in more than 10 days. No one could have imagined that there would be so many demon cultivators who were full of evil and outstanding strength, but not enough to pose a threat in the Jiangnan Palace. 
It was simply a perfect leveling point. He cheered up and said, Let's go to the next place. Yes! Chin Huaji raised the map, looked at it carefully, and replied, The fog in the back garden has been cleared. Ah? Li Chu was a little surprised and reluctant. Are they all wiped out like this? I wonder if they can keep refreshing them from the graveyard like the lantern monster. I guess not. Well, Monk Shinmu glanced at him. What's the matter with your disappointed tone? Isn't that why we came here? Chin Huaji took out his pen and drew a circle. And said, You are almost at your destination ahead. Where the Koi are imprisoned. Only then did Li Chu restrain his distracting thoughts. His purpose in entering the Jiangnan Prince's mansion was to investigate whether there were any members of Xiao Yer's clan among these koi fish. And to rescue them all. It was not too far away from here. And the atmosphere in the attic where King Jiangnan was was once very tense. Three cloud-piercing arrows. Thousands of troops and horses disappeared. Huizhuga shrank his neck, spread his hands, and smiled sarcastically. How embarrassing. Here comes someone! King Jiangnan glared at Huizhuga and didn't say much. Instead, he shouted and called his cronies. Go down and find those famous figures from the demon sect one by one. Yes. The confidant bowed and lowered his head. His expression was extremely unsullied. They, the servants of the royal family, have always disliked contacting those weirdos. Even if he has a difficult temper, even if he disagrees, his life may be in danger. But if the prince has an order, he dare not disobey it. Immediately, more than ten men in black hurriedly dispersed into the night. Less than half an hour later, the confidant hurried back to the small building and reported the news in panic. No more! King Jiangnan's eyes widened. No one is gone! It seems that none of them are dead! The confidant said with fear. When we rushed to the scene, we could only see some traces of fighting. No one alive! No dead body! King Jiangnan lost countenance and fell back on his seat. This... Huizhuga frowned and fell into shock. It's impossible to say that they all agreed to run away. But to get rid of all these famous figures in the demon sect so cleanly, without leaving a single body behind would require at least two realms of strength. Who is this powerful person? If he has such a leisurely mind, what is his plan? King Jiangnan's eyes were in trance. And he said in panic, Do you think someone wanted to scare me? So they killed all the people I recruited from the demon sect to force me to renounce my relationship with the demon sect? Huishuga thought for a while and said, We do not rule out the possibility that such a powerful person can act at will, which is really difficult to predict. King Jiangnan glanced at him and said, How about we stop contacting each other recently? Huishuga almost wanted to roll his eyes at him and reluctantly replied, Your Majesty, you don't have to be so afraid. This man killed all the demon sect cultivators, but did not come to trouble me. There must be a reason. What reason? Huishuga smiled slightly and said firmly, I think he doesn't dare. Mighty people are most afraid of fighting in the same realm. They regard the cultivators of the lower realm as ants. Who can be killed by hand? When dealing with disputes with the powerful men of the same realm, they avoid them whenever possible. And I am still somewhat capable. Background. Huizhuga raised his hand and pointed upward to signal. There is someone above me. Yes, that makes sense. King Jiangnan nodded. Your grandma still has a strong reputation. Immediately, he knocked on the table again. But now that I have no one available, how can I fight for the demonic immortal treasure? Huizhuga said quietly. Does the secret realm that the prince mentioned must be fought for? We must fight. King Jiangmen gritted his teeth and said fiercely. There is also the Jioli army. Hasn't it already recruited more than 10,000 people? Call me 8,000 people. Your majesty. Huizhuga was shocked. The Jioli army can't move lightly. That's... There is no other way. King Jian then waved his hand, interrupting his advice. The people you recruited can no longer move. I can only move on my own. Your Majesty, do it yourself. Huishuga frowned deeply. King Jian then continued. I have some concerns. Although the Destiny Dragon has not yet been completed, it is only the last step away. I will release the Black Gold Hybrid Dragon bound by Destiny tonight from the cage and go directly to swallow all the koi. I think it will be completed tomorrow. I will lead the Jioli army to Chinyo Mountain to fight for the Demon Dao Immortal Song, which will be a great help. Even if the existence of the Jioli army is known to the world by then, it won't matter, because the Luck Dragon has been completed. This is the time we agreed to do something. Although it's a little more urgent than planned, everything is still ready. Huizhuga's eyes were focused, and he thought for a long time before sighing and saying, 
I can only wish you success. King Jian then waved his sleeves and said, Come down and open the gate. Release the Han Jijio. I want it. Overnight success. Chapter 180 The dragon is gone. And so is the home. Boom. Late at night, a dull roar suddenly came from the pavilion where the koi was suppressed. In this large pavilion, two large pools were initially excavated. Called pools, their scale is not much greater than some small lakes. One of them contained many koi carps captured by Mr. Wu. If the koi fish is favored by heaven, it will continuously produce good luck. King Jiang and keeps absorbing the luck of these koi and cultivating himself. After the koi's luck is sucked, it will regenerate after a period of recuperation. Although being constantly sucked out of luck will affect your lifespan, you will also have to experience the pain of imprisonment. But for koi, at least it is not a serious fatal disaster. But at this time, as the gate is opened, the end of the koi is coming. When he was about to succeed, King Jiangnan was finally no longer satisfied with the slow absorption, but wanted to devour them directly. Because in another pool, what was being suppressed was the fate beast bound to Jiangnan King, the Black Gold Hunchajio. This Hunchajio is a strange beast that roams all over the world. Unlike most luck beasts with Buddhist personalities, it was born with the word devour in its bones. Just make a living by hunting other luck beasts. And the Black Gold Hunter Jiao is the king of the Hunter Jiao clan. What Mr. Wu caught for King Jiangnan was originally a young dragon. But after being bound by the secret method, King Jiangnan was crazy about absorbing luck during this period. This young dragon received feedback and has grown into a terrifying dragon that is more than 10 feet long. The scales all over the body are as black as ink. And when they are close to the water, they are reflected in a deep dark golden color when swayed by the moonlight. This ferocious dragon, which is already quite large but has not yet tasted the smell of blood, will soon pass through this narrow waterway for its first hunt. Killing intent burst out in its scarlet eyes. I believe this will be a journey full of pleasure. Let's hunt those fish in the dark. The two men in black who were guarding this place released the golden rope of the water gate and then exited the pavilion together. When they looked back, they couldn't help but click their tongues. This is too long. Long and big. How can the fish bear it? Oh, your majesty must do it in one step. The two of them were talking and when they turned around, they suddenly saw a shiny ball. No, it's a bald head. Boom, boom. The Shinmu monk raised his hand and punched two people, knocking them unconscious, and then let out a long sigh of relief. It's so cool to hammer people, especially after watching Lee Chu spawn monsters for so many days without having the slightest chance to make a move. Right here. Li Chu and Shin Huaji caught up and hurriedly opened the door and entered. Boom inside and outside the pavilion. It seems like two worlds. No wonder he couldn't detect the extraordinary luck of the koi with his inner vision outside. There are at least nine seals in this pavilion, which firmly locks the aura of all the koi. In addition, the sound here cannot be transmitted outside at all. Everything King Jiangnan does here is absolutely confidential. As soon as you step into it, the first thing you hear is a dragon roar of pleasure. Roar. The black gold Hunchijio emerged from the waterway and came to the koi pond. Boom. The koi pond suddenly seemed to be boiling, and hundreds of koi carps fled frantically, gathering together to make a rumbling sound. Koi are as afraid of the hunter Jiao as their natural enemies, and cannot be eliminated by numbers. The hunter Jiao did not rush to devour, but chased after a group of koi, watching them flee crazily, enjoying the pleasure of killing. Although it was a young dragon, it immediately acquired all the cruel characteristics of a predator. Swim. Swim. Enjoy your last moment of joy. Just as he was thinking this, he suddenly saw an old koi carp with several white beards jumping out of the water in front of him, speaking human words and shouting, Little Talus Priestly! Help! Ha! What are you calling? This is my master's territory. Even if you break your throat, no one will come to save you. There was a hint of cruelty in Hunter Jiao's vertical pupils. Since you old guy wants to live the most, I'll eat from you first. Thinking like this, it rushed over suddenly and opened its huge mouth. In fact, when Li Chu first entered the pavilion, he didn't quite understand the situation. All I saw was that the koi pond looked like a frying pan, and a dark dragon was stirring in it. But at this time, it was the old koi chief who saw Li Chu on the shore first when his life and death were at stake. He jumped up regardless of his own safety and called him. Li Chu was immediately happy. Xiao Yu waited for so long, and her grandfather was finally fine. He was also happy for the little koi. But at this moment, the situation suddenly changed. 
the black gold dragon actually ran directly towards the old koi. The old koi that fell back into the water would probably fall directly into its mouth. There are three rows of compound teeth in the dragon's mouth and a row of thorn-like barbs on its tongue. If it falls inside, it will die in an instant without swallowing it. Li Chu's eyes tightened. This dragon bullies the fish too much. If Zhang left his name here, he should be able to see that a black death omen appeared on the top of the Han Shijio's head because of his dangerous behavior. The young black gold Han Shijio showed its ferocious side with cruel eyes, flashing golden patterns, and was about to swallow the old koi into its mouth, and then start its life of killing. But suddenly, I heard a cheese sound. Then there was a roar. This sound sounds like a roar of a dragon. Is it the same kind? As soon as it lowered its head, it saw a red dragon charging towards it viciously. Etc. They agreed to go to the fish pond to fry fish. Where did such a big guy come from? Oh! So hot! Oh! It hurts! Boom! Thanks to these days of practice, Li Chu's sword energy control has become more and more precise. This sword hit the Hunter Jiao accurately without affecting the surrounding fish. Before Qiong landed on the water, he heard a pop sound, as if some barrier was violently broken. Boom! The sword energy fell into the water. And at the same moment when the Hunchijio died, the entire koi pond began to boil from this moment. It's really boiling. When the sword energy entered the water, a large amount of water vapor instantly evaporated, making the place foggy and confused. There was a crackling sound, and countless koi fish began to jump out of the water. Immediately, they discovered that the barrier that had been hindering them disappeared. Boo hoo hoo. In an instant, countless brilliance flashed and a large number of koi carps turned into human forms and came to the shore. Even the original Xiao Yu can turn into a human form. You can know it. Transformation is not a difficulty for the koi family. A large group of men, women, and children suddenly appeared on the pool. They all looked sallow and emaciated, as if their bodies had been hollowed out. But at least there was some joy in their eyes, as they had just gained freedom. An old man with a white beard and white eyebrows stood up first and said with tears of gratitude, Little Talus Masterly came here in time to save our clan. It is really a great kindness. This person is Xiao Yu's grandfather Lu Chowan, who had a dream relationship with Li Chu. Hey! Li Chu supported him and said with a smile, Old sir, you don't have to be like this. Xiao Yu is now a member of our team. It is the right thing to come to save her clan. The old man smiled and said with some worry, This place is the treacherous king's lair. There is a dragon's pond and a tiger's den outside. I don't know how Talus Priestly got in. But with all our burdens, I'm afraid it won't be easy to get out. Speaking of this, Li Chu couldn't help but feel a little sad. Alas, he sighed and said, There are no enemies outside anymore. Puff, King Jiangnan, who had just left the palace, suddenly vomited a mouthful of blood. His whole body instantly collapsed, and he almost fell off his horse. His bond with Han Shir Jiao is much deeper than that between Li Chu and Xiao Kui. They enjoy greater benefits from each other and are now more involved. Huizhuga next to him was shocked and asked hurriedly, Your Majesty, what's wrong? King Jiangnan raised his hand and said angrily, The dragon is gone. The dragon is gone. Home. Look after the house. 